this cares? right now. Yeah, but nobody will be upset about that. No, they will be upset that we took they longer be, than the Batwoman break. They will be break. very upset. But you know what? You guys would have loved the Batwoman break, so it doesn't matter. I like how in the thumbnail, Rags has got like little goggles on. He does yeah, indeed. I got my little swimmy goggles so I could see <laughs> clearly underwater while I'm looking for right. all the, the buried, the, the, the sunken treasure. Because, uh, I don't you see a strap. See my what? I don't see like a strap for the uh, for the goggles. Oh, yeah, it's there. It's really they're subtle. Just, they're just such goggles. Yeah. Is it? I figured it, it might have been that you glued it to your, you just glued the goggles to your face. You got super. I live on down here now. I live beneath the waves. Under the. I'm like Ariel, but before the movie happens. Well, no, partially while the movie's happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm exactly. under. I'm under. I'm under the sea. That's right. Under, under the sea. Man, the the new version rendition was oh. painful. Oh, no. oh, just in general painful. <laughs> that movie was uh, painful as scuttlebutt. That was uh, that was pretty that was a decision. You don't appreciate Aquafina's amazing talents. Nobody oh. does. <laughs> I feel like Disney. Someone at Disney. She has dirt on or something. She knows some secrets. Something. Yeah, because she was Marvel's Katie as well. How did that happen? That's right. She the was prestigious in role. Hand of four, right? She was the voice of the the little. Little fuzzy yes, new a... character in Kung Fu Panda Four, the one that She's no one talks about or really stuff, care right? for. She was in uh, the Bad Guys as well, voice role in that too. Uh. And there's something else. I feel like She's not Diana thing. Foxington, right? No, she was the Spider. Oh, thank God! I don't want to learn that I've been jerking off to a character voiced by her. Jesus Christ, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, mine's dodged. Right then, let us not. Hold back from the next round of things. Uh, we've got the exact same cast, except now we're joined by Nutsa. How you doing? Fine. A little Yay. sleepy. <laughs> oh, a little sleepy. Oh, That's okay. Well, we have yeah. got on the menu. Get yourself one of those energy bottles. Like I have here, a vitamin energy. B12, 14,000 <laughs> percent. Oh my god. I will say, I'm fine. Fine. no, um, no, yeah. no tiredness setting in just yet. So we're good. We're all right for now. We're doing well. I'm I, I get the impression it's going to be me first. I did not sleep amazingly. Mm -hmm. I kind of sabotaged myself. I went to sleep a little too early, so my brain's like, "Ah, you took a nap, an afternoon nap." It's like, no, no brain. No, I want to be. I want to be brain asleep. Stop. <laughs> you sent me, sent me away. It took a bit too long, and I'm trying not to drink coffee either, but uh. That's going to end soon. Well, don't worry. The boogie okay. sections, the one at the end of this one, that'll get you. That'll be a pep up. You'll enjoy. Well, this one will probably, this one probably will, because it's about Deadpool and Wolverine, and that film like Oof. upsets me in a more visceral level. So, well, I think yeah. it'll be interesting because I don't even know what everyone's takes here are of Deadpool and Wolverine. You know, if mm. uh, we got a bit of a selection, you know, maybe some people here love it, right, Shad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do love it. <laughs> I just also think the writing is absolute dog crap, and it was really, really dumb, but I laughed. Well, it may interest you to know that this was a very controversial video released by High Top. He put it out to his audience who were not happy with it. So, Mahler, well, do you want to hear? Oh, a, do you want me okay. to? Do you want me to start off part two of our anniversary with a really controversial hot take? Um, you do good. So. <laughs> My super controversial hot take is that I laughed as much at Deadpool 3 as I did at Borderlands. <laughs> My god. <laughs> you haven't even told me that before. <laughs> That's right. I was saving it. I was Damn. saving it for a special occasion. Like that meme of the fucking flurkin license plate <laughs> cover. You're I was just saving that for a rainy day. One grenade piss dream, huh? Anniversary. That's right. Oh, wow. Well. How about that? I suppose, um, Speed, you know, yeah. that's just, uh, yeah, you just didn't find it that funny. Or you found Borderlands exceptionally funny. I found neither of them funny. Yeah, I figured that was the case. So, anyway, <laughs> let's... Uh... I will say, before mm. we even start, the title is fascinating. The Multiverse Killed Deadpool and Wolverine, to which I would say, wait, I remember you liked Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, so something has changed in the last couple of years about our perspective on our... On well, remember, story. we covered his video called "We Killed the Multiverse," right. right? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, <laughs> you, know you what? and I, I together, will... we did this. 
You know, I like this. that title because it implies that I deserve credit for that. And you know what? I'll take it. I will gladly kill. I'll Not do in the it context that he again. meant it. W wasn't it like? Yeah, but by I by by promoting well, and encouraging this format, out. we've killed stories or whatever. Which is like I guess you, maybe you did. In a, certain, in a certain sense, there was a level of consistency because, as I remember it, the broad takeaway is Spider-Man: No Way Home. That sucks. Multiverse of Madness. Oh, you know, it got held back a little bit by the multiverse stuff. You know. <laughs> Like, it was otherwise, it had a lot going for it. <laughs> I think he hedged his bets with No Way Home. Didn't he say, like, the Toby stuff is was, both good was, and bad? It, I believe it was the idea that there should have been an MCU, like, their timeline version of Green Goblin, and it shouldn't have been um, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. Despite the fact that the story, like, provided justification for him being the main villain for uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Also, for Tia in chat, you should be asleep. Yeah. Bastard. Yeah, isn't it like 5 a.m. or something? Oh, maybe he's getting up really early, because would... they're weird over there. I'd like to defend <laughs> myself just a little bit from a comment in chat who said, I can't oh, believe probably. Rags would laugh at Clappy shitting bullets. In my defense, I did not laugh at that. That was not funny. Why is the assumption that you laughed at that joke specifically? That is odd. That's the one that they would go to. Who can say? Um, I... I... And, and, and laugh is a very strong word for what I did. I think I went, huh. Oh, it was at the oh, beginning yeah. when Claptrap was, uh, he was holding up the photo or the whatever, and he was saying scanning, 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 scanning. And then uh, uh, Lilith, right? Kate Blanchett asks, uh -huh. do you have to say scanning while you're doing that? And Claptrap says, no. And then he goes back to saying scanning. And I was like, huh. Oh no! That was that was that was the one. That was yeah. That was a sensible chuckle. That yeah, was, give that little. Uh, that was the one. Your eyes close that a little, and air comes out of your nose. That that experience. Though. Yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah. That was it. That was it. Oh, all so, right, you know, you gave it one of those. More at yeah. Alien Romulus than either of these movies. <laughs> Alien yeah. Romulus is funnier. I'll give you that. It's very funny. I still don't think anything will beat in the Alien franchise. Uh, Alien Covenant, when that girl slips on the blood in the room twice. That's so fucking <laughs> yeah, funny. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and I agree with... like the Batcave line from Justice League? Yeah, because that line's amazing, so of course oh, I liked it. Love it. It's okay, Rags. You can <laughs> let it go. <laughs> By the way, Muller, I don't know. I, I think... I think it Prometheus when she just doesn't run to the left or right and keeps running straight. It's good. And it roll, the, I'll that's give you. Amazing. It's good. That, it's that, classic. That, that, that part no, made me laugh. I think. I think I, it's, it's, I, think I laugh funny. longer at that because of how long the scene is. Yeah. It the, coined the, the phrase the Prometheus school of running away from things, which I have seen in though. at least half a dozen things. The ending of Alien Covenant is oddly hilarious when it's meant to be very horrifying, but because it's such a clown movie, by the time you get to the end with the reveal, it's kind of funny. Like, there's so many things to give away <laughs> that David is not, yeah. um, fuck, what was the other one's name? Walter. 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 Uh, uh, when she finally realizes, she's like, oh no, no, you're David, no, no, no. It's just like, obviously. <laughs> Especially when he, he's making fun of her as well. Yeah. He's taunting her. It's funny. David's a troll in both those movies, and he's obviously the best part. He's, like, he's the reason people enjoy them. Yeah. Well, that's the only reason to finish and let him get his third movie right. <laughs> so it's said to get more David memes. We needed, uh, we needed <laughs> well, like, a bit of flute scene in Covenant. That's the a fingering, great. yes. Which one? Yes. The flute playing scene. The two Davids, one flute. Oh, right. The, I, I found Davids, it funny one flute. They, That's classic. Something that I just found really funny was how he just, he walks them through his scary, spooky lab with all of his scary drawings. <laughs> and all his Dude. spooky diagrams. Yeah, with the captain guy who he's like, follow me into my horror room, now into my basement of my horror room, now to my eggs, now hey, look no, into no, the no, egg. It's like, why do you keep well, doing everything okay, he tells you to egg. do? <laughs> Anyway, we're not even close to talking about Alien, we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, and specifically High Top's perspective. And you know, he's a... he's he's got a style. Now, if everyone's in, which I think... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... <gasps> Someone's not in. <gasps> Who is it? it? Wait, oh, two people aren't in. is it the same one as before? Or... No, it's a new one. Okay, I'm joining the new one then. Oh, I'm leaving the old one behind in the past. Sorry. No, it's it, well. Hey, oh, Brad God. didn't click on it either. All right, we That's good. Not, I didn't, but I, I I didn't know if it was a new one or a current mm -hmm. one. I was Any um, excuse. I was paying attention to the conversation that was happening. I Don't ask me to repeat what happened though. 
die because, you know, that last one had, like, so many people who'd been in it. All right. Wait, what does this say? Spoilers that you've probably already seen. I mean, they literally spoiled all the cameos at Comic-Con, but still, hopefully this was long enough for you to click off if you most haven't people seen don't, the movie. Most people don't know about Comic-Con, though, so it wouldn't... I just... I mean... Yeah, you may as well just also, please don't... Sorry, please don't use commas for emphasis. All right, that's not what they're for. Because when, when it said, I mean they, I was like, is that an error? Shouldn't it be like, I mean, comma, and then they literally... I mean, yeah, to my sense. I mean... They literally, I mean, they Your commas literally, don't make sense. well, uh, yeah, it doesn't yeah, this is poor comma, yeah. Elements of style. Hey, how you doing? I hope you're doing I'm, well. I'm doing okay. Like I, I said, I this, is already, this is a style. This is a style. All right. <laughs> this is style. Color choice. Very cinematic. If, I think he's going for how he feels right now, which is he's not a fan of the movie, just so you guys understand. So he's, he's like, blah, 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 you know, it's all over the place. Now I know what you're thinking, I know what you're gonna say. Look at old high top views are down films, hitting on a modern MCU classic yet again for a oh, the sound We're effects. gonna give you the benefit, high top, of believing this is genuine. Go right ahead, tell us how you feel. And you're damn fucking right, I'm gonna milk this cow. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, he told you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. That's fine. As much as Deadpool 3 milks the shadow of on him remains of a studio merger that cost tens of thousands of people their jobs. <laughs> but all ass covering aside, you might be shocked to find out that I'm a huge fan of Deadpool 1 and 2, genuinely. I think we as a culture undermine those two movies as just forgettable, annoying oh dick jokes God. for 14 I agree. I like wow, them a whole bunch of myself. We do undervalue okay. those films. They are seen Indeed. as silly nonsense, when in fact there's more to them than silly nonsense, though I like the silly nonsense yeah. in them as well. Yep. When in mine, like I, I feel like the entire culture isn't undermining those films. Undervalue is probably underappreciating. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, undermining might be a bit not the right word. Hmm. Oh, yeah, they're know, not like, like actively going I, out of their I, way I to say. I partially say agree. Then we we have we've drawn it back to a partial agreement. <laughs> but poor choice of words. Not shaking what's, hands. What's being shaking undermined fingers. is like the Fallout games are being undermined. Yes, I get it. Reality, they are heartfelt and sincere, passionate superhero movies with a lot of annoying dick jokes aimed at 14 year olds. Wade Wilson has always been an interesting character to watch, even if the jokes don't- I know it's, it's been said so many times, yes. it's still the way that he talks. Yeah. The wounded animal yeah, thing. Yeah, it's- Yeah. It'll forever be a part I'm of so his style, I guess. so vulnerable and artistic. I think someone posted a meme on the subreddit somewhere. I saw the image of um, the, the the time they said the best encapsulates this is when Batman gets stabbed in uh, the end of Dark Knight Rises by Talia. It's like after that, that's the, and then Batman had to record a video essay about Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Wolverine. They, they, you know, it's like, oh man, I hope you make it. <laughs> I mean, Don't always... the delivery really clashes with the sound effects and editing choices there. Mm. Yeah, like the beat, like a like a hip hop mm -hmm. beat's about to happen. You can't. That's yeah. not a. He doesn't have a hip hop yeah, voice. Beat. Not quite you a hip hop voice. You have to be <laughs> aggressive and energetic. His land, even if the constant winking. Well, hey, oh, oh, hold on. Can you rewind mm -hmm. about five seconds? I can do rewind. that. Jokes aimed at 14 year olds. <laughs> Wade Wilson has always been an interesting character to watch, even if the jokes don't always land, even if the constant. Sorry, I have an issue because he did land. The, the whole point is that it's just an impractical way to land, but he did it. He did, he stuck the landing. It just, it's hard on your knees. That's it. Nothing to be done about that, so I don't know if it's quite apt as a uh, visual. I think Damn. the depth that it's uh, going for is that he said myself. land, and Deadpool lands in the clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's and not. He's not the considering the didn't quite part. I guess, or maybe maybe Deadpool would feel he didn't quite land this just because he's in so much I think, pain. I think I he know. would because Deadpool. Yeah, I think it's just. Oh yeah, he nailed it. it. He'd say he nailed it. It's hard. On, well, I mean, he's he when he does this, he just says, "Oh fuck, 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 fuck," because it's bad on your knees. But he did it right. It's just that it's a terrible way to land. That's it. Fair enough. Has failed right. successfully. He's also immortal, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, breaking your knees. <laughs> yeah, his knees would heal immediately. He does, so. he, just he does feel pain, yeah. 
thinking while doing yeah. the exact thing. Oh, wait, will he die of old age? Can he? Mm. Or I assume not. Is oh, Deadpool's he... whole thing is he's basically living cancer, so uh, that doesn't really help with the question at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people with cancer. Well, I'm die. saying, I, I mean, I'm saying, like, cancer doesn't <laughs> just die because it exists for a long time. So that would be well. My there's assumption. there are re there are biological processes behind you know dying of old age. It's not like yeah. So I I don't I was wondering if he could get like if he'd get old, but he he would just like regenerate or I I, I don't know so. Thing he's making fun of gets kind of old, but to me, Wade and Ryan Reynolds' always dedicated and passionate performance is palpable and contagiously empathetic enough to keep me on board. When I first heard they were bringing old Hugh Jackman back, ah! all I could do was roll my eyes. I mean, come on, it felt like the most creatively bankrupt thing you could do. It felt like the most disingenuous way to make a billion dollars, whereas the first two Deadpool films got by, survived, and thrived because of how genuine they felt in spite of the constant kamikaze of cynical jokes about the state of superhero stories. Oh, cynical jokes. I don't think I agree with that. Um, Not cynical jokes, necessarily. I don't, I don't know uh, if I'd describe the jokes some, in the Deadpool movies as but, cynical. Some of them are kind of mean, but, yeah, but you know, I'd say it's earnest it's at what it, it itself is trying to be, the first two. And I would also argue the return of Hugh Jackman to me was not with. like a... I didn't, I didn't roll my eyes in the sense that I was like, there's no way this could be good. It's like, no, they, they could make something really good no, here. I, I, think, I think the problem is that, it, like, I would feel more cynical about it if it wasn't, like, it's clearly something that they wanted to do. Like, it doesn't just strike me as, well, this is what the, you know, this is what the uh, algorithm says is the optimal move to make money, even though it is. It's a Deadpool and Wolverine as a team-up is something that's uh, very appealing. Yeah. It, like, and then knowing their friends in real yeah. life means that it feels very much like a real possibility as mm -hmm. well as... Uh... And also that it was kind of a thing that they were teasing, like, the whole, you know, like, I mean, the like, Deadpool opens up with making fun of Wolverine straight away, so it's kind of like a thing that's been building for a while. There's no reason why it has to be cynical that Wolverine was going to be in a Deadpool movie, even, even, even if it was going to be Hugh Jackman after Logan. Well, I mean, the solution is, I of course, is... a different yeah. Yeah. He definitely used cynical incorrectly. Haven't Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds been friends for a long time? Yes. Like, it doesn't strike me as just like a marketing ploy. No, I it yeah. didn't I mean, strike me that way. I, <laughs> no, I, I don't think anybody well, would take it that way. Ryan Reynolds fought so hard to get de the first Deadpool movie made. I would. It, it's clear he is, has a passion. It's not just about you know hitting like we said algorithmic stuff. It, he wanted it to be a thing, and he wanted this to be a thing. So I don't. I never get the sense that it was like that. Also, probably he was probably butthurt about Wolverine stuff, so he wanted to fix it with Wolverine. Wait, Hugh Jackman? Or... Uh, I mean, in the you know he is in the movie, right? In the Wolverine, and the bad one. Oh, so you're you're Origins. I think what you're saying you're saying um oh. X Men Origins Wolverine how to fix that? Yeah, I mean, well that was yeah. That goes without saying. I think he was pretty uh, butthurt about it, so this is him f trying to fix it. Yeah, and to be we fair, I would be butthurt too. Because <laughs> that was yeah, a horrible I, rendition yeah. of Deadpool. In that movie. The mark with then, the mouth. They removed the mouth. Mm -hmm. I heard the storytellers behind the movie talk about the movie, and I was sold on the bromance of Ryan and Hugh, sold on the clear admiration and love they clearly have for these characters, and I thought, okay. Even if this is, from a business perspective, from a story perspective, the most predictable and safe way to make the mouse a few billion bucks fatter, at least it would be some charm and cheese. Few Maybe billion? it would maintain- What was that? That's- I said a few billion. That, that's a, you know, that, that's a tall task. Quite optimistic. A few, a few yeah. billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a billion. Yeah. That's a pretty safe guess. The heart and the soul of the first two movies and give us that fun buddy cop comedy that masqueraded the horribly bleak reality of it how this film came. should have been three of them. Cable should have been in it. God damn it. I mean, um, not in this version of the movie because it would have been terrible. But you know, in the in the ideal I mean, version, it should have been Cable too. Well, yeah, kind of already scratched that itch though. No, with the, the no. Cable no, no, no. It's look it's not the true. I I can understand wanting to focus hardcore on just Deadpool and Wolverine. I get that, uh, but I think the perfect version is going to have to be a, a you know like a a sequel that respects Deadpool one and two, which means you're going to have to bring in a few characters. 
uh, what's her name? Zazzy Beats apparently didn't even get asked if she was coming in oh, or coming back. Domino, yeah. And she said she was interested well, too because she likes playing Domino. I was like, why? How did this happen, guys? Uh, no, no, no room for those characters. No room for the characters that were part of the films when they weren't guaranteed to be successful. And yeah, then and actually then had to be successful on their own terms. Colossus would have been perfect. He just would have yeah. been fun throughout the whole thing. Uh, especially with the history he has in Deadpool 1 and 2. And then, yeah, of course, Cable. There's there's so much to work in with them as a team. But instead, of course, we bring in Blade Electra and Gambit, who barely get anything, mm. you know? Like, yeah, but sort of talking about Gambit was going to make a name for himself. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> there was that. There was, there was totally a place to have those characters in. And it's really sad because the movie kind of goes out of its way to not have them in it. And it totally has space for them. This movie wastes so much time in the wasteland. Like, it's yeah. embarrassing. I mean, I, all the time they I, spend on Nice Pool. Like, it's not funny enough to take that much room. Yeah. I, I, what I would say is the characters that they shouldn't have... If they couldn't have... If they weren't unable to secure the actor who actually played the character, that character should have made a cameo. Because there was way too many of those throughout the film. There was... You know, some of them were passable at a first glance, like obviously ones like um, Azazel and stuff because they have makeup on. But then there was ones where they zoom in and you're like, that's clearly not the same person. Yeah. And those ones should have just been discarded and brought in these ones that we're talking about right now. And that would have made that would have been better. Came to be a studio merger that allows all of us fanboys to get shittier versions of the wonderful innocent childhood fantasies we once had. Man, I feel I get so tired of like how much of the talk about Fox is. Oh yeah, X Men. It's like, dude, they pay like seventy billion dollars. Like it's way beyond the scope of X Men. I don't know why that keeps being like the thing that people focus <laughs> on as part of like, the Disney Fox. It's not even a merger; it's an acquisition. Um, like, oh yeah, well no, you can get like crappier versions of a handful of comic book characters, as if that was what encompassed the scope of that acquisition. I don't know, it just annoys me. No, yeah, you're right. That in reality, sucked for so many people and only contributes, supports, and validates a large monopoly that already owns way too many things. I feel like this should be its own video, High Top. Like, if you want to talk yeah. about yeah. this. If you want to talk about, like, massive media consolidation and monopolies and stuff like that. Well, like, would he still be saying this stuff if he liked the movie? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I guess so. Which would be I weird. That, but... I, I, honestly, you could you could spin this either into either kind of video because this is a universal thing that they the properties are being hoarded. Sure, so. sure it, just, it just feels odd to, to jump into this every once in a while instead of his issues with the film unless he's saying this is a direct result of this attitude but you have to thread that like, a bit better. i mean i don't i haven't seen a lot of his videos but i get the idea that he probably repeats this a lot which is kind of like why I can i imagine what the like the accountant looking at this business model Holy shit. Like, I mean, there would have been a Deadpool 3 regardless of whether Fox got acquired because Deadpool yeah. movies made a lot of money. So I don't even know why we're pretending that this spawned from that. Yet, I had hope. And perhaps that hope was misplaced because underneath all the passion that Ryan Reynolds continues to bring, underneath all the glimpses of our fantasies come true, underneath Wolverine... There's always three. <laughs> yeah, always three. Just to be clear, in case anyone doesn't know Hawaii. what we're talking about, it's when he, he does this sort of impassioned thing where you'll start to it'll you'll you'll clearly start notice the start of it. Hang Perhaps on. that hope was misplaced because underneath all the pa because underneath all the he's gonna do da -da -da -da, underneath all the da -da 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 -da, underneath all of the da -da 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 -da, like it, for some reason. <laughs> It came up, didn't it come up at really early EFAB, the writing in threes, there's some kind of recommendation that you always do that, it sounds yeah, the best. Yeah, well. there's, a, there's yeah. a rule of threes. Yeah, well, I would prefer you just say the things you think apply instead of arbitrarily reaching a three. Even knocking one out because you want three rather than four, which would make even less sense to me, but whatever. Passion that Ryan it doesn't work, it's just like, like, but he doesn't deliver it with any kind of emphasis. Like, everything he says, I'm actually finding really hard to follow because he just goes on and doesn't change there's no like rhetorical yeah. flourish he's not stressing the third point it's and underneath this and underneath this and underneath this i'm making my point and here we go and like i'm fucking long-winded but at least i vary my intonation <laughs> he's he always oh, so sounds passionately upset that's how he's uh 
it's his voice. It's very <laughs> difficult to tell when its sentences end. I, it's not the same as the movie Bob problem where it's, no. it's literally because the sentences are fucking long. In this case, it's hard to tell when a sentence ends and a new one begins. Continues to bring underneath all the glimpses of our fantasies come true. Underneath Wolverine's comic accurate action figure cowl is a movie that actively, despite trying so hard not to be, represents everything that is fundamentally, for a lack of a better word, fucked. Damn. Fucked? Ooh. Well, I guess that's the intro. Hopefully, we'll still get into the audience. <laughs> is it? I don't is know. Is it the intro? about the state of modern blockbuster storytelling. This ain't gonna be a video about how Marvel ruined Deadpool or how being in the MCU took the charm out of these characters or how even Sean... Though, I, I mean... Even though both of those things are accurate. <laughs> I would argue those. He, he lost the sauce to the corporate machine. None of that shit happened. Wait, did Sean Levy ever have, or Levy ever have did sauce? Did he lose the sauce or, yeah, did he ever have it? What's his sauciest movie? I don't, I don't even know dude, what else I don't even know, play. like, honestly, if what, would, what would count. Like, not, not at the museum doesn't seem like it reaches that, uh, that threshold, you know? Um, okay, but what about... What's the word with Ryan Reynolds, uh... Uh... What did he not... Am I mixing someone... It, oh, you're, you're forgetting, forgetting a 2003's uh, free guy? Cheaper yeah, by the Dozen. Free guy, yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, and man, the, he did the Pink he Panther the, remake. Ew. He did do the Pink Panther, yeah. Oh, and he did Real Steel as well, which people kind of like, but I don't know. They it, don't, it's fun, don't... but it's not good. Mm. Well, yeah, it's just it, it's it doesn't seem to be a film that inspires like a huge amount of like, oh yeah. <laughs> Perhaps no. Real Steel yeah. is the most source that he ever had. Who knows? Man, he he did also he did like all three of the night the museum films. Wow, and, and those are all like, studio. Those, 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 pretty funny. those are all studio movies, and he's like, oh well, since he joined the end uh, the MCU, he's lost his sauce to the corporate machine. So what the fuck are you talking about, High Top? <laughs> this corporate machine like, is he much more machiney than the other corporate machines. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about it like that. I remember thinking Big Fat Liar was fun. Apparently, he did that. Well, I mean. I do like the night at the museum. Yeah, I was about to say movies, but like I only really remember the first one. Yeah, this is gonna be date night. Was pretty fun. There you go. Yeah, that was not bad. How the multiversal Marvel storytelling actively works against every single genuinely interesting idea, concept, and character arc. The it, it doesn't have to, though, which is the important part. It doesn't you just start. because it's a multiverse story doesn't mean that it has to work against developing characters. If if he was a friend of mine and had said, "This is my video. Can you give me some feedback?" I'd be like, "You better start getting some arguments soon. You're gonna lose. The audience is very much against oh, yeah, you on Theo this one." Theo. Theo would be losing his mind. Oh, Theo would be losing <laughs> his mind. Absolutely. <laughs> Has he pro proposed two premises now in the video where originally it's like, it's going to be a video that's based on why, what general Hollywood is fundamentally effed in the way they make films, but now it's going to be wrapping it up with, it's in relation to the multiversal, uh, you know, uh, inclusion in that. To me, those are two separate things. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like, wondering... is he blaming the multiverse or is he blaming the studio or is it both in yeah. this case? Yeah, like. I'm getting confused as to his primary kind of subject now because he's essentially introduced two. So I guess see which what we know is on. he thinks it's fucked. We're just looking mm. for the whys. Movie has. During the climax of Deadpool and Wolverine, Wade Wilson jokes that we are sick of the multiverse shit. Jokes about how the idea was fun, but it did not work and it's time to wrap it up. Wade was right. Why do you... But you... <laughs> Didn't he like get a sword? But you, <laughs> but you. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll just take it for what it is. He at this point believes in that. He believes that the multiverse has fucked everything up. I mean, the thing is, what we've always warned about, and this applies to time travel with multiverse, and to an extent, the next step down is like resurrections. You just need to be a very talented writer to balance it, to corner it off yes. so it doesn't explode. Mm -hmm. And you could have done that. But a lot of these films fail miserably in every last multiversal mechanic they have. Didn't have to be oh, that yeah. way. Absolutely, because like time travel, multiverse stuff, you can make good, consistent, interesting stories with, you know, de playing with uh, these ideas. But it, you're exactly right. It takes a bit of talent and ability to do it well. Because uh, there are inherent problems that can arise when you're dealing with this stuff, especially with the subversion of certain stakes and 
getting people invested. So well, I, I dislike when people say never do multiverse stuff. It's like, no, just do it right. Is my kind of thought. Yeah. Except he should have said it before they started filming. I once made an overdramatic video called We Killed the Multiverse. I remember. It was funny. <laughs> I like how he's got the text of the title over the text on the uh, of the thumbnail. We killed the multiverse. We, we did, did this. this. We did this. That is really what? hard to Why? read. I, I didn't even notice that. That's a choice. This is an overdramatic video on how the multiverse killed Deadpool and Wolverine. Telling people it's overdramatic is not going to make them not angry at you if they disagree with you, by the way. No, it's not, a, not an effective strat. I'm just... trying to track these murders. So we killed the multiverse, and then the multiverse killed Deadpool and Wolverine. So they must... Do we travel backward and... Did they? Did the multiverse travel back? And, no. How did... <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> did we kill Deadpool and Wolverine? By Are they, is he saying yeah, that we, we did that? Oh my that? god. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to have done it, but yeah, I just want I mean... to know if I have. <laughs> But before we get into it, you ever tried Googling yourself? I'm sure you have. You Google my dumb ass oh and one of the God. first links that pops up nope. outside the hate pages do. that I fall asleep to every night. Oh God, dude. <laughs> dude. This screams <laughs> insecurity. This screams insecurity, but all right, you put it in your dude. video. Why'd you put that in your, it's not even just in the video, it's in the ad. <laughs> dude, the hate pages. The hate pages that I fall asleep to. I looked away to. for a minute and I thought we were talking about Boogie again. <laughs> That's just feeding everything what those pages want now. You, you've given them all the acknowledgement. They're now validated in their, what they do. You... Well done. Well done. I want to go to those pages and support them now. <laughs> in the, Am I a hate in, page? In the ad, man. Tonight is this site right here that claims to have my contact information. That's supposedly my email and my phone number that this site would be willing to give you for a small monthly fee. That ain't my email nor my real phone number, yet it's probably all out there, man, wrong or right, and these brokers will try to sell it to anyone looking to buy because these big companies can't keep our data safe. I mean, recently AT&T revealed that nearly- Okay, but yeah, that, if it's that not your number, be... then who cares? Also, yeah, that could just it's be a real fucking racket. Like, we'll protect you from people finding your fake numbers. <laughs> you know, See, you look, that'd we be a shame if someone found your information <laughs> online. If you pay us money, maybe they won't find it. Yeah, that feels yeah, like the see, same thing, here. but now they get the... Uh, whatever. Just because their... we couldn't find it doesn't mean someone else can't. It would just be funny if they did nothing, and they were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're safe. <laughs> like, we'll keep which an eye VPN out. Which VPN do you guys think this is for? Which, which VPN? Which <laughs> VPN? Oh, I think it's something else, right? Customers' oh. call and text records have been exposed in a massive data breach, resulting in over 70 million users having their social security numbers end up on the dark web. So what can you do to protect oh, no, that's yourself? The bad well, I use the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Aura is this nifty little app that will right. alert me if they find my phone number or any other sensitive information has been compromised. But do you have to give them your stuff? So that I can... Yeah. So that then I can... So that then yes. I can find if it's been... I don't know, man. I just... Okay. What if I just, uh, and plus, what happens if it shows up? Do I need to get a new phone number or, like, what if what? they get hacked? Just pay the money. <laughs> oh, no. You'll have to get another Aura 2 to protect you from the breaches of Aura 1. Well, here's the thing is at least <laughs> you're controlling the narrative. You, you are the one who knows who has your information now. They'll give me and you fast fraud updates if anyone tries to use that data. Bro, we found someone using your phone number on the dark web. You're like, do something about it. It's like, we'll get him. Bro, <laughs> we'll get bro, him, bro, check this out. <laughs> One time I had uh, That just sounds like a I fucking a stress call. generator of an app. It's like, we've, we found more yeah. evidence people know your shit. You're like, oh. And it's also it's critical next to it. Well, maybe they take this so seriously that, because like, Fatia just kind of mentioned it, they, they personally hack into all these different places and remove your information. They like get into buildings and go into the PCs and they're like, I'm in. And they put a little USB in the computer and hack it until they get your accounts out. They take this very seriously. One time I had a that robocall with my own number calling me. It was the one of the most mindfuck moments I've ever had in my life. I was like, what the hell is going on right now? So, yeah, I watched know. that show. Mm -hmm. No access our credit cards, our bank accounts, everything we need to function. One time, true story, somebody at the McDonald's snapped a pick of my debit card, then spent the next three hours buying every single Switch game they could. If I had... How did they... Did they, did they mug you to snap the picture? So what were they was that? Like, he was using it at a McDonald's, so they must have taken a photo from behind him, I guess? When he was using it? I don't know. But in the skit, he got hit by something and fell. It was very distracting. 
But if he had oh. aura, it would have stopped the blow <laughs> so, from striking him, and he there would are be things, conscious. There are things that can clone uh, credit and debit cards. Happened to me yeah, when I yeah. traveled to the US, and when we came back, so we got alerts that someone's trying to use mm -hmm. our card to purchase things, and we had our card, so someone clearly cloned it. So that could happen. Mm. Maybe it was that. Yeah, I'm Laura still back. stuck on what he was doing there and what why he fell. What what buying a Big Mac? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Then it might have stopped the Hamburglar in his tracks, or a ghost that extra oh, mile and yeah, keeping me in the home. I'm just thinking Trent. about the Simpsons. Sorry, the look, he's stealing all the burgers. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of the most oh, famous, man. amazing oh. jokes ever. It's all just that. <laughs> stop! Stop! He's already dead. And then the dude is grabbing him and dragging him away. A crusty the clown, everybody. Right, he's stealing all the burgers. <laughs> I just love how just outraged other... Hoba is that he's doing that. There's so many good jokes in that episode. The one of the the of course that's the I'm seeing double here. Four crusties. Yeah. And then of course the underrated one of you know, they, they don't know who to shoot because they, they both look the same and then Krusty does a thing where he switches Homer in his place. I am confused. Uh, good one, Krusty, and they just point the gun around. <laughs> you know, one of the most remarkable things is that Krusty picks Homer up by his head and just flips their positions over and over again. Uh, and then they did the little bike as well. Oh, don't forget the uh, <laughs> when he's reading out funny names and he says Seattle. <laughs> Homer oh, loses his shit Seattle. laughing at Seattle. <laughs> and then the, the pie, just throwing the pie at the lady so hard that she slams through the wall. <laughs> 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 oh, and then, and then it had the uh, the one where, where it was with Fat Tony and he needed to, uh, he's like, oh, you know, I'll be back in a second. And then you just hear him open the door, get in his car, drive the car to the airport. And then an <laughs> airplane taking off. <laughs> oh, dude, season six, man. Top tier Simpsons, top tier. not just because that was the one that I owned on DVD, and so I watched it all the time. It's actually is the best season. It's pretty good. Transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus software, password managers, identity theft insurance, the whole package of protection all in one app for one affordable price. They got this nifty AI powered. He talks in the ads the same oh. way he talks about the movies. That one just shows how genuine price. he is. It's like, stop it. it Please. Well, we're, like... we're exactly five minutes into the the video, and about half of that is ad. Or five minutes in one second. Yeah. 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 Under exaggeration. How long is this ad? <laughs> yeah, this ad has been about we'll a minute and a half. <laughs> That will pick up those pesky enough. unknown number calls on my behalf to screen them for spams and scams. The software forwards all legit calls to me. So I need an AI to protect me from phishing scams and. It does seem a little unnecessary. Maybe. If you get hit with this regularly somewhat, maybe this is a really good program, but I mean, there's some basic security things you can do that wouldn't lead you to have to do this, I don't think. So I don't necessarily deliver. How has High Top verified that this is a trustworthy or a worthwhile service or that well, it works aura. or functions? So you've got or everyone knows aura. Ones, apparently. By the Hamburglar. I'm just fucking I've, waiting until. I've been like, briefly. In a year's time, where we find out Aura like had a data breach that fucking all users got everything, you know what I mean? It's like it's just, it just feels inevitable. Yeah. Or most of thing sees what want to happen. Blocking the creepy also, like, and scummy. Sc I like the idea that the AI is screening your calls for you, but it's just taking actual calls from people you know and talking to them instead of you. Like they just use all your information. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Dave. To you. I already, <laughs> I already called your mother to wish her a happy birthday. Don't you like, worry. I'd like to speak to High Top. It's like I'm afraid I can't do that. My oh. top's busy right now. What can I do for you? <laughs> Gammers and filthy fishers. Listen, I'm a paranoid guy, like a very poor and dumb version of Batman, and I ain't gonna leave my- Did he hop on a dumpster for this ad? I guess so. Oh, no. to the bit. Yeah. Yeah, get All a right. poor, poor and uh, did smelly he, fish. Did he commit to, like, using the service and verifying it works, or was he just like, oh, this is an excuse for me to put on my Batman mask and jump in a dumpster? Hell yeah. <laughs> That's so extra. You don't need an excuse oh, to do that, that's the thing. That's it true, you flavor. should do it because your heart tells you to. Yeah, it flavor, it's, dumpsters are very flavorful. Myself vulnerable. Kid, like up in my the window somewhere saying, Mummy, Mummy, Batman's in the bin. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Oh, he's not. Oh, it's uh, that's a high top kid, yeah. <laughs> All right. He's always doing that sort of thing. He's a weird one.
oh, vulnerable to any data breaches, and I doubt you want to either. So do here's me. Here's someone uh, photograph or videotaping me walking up the stairs, happy while I look at my phone. I have lights on the stairwell so that I don't die when it's dark. Yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a solid and check out Aura by clicking the link in the description or going to aura.com slash high top to try your first Talk about the wolfman with the knives hands Two weeks Talk about how you free. verify this Keep is worth my money and my security You're offering a security service Have you verified it's good? No? Did they just pay well, remember, you money? Oh, they just paid you money, right? He had to apologize for established titles and I don't even know if he did an apology for better help but I'm pretty sure he did that too He's uh... This one will be different this, well, like I said, this one feels like it's ripe for fucking falling apart, doesn't it? If I, if I Google Aura data breach, what will happen? Aura <laughs> data breach. When it was you reckon he took on a Kamikoto Knives uh, sponsorship as well? If we're throwing all the Probably. Uh, it's announced that Sean Levy was going to direct a big budget Deadpool movie. One where Hugh Jackman was stepping back into the tank top. I only had one thought. Fuck. Fun fact, this isn't Sean's first superhero project. Birds of Prey Season 1 Episode 9, Nature of the Beast, was his first. But seriously, I mean absolutely no disrespect to the okay. man, even though after watching this video, he'll yeah, probably want to cut my tongue fact. out and feed it to his dog. Why? What? What? What, what are you gonna say about him? What the hell? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> gonna, yeah, no disrespect, but what I'm about to say is gonna make him hate my guts. And make me want to like, make him want to kill me. Like, oh, yeah. damn, okay. That likes him, uh, disrespect. May well have been implied regardless um, of, of this reference. Let's just say my expectations have just been set. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know what? If you disrespected him because you don't think he makes good movies, just say that. Don't it do the whole like, well, no, I, I'm, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just going to shit all over your career. Like, well, and I don't this. think. It should, no, you should be doing it in such a you. cucky way. Like, just be honest with yourself. If if you respect people who you consider to be high achieving in a particular skill, there's no reason that wouldn't have a reflective result, which is low respect for people achieving lowly in the skill, which you think he does. You don't. You well, don't have to be like, I don't. I don't mean to say this, and I hope you don't want to kill me. But I guess if you do, that's okay too. But I don't think your film's good. It's like you don't need to do that. Very beat up. Yes. Very no disrespect, yeah. but Vita. you'll probably cut out my tongue if I disagree with your movie. That's <laughs> if Sean Levy saw that, he'd probably be like, "No." <laughs> I, it's, it's I would like... never feed my dog human. I would never feed my dog human flesh. <laughs> he seems Especially like a lame dog. human flesh. That's how they get a taste for it. Sean's career is and probably will always be more prosperous than some self-important YouTube. Oh my God! Get on with it, dude. Stop it. Uh, dude, God nobody cares. cares. I don't care if he's going to be more successful than you. Probably. What's an excuse like, for me feeling probably. myself looking at myself in a mirror? <laughs> I just, I don't care. Is there a blemish I on my skin? Has... I better take care of it for my video. With Aura. <laughs> Aura more take time. care of skin blemishes. He has spent more just made... time shitting all over himself than on the movie. I, I know. Well, it's, us uh... some time. I guess so. <laughs> in a legal self serious Robin movie for his first feature film. Oh, look at that! You, you... Nice, nice ad. But it, it doesn't count for you because it's yeah. self deprecation. It's, it's just funny. Like, yeah, you know, no disrespect to Sean Levi. I'm a loser. Here's this movie I'm making. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it is, nice. it is very, um, <laughs> what, what a series of thoughts that just happened there, you know, all at once. Chris, then some self important well, YouTube honker who just made an illegal self serious Robin movie for his first feature film and is now ranting on the internet about a genuinely successful filmmaker's Deadpool film in order to finance oh the rest of it. God. I ain't talking God. down. Yeah. Why? Jesus Christ. He called I, it illegal. Who... Well, technically it is, right? Because he's going to be making money like copyright off copyright infringement, right? Stealing the characters and making his own story. Yeah. If it is illegal and he's just admitted so. He... That's, that could cause him trouble. Screwed himself. If and he also not just just said as well, like he's only doing this to make the money to make yeah, I don't the rest know of the other can... thing, which kind of completely yeah. leaves himself open to the charge that he's just doing this for like clicks. Yeah, uh, yeah I, mean, I don't know why you'd say right? that. He had I'm the when he had the cow, right, and the getting milked. So he's already admitted that that's what he's doing it for. Get some. Money. I'm gonna have a cow if he doesn't get to the fucking point. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think he's right, to be honest. You say you don't think he's right? Right. right. Oh. No disrespect, oh. though. 
That is mean. How could you? He's going to rip no, your tongue out and feed it to his moron. dog. Yeah, if he heard you say that, he's going to dislocate your fingers and oh, no. try them into a pretzel and then salt it and then feed it to the pigeons down on 2nd and Main. Well, well. <laughs> Guys, I'm rambling from the inside of the fucking toilet bowl. So with the utmost respect, yeah. I say that Sean tends to direct movies that you legitimately would and will find 300 copies of in the Walmart bargain bin. You shove your hand in there, what could possibly come out? What are the odds that you pull out the DVD copy of any of the Levy classics? Cheaper by the dozen. Fucking is that God. Tom Holland? No, like, you understand, Get you, on with hey, what he wants to simply say right. is his pedigree is bad, and I think that as a creator that's going to take the helm of Deadpool 3 compared to Tim Miller or uh, who was the director for the second one? Uh, the guy did um, John Wick, I think. David I Leach. His name. David, yeah, that's, that's yeah. him. So, Jimothy? yeah, if you simply wanted to make that fucking point, just say, I don't believe with his history that he's going to be able to take care of the Deadpool films, much like those two, I believe, could from their histories. You could just say that. But now he's, like, doing this like, roundabout way of being, like, you'd find his movies at a bargain bed. You're like, okay. No disrespect intended, though. <laughs> well, the thing is, you find all kind of... I... <laughs> Well, I don't want him to disrespect Night at the Museum. I think it's a fun little movie with a monkey. Yeah, it's it. a fun monkey. Yeah. Um, it's also, a fun I believe little we movie. are about to lose two different people all at once. I'm so sorry. It'll be Doc oh, my goodness. and Little Platoon. Off wow. to the world of Sleepy Buys slash other things. Better things, I'm sure. <gasps> like Sleepy three Dog hours Dog. until I have to be up again. But yes, oh. sadly. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs> we won't be going to Thank sleep. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> Enjoy your snooze, Alu. Take care. Mm. But uh, yeah, thank yeah, you. Both. I will. I will jump back on if I have time later. I might be able to hop back on while you're still going. But um, if not, enjoy the rest of the the three hundred and congratulations and happy three hundredth anniversary. Thanks so Thanks much, Sam. Nice. We'll catch you around. See, See you. Later. Bye. 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 And of course, and, and to follow, I will follow oh. suit. All Same the things he just said that he can say way better than <laughs> I can. So. Thank you for popping in, sir, and I'll catch you in the future to talk Thank you for having me. about who knows what on wherever place. We'll we'll figure it out. I think we've got something penciled in, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Excellent. All, uh, I have everybody penciled in for the next year, so I'm good. Beautiful. <laughs> All righty. Catch you all later. See you, dude. We'll see you later. Bye. 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 Oh, how there very wonderful. Uh, do, do, do. God, both of them leaving at the same time. Isn't that despicable? I'll do that. Oh, you know what? What you really is doing this, Absolutely. Stop doing what? Being thing. honest? Do you think being liars is better? Is that what you're saying? Don't be mean to people, right? As Stop advocating do. for lies. What are you, uh, Wonder lies. Woman from Ares' yeah. perspective? Oh, I <laughs> am. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. Lies! You are a liar! Then I will destroy you! Yeah, what, what does uh, he, isn't it kind of funny to include more context? Like, does she say through the power of love or some shit? And he's like, that's crazy, she said, lies! She, she, said, she says it's not about deserve, it's about what you believe, and I believe in love. Oh, God. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, can you imagine crazy? being a villain and then the hero shows up and says that to you? <laughs> you you're like, oh, me. fuck, I'm going to lose because I can't win this when you here? say shit like that. I can't believe this. Who are they sending? They are not sending their best. Also, welcome Jay Longbone. All right. Hello. All right. There we go. <laughs> Jay Longbone, what are your thoughts Hello. regarding uh, Night at the Museum? What do you think? <laughs> Good monkey, bad uh, monkey, what do you think? Good monkey, bad monkey. Bad I've never monkey. seen those movies. I've never had an interest oh, in them, actually. Right. Well, fine then. That, that works out <laughs> well, because it's only a small portion of a small portion of a video of a stream. We'll be fine. That's half of a franchise, okay, just to okay. be clear. But Question. if that's how you want to categorize it, mm -hmm. then that's, and I guess. All right, Jay Longbone, if you were wanting to... Uh, you know, watch Night at the Museum, where would you first go to look to find them? Probably like Netflix or something, right? So not 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 the discount bargain bin? Oof. No, uh... that's kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I wouldn't pay oh, for watching not, that. Right? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I would look. I would go to one of my free haunts. I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't, I don't do subscriptions. It is kind of funny that a Looks fucking like bargain can, bin uh... is antiquated now. Like. It is only used in metaphor. It's like, who the fuck actually buys DVDs from a bargain bin? Well, to answer your question, oh, you can rent it from Apple TV for three ninety nine. 
Uh, it's part of Disney yeah. Plus, <laughs> wow. I guess. Yeah, Hulu. Damn. You can watch it on Hulu. Amazon Video. You can rent it for three seventy nine. Didn't they? Didn't they like stop? When did they stop DVDs? Was that recently? Last. Mm -hmm. I no, I think know. I think they are still releasing DVDs. You can still buy them. Yeah. But you can oh, no, I know you can still buy them. I'm curious if they've stopped making DVDs, like for new releases. Let's uh, see. Ingram Entertainment, once the largest distributor of DVDs in the country, said in September it will exit the disc business. Well, that's just them though. Best Buy said it would stop selling DVDs by the end of 23, 2023. Damn. A number of retailers. Comicbook.com. It says that, let's see, oh, and I click the link and it brings me to a different thing. Carry on. Although Blu-ray players can play older DVD format discs, which also tend to be marginally cheaper, there are many tens of millions of older DVD players still in use around the world that cannot play Blu-ray discs. That is why studios continue to print DVDs. Hmm. The DVD's nuts. I <laughs> 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 got him. Got him. <laughs> we got one for every section, hopefully. Will DVDs be around in 2027? Yes, they're still making DVDs now. Uh, but apparently there's a seven-plus No, in 2026, agreement. a galactic war will occur. Oh god, the DVD where wars. Where all of the DVDs <laughs> will be destroyed and cast into the fire like Bibles in the Book of Eli. Um, it's just not financially viable for most retailers to stock them. Uh, and so a lot of them have just given up, um, uh, you know, because they don't, you know, they just end up sitting there. But there's still a market for them, especially online. Uh, and so you can still absolutely buy them if you just Yeah, down. well, you can still buy VHS and everything. In fact, I think VHS collections are on the rise for people just having fun with it. Which I don't blame. VHS, are, they're cool, all right? They got a cool factor. They yeah, use... anything analog mm -hmm. just has a particular, you know, a, a neatness to it, that physicality. Oh, and of course, the link, in case you're not in. In one, two, or three, maybe the combo pack. Just married, date night, real steel, big fat liar, and of course, the internship. I call this game Levy Roulette, except there's six bullets in the chamber. Uh, well, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you so okay to be clear right chamber. he's like oh you know hoping not to step on too many toes hoping not to do this that he might just but he just said like watching his films is akin to killing myself as a guarantee that is the joke right <laughs> I mean yeah. I'm just saying story. like he hides it around a bunch of shit but I'm just like go for it just be honest I prefer you doing it like this he actually sounds more genuine here as well he's not doing as much of the wounded animal voice so I, you know I take it as a plus. Recently, Sean has made the jump from discount DVD movies that we fondly remember watching in our grandma's house repeatedly to Netflix movies that I've never seen but have heard nothing about. Point is, Sean makes crowd pleasers, <laughs> ABC Family marathoners, and he's good at it. I'm not condemning his skill because of the genre he chooses to operate in. He knows where to place Holy the camera. Holy shit, say something, please. <laughs> it's this for me. Yeah, he I'm... walks around what he wants to say forever. It's just like, say the thing. Oh, we're seven minutes just... in. Yeah, I'm it's an info begging dump. him to fucking say something. Like, How long Jesus is this video? Christ. This oh, video yeah, is 34 is minutes and we're... Terrible. Holy shit, I just realized, yeah, we're seven minutes into a Deadpool Wolverine video about how it sucks. And but bear in mind, you're like you're coming here to be convinced, right? A lot of people in his audience, because this is a hot take from him, still hasn't gotten to any actual arguments yet. He's just said it's trash. No, he said it's fucked. Well... <laughs> <laughs> He knows when to go practical, he knows how to get a few chuckles, and he knows when to stop the laughs and try and be serious. But, in theory, this is probably the most safe, sanitized pick for a director Marvel could have gone with. I'm sure Sean and Ryan and- Like, he keeps shitting on the film broadly. <laughs> <This picture>. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he keeps broadly shitting instead of, like, getting some airtight arguments Specific in there, you know? Specific yeah. shitting. shitting. Between him and Chris Stuckman, which one is worse to get through? Ooh. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Chris Stuckman is short and empty, and this is... Bloated oh, and empty. Mm, like, I really like empty. hearing yeah. myself talk. <laughs> That's actually... <laughs> I don't know. The, I guess the question could be answered easier if it was like, what would you rather... Who would you rather watch his coverage of the next film that comes out out of those two? Oh, 
Because, you know, the answer is we've already seen Chris Duckman's. We already know what he's going to say, like, down to the fucking literal goddamn dialogue. (laughs) Whatever he writes it. But But, um, is that good or bad? Yeah, is that preferable? It won't be 35, four minutes. That's true. But this is, there's more in it. There's more, I mean, it's annoying and terrible, but there is artistry here. Yeah, I think I'd go with High Top just because it would be different. He tries, yeah. He tries. He tries sometimes. And so I think yeah. he said things when we've covered him that we've been like, you know what? That's a point, and we agree with it. Good for you. De- well, yeah, because <laughs> um, Stuckman would never make a video called The Multiverse Killed Deadpool and Wolverine. That's just what Well, he's already admitted now. He that. was non-controversial before, but now he's like publicly announced he will not be controversial, so you're not getting anything. <laughs> so yeah, at least High Top's willing to share some opinions and, and be even mildly critical. Yeah. And Hugh from the Real Steel days are all best pals. I'm sure that played a huge part in it, and I'm sure Free Guy made Disney a decent chunk of change. But to me, my fear was. But to that me. But to me. <laughs> but to Mario. <laughs> but to me. But to moi. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine would be this soulless, cynical, mass-appealing sequel that misses the point of why the first two films worked. Okay, but you you need to start getting into arguments, man. You you keep saying yes. this. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. You said this so many times. Said this. I, I can't help but be reminded of uh, arguments you see on long videos of, oh, you need to cut your video down because there's too much yeah. shit in there when there isn't. But this guy has a half hour video and the first eight minutes has fucking nothing in it. I want to kill myself right now. Definitely get on. Most informative he's been is an ad. (laughs) (laughs) You're taking a filmmaker who has never, ever, and I mean literally ever, operated from outside the Disney Channel system. Someone who tries to tap into the culture rather than say. God, I have not seen Free Guy. Wow. Have you not seen it? No, but I, I never <laughs> want to with all these fucking clips. No, I never I either. Oh, the the no, moments dude. where they get all the other influences commentary is so painful. It's mm. actual cringe. It's like, oh. And the wor- I think the worst one for me was when Pokemon appeared. I was like, oh, give me a break. <laughs> oh, that broke me. Anything uh, counter Pokemon to money. it, and you're giving that it. filmmaker an absurdly large budget to make a film that he's still just yapping, man. Not still, he's not started up the actual arguments yet. It's like you gave this guy this who can't make I... films loads of money, and it's like, okay, but <sighs> tell me why. Oh my god, it doesn't now work. Now I know what it's like. I know how I know how Keemstar felt when Boogie started going on about his fucking health problems, and his brain just zoned out and went to Happy Land. That's what's happening to me. Oh my god. This is it. To be as much as humanly possible, something different. You needed someone who understood that Deadpool works best when he's outside looking in, that understood why Wolverine has always worked the, the best when he's not forced into any kind of genre norm. And you got a guy. Oh, that was just two. Okay. But it was really long, that second one. The guy who specializes in never pushing the limits, the boundaries, but is the expert at playing whatever Spotify recommends. We're still going, man. Like, this is getting Holy a little absurd. Holy crap! Mm. He's taking so be... long to just say, oh, no. the director is kind of average. That's all he needed to <laughs> say. <laughs> Which, by the way, Chad, that's not important compared to how good the movie is, because if the movie was amazing and that was still true, then this would all be fucking irrelevant, you know? Like, telling us all of this, it's like, I don't care, yeah, just get exactly. to the movie and how it affected the movie and why the movie is bad. Yeah, I don't need a bi- a, a biography of the director. I'd Even like if we completely agree, I just don't... Like, the, you're gonna lose so many people at this point, and he hasn't even gotten to the fucking film yet. Not even got to the multiverse part, mm. which is the He's thing true. that he said killed the movie. It's not called Sean Levi being an average filmmaker killed Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> that would be a long title. That would be a weird title, but it would be more accurate so far. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, an average filmmaker killed Bill Born Wolverine. Um, I've just seen how long this video is, and I want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. I I would either move this to after the film is discussed, or just cut it entirely. Like I I don't know. Like talking about the why once you get through what it is, like saying like this is because they chose this director and this is his history. Oh. That would be something. I don't think this is going to be particularly compelling to somebody who said, yeah, but I had fun with the movie, though. They might even say, like, yeah, I had fun with Nightmare at the Museum, too, because I'm not, like, some artsy student or something. You know, he said, um, 
you know, you needed to understand that Deadpool's about a, a man from the outside looking in or whatever. It's, it's, all people are going to say until you start having specific references are, yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, exactly. See, because he made fun of the MCU. Yeah, that's what he, he did. There you go. Kind of crap. So you need to move past this point. It's just not going to be very convincing to people who like the film. Saying like, oh, Sean Levi, he kind of makes like generic movies. This is not going to win anybody over. It was not helping anything, yeah, is if they thought the movie was really good. So you gotta get to the movie. Quote Sean himself. I'm not looking to make movies and shows for an audience of seven cool kids in the corner. I build stories for populist entertainment. Deadpool and Wolverine is a film about mm. outsiders that tries to find worth in the island of the misfit superhero properties made. What did that, the, the cool kids uh, quote, I was just thinking about, like... I don't make movies for seven cool kids, I make it as populist entertainment. I don't even know what to make of that as a statement. <laughs> you know? I, I guess it's, I mean, it reminds me a bit of, it's a much, um, funnily enough, it's a much more sanitized version of the Michael uh, Bay, you know, I make uh, films for 13 year old boys, what a crime, that sort of thing. It's the same thing, I make a movie I think you can, it's you could take it both directions, couldn't you? On one hand you could say, Man, he admits to just making consumable crap. Or on the other hand, you could say he's looking to make movies that please as many people as he can, rather than you specific. Can, can absolutely, it reminds people. me of. Uh, do you remember the George Lucas interview with uh, what's that guy's name? The interviewer guy. Which, um, which one? it was the, it was a really long interview. This was like the I interviewer say, guy. <laughs> like, the guy oh, with the nose. He, he's got two eyes. In, the, in like a black void. No, it's, I think it's in, like, his house. I think it's in, like, George Lucas's house. I think it was in oh. 2015. I'm saying he's the interview guy because that's what he does. He does interviews. Yeah, that's but... Like, well, there's a lot of those. That just won't lower it down. <laughs> Remember that Someone interview with know. the interview guy? <laughs> who does oh, interview? So, this is so reminding me of a Lano and Woodley skit. Lano and Woodley, they're comedians from <laughs> Australia. Uh, and he's trying to tell the other guys, like, do you know the actor guy? Right. Yeah, he's got two eyes. He's got a bit of... He's got a nose. And it's kind of held together, it's held together in, a, in a kind of a uh, face. You know, the actor Charlie, guy! Charlie Rose. It was Charlie Rose. That was the one. All right. the one where oh, was I was like kind of right. He's usually in, like, a black guy. void, but, yeah. It was, it was this, well, it wasn't in his uh, set, like, that he normally would have. It, it looked like it was George Lucas's house. It's a weird interview. Charlie Rose is, like, oddly aggressive and confrontational <laughs> with George. It's really weird. But I think George Lucas said something similar about the idea of, like, trying to make films that are ultimately going to appeal to a lot of people. And that there's, like, a difference between... It was something like the idea that the Academy Awards aren't, like, interested in, in films that are popular, or so, something along those lines. Mm. And it's like you said, you can run those positively or negatively. Um, the positive one would be you're trying to make media that will actually reach, like, the largest number of people. Uh, whereas, obviously, the more cynical one is you're just trying to make money. Outsiders that tries to find worth in the island of the misfit superhero properties made by a filmmaker whose career has been carried by playing it entirely safe. This is a long mouth vomit way of saying that my greatest fear for when you say that doesn't mouth fix vomit it. isn't all vomit it doesn't fix mouth it. vomit. Hmm? I guess so. Wait, he said mouth good question, vomit. but like I'm that's glad generally that's one of the real questions. Generally, yeah, uh, I guess you could get someone's vomit does it become it's only vomit once it's come through the mouth right like if you take vomit from someone from like punching their belly or whatever that wouldn't be vomit anymore yeah and then be... inject it into your anus and then what you know expel it like that would be <laughs> that would that would be a weird thing to do admittedly that would be, you know, that would be a weird thing to do man someone to do that Tip and, and it's atypical right behavior <laughs> it's definitely atypical behavior but it is theoretically <laughs> Yeah, we covered up bases, it's right? possible. Deadpool yeah. and Wolverine is that it would be this one moment from Free Guy that haunts my cerebellum like the cancer that is constantly trying to eat Wade's body. What the shit? And my fear came true somewhere. Yo, we got the same Chris Evans clip of him saying, what the shit? Ben Shapiro did that too. Oh, you're right. We got the same clip. Nine minutes. Throwback. Nine minutes in. Synchronicity. My dude, is that an EFAP 300 part one reference? I think yes. it is. <laughs> Let me like this video. We have circled around the carcass of this film without taking a bite for so long. Uh, I'm just. I'm, I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Deadpool. <laughs> I'm legitimate. And Wolverine. <laughs> I, I want to understand why he hates that scene so much because it's what, corporate pandering? Is that it? Like, like The Chris Evans thing? Yeah. Um,. I guess it's like it's like 
Nothing is meaningful. Everything jangling is a, keys. It, yeah. Is he is he Christmasing jangling keys? Is that it? I think it's, just, it's, the, it's the commodification of literally everything down to the last anything you could possibly draw out of anything. It'll be turned into something that's designed to just get you to have meaningless feelings on the surface that'll get you to pay money. I don't know, like some kind of like hyper corporatism in the form of he he finds Chris Evans and Captain America meaningful, but now look what they've done with him. You know, man. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I guess. My pizza never showed up. Aww. Ugh. So they said it'd probably be about thirty or so minutes. I'm like, oh, that's kind of fast, but it's pretty neat. And this was quite a while ago, mm. and it never showed up. An hour and a half went by, didn't show up. Called him, had to wait for like ten minutes or so for them to pick up, and then they said, yeah, we tried to call you like a couple times, you never picked up, and it's like. Or it doesn't. I didn't get any calls, and you didn't call anything. Like, oh, sorry about that. I guess we'll give you a refund. And like, yeah, you do that. And it'll, okay, it'll be done in a few business days. Have a good night. Like, <laughs> gee, thanks. That thanks, story Marcos Pizza. You really a better beginning, middle, and end than this whole video has had so far. <laughs> Man, I was really look at. I, uh, I mean, geez. I, would, I would call that a Greek tragedy. That that that, that didn't. You know, mm -hmm. that's... No, that's just that's an American tragedy when you're when, when your, your pizza, pizza that you deliver doesn't show, show up. <laughs> <laughs> and you were really kind of, I was really like kind of looking forward to it because normally yeah. they do pretty good ones. And I, I don't really order out much, but you know, it's the anniversary and figure mm -hmm. I'd have something delivered so I don't have to make anything. But uh, so I, I here feel I am. That, I feel for your ass. I feel yeah. this in my soul. Like, like that. I, that hurts. I had it with a, they had a, they had a deal where you get like a pizza and it's whatever percent off and it was a like a big one and you could have two toppings like oh sweet that'll be like what i eat tonight that'll be like lunch and dinner or whatever for tomorrow sweet excellent i need to clean out the fridge anyway for this trip that's coming up soon and i put steak and chicken on it because like you pick two toppings I'm like yeah steak and chicken yeah i want some dead fucking animals on that pizza hell yeah and it never showed up so by the way oh, yeah. man i'm you're I'm just making missed. the pain worse fucking of course the 300 part what has been hit for copyright of from Doctor Strange. Oh no! God damn it! I knew ben. it. Thanks, Ben. ben Bastards. Daily Wire. Or an act two. But for the first fifteen minutes, what? I believed there was a chance I was wrong. I felt like this was going to be more a sequel to the first two movies and less a hodgepodge of cameos and retreaded themes that were executed better twenty years ago. I thought for a small, brief, innocent moment that Deadpool and Wolverine wasn't going to just be an empty spectacle that we clap at in between our loud chewing of overpriced popcorn that we willingly choose to eat out of the mouth of a poorly made forty-five dollar plastic piece of shit. $45? I mean, I'm sorry, but what kind of movie did you expect it to be? Let's be real. Wait, Wolverine popcorn bucket <laughs> price. That cannot be. $24.99 plus tax? Oh. What? Yeah, it's $29.99. Includes large popcorn. Okay, yeah, it's 30 bucks. Where did he... What did he say? $42? $45? What did he say? 45. Where did he go where it was Where did he go where it was 45 bucks for that thing? Holy fuck balls. He got screwed over. Sounds like another American tragedy in the making right there. Damn, so many. That is an American <laughs> tragedy. Yeah. I agree. He did it again though. He did his impassioned speech and he's not added yet. This is still just broadly it's it's an empty soulless movie which he has said on repeat for the past like 10 minutes. Come on. Yeah, well I mean popcorn. Yeah. Those popcorn Wait. Yeah. Hang on. It's, it's broken on my end temporarily. Uno momento. I shall fix it. Talk amongst yourselves, but all your passions. Or not. So. <laughs> anyone watch any good porn lately? No. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I heard someone say the N word. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the new Alien movie count? Oh, so now we know what Longbone's been watching. Well, <laughs> I like that. Huh? Do, do, do. Yeah, I think it's there. You go. I I think I've managed to crack what's happening. It's uh, whenever Watch Together freezes on me, it's because. Uh, Chrome is having a little memory bleed on the back end of the studio for YouTube, so I just got to refresh that, and then it allows Watch Together to work again. Easy. At least in theory. 
do, 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 and we're good to go. I like that, huh? <laughs> go f*** your sister. Vanessa was there, Colossus was there, Blind Al, Peter, the gang. The soul of why, for me, Deadpool has always worked. The first action scene had at least an ounce of vision to it. I mean, I was expecting this. He wants it to be a tragedy so much, he's even <laughs> playing opera music in the background. The thing is, you Gosh. if you want to make the argument you took it very seriously and you thought the meaningful stuff was stepped on, you could go that way, but this has not been the way to do it. This has been kind of embarrassing, I would say. Like, this whole sequence has been hard to follow for anybody who doesn't agree with him because it just seems so melodramatic. Remember, most people come away from the movie thinking it's a fun, non-serious thing. Watching this for 10 minutes, is it any surprise that this has not gone over well with his fans? I mean, he's acting like it's cr destroyed his childhood and he has trauma that he's dealing with over it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like his family got killed. This is, this is the way he does yeah. this. <laughs> so I was pleasantly surprised by the decent framing and choreography and the pure fuck it attitude of using Logan's skull to brutally maim these Disney agents. I was so hopeful when I thought that the main threat of the movie was going to be brand integration, was going to be the mouse begging Wade to join their MCU and him giving him a giant middle finger fuck you to the rat bastard. And for that brief while there. But even that wouldn't work because this movie exists. In the making the mouse the canon, lots I mean. of money. <laughs> yeah, why would you yeah, expect it does, that? It's just, yeah, that would still be them being like, oh, I'm not going to do the thing as you do the thing. I'm not going to generate the mouse money as it makes it a billion dollars. Like, also the fucking music, no. man. Yeah. 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 This, this is, is, Archie, this is it a is. very strange choice. It is super distracting. I know it's opera, but super distracting <laughs> to have some woman screeching in the background as he's talking. There. Um, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Uh, let me see. Who am I going to pick? Um, let's go with... Let's go with... Hmm, Nutsa. All right. What is your favorite opera and why? Are you a Rigoletto kind of lady or a Marriage of Figaro? Or are you like more magic flute? You can't call him that anymore. <laughs> all right, all right. I got, I got an answer. I got an answer. The the opera opera sequence in the Fifth Element. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Choice. A bit modern. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's got this modern, <laughs> this Madame Butterfly esque kind of you know stylization to it, and then you get I... the tonal shift, and then boom, Norma yeah. by Bellini. Yep. So I got yeah. into it. Yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely. So not so. What'll it be? I'm sorry, my headphones were kind of messing up, so I haven't heard oh, like sure. the last minute you know of what? conversation. That's all right. That's all right. We'll loop back to it. We'll loop back to it. Let's go. Really felt like so, this was. What the... was the question? Oh, okay. Yeah. What was? Oh, it's it's the moments. The moments gone. But wait, no, it's back. What's your favorite opera and why? <laughs> opera. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went last year. Wait, Tristan and Isolde or whatever. Oh, Dude. okay. The, Wagner. Yeah. the only op opera I've watched, um, and uh, I hated it. Oh, so. really? Why is that? Mm -hmm. um, is it the music? I, went to, like... is it I was the music? at the, I was in Vienna, and I went to the main sort of opera house, like very randomly. Just got the cheapest okay. tickets, and um, yeah, I was. Uh, when we got in, we realized that. Sort of, we can't see anything because oh. it was the cheapest tickets, and was we had like to. Really I had to stand for like far back. Um, it was uh, too high. I was in the like a balcony. I don't know what's called. Oh, that called. you got to bring the binoculars. Okay. And yeah, and um, it was a very interesting experience because in the middle of the opera, uh, there were a bunch of uh, like twenty. I I look out. I I'm standing up. I look out at the distance, and they're like. I see 20 like silhouettes of people and soon enough I realized oh they're they're butt naked mm. um and they all turn around <laughs> and I'm faced oh, no. with uh well yeah and I don't know how <laughs> oh an Italian stuff really oh my god so to, you've watched yeah. some good porn lately mm. yeah <laughs> not lately but <laughs> last year yeah 
Um, and they were there for like a good hour, just lying on the on the <clears throat> stage. All right. The whole time. Oh, that's uh. So, oh, wow. and then I realized that I went to the same. That was my first opera ever. Uh, in the opera house, that Hitler also saw his first opera. So I went to the same opera house, and uh, his first opera was um, uh, Tristan and Zolda. If I'm not mispronouncing it, so that was that was interesting. And it sets unusual. It, it sets bad expectations because now you're gonna think, well, when are the twenty naked people gonna come out and just lay around? And when yeah, all the I other operas like... don't have that, you're like, well, yeah, oh, yeah it's what not quite a the same, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is this was written in 18th century. What the heck? What are these? I, it 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 was never explained. They just <laughs> they were there. They're not. It was the all, funniest. They're mostly oh. they're not like that. I would say. Mm -hmm. Most operas. And there was, a, there was a little kid, and like there were a bunch of like French uh, people in front of us. And there was this little girl. The whole, um, so she was like really cute and sweet. And we were, I was staring at her for an hour. And I was like, oh my God, such a sophisticated little child. Because she was paying attention. She was leaning over. And then halfway through the opera her grandfather sort of she was she started to get bored with it so her grandfather get, gave her the earphones and a phone and she was she had it she hold it held it down and she was watching some sitcom during the opera and when i saw the naked people i got concerned for the child i was like oh my god don't look up don't look up and the next thing I see is the grandfather is tapping on her shoulder, and he's like, "Fuck!" And I was like, "What?" This is very strange. Europeans are a strange people. Yeah. They're French. They're French. Yeah, I realized that. Well, what so, a, yeah, what I was a, really concerned for world. the little, little get girl, and she. Oh, and I remember she looked up, saw the saw those people, and she was like. And looked down back to the. She was very she unimpressed. She went. Yeah, around. she was very <laughs> unimpressed. Oh my goodness. So she's seen better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, maybe the. Like, this is getting more and more French so as it goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this little girl. She suddenly whips out a cigarette. She's like, "I have seen better <laughs> naked people before." <laughs> this is nothing. We have better serial commercials in Paris. <laughs> mm hmm Well, maybe that's why this video is like triggering me a bit. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah, it's like anyway, back to high top whinging. All right, direction they were going. Erection. Oh, he said erection. Oh no. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh no. Oh god, no. That was the perfect pause of direction. A story about staying true to your character and ignoring the corporate IP demands that will make you canon. But yet, even if the movie, even if Wade tells you that's the point, even if all the supporting characters repeat that sentiment out loud, everything in the filmmaking and eventually the narrative actively works against that original idea. Wade- Hang on. When did every supporting character explain that sentiment out loud as he's describing? I guess he's saying even if they did, but it did seem to seem like he's saying they did. You know, like yeah, like not even if they did, but that they actually did. Because I'm I'm with you. I don't think the that was really other than Electra saying she wants to get an ending. I don't know if that's some kind of like he's saying that's a meta commentary on. I mean, if anything, that would mean Disney facilitated the ending. You know what I mean? Like not trying to do it in spite of them or something. I don't know. Wilson fights the MCU and loses, even if he says otherwise. Deadpool jokes about how he's entering the MCU at a bit of a low point. He pokes fun at what's not working about modern Marvel movies. Yet Wade's entire- I mean, it's funny. I don't think any of what he just uses as examples are actually poked fun at. Deadpool jokes about how- but I mean that in a broad sense, He's right? entering so... the MCU at a bit of a low point. He pokes fun at what's not yeah, working. Does, does Wade have- well, uh, not even Modoc, but like, like yeah, horrible CG creations. CG, yeah. Right? Yeah, it'd be a bit awkward if he did because there's some pretty bad CGI in this film. So I was going to say, I don't think they do that. About... I don't think they make fun of Fat, fat, Thor. fat Thor. I don't know. I don't think so. About modern Marvel movies. 
And they don't. They certainly didn't make fun of Beast. Well, in, but if you said, say Marvel. for example, they said gratuitous cameos, it's like, well, but there's more cameos in Deadpool, Wolverine than most films. Than there were in the Marvels. The Marvels had it there in that little post credit. Well, than scene. most films. Deadpool, Wolverine had the entire. Yeah, I mean, goddamn. Yet Wade's entire character is completely regressed in service of said terrible Marvel movies. Oh Deadpool, my god, the true. Go I mean, Deadpool. yes. <laughs> His character yeah. totally yes. Yep. I he was completely driven by his idea of love in the first film, completely motivated by the loss of love and the need to save another abused outsider from turning ugly, turning broken like him in his second film. That same character, that same guy, all of the sudden feels such rejection at the idea that he cannot be an Avenger, that he cannot be accepted into the club, that he deteriorates, he shuts down causing him to lose the one person that helped give him his heroism. All yeah, because I feel like there's a better way of it. It, it, Mostly yes, I think I agree with him. It's just that, God, like he extends it so far and plugs in so much emotion. Yeah, the whole, like, yeah, Wade Wilson, the character, that guy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, that's redundant. <laughs> but, just just be oh, clear, like, yeah, guys. He, he wouldn't be doing this shit. It's, it's not like him at all. It's completely out of character, and the repercussions are he loses the girlfriend that has been so important in both movies. It's very odd. Yeah, because making it super duper dramatic is like, because people will be like, I, I almost feel like if you say it like that, people wouldn't even believe that what you're saying is accurate compared to if you just say, the, the, you know, Deadpool's arc in the first movie was this, Deadpool's arc in the second one was this, third one undoes it in the first minute. Instead of yeah, you might set off stuff. you'll you'll set off people's like that even if it's subconscious Whoa. that little like that bullshit detector with the delivery like why are yeah. you priming me like this I feel like I'm being like like primed for something well, I feel like you're trying to over art or be overly artsy. He's trying to tie it into his broader narrative, right? When he's like, ah, yeah, see, Deadpool, he's trying to save that outsider, you know, that outcast. So, th And it's like, yeah, because you're trying to tie it into the whole idea of like, oh, yeah, that's what Deadpool is about. It's about outcasts, and that's what they said this is about, but it's not. When it's way easy to just say Deadpool 2 is about him finding a family, and that he found the family in X-Force, and that it's really weird that that family never shows up in this film... Uh, and that apparently, despite having created that team, he yearned to be part of some other team in some other universe, and when he didn't get it, he didn't want to be a hero anymore. Instead of trying to tie it into this broad, like, mm -hmm. theme he's trying to do with wishy-washy, you know, language. Yeah, but Fringy, that only took you, like, 15 seconds. <laughs> Because he is rejected by the corporate overlords, the Tony Starks, he gives up on being Deadpool to work I as see, a See, I love the Tony what? Stark one because you know Tony. that that's a holdover from being pissed off about Spider-Man. Well, and also just... Oh, I guess right. he's going Even meta though, yeah, when, just... in-universe, you can just focus on the fact that we had no reason to ever think he ever cared about the Avengers, and we don't even know what the Avengers mean to him at all. You don't even yeah. need to do, like, the meta representation that the Avengers are Disney. But the thing is, they reject the universe, him. Like, yeah, that's right. No, but yeah, that's the thing. They, they, they rejected him. The Tony Starks, the Disney. Yeah. They rejected him. Is it confirmed that everything that goes wrong in his life is because of Avengers? Because that's not... Uh, well, yeah, it's, that's... it's the idea that um, when he got turned down, like he lost his motivation to be a hero because they turned him down. Yeah. Which but is not good. Been... Ugh, I hate this movie. <laughs> Tony couldn't have even turned him down. Tony's dead. So why is he saying that Tony Stark's <laughs> turned him down? Tony uh, didn't... No, oh, Tony's, wait, was... Tony's alive. Tony turned him Tony's down. Happy. That's right. It wasn't 2024 yet in the timeline. My bad. Not even a true fan here. Salesman. He needs the approval of Mr. Paradox, Mr. Feige, in order to keep his home. I get the meta commentary, man. Well, he does it in spite of their approval, right? Uh, yeah. He's not a fan of the movie, but he does yeah, he definitely fights, go against Paradox's, against uh, yeah. you know, desires. And trust me, I get it. I understand the whole idea of his world collapsing since Logan died is a giant commentary on the fact that without Hugh Jackman, the X-Men movies, the Fox... Well, it only makes sense as commentary. It has nothing, like, there's nothing about the text that makes any fucking I sense with the anchor beings and shit. Not only have you been saying it un undermines uh, oh. the Logan... Yeah, it's Jackman not good. It death destroys the universe. It's not Did good meta, say, no. Like, um, because as a result of them trying to bad. intertwine it, it means that Wolverine, or rather Logan's sacrifice, means everyone dies. Like, why would you want it to be that way? 
this universe would never have made. Hate, I also just hate the entire concept of an anchor being holy. Oh, it's retarded. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. It. yes. Oh, it's no retarded the, only, the only way you can make it work would bring it past the point of anchor being being a relevant label. Like, I could give it a pass if we're talking about a literal god whose existence keeps the universe going. Not Joe down the street dies, so the universe dies. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, so many people say that, well, it, you know, the multiverse thing, they were forced to explore it, and it's all already fucked, so they couldn't do anything about it. But this anchor being was, they came up with it. This is the, it, this is yeah. even more stupid than the multiverse stuff for me. Oh, and there's so many it's ways to write, um, you know, Logan into the story, a different Logan, and a, a meta reason for why the TVA have interest in the Fox universe. You don't have to do this. It's just terrible. Well, as has also been pointed out in chat as well, the idea that, like, th like the reason why the Fox X-Men film stopped was mainly because they got acquired. Um, that was the main reason why they stopped. They wanted to keep going. Well, and, you know, in a way... What we're seeing now, with him turning up in this and other X-Men shit that's gonna happen, really it's no different in the sense that now they're just integrated into MCU continuity as opposed to their own universe continuity. That, that, that's it. Yeah. And, I mean, is that a good thing when everything is subservient to Marvel? And we like, know it's not true that, um... the Marvel slop? That, like, you can't have a successful X-Men film without Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. It's like, well, there are ways. Well, I mean, I mean... I, I disagree. There I mean, are, there are well, we've cool seen that there are ways. First class, right? Yeah. Like, a, a, like was there a cameo? A but, second, but, second, but Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that is film, great. Yeah, that and film Deadpool. succeeded without Wolverine as any major component in it. And Same so, with Deadpool. Deadpool, the Deadpool movies are X-Men films. Yeah, like, I wouldn't uh, conclude from him. Apocalypse or Dark Phoenix. Well, and Apocalypse made his money back, so it was successful. Yeah, but he was in it for a second um, as well, so. <laughs> He was in it for a little bit longer in that one. Like, maybe but, well, two minutes. Technically, he was in it less because you don't even get, like, a... You know, the fact that he says, go fuck yourselves, I think is more of an impact. And people, like, cite that scene as opposed to his um, Weapon X scene. Where he's just going mm. like, <gasps> and runs away. It's kind of like, eh. The cultural dent that it did. Mr. Paradox, Disney by all means is the villain. The TVA is the clear stand in for the apathetic monopoly. I love how the TVA guys are wearing masks that dehumanize them. Uh, like when, they, when they're when the, the guys that have got to get killed yep. by Deadpool. Because in the Loki show, they all have faces. They're not wearing like Stormtrooper helmets. But they're they very, yeah, they're they're variants, and they have memories of their past lives and personalities, and they're different. But but... Now that they're the antagonist to him, they got to wear masks so you don't see them when they're screaming in agony as they're being murdered. They're also kind of like you don't even know because that they they are in on it, quote unquote, with paradox, right? I think the uh, implication well, is everyone yeah, is. They're, they're meant to be his guys. Um, yeah, I still don't really but understand why. Like, it, and, and of course, it's really awkward as well because, like, it, this is what's making it confused as well. Paradox is not Disney as the stand-in. Disney is the stand-in as um the one from Loki, the the one who shows up at the end, because she's the one who's actually in charge. She's the one who ultimately allows them to continue to exist. You're right. Like I would say that that's a. And way I think more Disney would be comfortable with that. Disney. They'd be like, "Yeah, we yeah, saved I'd your say, precious be like, Wade Wilson right. and Logan. Look, they're at the good guy TVA because." Disney does believe that there are some good guy TVA guys when the TVA as an institution overall is insane. You are, know, just... um, are any of the people that Deadpool kills at the beginning of the movie, they're all masked up and fully covered and everything. Except but for the, except are... the one guy, the one henchman well, who has a couple of lines. Kind of leads into my question here, which is, are any of them women? Or Maybe, are they I, all I don't remember. dudes? I think they're all guys. Hmm, interesting. You know, while we're on the topic of just like this whole TVA integration stuff, I there's so many questions in relate to it, and I know the answer is Marvel does not give a crap about its larger continuity, which is one of the reasons why it's failing so much, but there are larger questions about the continuity and how this universe is supposed to operate in regards to the TVA, because with this whole anchor being thing, when I first heard that, I was like, 
I thought Loki was in control of the timelines. Wouldn't he just have the power to preserve the timeline and keep it going? Or is he the one doing the killing? Is he letting it die? They're going to completely forget about that. They're not even going to address the fact that Loki is technically empowering the multiverse to continue. And then there was like another question that I had in regards to how this is all supposed to interconnect. And again, Marvel doesn't give a crap, right? But Multiverse of Madness, didn't it establish that if you have a person from one reality <laughs> reside in another reality, that destroys that reality? Yes. Yet in, in Deadpool and Wolverine, they're trying to get a Wolverine from one reality to come into his reality to save it. When, hang on, according to Multiverse of Madness, that should also destroy it. They do not give a crap about consistency with these rules and it just pisses me off you can't get invested in any of it they bring in the worst of the worst wolverines and an, an older x-23 into a universe that has both of them already in it but they don't remember <laughs> this shit because all the timelines they just get they're just like shut up <laughs> like okie dokie Monopoly that wishes to just keep the iconography and box office potential of Deadpool, yet take away everything that makes him Wade Wilson, that gives him his heart. Great idea. Problem is, they never fully commit to that idea because at the end of the day, this is a movie financed, approved, and made by the very thing that the film's central plot revolves around criticizing. So of course there needs to be some fanboying on Deadpool's part. Of course Wade still needs to want to be an Avenger because if you spent the entire time roasting how soulless and cynical the MCU has become, we might actually start to take him seriously. We might actually... Is, like, I don't even know that I agree with him. Is the part where he wants to be a thing to the Avengers even that long-lasting in the film? It's right at the beginning, and it's supposed to prompt his, um, sort of depression. And then you get Wolverine mentioning, like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me the Avengers would never take you. And then at the end he's like, you know what, they'd be lucky to have you. That's, like, the... That's all the references. You could probably either cut them out or switch them for something else. It's, um... Mm -hmm. the Them being there... I do, I suppose it's like a, a cringy result of how, I don't know, what do, what do you call that in terms of meta? Like Deadpool wants to be a part of the MCU, and they reject him, but then he finally earns his way in, and they're lucky to have him. Is that the point the movie's making, do you think? It's just stupid. <laughs> okay. Really believe it. <laughs> Making him an Avengers reject is the easiest, lamest fast track to reconnect the general public to the character. Oh wow, we love Captain America, so Wade must as well. Oh wow. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't see why Wade wouldn't like Captain America. He's a, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily see a, you know, like, like mm -hmm. a, a character insert shit where it's like affected by the wider audience. Most people like Captain America. He's a good person. I could see Wade liking him. I think Deadpool would l love poking fun at him. Sure, he but would respect him, but he would poke fun at him. Yeah, he, that, I feel. Well, I mean, technically speaking, him saluting to him time. here could be interpreted as him kind of playing with him, right? Like if you saw him in person and did the salute, Cap would be like, "At ease" or whatever. That he'd be like, "No, sir." Mm -hmm. That would be thing. a fun he'd probably... dynamic, actually. <laughs> he'd view him similarly to Colossus, probably. It de well, so it, the problem is, the how much does he element, know? But... How much does he know about Captain America and this one? I guess does he know about all the events of the MCU for some reason? Or does he um, have his own Captain America in his he's universe? To I don't this know. One's... Uh, yeah, if he's I guess so a lot affected of it by being rejected, you would think he was the biggest fanboy of the like all time. I mean, I well, get what's being said. Like that he his, could go to, he went to, you know, that one. His POV is being affected by the audience's general POV. But the thing is, like I said, Deadpool's a character is aware of almost everything. That's like one of his features in a meta sense. So I don't see mm -hmm. why he wouldn't like Steve Rogers, like you know, genuinely, but then also kind of having fun with it. We want him to be okay. in the Avengers. Wouldn't that be so fun? Wouldn't he be so funny? So he wants that as well. Problem is, this is the guy, the character, who literally said, fuck the X-Men, I'm killing this abuser in Deadpool 2. Those guys hurt you? That kid was abused. You can tell, you can always tell. We have rules. Fuck your rules. I mean, yeah, this is what I would cite for why he wouldn't yeah, join the Avengers. I mean, it's exactly. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, it goes right back to the start. He didn't want to be an X. He didn't want to be part of the X Men. He made his own team. 
He, yeah, exactly. He made his own team because that's what he needed to do. That was the arc that he went on. I, Remember I, when I, Deadpool I, cared? Yeah. Well, it's it's what High Top said, even in his own way, that the uh, we've lost the characteristics mm -hmm. in favor of like this McDonald's version of Deadpool now. It's very so corporate. Fight. Yeah. Dirty. This is the guy who has always played by his own rules and above all else, deeply cared about his own people. The last time we saw him on screen, he had found his found family of misfits and had grown the most a character like him possibly can to be okay with being constantly fucked over. Wade in this movie essentially- A way to put it, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's all that he could grow, but uh... He's grown to the maximum he can to be okay with being constantly fucked over. It's like, that's... Alright. What I don't understand is that so, much, so many people stress the fact that Ryan Reynolds cares so much about Deadpool and, you know, his legacy and everything, but I, I don't get it. Someone who cares about Deadpool so much, why would he scrap the entire, like, second movie? Like, how would he, he go from that to this film? You know? There's so many, like, mm. heartfelt moments and characters and dynamics, and all of that is lost. How can a person who cares about any of this do that, actually? I just, that does not make sense to me. I think it could be explained by the fact that he wanted it done, you know, get this completed, and if it means mm. slowly shaving out lots of different things well, until means... we ended up what we got with. Well, that means he's not that passionate about it, after all. Yeah, no, I would have preferred he'd push back on plenty of stuff. But for all we know at this point, this is the movie he wanted. That he doesn't see any issue with this connecting mm -hmm. to Deadpool 2, which I would find fascinating, but all right. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't know how much of an insightful kind of writer he is. Uh, and so it could just be he was more approaching it on a surface level. Let's make a fun movie and find the gags in it. Um, but we don't know learns the exact same thing he did in Deadpool 2. How to be okay being a misfit. How to find himself a brotherhood in a loner who believes he failed his family. How to find purpose in being the one that brings the outsiders together. Only this time it has the Disney approved sticker right on top of it. I mean, well, I'd say it's weird. It's, it, instead of these characters that were built up in these movies, we have almost stock characters that are things you recognize from other stuff rushed in. To fill the role. Yeah, so it's like the Disney sticker is kind of underselling the yeah. problem. The problem is that they're like not even characters. They're just like, it's just like, oh, there's Gambit, and he's about to make a name for himself here. And like, oh, yeah, there's Electra. She's just sort of here. They, they didn't, there's not like a story for these characters, unlike all of the characters on screen. Mm -hmm. Even Dopender had like a little story that made this happen. <laughs> He did. He did. He wanted to be a hero, just he like Deadpool. And you know what? That's right. <laughs> he found his and way. Then he ran over the bad guy with the car. That's right. So it's canon, so it matters. Deadpool can make all the jokes roast how stale and uninvested so many audience members are these days, but when the foundation of his journey in the film starts with him. So I really hate Professor X and MOM, especially the way that he dies. But I think one could make the argument up to before then that his appearance is more meaningful than that of Electra Blade and Gambit. Because at least Ooh. he gives Doctor Strange that speech that cites the fucking... Just because someone <laughs> stumbles and... You know, all that? Even though when you d dig deep, it's the opposite of what he should be saying. But at the very least, one can argue that he gave Doctor Strange the push that he needed, that he freed him, and that he tried to stop you know, Scarlet Witch, and died doing so. There's a way you can... Because that's how people format the participation of someone like an Electra. They'll be like, well, you see, Electra never got a full chance, a full uh, set of movies to really dig into what she was all about. She got cut off, and so this movie gives her that chance. It allows her to explore that future. Well, you just said, you're like, what do you mean? She's, she doesn't even know where she is. She got stuck here, and then Deadpool and Wolverine turn up and tell her, yeah, we escaped Cassandra's fortress. They don't even figure out how. As in, like, they, they ask them mm -hmm. how, how was that possible, and they never explain that they, they jumped on a sentinel leg that just happened to be there. Because if they told them that, they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and then you find out Cassandra let them go. That's what Pyro says, that she was, like, trying to play with them. So, really, the information that they escaped her is completely useless. And then eventually Electra says, yeah, you know what, let's just go and fight. Let's just get our ending. Like, what are you talking about? There's, like, nothing there, but if you 
essentially explain it very broadly, which I think if you applied to MOM, I think I think you could say that the appearance of Professor X, at least, is actually more meaningful. But I don't know. I I find all this very distasteful. That's 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 that, I'm willing to throw out that very aggressive word today. Sorry if that upset anybody. I'm pretty upset. Being rejected by Happy Hogan. The storytellers are kind of telling us all we need to know. You can criticize something, be the supposed outsider, but deep down, you must have that deep desire to be a part of it. You must still. Yeah, like he needs to. I don't know why he's doing this. Just talk about how the writing sucks. Rather than like, ah, oh, yeah, see, this is tied into the meta of how you need to conform. That's what Disney wants. Like, this is I just, think you just a gotta sappy lose run. I think, I think, I think the problem is that uh, whatever claims he's making that are legitimate, like just legitimate criticisms, it's hard to tell those apart from these weird observations that are trying to tie into this bigger theme that just ain't working. Are all of his videos so messy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Pretty much. <laughs> must still support it in order to be allowed to grow to live within it. It's fucking bleak, man. By trying not to disrespect Logan, you end up disrespecting Logan. Hugh Jackman just- I don't think they tried to avoid disrespecting Logan. No. <laughs> they seem to embrace it, which, you know- oh, has... Also, like, he, earlier High Top said it was cool that he was, you know, yeah. like, it was pretty cool that he was killing them all with, uh, his bones. Yeah. Clearly wanted to make a movie with his friend and get paid millions upon millions of dollars to do it. And he's good, as good as always. He's not phoning it in. Even if the script itself justifies the exact reasoning as to why there was absolutely no story left to tell with his Wolverine. Okay, what? Uh, when he says his Wolverine, that could be a bazillion Wolverines. That's what I meant about like the potential. You can do something with this. No way we're unlocking the multiverse and then saying there's absolutely no story you can tell. But mm -hmm. I suppose if you're saying there was no more story to tell with this particular one on screen right now, it's like, well, he was dead. So, yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like, it depends on how he phrases this. Mm -hmm. Even if they say this isn't his Wolverine. That's the distinction they make. It's not the Logan that died in Logan. The movie, the characters make it so guiltily clear that they are not trying to tarnish what James Mangold and Hugh Jackman did. Half the jokes and lines about it feel like a direct apology to James Mangold. Sorry, buddy, we promise we aren't trying to- But see, that wouldn't have been as bad, I think, if it were a different Logan, a noticeably different one. I don't think mm -hmm. he is noticeably different. And nope. funnily enough, what they he's noticeably different from again. is more so the, the Wolverine from the X-Men 1, 2, 3 films. What he's noticeably not different from is the Logan Wolverine. Like, for some reason, it really feels like they grabbed him, the cynical, asshole, alcoholic, you know, I don't care about anything, man, but I, I do care about some stuff. But then by the end of the film, makes the ultimate sacrifice. Like, that feels, they, it's practically like they fucking cloned the guy from Logan and put him in this movie. And then tell us he's actually the worst the one. one in this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And to fuck up your movie. Yet if I was James Mangle that I'm sitting in that theater opening night and see the most tender emotional moment of my film be clipped on the TV screens at the fucking TVA while goofy comedic extra number five sheds a prideful tear. We did it, Joe. I would seppuku myself with a fucking pointed horn of a popcorn tin. I would take that adamantium bullet and send it flying straight to the back of my skull. But behind no, all- uh, No, disrespect uh, to Sean Levi. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but here's what I would do if I was him. Here's the thing. It's okay to say that it's crap, because it is. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, it, really it does suck, suck I and I hate it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, there's some needed therapy here. It's just so out of Someone left field. Because <laughs> like, to an extent, um, I agree. Like, like uh, you know, if you had made yes. Logan and then you'd s saw it again, like a Happy Meal style, the toys of it being turned into the, your most meaningful scenes turned into little captions that are put on screens for the TVA characters to like be like, look, we're looking at replay in universe. That would be tough. It'd be like, whoa, that's gross. And, you know, he's like, I made that to mean things, not for the future shittest not to addition to the MCU. Universe in the most yeah. corporate yeah. way possible. But I mean... Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, if I was him, I'd kill myself, but no disrespect. <laughs> but no disrespect. <laughs>
<laughs> love you though. Love you no, though. It's a, <laughs> it's a no disrespect line supposed to be a joke. No, does he I, actually no. mean no, 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 no. I think I think it. it's basically it is the safe thing of like I'm about to basically shit all over what you made. But like, I don't want to get too much flack slash. Yeah. I don't want to burn bridges. Yeah, it feels. So, you know, don't hate that... me for it, but I'm going to. Yeah, it's it's the thing where people basically aren't being particularly honest about the way that they feel. Of like, no disrespect, but in practice, you are, and that's fine. If you don't like what he made, which you clearly don't, it's fine. Also, but don't do that thing of like, no disrespect, but your movie is so terrible, it makes me want to. Shoot myself. So people yeah, said uh, Maggle deserves it for what he did to Indiana. It's like, well, <laughs> wait, we don't want to destroy more films. But... <laughs> like... destroyed because he destroyed something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? That's be like, funny. Ridley Scott deserves to dis like the feeling of Alien being destroyed because of what he did to Alien. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. funny because I mean, well, there's nothing wrong with Alien Romulus. It's a good movie. I approved of it. No, I just I meant like, like he creates Prometheus. <laughs> it's like after. The the damage you've done to Alien, you deserve to have Alien damage. <laughs> oh. All the apologies and universe anchor nonsense, this is the same Logan, except in a costume. I mean, seriously, think about it. This Logan lives in a universe where he feels somewhat responsible for killing the X-Men. But in Logan, the film, Charles killed the X-Men. In Deadpool and Wolverine, he was busy getting and drunk at the family, bar. family, but, you know. Wait, sorry? Some of the family? Something about an innocent family that he got killed. I forget exactly what I said. That was him and Charles. In fact, it might even yeah. be more Charles' fault that those guys died. It's it's yeah, it's more Charles because yeah, Wolverine again, wanted yeah. to and leave. Then Logan went along with it, so that family uh, got murdered and killed completely unnecessarily, and it's their fault. When the humans did it. Either way, we are dealing with a loner alcoholic who let his family down and is spending his days wasting away behind the bottle, waiting for death. It's like looking in. <laughs> but enough about me. Oh my god. Oh, he made the joke. Dude. Oh my god. Oh, I made the joke <laughs> as a joke. He made the joke so that you could feel bad about him. Oh. The insecurities oh. are just overflowing at this point, dude. Uh, man. Damn, right. You didn't have to slaughter him. <laughs> Real Listen. Time. Listen. Goes through the exact same arc, except it's like the fucking Cliff Notes version. Here's a Wolverine who fought with the X Men, lost to the X Men, and is now a cynical drunk. He no longer wants to help anybody for fear that he will hurt them as he has so many others. He finds purpose when someone, also experimented on and abused, comes into his life needing his help in saving the few people this lost soul can find family in. It's a reluctant pairing at first until a tender moment forces self-reflection and self-realization that even if maybe you failed, even if you will always view yourself as that monster, you can still use what little time you have left to help give those who once believed in you a bit of hope. He rediscovers what being an X-Men has meant all along. I don't know how to break this. It's a kind of a similar criticism. Okay. It's uh, like <sighs> Wolverine and X-Men. It's so weird how much Deadpool Wolverine wants to, because I think vi vi valuably and viably wants to bring in Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and then uh, be like, but he's going to be a different version. He's going to have different payoffs, different kind of growth. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then they do really a discount shitty version of Logan. And then they let him live, too. You know, they're like, and he, he ain't going anywhere. It's like, oh. And that, that's kind of the cheat, in a way. Like, see, we, we're not taking the one from the end of Logan and just regenerating him. We're just recreating him in a shit way. And then not letting yeah, him die. Yeah, and then we're gonna shit all over his corpse. Yeah. So yeah, like I agree, but you know, there's a lot of people saying, yeah, but pretentious. Like, well, that's, that's the whole video, okay? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take the style as <laughs> it comes. Yeah, man, it's high top. It's what it says on the tin. I don't know, man. To you, but it's the exact same arc, condensed, stripped of all the nuance, but sugar-coated with a colorful costume. And yeah, some of it works, some of it feels fresh, because Hugh Jackman's a great actor and always delivers in the intensity and the emotion. But by work, someone just say, yeah, isn't that kind of what they did with Loki? It's like, uh, not as bad as Loki, where he watched his own fucking growth and then uh, grew. Uh, like, uh, whoa. Uh, no, no, I don't uh, know still, that anything I have a bit sad. That and the movie Memory Store, two of the like best examples of the worst possible ways to write a particular thing. 
just horrific, horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah. Never do that again. Yeah. Damn you, Michael slash. No, that was both. Both of those were Michael, weren't they? <laughs> yes, Mr. Waldron. Right Working so hard to not undo, disrespect the Logan that we grew up with, the Logan that died, they end up completely and utterly wasting the character. Quick question, sorry. Why is Laura here? I mean, on a thematic emotional level, sure, you need that third act emotional push. But seeing that little tormented and tortured violent girl who had that underlying vulnerability, seeing her all grown up to be a generic multiverse outsider, a Marvel Studios character. Yeah, I mean, I don't like that's it either. your problem with it. I mean, it's like, one of my problems yeah, with it. That's one of them. Yeah. Well, no, I I agree, but yeah. it's more like she's torn out of her universe because the universe is destroyed now. Well, no, yeah, there's there's right. loads of elements to this. One of them that's really fucking unsatisfying is that all that work Logan did put her in more danger than ever, and she got personally zapped out of the Fox universe and sent to the fucking the void. Yeah, uh, which is already just like what the hell, and then. She works with other people there to give them the opportunity to get back to the universe to save the Fox universe, which is the universe she's been plucked from, so she's just fucked anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what? what is that even? And then she gets saved to be brought back in a world where she currently exists, but as a younger version who's about to go through hell that's going to cost them the universe in the first place. You know, it, it gets so hard to track. And, of course, the other problem being that uh, he doesn't even know who she is. She doesn't know who he is. Yeah, it's Purely like, relies on the uh, God. And... It's just like it's so leave... forced. Yeah, just leave her alone. Caricature mm -hmm. who wears the same glasses during a pop song superhero walk. A... Yeah, I didn't like that either. But oh, all right. Nope. Caricature that has no purpose other than to give the lead superhero an emotional speech? I don't know, man. That's about the most disrespectful, disingenuous, distasteful continuation you could have thought of. And I really doubt that was well, the Logan's point. Corpse, but. Yeah, she could have been <laughs> using Logan's corpse to beat people to death, or at least Deadpool did that instead oh, of... Oh, no. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> close no, second. No. Yeah, close second. I don't think any of them had intended for that to play that way, and I'm sure it won't play that way to a lot of audience members. But, like, what? <laughs> I can't do this. If the whole movie was about her getting to finally spend time with her dead father, sure, I guess. If she didn't just pop back up at the end out of the blue somehow and wait. Yeah, no, this is an easy agreement. She should have been way more of the movie if you're going to have her in there. Like, she should be a meaningful part of it. Same with. Yep. She so comes out of characters. nowhere to deliver but the emotional thing. Fucking nice pool has more screen time than X23. Like, I don't why? Know well, that's okay because that. nice pool was such an incredible, meaningful addition. Fucking dog to pool the probably has <laughs> more screen time. <laughs> Ed <sighs> Wilson's apartment petting dog pool alongside not her dad, but still her dad, even though her dad is probably still alive, right? Yes, he's in this universe yeah. still. He's walking That's around. Right. It's so weird. <laughs> They're two Wolverines. Like, she's from the future. Technically, Logan isn't dead yet, so there are two Logans running around in Wade's universe at the point we end the story on, right? Wouldn't that cause... What the yeah, fuck but they... don't yep, think about it. he's right. <laughs> but literally, but what about don't think mm. about it? It would cause that thing in, that, in Doctor Strange. I do. Madness. How much this melts your brain the more you think about it. It's just funny, though, because when was the last time he applied this kind of scrutiny to uh, a lot of the movies he covers? Because I just feel like, like Multiverse of Madness on Civil War is the most nonsense for... film that we've ever covered. And he's like citing how it doesn't make sense within the continuity of MOM. It's like, fucking nothing will, my good man. <laughs> that Multiverse movie is Madness insane. doesn't make sense with its own continuity. There yeah. should be incursions happening in every universe America Chavez is in. No, it's fine. The meta message he seems to have derived from this movie, I think, is upsetting him quite a bit with this yeah. whole outsider thing, what he's been ranting about. So that's why he's more willing to see all the flaws with it. That's what it seems mm. like to me. Spent like five. Also, it wasn't directed by Sam Raimi, so if it were, There's I'm that. sure he'd give it a lot There's more that. deference. The movie's yes. calling it an incursion. Incursion. Give an incursion. Could have been one hell of an incursion. You call Just God, for, for the fucking record, though. Incursions. For the fucking record, that film like just completely backfires on incursions throughout. It doesn't pay attention to its own rules at all. So yeah. many characters. There was a whole list. It was crazy. Caused an incursion. Ah! 
And look, all jokes aside, if they gave Laura's story here weight, meaning if they didn't give us a shallow retread with a few different beats for Wolverine, I would not be questioning all the weird timeline time travel logic. I would not. <laughs> That's not good, though. What you've just said is I don't like other stuff, therefore I'm mentioning this now. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> hey. Except for you. Like, that just sounds petty, right? If it oh, I hate petty. that. If it gave me the happy feels, then I would excuse it. Yeah, he's exposing his own disingenuous way that also, he this, reviews yeah, stuff. It's like, this yeah. is exactly what Cap All just said. All this stuff is bad, <laughs> but I'll be ignoring that. it. <laughs> Man. Yeah, he Why was offended you... at the implication that he drew that, like, oh, that the message is outsiders need to conform. That's sort of his takeaway. That upsets him a lot, so now he's upset about plot mechanics. But if, but if Normally it I gave him the right feels... But I don't yeah, like this film. <laughs> like, all right. Yep. Well, fair enough. Not be questioning all the cynical corporate choices you have to suspend your disbelief of in order to feel an ounce of emotion. The more money, the less lovely. Tim Miller and Ryan Reynolds did the impossible with Deadpool 1. They somehow made a $58 million movie look like a $200 million movie, but feel like a $4 million passion project. It should not look as expensive as it does, yet it should not have the smallness nor the intimacy that it has. You've heard- Deadpool 1 is the best of the um, three. It's the best. Yep. Great mm -hmm. movie. Yep. Basically agree with I watched that. it back to back with uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine and the humor is tighter and much yes. uh, much funnier. Like everything is like mm -hmm. plot, like the jokes are plot relevant, scene relevant. And in Deadpool versus Wolverine, this motherfucker is just talking the whole movie He's yeah. just, and yeah. hoping something is funny. Mm hmm heard the stories. Ryan Reynolds took a pay cut to get it made. Tim Miller and him leaked the footage so that the fans would support it and they could get a budget from a studio that had absolutely no faith in the character. Every single choice in that first film feels entirely in service to making the perfect Deadpool movie that wasn't just goofy and meta, but was heartfelt and vulnerable. From the dirty, grungy sets that that's right, because Wade Wilson was a character who got a lot of screen time so that I would give a shit about Deadpool. Hmm. Meanwhile, what? Deadpool turns Why up from he... all of Deadpool Wolverine. Wow. Why are so we spending really so good. much? Well, he's going to so make a point about how there's Deadpool heart one. in Deadpool 1 and 2 and there's not in 3, I think. Can you not hear Awe Maria? <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the clue. That's why, that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the, the subtle clue as to why this is here. That are always filled with dirt, rust, and junk that reflect the seedy underbelly of the Marvel the universe that Wade op yep. operates in to the cinematography that is by no means game-changing or awe-inspired. I love that he would show us a fucking room with one a dark color and red, you know, the thing that High Top <laughs> does all the time. <laughs> Yeah. but is always intimate and always tender. Like I said, it felt like a passion project. Ryan Reynolds' brilliance with the first two films was realizing that eventually you will get sick of Wade and his shtick, so he populated the world with supporting characters that not only served to call out Deadpool's childlike antics, but more importantly, to be very down and dirty reflections of his own humanity. Your crazy match is my crazy, big time. And, uh, we're like two jigsaw pieces, you know, the weird curvy edges. You put them together and you can see the picture on top. That first film works because it is a love story about two traumatized... Dude, how many lines did, uh, how many lines did Vanessa get in, uh, in oh. Deadpool Wolverine? God, uh, four. I, you know, for me, I wish there was zero I because I hated her lines in Deadpool Wolverine. They didn't sound like they were well, from a yeah. character. It sounded like they were from some yeah, robot. If we, if we grant mm -hmm. it that that, that simulacrum that we see in that movie is Vanessa then probably four or five but it's really zero yeah. because she doesn't exist yeah. in that movie that character just has been completely wiped reset not even reset just a different person a skinwalker lovable losers before it's any kind of superhero action comedy. And when you start populating Deadpool's supporting cast with bombastic comic book icons instead of very human outsiders... Hey, it's like what we were talking about, where they had to they had to earn people's interest through writing interesting characters as part of what were essentially like the dregs of things they had access to through the IP. 
and now it's flipped. They have access to the biggest and the best ones ever, even the actors to follow, but they don't bother to write anything for them because who needs to do that anymore? The audience we don't already need looking. You anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Toy Story Andy meme where they just drop all of the characters from the first two Pretty movies. Much. Yeah. Yeah. I've got You've Wolverine now. Wolverine. We've got this. Bye. See also, Colossus. it should not have taken uh, this Colossus. long yeah. to get to these points. Like, God, the fucking structure no, I... of this video. Because, yeah, there's plenty here I'm agreeing with, but it took us ages to get here. You begin to lose that charm and that humanity. The first film in every single way had a soul that was messy, thrown together, and trying to pull off way more than it could chew. Which, to me, is far more endearing than- I don't even agree with that. I think it- it no, took I on the task and nailed it. I think exactly what they wanted to be. If anything, Deadpool and Wolverine is clearly, like, stitched together. Incoherent. They, you know, that, yeah. was, that was not- there was no clear overarching plan that they were able to follow through on. Well, as someone said, the character of Cable and the Fat Child were great characters, like, dismissively. Cable was awesome. Cable, Cable was, was great. Cool. Cable was good. The Fat Kid is... The Fat Kid's not, annoying, not, but, like... Yeah. He's not, annoying, but Not bad I get for the it. story. You know, what it does for yeah. Deadpool but, and Cable. But Cable was, uh... I thought Cable was really cool, and he had a decent little backstory, and the choice he makes at the end was really neat, and mm -hmm. I liked it. And it would have been really cool to see what his actions would have been in a proper Deadpool sequel to Deadpool 2, because he's stranding him himself in this timeline, securing the idea that he has, you know, he, he saved his, you know, loved ones in the future by what he does, but he still wants to make sure that the world doesn't go to shit, and he's got his new pals now, and... Then he disappears forever, and we have no idea what happens, and that's that. So that sucks, balls. Yep. And the thing thing about those characters is that they're written sort of they're particularly created to uh, be sort of harmonious with Deadpool. Like they're built around Deadpool to play off of his dynamic, but these characters are just yeah. shoved in there, and in hopes that it j they will work out somehow. And it just do doesn't. It clashes with the entire persona of Deadpool. That's why those characters in the last two movies were so, like, fun. Because they were built with Deadpool in mind and, you know, their dynamics in mind. No, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It, uh, the, the way that it feels as though they had slots for characters to be able to be there and they didn't even know who they were an hour before the film was completed. Like, it's gonna be Blade. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, sweet, that's one of the ones we wanted. It's gonna be Gambit. All right. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll take him. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be Electra. Right. Then they're like, Electra? From da Electra. Daredevil? They're like, no, she had her own movie. You're like, right. No, oh, Electra right. from Electra. Yes. I know that one. Mm. And something so grand, so overstuffed in scale, desperately trying to maintain some semblance of that soul. The action was better back then, don't let Wolverine's mask fool ya. Both Wade and Logan have been in plenty of movies that have a far better grasp on how R-rated violence should feel. Have far more thought out true. practical- I agree with all of this. I mean, yeah, yes, true. but this I is all just agree. true, yeah. I was I uh, genuinely baffled to see people say, yeah, this is the first time we got to see, like, Wolverine be Wolverine. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do we not remember in X-Men 2, that fight scene in the mansion? That was crazy. He was screaming, he was slashing. Yeah, I don't know how else to describe people. it his iconic roaring. That's that's how he does yeah. it. Everyone knows the sound. And then of course, yeah, it's, uh, this action scene has way more creativity and imagination in it than uh, anything in Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, absolutely. Arguably and peak Deadpool content. Pretty much. I, I love this action scene, and I love that it's reflective of how they had no money. <laughs> I find that very entertaining. It's a guy shooting guys on a bridge and then punching them in the car. Something and it's somehow better than all the... And it's so, so much better than that monstrosity at the end of Deadpool Wolverine 3. Well, this this feels like, uh, you know, attention to detail, right? It's like, yeah, he, he only has 12 bullets because he can't carry around a whole bunch of extra magazines. And also, the bullet holes are permanent when he gets shot. There are lots of times where they will add bullet holes into the costume because, of course, you would, right? It's taking damage. Yeah. Dude, it was so refreshing to see that scene for the first time because it was like around the time they were setting up like Infinity thing in the Marvel. And it was so like 
It was leaning towards that slapstick comedy route, and Deadpool was just so... such a refreshing thing to, thing to see at the time. Really fun. Yeah. Choreography that allows yeah, the moments the of days. violence of slicing, maiming, and murdering to feel grounded and gruesome. Deadpool and Wolverine, outside of a few genuinely well-executed moments, contains the car fight and the choreography of the opening fight. Like, there's there's still things to say. It's not like a worthless set of fights well, or anything. It's just that. Well, it's not like some other Marvel sludge well, in that uh, regard. Part of it is kind of what Hightop was getting on there with the once he puts the cowl on, it'll like make people probably be in favor of the fight anyway. Um, the fucking side street one. Like, I just, I just don't know how long it's going to be before people will be willing to hear out uh, how nonsense that whole thing is, and how not, not particularly satisfying it is to just watch them mince through them as if they're nothing. Uh, well, especially when it's like, mm -hmm. they should be getting up real quick. They are Deadpools. Yeah, like, there's still value to behold in terms of, I suppose, the sequence of events, and there's some funny ways that people are killing people, I suppose. It's just that, um... I don't know, like, once the cowl comes on, the music comes on, everyone's just like, that fucking scene is, is 11 out of 10 best action ever. And you're like, oh, all right, I guess. Mm. Including the jump better. out of the bus. That was really cool. The CGI Ooh. was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> really, really uh, great. I'm, I'm often the one that says, that you can't have... like, oh, there's, there's the reason that they did that. It could be this, could be this, could be this. But that's one of the ones where I've just, I'm just how did the editor not cut the fuck away? Why did we not cut that down? I just don't down? know why... Why can't you get that? Mm -hmm. What's it called? The sugar glass or whatever, and then have the actors jump through it. Like, was that used to be a normal, everyday movie? Which thing, feels like it'd be much quicker, much cheaper, and much more effective. You know what I mean? Like, even well, with yeah, a stunt double, he's real. got the cowl on. But Paying stunt men expensive. Understand. Yeah, but not this, not as expensive as putting like ten CG artists on that one scene on crunch time to get it out the following day. You know what I mean? Like that that shit costs. That racks yeah, I up. never said these people were smart. <laughs> no, I know that. I just. Damn, that 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 part was so hideous. The uh, the CG Wolverine. Yeah, it looked terrible. It was distractingly bad, and I was already distracted by the terrible quality of the movie. Well, and, and as I been mentioned, remember when we watched uh, Dalmatians, the the one from the nineties, and they had yes. like real Dalmatians yes. throughout the whole movie that were like mm -hmm. trained and they did all sorts of stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Look at that <laughs> real dog doing some really cool stuff. Who was actually trained and did stuff, and they had trainers off screen, and like that was great. I never once, I never once a single time questioned anything in that movie. No, of course, everything <laughs> makes like, complete sense. I was like, oh look, sense. they're real, they're real dogs. They use raccoon puppets for a few moments because I don't think you can get them to drive a vehicle. But I'll let that one slide a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I just picture Rags going back in time to watch that with his family in the nineties, like that nineties version, and then <laughs> being like, "Appreciate it now. It's all gonna be CG goo in the future. Everything will be CG. <laughs> Every last dog you see, it'll be CG goo. Appreciate well, it." When we were watching, when we were watching Echo, uh, they had a uh, what's his name, uh, the the postal service guy with the truck. Uh, I forget his name, but he had a dog, and we were constantly being like, "Oh shit!" Like, "Wow!" They they act. The dog didn't do anything; it just kind of stood around. But we were kind of <laughs> still shocked that they used an actual dog. That they just filmed him with a dog because it's distracting <laughs> now. That because they're so used to cheaping out. Or I say cheaping out, but it wouldn't be cheaping out. It just wow, real animals. Remember when they used to just do things to make films instead of passing it to all of the mm -hmm. slaves in the CGI dungeon? For the rations and gruel. It's action scenes filmed with the tangibility of a half sketch cartoon you drew when you were 12. The ideas are there. A long tracking shot where a fully costumed duo kills 100 Deadpools in a cathartic bloodbath. But the level of digital plastic porcelain coating on top ruined any sense of reality or grandiosity that that moment needed to have. Oh man, the way that he says all of this. <laughs> Yeah. Dude. Grand grandiosity. grandiosity. That's a. Uh... Mm. Can he just talk like a normal fucking person? No, you found no, him on the side of the street, bleeding person. out. He'd been mugged. He was stabbed, and he's trying to explain something to you, real important. And this, this is when he's talking. He'll put on a thing. Batman mask <laughs> and hop in a dumpster for an ad for his YouTube video. We're not in normal territory. <laughs> no, we're far away. <laughs> could, he, could he not think of the word grandeur and so he use grandiosity instead? <laughs> Why well, not? Grandiosity is three, three more syllables, so, okay. I mean, rack them up.
Hugh finally dons a mask, white expressive eyes that move. Yet, I'm finding myself wishing I could see any number of the animal-like expressions I know he's conveying um, underneath. I don't know why we would argue that you can't have Wolverine be expressive, even in this specific way with the mask on. What's the point of making this point? I'm not sure what the goal is here. Um, the yeah, that's actually where I was at. Point. I was like, why is... So he's saying he wants the mask gone because he wants to see more expressions from... Uh, Hugh Jackman, but I mean, the mask doesn't impede expression necessarily. It would be how they, how they do it. How they do it, exactly. Mm -hmm. How it's designed. Neath that heavily polished CG cow. Oh, shit. The writing was... Text. Wait, yeah, what was all that? Actually? What was it supposed to say? I know there was a practical oh, one used it. on set, but you cannot tell me that there isn't a layer of digital polish akin to most modern Marvel costumes. This is proof that Batman should never have white expressive eyes. An actor's raw oh. expression will always be more effective. Wolverine is not Deadpool. His eyes do not need to articulate. He's not a cartoon. Wow. Man, I don't know why he said all that when he could have just said, yeah, it looks like there's some weird visual effects thing that they're doing on their masks that makes it look weird. Yeah, you could... Rather than... That's an argument for sure. This is proof that Batman can't have the white expressive eyes. Um, his, the eyes do not need to articulate because he's not a cartoon. We, like, um, you don't need to throw in all these other weird yeah. arguments. Because we talked about this oh. with our coverage, that something did seem up with the cowl. Like, it didn't seem like it was fully there. Uh, it did instead seem mm -hmm. that they were doing something with CG, if not fully. Um, CG. Uh, he's got... I just want to say... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead. No, sorry, I didn't know you were still going. No, no, I, I thought I was about to read more, but this is the same subtitles, I think, anyway. Or oh. Text. Okay, so what I was going to say is, I really hate this text. It is hard to read. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want me to read the text in your video, or do you not? I, I really yeah, don't like you, the red, yellow... Here, you gave me... Like, the horror I show of that. I think he's doing... To match the Deadpool he's doing the... thing. Yeah. Go ahead. But it's also that it's bolded where... and really small. You gotta commit. <laughs> One you gotta get in there. One of you needs to commit. Not, 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 not to commit. commit. Do it. Go, go, go. Um, I think he's doing that thing. Uh, he's making the text like the color of Deadpool red. And yeah, the yeah, shadow yeah. Is, it's like, definitely yellow. Deadpool and Wolverine. It's and just, that's, like, it's just ugly as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Why? It should be the other way around. I don't know about that. I don't know for sure. Well, this is funny enough. And it's got a, it's got double shadows too. I get well, it's got like the drop McDonald's shadow on the. <laughs> you know the um, it's got double McDonald's. shadow. Yeah, you know the intro colors for the boogie sections in the two main videos I made. The, they're all McDonald's colors. Was the idea? They look like this. <laughs> it's supposed to look ugly and gross. They should have been Mountain Dew colors. <laughs> it's just funny. Part of it is because the text itself is bold, and that's like really making the letters chonky. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate it. It looks the way. This video sounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Be cow. The writing was better back then, too. Don't let one monologue about being an X Men trick you. Both Wade's first two souls. But, okay, but you can ex you can give an argument for that. You can talk about why is it that the monologue about being an X-Man doesn't work as well as something in the prior movies. There's, there's easy comparisons to make, because I agree, but I don't know that it's worthwhile to say in the video, it's worse. Moving on. You know, it's like, well, well, wait, why? Talk about it. Why is it that when he does that speech, it doesn't mean much? And it's like, well, because what has changed since before he felt that to after he felt it? Well, X-23 told him that he can be a good man. Which was never in doubt, I don't think, necessarily. Like, the, the his motivation to help them in this fight was never really uh, fully in it for him once he found out that there's no real guarantee he can actually save his own universe. He feels like it's all for naught and that he's a, a bad person. Why would someone he doesn't know telling him that he can be good change any of that? Even if she's referring to an alternate universe version of him, which he's been he's apparently been told is the best one, the anchor being of, of his respective universe. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't feel that there was enough done in any way, shape, or form to earn that speech from him, even though it's really well acted and somewhat well written. You could You could pluck it and put it in a movie that's much better, and then you can compare it with some of the speeches that he gives in Logan about trying to be the man that, uh, you know, in relation to what happened with the X-Men or something, or, or anything in, um, I was going to say, like, 
I'm trying to think, is this, is this stuff in The Wolverine that's on that level? I haven't seen that film in ages. I don't think anyone has. <laughs> it ain't going to be X-Men Origins Wolverine for a comparison speech. <laughs> maybe X-Men 1. I don't know. We'd have to check. X-Men 3, maybe. There's, there's going to be something that you can uh, grab from somewhere. To... What I'm trying to say is just, if you want to convince anybody that it's a meaningless speech or a worse off one, you're going to have to give us something for why. Don't just say it. Otherwise, we don't know what you're talking about. Solo films and most of Logan's X-Men films had a story and growth for the characters that did not feel the need to recycle and condense character arcs into a multiverse movie. Some people have said that this film, at least compared to the horrendously cynical lows of The Flash, at least cares about the cameos, which are more like some- Hmm... Cares? What does everyone think about this? Mm, yeah, no. <laughs> no. no. Mm. I mean, it's funny when you've got the image of Johnny on screen. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> boy. About what happened to him. I don't know if I... I don't know. They're both pretty cynical. Cares. It's like... It's like... <laughs> the thing is, couldn't someone just say, like, the Flash clearly cared because it had them all in their respective worlds. And, you know, something crap. I don't. Know. I don't know that they cared yeah. that much for either. We're in a world. We're in a universe where I guess our own, the MCU, where it just doesn't doesn't matter if you're in your own world or not. They don't care. They'll ruin you no matter where you are. I don't give a shit. Supporting roles here. Some have said that it uses the multiverse to pay respect to what built Marvel, to all the movies and memories that made us Marvel for the first time. So much heart underneath the black leather, soon to be or already movie stars playing the first big screen versions of the characters that comic readers could only dream of being seen adapted. Deadpool and Wolverine is a love letter to the early days of superhero cinema. Problem is, it's a poorly written one. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure? I, I'm not sure if I would call it a poorly written love letter because I don't know that it's a love letter at love all. Love letter? Yeah, it, but yeah. How is it a love letter to anything? I mean, there's a couple of moments where people kind of point out to like Blade's comment where he says there's only ever been one Blade, only ever will be, and stuff like that. There's a, no, a good chunk of people have seen that as a type of paying respect to the, the early. Biggest um, example I would give are the credits. And that's not a joke. Yes. The, uh, yes. That feels like a love letter for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, too much of the movie is, you know, like if if someone said Alien Romulus is a love letter to Alien as a franchise, I'd be like, um, oh no. <laughs> oh, I would, I would hang them. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Because the thing is, they it certainly doesn't pay respect to all the cameos like they did with Blade. Johnny Storm's character got his skin ripped off and mutilated and murdered in front of everyone, you know. And so, was that paying respect? I would say no, not for that one. Sabretooth, no. Juggernaut, no. Elektra, like, neutral? You know? I mean, it there. was a pretty low bar with Elektra. Well, but, like, what? what is the what is the bar? of Like, like she was... What is it to res to be a love letter to Electra? Have Jennifer Garner oh, exactly. say hi. I'm Jennifer Garner's Electra. Yeah, <laughs> the acknowledgement that Electra as a character existed in a past film. You remember her, right? It's like, ah, oh, respect. And then Gambit was that a love letter, or was that something else? <laughs> was, was it more of a lol? Good thing we never did this, right? I wonder. Uh, it could be that take. A lot of people kind of because that was one of the possibilities of Gambit, was it? Because Shadding Tatum was well, yeah, I mean, a potential cast. If you remember, Gary's takeaway was he loved it, but he also loved that it was proof that that was a bad idea. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, okay, so I guess that's like a something. And then who else we got? Fucking Azazel. Um, Lady Deathstrike we saw was Toad for them. three seconds. Yeah, Toad was there. Pyro! That was it was he great? Yeah. All right, anyway, so is, Blade, is Blade the only one that gets respect? Then? I think so. It is more well, because that was that's the edgiest line in the whole movie. The one where it, like almost if if I'm not misunderstanding it is making fun of the like horrific process of them trying to make another Blade. I hope that's I, what it I is. I don't know how. I I don't know how I feel about that, considering we're told that 
uh, Blade's universe got destroyed and he didn't even have a chance to fight for it. Like, that... That sucks. Yeah, no, you're not wrong about that. Well... <laughs> That's Star Wars Girl says in the chat, Henry was the best cameo hands down. We know why you think that, Star yeah. Wars Girl, Adam. We know why you think that. <laughs> Bias. I'm inclined to agree, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I suppose that's funny. What would everyone pick? What is the best cameo? It's like, um, I guess I would pick Blade for that line. I but kind of agree. Yeah. Because it's actually, that'll be what you said about it. It's, it's, it kind of comes across as actually something that might belong in a different Deadpool. Well, I, I, you know, I hadn't thought of what Kratos has just said. It's like, it does feel a little bit undercut by the fact that this universe just announced that the Blade universe got fucking erased. Like, hmm. Yeah, everything yeah. he did was for nothing. And remember, they don't have to. They didn't have to erase it. He could have just said he was taken from it and he wants to get back. So. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> the film gestures at being the multiverse movie that has a soul, that honors and respects what's come before. Yet, within the first four minutes of Chris Evans' human torch showing back up, the film has him flame off, fall, and hurt his balls. Ten minutes later, Johnny gets skinned alive before falling into a Scooby-Doo puddle of blood. The joke is that if any one of the Resistance, if any one of the Fox characters should have had the most screen time in the movie, it's Johnny. He's the one character that the casual audience audience member probably has the fondest memories of. Really? Is that true? Um, um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, no, I found I the character I more annoying in the Fantastic I feel like Blade World. outclasses him, especially Blade, Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Oh, by far. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's highly subjective. Like, depends I agree. On what to, yeah. But broadly, if you were to ask me to bet on it, out of all the ones we saw, I'd go with Blade, probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the big wigs were too worried about having him play Johnny for too long that it might take away from their inevitable scheme to bring back Steve Rogers. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. No. And like, fuck yeah, Wesley Snipes is back. Who would have thought that would ever happen? But he's back to ruin the joy of some, some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up Bill. Yeah, it was cringe as fuck. Uh, there's an art to oh. reusing and referencing lines. Uh, some of it's really hard to explain, but... Just having Blade go swish, swish, swish with his with his blade, and then go in. Some motherfuckers are still trying to ice skate uphill. It's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. dude, imagine that—the one-two punch of having that, and then having to get away from her, you, you, you bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Alien Romulus did that so well. He said, he said it like he was about to look at the director off screen and go, can, can I say that? Can I, I say is, that? Is that we, are we allowed? Yeah. Canonically, Am I allowed? Canonically, before Ripley did, about 20, 30 years it's before done. she did. Anyone out there who shows people the Alien franchise in chronological order is a fucking, you're a Satan. You have to sit through Prometheus and Alien Covenant before you get to Alien. And then you gotta and watch you Romulus. Got Romulus breaking it up between getting back to Aliens. Christ. Now that's something I want to do to someone. No. Just cruel. He pulls the classic multiversal movie move. We have no idea what to make him say, so he will just say what he did 20 years ago. The power of the sun and the power hey. of the hand. Whoa, well, wait, wait, hang on. Hey. These hey. characters got no. treated well. <laughs> like, they, they were actually I mean, given yeah, something. Like, I like how he plays the first one when it feels like you have to play the last time that he says it, when his line gets completed by good old Tobey Maguire, Peter, and then they reunite. Yeah, and the Doc Ock is, and both uh, Norman Osborn and Doc Ock are both treated like characters. Their characteristics are based on what we knew of them before. They have a dynamic role yeah. in the story. They don't just Remember. appear, go, ooh, and then leave. Well, I mean, they're in the whole movie. Like, they're the main villains of the movie. Green Goblin has well, and the, people, the main antagonist of the film. People fight to this day about whether or not the performance from Willem Dafoe is better in No Way Home or Spider Man 1. I mean, that Oh, there's some good like strong enough to have it all. Don't wait to take it. He's I fucking loving it, and he's awesome in it. And tackling as he's getting punched in the face—it's amazing. Now I'm and of willing. Course, really, uh, 
yeah. to admit it's there's like a cynical element and the, the, there's ways to fuck these lines up. I just think it's unfair to make these comparisons if you're going to at least give the character... Like, what did Blade have other than that line where well, he did some attacking of people? Well, I, I mean, not on, I mean, it's the reality is that like Blade's inclusion kind of doesn't make sense. The idea of like, ah, oh, yeah, he's like this weirdo outcast. It's like, what are you talking about? Blade kind of like made yeah. modern superhero films. Blade and X Men. I think he would have deserved Spider-Man. wipe out. For, no, if, if anyone loves Elektra, wipe out Elektra and uh, Gambit. Give Blade the full screen time and have him talk about his universe have him talk about his fucking yeah. his relationship to this universe and his experience why why did we do the movie the way that we did like why did we make all these choices <laughs> i don't know i don't get it i don't but why couldn't hey, he be a character in the movie up. have you seen like he's, he's starting up a campaign of being like wesley snipes should be able to play blade in like an old man blade movie and it's like, you had the chance to do whatever you wanted with him and instead you made him fucking blurt yeah. out lines from the older movies and then obviously make the one meta reference that i do appreciate but still that's it. You could have done so much yeah, more. It's, it's because the audience is supposed to clap like a seal whenever a character does that. But like, you can make them clap for real, <laughs> not just like a seal. Oh, you yeah, can make yeah. Them for real. Uh, I mean, as case in point, right? With the No Way Home, it's it's the reason why it's such a it's fascinating to see him like put them in the same category when they're obviously not the same. These characters were characters. I mean, I'm willing to entertain plenty of criticisms for how they approached it, but I don't think we could ever compare what they did with Norman Osborn's Green Goblin, Willem Dafoe, directly with someone like Jennifer Garner's Electra, who'd be like... I, 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 don't, I just don't see how that could possibly be the case. Like, there, there's no... He's the main antagonist of this film. Like, the the fight with uh, with Peter that then gets stopped by Peter, it's like, god damn. Oh, yeah, he kills Aunt May. That's He's got a pretty good. impactful position in the plot, too. Um... And for yeah, a point, right? Like, yeah, exactly. As well as the obviously the desire, right, of like trying to save all of the villains. It's like, hey, that's like a Spider-Man thing to do to try and save all of the villains, give them another chance, and to have that to be and then the... have conversations with each other. I don't know. Yeah, like because that's really all it's about is having conversations with each other. It's it's good to see them talk to each other about their values, where they come from, where they're going. Um, and that and to come in and help each other. Whereas here, the help is well, yeah, they're here to, to fight the bad guys so that Deadpool and Wolverine can go talk to our uh, what's her name. That's like the role they serve, rather than having their own specific character payoffs that are meaningful. You know, like uh, Andrew Garfield saving MJ, for instance, or you know, um, Toby Maguire saving Green Goblin. These are like actual character payoffs. Yeah, and even if you just had one, they would outclass what we get for. Yeah. You know, the majority of what we're supposed to be criticizing here, which is like the soulless key jangles that we get in so much shit now. Because mm. he's, it's like, I agreed with him broadly. It's just that the examples he's using, I assume it's because he's, he's very mad about No Way Home. I understand it, okay? I get it. Because he didn't want anyone touching Sam Raimi shit without Sam Raimi being involved, I think, directly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, just, just touching old stuff in general. We, we generally understand and agree with that. It's just that uh, if you think about, you know, um, like what they're doing in Star Wars and then. MOM, I feel like, is the best for, for, for grabbing examples. And then, of course, The Flash, yeah. But I don't know exactly w- if he's willing to grab broadly or specifically here, just for the MCU. I don't know. Myself. In Spider-Man. Come, Come out to play. Oh, my back. No, I... What? Hang on. No, he's got back, back issues. That... There's no way. Really... Like, why wouldn't he? The back, was... <laughs> the back one was honoring it. He has back issues. He is Spider-Man. He's probably got back issues. And it gives us that, hey, like, you know, um, Andrew uh, Garfield can help him out with his back problem. It's it's good. And they have a little bond. Yeah, he's you know, they it's like stretching before a fight and his back. Sequence in the whole movie. I think it's so. really it's one of the best funny. ones, yeah. It's really charming, because it's it, just three Spider-Man getting to talk about unique Spider-Man problems, well, and, which they've never been able to do before. And now he's got an example that I think is actually perfect, where it's the, you wanna get yeah, nuts? Yeah. Let's get, like, what he gets, What the, the new context for that one makes no sense at all. <laughs> you wanna get nuts? Like, why is he saying you wanna get oh. nuts here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you wanna get this, nuts? This, Let's get nuts. This, this is the worst one. This is the worst one. I fucking one. hated this shit. <laughs> it was <nuts>. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is painful. Come on! Let's get nuts. Oh, dude, yeah. the delivery is. <laughs> didn't give a shit at all. So great. <laughs> <laughs> the, the original, though, was so great. Yeah, well, so yeah. I love it. 
He's back to spin in a circle while the camera has no idea where to go and looks... Note this is Blade 3 edited to look like what Blade does in the film. Um, I mean, it definitely doesn't have... Because that opening fight scene in Blade in the uh, in the club... God damn, that's oh, so Oh yeah, that's cool. top tier. It's so oh, cool. it's so good yeah. when he does the big flip to get into the middle and he's fighting all the vampires and then he throws his uh, like throwing star and it gets all of them. It is oh. called... They call it his glaive, even though it's not what a real glaive is, but yeah, it's a glaive. I did a video on it. <laughs> well, <I tested> it. <laughs> listen, he has, he has possibly the best film fist pump in all of, all of everything. Yes. In that moment. <laughs> so much so less good. iconic and grand than he did back. Uh, look at it. Just, just a freeze frame. It's, it's like... so stylish. Yeah. Uh... The part when he's uh, fighting at the end of the film and he beats the he beats him up with his fists and then he grabs his little sword and does the spin and then jams it into the ground and twists it as they're all disintegrating behind him. Dude, it's so good. And the music as well. It's like perfect. Gets you hyped. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing watching him turn I up i don't even like he's just there in deadpool wolverine yeah. it's, it's not anything special it's not anything meaningful he's just there and not only the first r-rated marvel movie but yeah, yes <laughs> <laughs> he's so proud of himself yes <laughs> the first marvel movie what is that fuck you it's a joke huh the fuck is wrong with you you think this is a joke you think this is a fucking sitcom I can't do this. Jennifer Gardner is here to do the same, except at least she gets a meaningful speech about wanting to have an actual ending. Problem meaningful? is, meaningful? is it? Is it? <laughs> meaningful? What? I mean, I, I don't understand. Yeah. From her Who's POV, the words <laughs> mean things. What does she th think is happening in the universe, right? Like, she's there and she's trying to survive in this horrible place where she was sent for reasons she can't possibly understand, right? The whole mechanics of the TVA and everything. And then these two just turned up and she's like, oh, it's time to have a fight to get my head dig. What do you, what does she mean well, in just, universe? What is she talking about? The idea of, the unifying idea of an ending, even in a meta sense, like this is, like the idea that Laura doesn't get an ending. I mean, this is her ending in this movie. This is the ending. It's the idea of like a hopeful, potentially a hopeful future that's been ensured by Logan. So that's, that's already that. Blade I mean, in terms of getting an ending. It's like, I mean, he got a whole trilogy. Blade yeah, Trinity was not good. <laughs> But yeah, like, he got he got he his full an attempt. Yeah. Gambit didn't have a beginning, so what's the point of an ending? He never even got a chance. I think they even have <laughs> like, lines if... that clunkily address that. It's like time to get an ending. And he says time to, even if you didn't have a beginning or, or some. <laughs> he's like he says some weird. He has to keep ha catching up. Do you remember when they say like all the lives we saved? He's like all wanted to save because because they can't <laughs> they can't include Gambit into the whole idea. He doesn't. He's not even. Remember they say like oh they destroyed my yeah. university. He's like yeah I think I was born here. Because like, he just, you know what right. I mean? Like, it's so fucking cluggy. He pointed out, Chad, he wants to make a name for himself. That's what his story is about. And this and is continuing. He doesn't succeed, I guess. Oh, he does. He's got a meme. That's something. Yeah. Oh, so well, yeah. It's, it's more than most people yeah. get. Well, I suppose. I'm about to make a name for myself here. Like, that's, that's basically a meme. That's probably going <laughs> to stick around for a little while. Yeah, that's not a bad one. To be I don't the know multi why, but I think about him, I just keep laughing because his accent's funny. First problem, these characters- He is- he is a situational disability. Oh no. Too harshly. <laughs> actors don't really feel like they did in their own films. Jens Electra would never uh, say, eh, it's fine, about Matt dying. She's only saying it because you and I know that her and Ben Affleck had a very public divorce. Her defining character trait, maybe her only character trait in the Fox films was her love of Ben's Matt and her tragic death that tore them apart. Just because we know the meta joke that exists outside of her narrative and Wade also knows does not mean that she should know. I'm inclined to agree with him. Uh, Deadpool's yeah. meta fourth wall shit bleeds into a couple of people in the film when it shouldn't be. That's not supposed to be how it works. Uh, including as well jokes that Deadpool would make that other characters shouldn't be but do. Um, the, the main one I was going for was like Cassandra Nova makes like several random hypersexualized jokes that feel like Deadpool's jokes but she just got them. Uh, and then, yeah, meta jokes and understanding. I, you know, I agree with this point. Uh, if you're going to respect Electra, as he, I think he said mockingly, which is kind of funny, that her almost only trait is how much she loved Dead Daredevil, and that she doesn't give a shit about him in the in this movie for a meta joke. So yeah, I think that's true. Undermines.
Deadpool can make the joke, she can't, otherwise the whole thing feels like a joke. Why'd you have to say it like this? <laughs> With the yeah, so like, she can't because it's out of character. Yeah, why'd you have to go like, it it Because if someone says the whole thing, if you said the whole thing's like a joke, someone would say, yeah, and that's Deadpool and Wolverine, and that's why I like it, the whole thing's like a meme. Mm. It's Deadpool, what'd you expect? And it kind of is though, right? I mean, like, we're supposed to believe with the utmost sincerity that these fictional characters dying, their universes getting destroyed, is all a part of some cosmic plan. We must protect the sacred timeline, the glorious MCU, the storytellers who actually had to try to make anybody think superheroes are cool. All their work was in whoa. service. Okay, whoa. Hey, hold, on, hold on, Iron Man had to work. <laughs> yeah, Iron Man had to work his ass off. That was a nightmare production. Said. As well. That was not a guaranteed like success. Yeah, yeah you can argue phase one was rocky and they, they had to work oh, pretty God. fucking hard. Like the idea that I you know the all the risks were taken by everyone well. else. I'm all for appreciating for like who came that. before, but let's let's chill out on just shitting on everything in the earlier phases, damn. I would absolutely agree that this is much more applicable to the later stages of the MCU, that they basically knew that they could succeed no matter what. And then they didn't. Uh, they didn't have <laughs> you know, well, and then they didn't, yes, that's right. But right at the beginning, like, you know, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and Incredible Hulk are not similar movies. They're just not. Very different. They've got different styles, different tones, different oh, yeah. like, overarching yeah. In chat, so, some of those weren't great. To be fair, I'm not talking about how good the movies are. I'm talking about the efforts behind them and the work they did to try and legitimize superhero films. You know, the, just because yeah. they came after these doesn't mean they're still not working their ass off to, you know, get superhero movies to a certain place. Because yeah, so, these films did have to prove themselves in a very. Yeah. Under, I mean, particularly the first X Men. Goddamn, like yeah, that was very uh, tumultuous times. But I mean, there were still plenty of movies that came along much later. Creating the MCU? Are you fucking serious? Like, no, really, think about it. Deadpool and Miss Logan are allowed to keep their world. The money makers are allowed to live, to not get recast or rebooted just yet. Because the TVA, the mouse, knew they had and will always have money making potential. Sure, Vanessa will be slowly written out. Wait, I'm sure he is. Yeah, yeah she's, she's gone. gone. She's mm -hmm. out of here. Aid will continue to be more and more neutered and marketable. Soon, all his grungy, messy supporting cast members will be relegated to one scene cameos in service of whatever team. I like you show Cable as if he got anything. <laughs> one like... cameo, yeah. he got nothing. He got nothing. He was just not present when he should be the most invested in being present. Should have been Deadpool and Cable and Wolverine. That's what it should have been. been all three, the three of those guys. Uh, well, really, it should have been Deadpool and Colossus and Cable and Wolverine. All Maybe let's just not have Wolverine. <laughs> but nobody's going <laughs> to fucking yeah, go I mean, for that, so yeah. yeah. Team up, the focus group can test. But it's all a part of the plan. It's all for a reason. This multiverse story, this one has heart. It's all about the heart. We knew that you were lacking the heart. Here's the heart. This is a love letter to those older movies. A love letter where the supporting characters die and are eaten by a giant purple plot cloud off screen. But supposedly, where was this energy for MOM? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> that was, remember the, what happened to I the fucking Illuminati? Well, he had the just, good vibes in the Raimi and everything, so shot. he was able to it look had, past it. He had, had some better shot, that's why. Because I'm pretty sure he argued shot. the hell out of the fact that M.O.M. had heart. It's like, no it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. He possibly brought know. back to life by the corporate entity that dictates everything off screen. A love letter where these heroes are stripped of their aesthetic, the vibes of their individual films and characters in service of becoming one with the aptly named Void. You can fight the Void all you want, but in the end you will be forced and stripped of all your personality, your color, your character in service of a mass appealing, natural, ugly, vacant, ever consuming gray yeah fair yeah i mean you know i <laughs> wish you had this passion for all the things that were this but you know what i'll maybe we should just take what we can get i do not like because i mean he's just on point here like dragging all of these vibrant alternate worlds and crushing them all it's like uh funko pops or Fortnite, right it's like there you yeah, go yeah. you're in <laughs> yeah yeah
The final punchline being the credits montage. A genuinely, no joke, great compilation of clips and behind- I found it rough to watch that because I was like, this doesn't deserve to be here. <laughs> this, this shouldn't be in this movie. It's not fair. Get it out of here. Behind the scenes moments from over 20 years of blockbuster filmmaking filled with characters that would actually make this movie far. This, oh, is this copyright shit? What's going on here? I don't know, but it's very distracting. Yeah. <laughs> or more meaningful a Fox send-off if they were actually in the film. Instead, Channing Tatum Gambit and Johnny Storm saying cock. It's you know, yeah, he's right. Loud. A lot of people in those, uh, th that sequence at the end, they didn't even get asked to come back. Yeah, that's a bit awkward, yeah. isn't it? Right? Wasn't mm. it Halle Berry said mm -hmm. she didn't get asked? Like, they just never heard anything? Curious. It's fun, sure. I laughed. They're great as always. Great actors, you know, fuck. But wouldn't those 20 lines of dialogue be better utilized for some kind of emotional catharsis for Logan? For the audience? If they used any member of the original X-Men? Yeah, it is kind of weird that we yeah. don't get a lot of these actors, to be honest with you. Instead, we get fucking Channing Tatum Gambit. Is like, okay. You'd probably mm -hmm. imagine that they would have said yes if they got I asked. think Halle Berry would, especially under the context of this is the end for your storm. This is the last time she'll be seen. Yeah. Hell, cut Laura all together and bring back Anna Paquin Rogue or Famke Jansen Jean Grey. That would make yeah. more sense. Yeah, that would, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, it would. You ain't wrong, folks. Have them be the one to appear and assure Logan that there's still good in him. That works not only as a cool fan service moment, but as a send off to these characters we haven't seen in a long time, and does not in any way step on the emotional beats of James Mangold's film. But the greatest gag of all being that the images, the shots in that montage were the most visually exciting frames in the movie. True. Or well, maybe yeah. I'm just being mean at this point. <laughs> no, no, it's true. no, it's an yeah, ugly there's, movie. There's, there's a lot of yeah. cool shots in the other X Men films, like across the board. This was visually so boring. I don't, yeah. I don't remember a shot from it. Yeah, just stagnant wide shots as usual. Mm -hmm. And void. I, and void. Lots of void. I say this every video. <laughs> I know you're sick of hearing me say this, and I don't want to beat a dead horse more than I already. Just, just say it, buddy. Just say it. Yeah, just say it. You can just say, say it. We believe in you. Look, we had to suffer through like I... 20 minutes of preamble for you to say the things. Just say the things. Man, I just, whatever you say, it is not going to be nearly as profound as you think it is. So just say just it and say it, it both the time. We have, but these things, even when they were genuinely nonsensical in terms of narrative, motherfucker, actually used to look. Okay, here's a here's a fun mm -hmm. editing uh, trip and tick from Rags the Doggo. Ooh. All right, so. When you want people to pay attention to the words that you're saying, don't have faintly understandable lyrics of a song playing in the background because people's brains, they're like, oh shit, which of these two voices do I need, do, do I need to be listening to? Because the, the lyrics and the music, you can clearly, like I could focus on them and hear what the lady's saying, but you're also talking. I have two voices well, right. that are being also projected had a clip at me. In there. The he's talking, then audio that comes from a clip in there, and then the backing track is voice. I go because you're right. A I'm, voice. Um, the thing for me is I'm trying to tune her out so I can properly listen to him, I know. which isn't supposed. But by tuning her out, you have to kind of like you you have yeah. to focus on his voice because if you try to tune her out, now you're thinking about her and she's saying words, and your brain is subconsciously <laughs> like, "Hey, those words have meanings." And well, like, I was going to say, brain. if I'm successful, that I have tuned her out and I'm ignoring her, that completely defeats the point of her even being there. You know what I mean? Like, he's supposed to have a, a complimentary track, not a one that I'm trying to avoid being there at all. Yeah, at least with Awe Maria, you're not like, oh, yeah, Dominus mm. taking a bit of Fructus Fructus Ventri U2 Iesu. So, yeah, I know what that means. Of course, the Latin phrase. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Mary, Latin, yeah. Like, no, it's like, but no. This woman's speaking English. That's my <laughs> language, baby. <laughs> I know that one. It's... It, it's really causing me to fucking drift and just not take anything in. It's been a tough. I don't it's been a tough ride. Why it had to be there. Rags, do you know the lyrics to Ave Maria? Well, yeah, it's just the, it's just the Hail Mary in Latin. Oh, okay. We learned, uh, we learned it in uh, Latin class, uh, class. Yeah, Ave Maria. Do you sing it like the Riddler? <laughs> oh, I forget how he sings it. 
beautifully. The, the Batman. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I'd have to. I. Oh, I remember you, when he's behind the glass. When even Batman is screaming at you, what have you done while bashing against the uh, the glass? Can you like keep telling that? Yeah. So that's that's that the that famous us? does he know scene. Yes, that's right. The famous yeah. does he know scene. Yeah. This is not how this is supposed to go. Slow <laughs> <laughs> down. Look, all right. It's it's interesting line delivery. Yes, yes, it <laughs> is truly. He's a the Riddler's a kooky. He's a he's a wacky guy. All right, dude. The Batman had so many good shots, though. God damn, that was a beautiful movie. Like, I mean, I would it, the lighting. It had oh, one of the best trailers I've ever seen. That's for sure, and a lot of really awesome shots. Uh, you are right. In the yeah, opening, like Fraser, Fraser. What was it? The opening, like five, ten minutes of that movie, is like some of the most peakest Batman content ever. Yeah. It's, yes. uh, it's kind of amazing. It's uh, yeah. it's so good. Oh, man. Anyway. High top. Back to high top. Bring it home, bud. Cool. In terms of narrative, motherfucker. Actually used to look like movies. Blade 1, 2, even fucking Trinity had better set design. Elektra had far better lighting. Daredevil is a straight banger. The original X Men movies, first class. Man, was a straight banger? Was Daredevil a straight banger? Uh, um, <laughs> it was 2000s. Let's yes, just say that. It was, it was very, very 2000s. 2000s. <laughs> Days of Future Past, the Wolverine, Logan, all had cinematography that actually said something. That used the visual language and absurdly large budget to do something. That scene's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Interesting, yeah, exciting, and of uh, I love the, these movies. It's I, a lot of them. <laughs> it's it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun to be had. Vocative with the camera. This is why the on-screen multiverse. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! There he <laughs> is. Scared. Oh, 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 the true Batman. There he is. Super <laughs> almost birthday boy. No. No. Did we deserve? I, I think this? I need to give it to him. This was a, a good contrasting clip oh, yeah. to pick. Uh, <laughs> um, drive his point home. Yeah. First I don't know though. I think the worst shot is that one where they get out of the Batmobile and, and the, when they're in the desert. You oh know, like, yeah. It's like them into the battle. That looks really bad. Horrific. Oh, God, the flag. That, that was a horrible movie. Damn. <laughs> yes, it was. That yes. was crap. So uncannily boring. Forcing a filmmaker like Sam Raimi. Huh, you thought I wasn't gonna mention him. Forcing his heightened individualized choices he took with his Spider-Man adaptations into John Watts' medium shot green screen Foggy owned rental home will never I, I am never uh, gonna yeah, do Sam Raimi has a better eye than whoever or John Watts plus whoever his cinematographer was, I guess. But the contempt really seeps through, doesn't it? Oh, well, I think that's fair. <laughs> I, 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 the thing about the Spider-Man films, the two thousands ones, they are kind of gorgeous. Um. Oh yeah. That, I mean, they look great. I guess it's just that I wish that the cool shots that are present in the new Spider-Man films got like some amount of attention. The Mysterio sequence is really cool. Well, visually. when um the J. Jonah Jameson one, right, where he's this raining in the city. That shot's fantastic. Yeah, that one's really cool. Homecoming's got a lot of cool shots as well. Ever feel right on a visual level, forcing Tim Burton's gothic noir Batman into a blue screen postmodern. Oh! <laughs> that is so bad! <laughs> Jesus! Uh... Oh. Why did you I don't do know it? What the deal was. Why did, I don't know why they put it in the desert. I don't understand. Why would they Because put it deserts in the are easy. It's like yeah. Deadpool yeah. Green. It it's just wow. flat and yeah. dull oh. and shitty, and you I hate it. Even need to be. You can have deserts. I mean, like the the Southwest in America, right, with all of the rugged Absolutely. terrain. Absolutely, like it's beautiful. Yeah, you can have Man. reddish deserts and all sorts of cool stuff. You can, have, I mean, Afghanistan and places like that in the Middle East are deserty, but they have like shrubs and greenery, and it's gorgeous and. The mesas and plateau. Ever been to Mesa Verde? It's a really cool place. A lot of cool stuff going on out there. The Grand Canyon? Oof. Gorgeous. Dude, this, this shot. Just, <laughs> what about shit? Yeah. Remember when Batman kills himself on his plane while we're right? I'm gonna take him down with me. It doesn't. 
It's like, okie dokie, man. My cockpit won't open. I guess I gotta die now. <laughs> oh, so awful. Desert wasteland will always look like shit. Deadpool and Wolverine continues this trend. Deadpool and Wolverine works best as a somewhat tender reminder of what- Turn the fucking music off, High Top. I swear. I know, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to do the thing where I'm trying to focus in on him, but this woman in my ear keeps telling me She's about yelling things. at me <laughs> she's giving me temporary <laughs> disabilities god stop was in an almost twi <laughs> yeah twisted bleak look at what is i know it sounds like i despise this movie and well <laughs> it's okay to admit that you despise it i guess yeah you do it's fine i Truly. don't like it either i don't this will get me even more shit but everything wow that do you know that shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, one, the one hp voice has been coming in and out the yeah. whole time oh, that, that one was extra <laughs> yeah. i don't this will get me even more shit but everything Ooh, did not yeah. work. Wait, what the <laughs> hell are you yeah. edging jesus christ <laughs> 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 shit 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 i don't think i've ever said shit with that inflection no no one has <laughs> this is a like first that. for humanity shit. on this show I don't. This will get me even more shit. <laughs> it sounds like he doesn't want someone to catch him swearing. Yeah. Shut up. Whispering into the microphone. Shut. No, mom, I was talking about the, the shed. The shed. Oh, the shed. shed. Yeah. But everything that did not work for me here worked ten times less for me in the likes of No Way Home or The Flash. If anything... Wait, the... what? Ten times... Does he mean it worked? And it, it worked it better help? than in either of those films, I think, is what he's saying. Is that what he's saying? I think he was so. saying it was ten times worse in both of those other movies. Than in Deadpool and Wolverine. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Yes. So he's saying Deadpool and Wolverine is a better bad execution. Like, like, like they're all three are bad, but this one comes out on top. I don't Oof. think... Does he think Whoa. he's going to convince his audience that he likes this film by saying that? Hmm. Like, he spent the whole... Why not just admit you don't like it? It's fine. Yeah. Just say it's shit. Like everyone else who thinks it's shit. <laughs> Just say the word. Don't say, shit. Best thing I can say about Deadpool and Wolverine is that what works is what always has. And it's right there in the title. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Even when the script can't figure out anything new to do with him. And Ryan Reynolds truly loves Deadpool in a way that will always make me want to see what Wade Wilson is up to. I don't mean to be mean. I never do. Ugh. Um. Are you stop How many times groveling, he said please? Honestly, meanness is fine sometimes. Just be a little mean, man. It's okay. You'll make it. Remember when you said you'd just rather kill yourself twice over than watch a Sean Levy movie? Like, you could just keep saying that. You don't have to don't feel like, I'm sorry to be mean. Dude, I guess what I'm trying to get across is that I am the target audience. I am the kid who grew up watching the Fox and Sony universes bring these guys to life. I am the kid who loved and still loves the early days of the MCU. I still love a lot of their newer movies. I still am deeply invested in some of their characters. Even if it's true and I do feel all those things, I can- Man. All those things. <laughs> <laughs> I deeply care. I am the target. Of he's crawled across the floor. He's been shot seventeen <laughs> times. He's just like no. Can I like help this... but feel the still ever-growing corporate cynicism that lurks behind these movies? Yeah, it's always been there from the very, very beginning. But they used to try to hide it better. Now it's out. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> this horrible monster's always been there, but at least they put a few fucking you know sheets over it. <laughs> it wasn't scary as much as it is now. <laughs> They're in the open, a part of some half-cooked meta-commentary that we are supposed to applaud and clap at as they continue to dilute all the sincerity and all the soul. As the credits rolled on Deadpool and Wolverine, all I wanted to do was go home and re-watch the movies that came before the multiverse Marvel Universe. Before all this was so mainstream that it became unbearably ice- Okay, it was pretty mainstream, even when it was, uh, the X-Men movies and Deadpool. These, these are not- and Made yeah, these aren't like little known age. indie productions. Yeah, no, like these are pretty mainstream. The <laughs> films of, at the time they were coming out. 
isolating. I wanted to rewatch the movies that did not feel the need to justify their own existence, that did not feel the need to pander to a universe that has fallen so far from the thrilling highs it used to soar at. Movies oh that I know, at, right? Soar at? Why he if if the script was really like not good, yeah, if it was really good, then I wouldn't mind it as much, but sore at? I think I'd still Stop. mind it somewhat, because it just doesn't sound sincere yeah, to me. Like it's Maybe it's because so, I've seen so many of these. If there was more skillfulness in the construction of it, then I would... There might be something I could appreciate a bit more, but like, come on, man. Underneath all the spectacle, all the action, were very human stories about what it's like to feel different. But for now, it sadly seems we won't get back to that baseline for a very long time. There are always- Yeah, where have you been, man? <laughs> We've been complaining about yeah. the strangers. But, you know, hey, happy to have you. ...and always will be exceptions. I guess I'm sad that something I viewed as an exception now has to play by the rules in order to maintain relevancy. Even when we joke, when we acknowledge how far we've stumbled, how far we've lost our way, that doesn't change the fact that we just can't seem to find our way back. These fucking hell. Jesus Christ. God, grow up. Stop it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny how everyone's Yo. getting- you don't even need to explain it. Everyone's feeling it. It hurts. It'll stab in your brain. <laughs> he- like this- you know, you know like when you go see a movie and on the- on the drive back home you feel profound after watching a new movie? That's how he's stuck all the time. That's his life, <laughs> is that- is that seven minute drive back home. That's his entire existence. That's it, it never wears accurate. off, that's him. Mm. And this, this is probably why I'm pausing, is like, oh, I, need a, I need a few seconds of not that. <laughs> Fill me with anything else, please. Uh, understandable. You still believe? Just because someone stumbles, loses their way, it doesn't mean they're lost forever. I'm, I'm just being careful about fucking copyright, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, but sure. Yeah, like, right. He's saying that yeah. we can get, we can come back, guys. It's not over. Agreed. My heart is so big right now, guys. <laughs> Wait, what happens in the rest of this video? It's on silence. And oh, no. oh no! Oh, is that it's it? Oh, Patreon. Okay. Well, there we are. Uh, thank we God. Did it. It's kind of a fascinating one because the overarching opinion of Deadpool Wolverine kind of bad, yo. It's like, yeah. And then the arguments, it's like, yeah, I mean, I guess I agree with that one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, chill on that one. I'm yeah, sorry. He I took fucking ages effective. to get to substantive stuff. He just kept broadly complaining, little... which you could. Oh, yeah, I seriously think um... you should flip those. Get the broad complaints later where you've shown the evidence for it, if you know what I mean. Well, it, 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 it's kind of like, um, oh, yeah. if, if people aren't on your side right from the get-go, then spending, like, ten minutes talking about how Sean Levi is, like, generic is probably not, it's just not gonna, that's not a good way to start. Please don't do any more six-hour if... videos. <laughs> Especially if people come in and being like, oh, I remember Night at the Museum, it was fun. Why are you being so mean? Yeah, why are you well, yeah, being it's mean? Like, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of, I mean, really, the difficulty in terms of trying to even talk about the film is that you have to get past the fact that for a lot of people it's like, yeah, it's fun, shut up. Like, it's, 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 it's kind of even difficult to, like, begin the conversation on the film. Um, because it's like, yeah, it's Deadpool, he's like the meta-wacky guy, nothing, you're taking it seriously, so why are you taking it so... Especially in this case, where it's taking it very seriously, and himself, it's um mm -hmm. not a good idea uh because i mean the film is bad and there were points that were made in here that were valid or even strong but I man think. they were like inhibited and uh and limited by the delivery and the and the overall tone and vibe to be nice i think what? there's plenty of good editing choices here and there it's a lot of work to have done as fast as he did if he worked with someone on that fair enough good stuff I think that he makes several good points that show a lot of insight into the actual events of the other films that he thinks are being disrespected. He wouldn't need to throw all that shit in of like, I'm doing it for the money, yeah, sure, I am. It's just like, just make the video, man. You don't need to, you don't need well, to do all yeah, the insecure I shit. I suppose it's, uh, it is unfortunate, right, because this, this video did have something going for it that, uh, 
is not often the case, which is a familiarity with the other films. There was, like, real familiarity with, uh, with what came before. Even though there were some weird, like, observations, you know, some, mm. like, strange comments, like, mm, not sure that's what that film was about, or, like, that that quite encompassed what it was about, but, uh, certainly remembered what happened in the Deadpool movies, which I definitely appreciate, because nobody seems to, and that makes me sad, because I like those films a lot. You know what bothers me about, uh, his style of delivery here? It comes off to me as highly manipulative, uh, especially for like impressionable people where he is, especially the, his tone of voice, where he's like trying to inject so much meaning and passion to what he's saying. Then there's the music choices absolutely are intended mm -hmm. to try and um, uh, build a type of emotional response. And it feels like he's trying to get people to resonate or connect with him emotionally than listening to the core facts of his argument, especially with the waffle. If you were to cut out everything, the visuals, the music, his tone, and just have an AI read out what this um, you know, video was in terms of uh, what was actually said, a lot of it will come across very bloated and nonsensical, and the arguments would feel really dumb in a lot of us. Some better, you know, some actually made sense, but others really stupid. And it feels like he doesn't have complete confidence in the arguments himself, in, in the arguments themselves. So to the point, or perhaps a reason why he uh, falls back and is so reliant on these emotional kind of manipulative framework that he does all throughout the video bothers me. No, no, I'm completely with you on that. I, I find it annoying, and I think we could all agree, we find it annoying because it doesn't, it's not genuine. There are times, and I think uh, Rags is kind of alluding to this, that, that you can make this work, and you can make it meaningful. I think, much like music, you need other parts to the fucking song, High Top. It can't all be the, the, the chorus or whatever have yeah. you. It's, it, it's like... I, I don't believe Entra. it once it happens for this long. I just think you're manipulating me. You want me to feel... Like, this is the most important and meaningful thing that's ever happened to you in your entire life. Every damn time. Every fucking video. Stop. <laughs> you don't need to. And you know what? I'd appreciate and a bit more spine. Being like, you know what? I think this movie was shit. Let me explain why. Yeah, this movie <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Instead of being like, man, man. guys, I need you to understand that. I don't mean to say that it's shit. Well, it's that, it's that thing that a lot of YouTubers who also want to be filmmakers have where there's like, well, I can't be mean to other people, but I want to be mean because I have those thoughts and opinions, but I don't want, I don't want people to be mean to me. So I'll have to try and couch it in this whole but if you're gonna, thing. Like, oh no. He made two separate significant references to how he would want to kill himself instead of watch this director's yeah. movies. If you're going to go that far, because that's what bother? he really thinks. Yes. Yeah. Why bother with all that? Bullshit? He, wants, Just move he on. wants both. But 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 not in a mean way. He'll kill himself, but not in a mean in a way. joke way. <laughs> <In a> mean... <laughs> That's what I mean. This is like I, I feel like there's an unleashed high top hiding under the surface that I would way prefer to watch. <laughs> yeah. Unleashed high top. A punished high top that doesn't care about all the fluff and just tells you what he actually thinks. I'd way prefer that. Wouldn't that be refreshing? Like like cut the music, cut all the emotional thing, and just let him share his un you know filtered opinion you know what would just be more. more entertaining is his drive back with his friend that he saw this movie with where they just casually discussed all of the bullshit in it that probably is a much more entertaining video than this where you you're like oh ooh, eh. it's just like stop <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> on that note <laughs> There is a video that someone may be aware of, I can't remember where, but it's called How Every High Top Films Video Essay Starts. So, uh... Oh, no. A little look-see, shall we? One. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait for me, hang on. Come on. It's not playing the right video at all. Oh, is this it? There we go. <laughs> That's oh, I've seen this. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. I want to suck Sam Raimi's dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Already, it's just pure keto. Nice. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> love how poorly cut out it all is as well. Hey, hi. How you doing? I'm Alex. The Ever since I... <laughs> <laughs> He's already cracked it. Was a kid. I've loved Spider-Man, which is why I've made like 20 videos about it. Growing up, I learned so many lessons from Spider-Man. How to cry. <laughs> how to... <laughs> oh, love. Love. How to beat the shit out of my girlfriend. <laughs> how to stop <laughs> one <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh my god. My girlfriend. How to stalk women. Every day I wake up in my Spidey Whitey eat my Spider Man toasted Spidey oats. Spidey Whitey's. Spidey Whitey's. Fuck my whitey. girlfriend with Spider Man themed condoms and then pray to my mural with Bruce Campbell in my bedroom. People used to make fun of me. They called me Fatty, Sumo, Kingpin, Butterball, Big Bitch, Large Drinking Landwell. Yeah, big Bitch! Large Drinking Landwell. <laughs> He's got the Spider Man <laughs> font. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid who jerks off to Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider That's not a good name to be known by. <laughs> but I didn't care. Also, occasionally I would flash big words on the screen in tune with when I enunciate certain words to show that I mean business. But I didn't care. Because of one lesson Stan Lee had permeated throughout all of his stories. Well, you see, when I had Steve Ditko create Spider Man, I wanted him to stand out from the other superheroes. I wanted to make him a bitch. A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love him. Stan Lee quote. Spider Man has no drip, he bags no bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and if by some god-given miracle he does, he has the to leave music. them to keep... He has to leave <laughs> the them. The music volume is accurate. <laughs> the music is on point. Oh, yeah. Being Spider-Man. People walk all over him, treat him like shit, and he gets his ass beat every single day. All to keep being... They love me. And for that lesson, I will always thank Spider-Man for making me who I am. <laughs> In this video on how... Spider-Man taught me how to be a bitch, <laughs> like a man. <laughs> like a man. <laughs> oh, I needed that. Oh, it's I perfect needed. after watching. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Oh. <laughs> what is this little dancing animation? What the, play it. Play it. Well, wait, Don't I was going to say, like so... A man. The channel is K Fillet for anybody who's curious. It's called How Every High Top Films Video Essay Starts, and it's so fucking perfect to watch after watching a high top video. And by the way, High Top said he loved this video too, so you know it's it's all chill, it's all good fun. Just um, I'm glad he can, glad he can take a take a laugh. I almost yeah. want him to make more. <laughs> it's just so perfect. <laughs> Is this copyrighted uh, song stuff here? Oh, yeah, it could be. That's fair. Beer Zan versus Evil Gorilla in four days and also other life stuff. Well, that's a great video, too. There you go. Uh, it's that's some good recovery from a high top segment, you know? I'm just saying. Anyway, I think CJ's got to head out now. It's, uh, it's around that time. Yeah, I'll need a bounce as well, fellas. And this Shad. And yeah, me too. Oh my me god, too. and Jay Longbone. To, yeah. I have to sleep. <laughs> Very well. It's like 3 a.m. where I am. Well, I'm surprised we've got this many people at this time. This is the, the dead of dead time. <laughs> Nobody's around now. Yep. Otherwise, no, just, just late afternoon in Australia when <laughs> a lot of people would be awake. When the world <laughs> sleeps. <laughs> It's yeah. about dinner time, and I gotta check up yes. on the family, see how they're going. In the world sleeps, Spider-Man fights. Yes, he does. And that's why we love him. Like a bitch. He teaches us to be a bitch. Like a, bitch. Like a man. <laughs> 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 well, appreciate all of you hanging out with us, and we'll catch you around, wherever that may be. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you Yeah, we will guys. see you later. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Uh, congrats on six years. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Yay. it. Keep it up, fellas. We'll see you soon. Thank we'll you, do. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Love you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Bye. bye. <sighs> and then there were six. All right. So what's next? <laughs> Possibly seven, because I'm going to add someone in. Just saying.
me a sec. What's oh next, boy. indeed? I need to do things, so why don't you guys discuss cheese or something? Boy, cheese. I don't know I that much cheese. about cheese. Well, I like cheese, why not? but I don't know that much about it. What do you mean? What do you know about it? I know that yeah. there's cheddar cheese and, like, mozzarella and uh, old English cheese. That's a start. Um, I know that... I know that Homer likes eating American cheese such that he would eat 100 slices, or was it 99 slices? Oh my goodness. Of American I cheese. thought it was 400. Oh, it might have been, yeah, until he, until he was blind uh, from, from eating American <laughs> cheese. <laughs> 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 and Burns and fall off the ceiling. That's right, and they were off on the ceiling trying to get uh, the bear. That That's shit's right. so funny. <laughs> 64 slices, yes. <laughs> I don't know why it took him so long, um, but, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's about what all I know about cheese, really. All right, well, Rag seems to allow me a bit fair more enough, about it. I guess. Fair enough. We asked you about cheese, and you started talking about The Simpsons again, but, you know, that's all right. <laughs> I, I was talking about cheese in The Simpsons, so I don't even know what your problem is. That's Damn. not a problem. Just an observation. Criteria. Just an observation. I'm satisfied I think it's great. Criteria. I'm glad yeah. you do. Your implication didn't seem to indicate as much. Yeah, that's right. You got nothing <laughs> no, to say. No, I, you know it's true. No, I, I don't. No, I just don't have anything to say. Please don't fight. Come on, mom. We're not fighting. Come on, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just don't know that much about cheese, and I think that's okay. And if mm, I need to lean fine. into the Simpsons, if I need to lean into the Simpsons, you know, to fill up my knowledge gaps, then that's fine with me. Because The Simpsons yeah. really is just like filled with a uh, little, you know, lo lots of information. I've learned a lot of things from The Simpsons, unironically. <laughs> well, about... there's many people in the world, they just don't fill up their knowledge gaps with anything. So mm. I'll take I The Simpsons not. any day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's so many references. You learn so much. Good stuff. What's your favorite cheese mm. fact, Rags? Hmm. My favorite cheese fact? Yeah. Oh, wow. What do I know? I don't know, man. I don't know if I know cheese facts. Um, oh. Oh, cheese is half of the ingredients in macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose I, well, actually, I can't remember what brand of cheese it was, but there's a certain type of cheese that the only official one is, is in a certain part of Italy. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was actually mozzarella. That proper, true, real mozzarella cheese can only be uh, made in a specific region in Italy. Kind of like how scotch can only be from Scotland. And if it's not, then it's like whiskey. Or champagne. Yeah. Yeah, um, something like that. Doesn't it I take know a lot like... About... Go ahead. Oh, uh, no. Please finish. All right. Doesn't it take like <laughs> 10 no. pounds of milk to make a pound of I cheese? Oh, it was Parme um, Parmigiano or something. That's, <clears throat> that's what it was. Um, I know a lot about my local cheese in my country, but... <clears throat> I feel most people are more familiar with their local cheeses. This is something that needs to change, yeah. I think, about culture. I'm an exotic I cheese expert. Local, uh, I'm not sure if there's any local Australian cheese in terms of, like, a specific kind that's not from anywhere in the world. I mean, we've got cheese. Like, we make cheese here in mm. places. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any that we can say is like, yeah, you know, the only the only official version of this cheese you can get in Australia. I could be wrong. Like I said, I don't know much about cheese. Now I'm just cheese. thinking about the uh, the uh, the Monty Python thing in the cheese shop, and how there was the just quality a sketch, people, just some guy sitting in the corner playing a really repetitive song for the whole time. <sighs> yeah, my country loves. <clears throat> We love our cheese. It's very salty. It's like mozzarella, but you know, um, a little bit saltier. It, you could even like eat it as a snack. Like people just eat straight up cheese and bread all the time. It's it's very Bread's flavorful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think that's um uncommon, right? Like a uh, toasted cheese, cheese sandwich. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. A I mean, grilled there, cheese. Yeah, we have them here. There are a lot of people who don't consider cheese like a snack however there those people are wrong we can kill them there's a vessel for what? it who who wouldn't consider cheese a snack it's like the perfect snack it's like mm -hmm. 
What if high I mean, top I don't even know what else would... What would you say then? Well, I, well, he'd still be explaining it, and I'd have to wait. <laughs> he'd be crying at this point. <laughs> That's right, crying like he just sniffed a big old tub of Limburger. Well, on that note, welcome back, Mark. Hello. <clears throat> How what do you show about cheese? From... Speaking of stinky cheese, oh. I don't actually know where that. Did you sleep know. well? Did you dream of of sheep? I, I kind of I fell asleep listening to EFAP and then woke up to silence and I was like, "Where is the?" Oh, EFAP? we're real. We're I, not just in your dreams. <laughs> we're not just. I opened dreams. up part two and I was like, "Oh, look at that! They're us. still going." Really? I will destroy you. Oh no! What? That actually is terrifying. I feel oh. I feel like you're well armed enough that I wouldn't have much of a chance. Even sure. though I have I have Don't an it. above average amount of firearms for a What Canadian. if he just shoots the leg and that's it? He thinks, ah, oh, that's where your I mean, power that, source is held. That's the worst. His <laughs> fake one or his <laughs> real one? I was about the to say, which would be more, which would my be more robot dickish? Leg is, that, that's the one part of my body that's kind of invulnerable. So, I mean, do you, like, uh, I'd do actually you prefer he shot me in the leg. Uh, no, Moose. What's, is the plural of Moose just Moose? Mies? Uh, I, I think Meese is funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. agree. In any case, you need to ward off um, mice that are that Moose. are coming to get you. My I yeah. I did I did live at a, a base that required me to drive through Algonquin Park if I needed to go visit my parents. And uh, yes, uh, encountering a moose would have been a major problem to the point that I I would have like a bow and arrow in my back. Like oh in the back God. of my head. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do shit. Well, they, they, like I'm you also Canadian, so I can't just carry around a shotgun all the time. So uh, yeah, if I was ever you in a situation where my car hit that, a moose good. and it was uh, dying on in like my windshield and radiator and somehow didn't kill me, then yeah, I wanted a way to take it out if I had to. Luckily, well, I never. Had get to yourself do that. a Serbu Super Shorty. I, I again, it's just I'm Canadian, so I just I can't like I, I can't just be carrying it around all the time. So it's, uh, that's oh, the deal. Uh, I should mention as well because I forgot. To, I keep forgetting to say it, but in the description there is a link to a survey to answer all the questions about the past year about EFAP, and we're going to look at it in part three. So make sure to get your answers in said thingamajig before the time eventually runs out. I don't know how long we're going to be doing part two, but we're only three hours in, meaning we're only halfway through this entire extravaganza. Where we are at the oh, wow. quieter hours for now, though I have uh, I've got I've got the perfect video for us all to check out. It is called "Bad Dialogue versus Good Dialogue: Writing Advice." So, how about that? Ooh. You guys ready for some writing advice? I would oh, love yeah. some writing yeah. advice. Good, because that's what we're going to be getting if Watch Together behaves and fucking loads the video. <laughs> the best way. There we go, we're good. As Excellent. Well as the... Silence, All the right. video person. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Yeah, I mean, without further ado, right? Because this is this is good stuff. This is for you, chat, and this is for us. We're all going to be learning today about... Oh, good. It's not dialogue. a closer look. Thank God. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a different guy. It's a further look. Also, yeah, uh, wait, is the link been provided I for everybody? Yeah, I think I might be in an older got... watch together. Yeah, we got, we got newer, oh. cooler ones now. Okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> I need to. Oh, okay. I'm not swapping. Yeah, okay. It is them. Other people should change, not me. Yeah, True. exactly. All right, That's here we go. Dialogue. Let's find out about good dialogue. The best way to learn about dialogue is by studying the good stuff as well as the bad, and that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to stand up for uh, Attack of the Clones here for a oh moment. My God. Since, uh, since I was going to yeah. say, I think that this line about sand is unfairly maligned. I think Wrong. it gets way too much. I think that it gets way too much flack for what it is. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, right. That's it. I think it's a. I think, I, I think it's a fine line. I think it makes sense in context of what's being discussed here. Uh, I think it gets way too much hate for what it is. I think it's a perfectly uh, fine line. Or far worse so, than you also hate sand, right? <laughs> is that one? No, I love sand. Oh, I love sand. <laughs> sand is great. <laughs> I love sand. Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't I say I love sand. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I tolerate Me and sand. sand. Go way back. It's, use, it's useful for certain things. Yeah, sure. Like it's useful. Way back. But I. Uh, but yeah, because this is about bad dialogue versus good dialogue, and this is being used as the uh, an example, a prime example, I guess, of bad dialogue. I. Uh, I'm gonna kind of hope that he explains why. 
this is considered um, bad dialogue. It's probably not going to mm -hmm. because this is pretty broadly accepted to just be a crappy line. Yep. So I would be surprised. Yeah, that's probably true. Also, I don't know if you put up the best case for this line <laughs> as being good. <laughs> Maybe he has yet to I give the it, case. I said it was a fine. It, I said it was a fine line. I think in context it makes sense because she's comparing the way that she views sand based on her life and what, how she sees sand and what she associates with, and that is being contrasted by him water? with the way. I think she's but, talking about like the the beach or the 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 shore, right? About oh, how it was uh, like a like a vacation or a, or a getaway, uh, but he's it's being contrasted by him growing up on Tatooine, being surrounded by it, and how much he hates it, and he thinks about the negative qualities of sand, whereas she kind of has positive <laughs> connotations joking. and associations with it. So could be. It's been a while since I've seen it. I also remember her talking about water, and then suddenly he says, "I hate sand." How do you honest. feel about the delivery rags? Um. I hate sand. It's cause it does it's rough, get everywhere. It gets everywhere. <laughs> that well, part is true. I the, the delivery could be better. I don't think it's terrible. It's not or, good. Okay. I just said I don't All think right. it's terrible. I think it's not good. Do you think the think scene accomplishes like them falling in love? I don't think among other things. Like do you I, think it's serving the it, what it's meant to be in the story well? In a purely we all know women want the man mm. who fucking hates sand. Because I I think that one of the biggest weaknesses of the trilogy, but in particular Attack of the Clones, is that it fails to really give a lot of credence to this romance and make me believe it. And their dialogue is very stilted and like alien. Um, it, it doesn't come across as things that people would actually say. And it's a combination of the way that they act and the things that they say. And it's very awkward and like clunky and strange. As for this scene in particular, and I'm I am going off memory here. I I mean I would not I think just the whole romance between the two just needs to be just completely redone. Um it's got a lot of weird stuff. I don't think it makes good use of its time. And I, uh yeah. The this scene is probably one of the stronger romance scenes in this movie, actually. It might, they, it might they, be they, true they sort of maybe. because the floor here. is low. <laughs> By comparison, yeah, but Isn't I think by like comparison, feeling her you might up be right. There? Feeling it's her like up, touching her arm, I re her arm up. Well, I remember here's the it. thing. He's like, uh, well, here's the thing. Back in the day, when young men and young women <laughs> would used to get to know each other and begin the process of being romantic, there might be a little bit of casual touching involved. Back That's in the myth before rags. times, that never happened. Well, I know the ancient scrolls detail many of the <laughs> rituals that would be used by young men and young women when they were courting and doting upon one another, when they were, you know, building up an, an amorous relationship to become pa paramours or whatnot. But the, yeah, the ancient texts, the, 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 the manuscripts would detail some of these maneuvers that would be done, such as casual, the touching of hands and arms, because the extremities were considered oftentimes the least personal elements of who you are. And then over time, you would perhaps get more comfortable with embracing and touching the parts of the other person's body that were considered more personal, like the, the cheek and the face and the vagina and the breasts eventually. <laughs> And that was just a, that would just become that that was a thing. Wait, in the before is, is that why you, is that why Yoda destroyed them? Because it's an incel he doesn't, doesn't <laughs> like that thing, you know. Because Yaddle turned him down, and he's held a grudge Aww. ever since. He became he became a Jedi cell on the Isles. So he he ghost. destroyed his sacred Jedi text in the in the beginning. <laughs> he was like, mm, Luke, kiss your sister, you did, <laughs> and so he never <laughs> let him live that one down. <laughs> no. Sorry, what were we talking about? This is a Yoda, good dialogue. Yoda that just dialogue like making fun of Luke forever. Then Luke finally snaps and says, "You're a swamp incel," and he's like, "What? Embrace <laughs> <laughs> oh, the swamp cell life, you must." And today, so stick around. Whoa! Oh shit, dog! What's up, guys? Oh, no. My name's Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer. I'm the Ugh. author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. One of my subscribers requested a. How old is this video? Yes. When did it come out? Should yes? be timeless. Let's see. I'm just curious because that intro what? sequence was very. 
August 19th of 2021. Oh, wow. okay. So mm. not that old. It's Video from the, the good age dialogue of, versus... We wouldn't expect that. <laughs> That's what yes, yeah, yeah. okay. Bad dialogue. And I thought that was a great idea for a topic because obviously there's a lot of things you can learn from good dialogue, but sometimes good dialogue can be intimidating on its own, especially when it's some of the best stuff out there. Now, on the other hand, when we learn from bad dialogue... Um. I assume he means intimidating in terms of it, it will seem extremely difficult to write yourself yeah, is what he means I by that, so. I assume. Like, so can yeah. I achieve this like level of you know, quality or whatever, maybe? Mm -hmm. Not yeah. only do we get to see other people making mistakes, but we can have a lot of fun in the process. And if for today's video, I'm going to be explaining what makes good dialogue good and what makes bad dialogue bad, and I'm going to be Sweet. having examples of both. I want to start Hell out yeah. by explaining what makes good dialogue good. And I think there are good three rest. things that help define good dialogue. The first thing- Man, this is like the opposite of the, of, of the high top video. We're not even a minute in <laughs> yeah. and he's like, here's what I'm gonna do. And yeah. here's where I'm gonna start. Here's some diagrams. <laughs> Hear that music? Exactly. Let's get the fuck to it. love to see it. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm the a good fan lecture. Does <laughs> yeah, it sounds natural, and this is going to vary from character to character. Obviously, what Marty McFly from Back to the Future says in his movies wouldn't work in Lord of the Rings, and what Frodo says in Lord of the Rings, well, he does say that that the ring is a great burden, <laughs> but. Uh wouldn't work in the world of Back to the Future. So you have to be aware of who is speaking and in what world they're speaking. But regardless of who your characters are. So in character then, I suppose. Is yeah, in natural? character. Sure. Yeah, because I, I, would, I would say that sometimes good dialogue is when writing doesn't sound natural. Like an android pretending to be a person. Or, or a character saying something anything, that isn't natural or, to them because they're in a particular state, right? Emotionally. Oh, they would probably oh, yes. say that. If they have a yeah, yeah, if they had a if they had a, a situational disability, for instance, mm. and their dialogue. Oh, they were mind controlled. controlled. Oh, are <laughs> and where your story world is, the dialogue has to sound natural. The second thing good dialogue does, it attacks or defends, and that's because good dialogue involves conflict. It involves characters trying to learn something that another character doesn't want to tell them. It involves characters. Mm. So. So Not good dialogue no. can't be made. Well, so the problem unless here it's part is part of a conversation with another agent. There's always going to be dialogue that needs to be there for more arguably mundane or dull reasons, and it's like you, if you ever have yeah. dialogue that's not meant to attack or defend in context, then it's just automatically could, bad dialogue. Could just be a character reminiscing on something, right? You know, that could be. Of course, yeah, yeah. and like the yeah. the idea that you can't have good dialogue if the person's alone. That's well, that would be a monologue. I guess they could be attacking and defending like... on their own too, but seems more unlikely, right? Like... Well, he said as like part of a conversation here. Oh, is this is this specifically when two people are talking with each other? I don't think it means well, dialogue this is means under the umbrella. Of... Yeah. I mean, a dialogue yeah. versus dialogue simply. Sure, but people don't. Yeah. Yeah. It... Yeah, the technically, but that's not what people mean when they say dialogue. Just, just writing is speaking essentially. But it also feels weird that in every conversation between two people, that it would always have to be attacking or defending something. I don't know. They could both be agreeing on something. Yeah. Uh, we'll Trying see if he elaborates. To push a worldview on another character who is defending against it. Your characters should always be wanting something in their scenes, and they should be trying to obtain information through dialogue exchanges. And the third thing that good That's, it sounds but... this sounds like a like a debate or an interrogation is what makes good dialogue. Yeah, yeah more I mean, what about um, characters who you're characterized by being very apathetic and don't want anything? Yeah, or or uh, someone specifically trying to be dismissive or despondent or or, or distant to something. This, uh, mm. why, why would you put such a tight box around the insanely broad concept of dialogue? Well, it feels like weird that. to put it next to make sure it's in character. It's like yes, make sure it attacks or defends. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I don't know. Attacks or defends. Um, I I'm I'm curious to know if he's going to elaborate on whether he thinks that sort of principle applies to all sorts of places where you wouldn't normally think about it as attacking and defending, but he's going to argue that yeah. it's there. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, you know. The dialogue mm -hmm. does, it expresses unspoken meaning or subtext. And um, um, 
I'm okay with that, but it doesn't always have to. Yeah, sometimes good yeah. dialogue is when a character is being blunt and curt and very direct. And cold. It just varies. Like, it varies on the situation. Uh-huh. And, Expresses. you know, the character is something, you know, it's, Yeah, there might not be original. subtext. Yeah. I like me some subtext, but I don't think it's necessary at all times. Yeah. Well, it doesn't belong If you belong add, if you add the line. subtext literally to every single line in, like, a movie, it's gonna be fucking retarded. Like, you know, it could, yeah, very well. That's when it becomes way. text. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't, it's just gonna be way over the top. It wouldn't be appropriate for every character to even speak in subtext. You might have characters who, like I said, they want to be direct, they don't want to be misunderstood, they don't want to refer to mm -hmm. something else. Or you might have characters who just don't speak in that kind of Well, you can have a character way. express subtext without them realizing that. it, right? That, that's a possibility we, as well. I suppose so. Why yeah, would it need to be so, all yeah. of these things at the same time rather than, hey, one of these qualities could be, like, good? I don't know. Oh, are you saying? Yeah, because I'm. I thought I'm you said totally on good point. dialogue if, needs if to have all of be, these. Because if it, yeah, cause that's, I mean, already, that's kind of like, how I painted it, at least. Yeah, because I uh, I remember I can't remember where it was from, but the idea that like good dialogue achieves like let's say two out of these eight qualities. It's like yeah, I prefer that because it gives you more flexibility yeah, yeah, yeah. of well, your dialogue. Fair. Ideally, should be achieving Even more then. than one thing at this. I well, no, I I like that one a lot more because the idea that dialogue should be achieving more than one thing at a time. Is a probably is probably like a better overarching rule, especially if you can say like, well, you know, it needs to advance the plot, or it, and then it also has subtext, or it says something about the character, or um, it's relevant to theme and it has this thing rather than like mm. all of them all at once. Yeah, but I don't know if that applies here Should because I? he said number one is that's like what... being in character, which I assume he well, we'd have to assume that's that's for all dialogue, right? We want we we never want it to be presumably, yeah, yeah. But I mean, number one of sounds natural, that's kind of like, it's just kind of a weird description because does that mean that the dialogue should sound like it's said by normal people? No, no, he did explain that one. It, it just means in yeah. character. That's the, uh, you should have just said in character. In character is better because sounds natural is a different kind of advice that people sometimes give about dialogue of, yeah, it needs to sound like regular people. Regular people um and ah and like have broken sentences and sometimes have thoughts that don't go anywhere, which isn't necessarily going to be good. And then, like, Aaron Sorkin dialogue isn't, like, natural. It's very no, breakneck like, and fast. Yeah, realism isn't the goal of every story. So no. naturalism isn't the goal of every story either. But if he just means in character, then I think that's then a good rule. And yeah. he, he definitely wouldn't say that if you only have two and three, then that's fine. No, you know like, I mean? yeah, it, it attacks mm -hmm. and defends, but it's out of character. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't follow <laughs> This means that there's some kind of meaning beneath the surface. And I think the best way to think about this is that when you have the spoken word going back and forth between two characters, you have to remember that there's got to be some emotions hiding beneath it. For instance, if you've ever seen a married couple arguing about something stupid, you know that what they're really arguing about is much bigger than that stupid thing. They're not... Okay, but sometimes people actually do say exactly what they mean. So yeah. framing it like you always need to be doing this. Well, first of all, there's so many yeah. moments in any sort of dialogue in any story where there's just no opportunity for subtext because it's just basic mundane sort of things or it's just connective tissue. <laughs> That's a funny freeze frame. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is like sometimes people do like, let's say they're arguing about something and maybe they actually do get to what's deep at the surface. Like then it's not subtext anymore. It's just text. So I don't think that's especially strong advice, especially when you frame it like it's something you always need to be doing. Yeah, I think he's referring to a very particular type of di dialogue in, in a very particular scene, for, I think, like impact, some kind of scene that is supposed to be very impactful and the core of the film or something. But yeah, this, I don't think this applies to like literally every dialogue ever. No, yeah, I think I think that's true. Like, there's yeah. just so many examples of where you wouldn't use it. In fact, I'm surprised he wouldn't himself catch himself while writing this and be like, I guess there are scenes where you wouldn't want this, and they emphasize different things. Yeah. Not arguing about whether or not they're going to have chicken for dinner tonight. They're arguing about some kind of conflict that's going on within their marriage. So keep that in mind. There should be some higher stakes. Maybe. Like, not always. Or they could maybe legitimately Maybe they actually just... care about chicken. <laughs> yeah, maybe... Maybe... Talking yeah. about chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I want the goddamn chicken. <laughs> Maybe they're hungry. 
I mean, because <laughs> what's really on your mind? There's no way you're just this upset about chicken. It's like the no, funny, I mean, that's <laughs> chicken you, you could, <laughs> like, <laughs> you could do both what he's saying and not what he's saying. They could be like, well, it is and it isn't. It is that you uh, haven't bought me the chicken to cook tonight because it's indicative of like you're just not aware of what I want. You never are. You never care about me. But seriously, the, I really yeah. wanted the fucking chicken, man. This just crossed the line. <laughs> like, this, this has made it enough yeah. for me. Just the just the final drop in the uh, big cold. Someone in, someone in chat asked if I if I am a surgeon. Is that good dialogue? I am <laughs> a surgeon. <laughs> no, Doctor Han. <laughs> I suppose one could argue the subtext of that you see is about his life and meaning as a surgeon being t torn from him, while the basic text thing is just him expressing a fact that currently. The... Yeah, and I he's guess... defending himself. Yes, and it's I mean, sound <laughs> natural. I was about to say, to and an Dr. extent, Hall you can argue. Like Chad. <laughs> you could argue that the subtext for almost anything, I think, whether or not it's actually there. Like, take any line, you can try and spin something. Takes beneath yeah, the spoken course. words in your dialogue. Now we're going to talk about bad dialogue. Yeah. And for this video, I came up with five mm. specific types of bad dialogue. Ooh. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through each type. I'm going to explain what it is. Then I'm going to give you an example of the bad dialogue. And then I'm also going to give you a good example that you can use in its place. Now the first right. example of the bad and then a good example you can use in its place. So as yeah, in an example of the same thing the but done thing. well or just a replacement? Mm. Sounds like he's saying um, a better alternative. Okay. Yeah. Type of bad dialogue is on the nose dialogue. This is when you state the obvious. It's when you're just stating thoughts and emotions without any subtlety, without any subtext. There's nothing but beneath the surface. You are just saying exactly what you're thinking or exactly what you're feeling. An example of this. What do you want for dinner? What a pause. Oh, I'd like some chicken. This is called bad dialogue. Force. <laughs> <laughs> He's going after Star Wars again. This type of bad dialogue yeah. comes from Attack Seeing of the Clones. It shouldn't it. surprise anyone that I'm going to be talking about Attack of the Clones today. Ooh. But in Attack of the Clones, if you remember the one scene where Anakin and Padme are talking beside the fire, and Anakin just completely spills his unfiltered emotions out to her, it's completely on the nose. I'll play it for you right now. Now that I'm with you again. Oh, I might have to be careful here, depending but... on how much he plays. Okay. Mm. Let me get yeah, the we cover can up. play it and then we'll do our comments here. Yes. I'm in agony. The closer I get to you, the worse it gets. I'm haunted by the kiss that you should. Um. So, no. I, so this. It's curious. I don't I'm think. In that, agony. What's, uh, I'm, what's I'm not sure. The problem that? here is that it's on the nose, as opposed to because like he would be on the nose, right? In this scene, it's very melodramatic. Yes. He's all, he's like it's not a, dealt with these emotions before. Yeah, he's coming out to her in this very earnest way. He wants her to know how he's feeling, and he's kind of spilling himself out for her. Oh, someone he's like, hi, Top. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> but, yeah. but I don't... Like, I, sometimes you don't... Like I said, sometimes you want to be on the nose and direct, and you want to make sure there isn't any misunderstanding as to how you feel. And that doesn't mean it's here... bad dialogue. Yeah. I think the problem yeah. here is that it's just over the top. It's too, like... Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that you feel his feelings oh, here. Like, I don't think we did a good enough job building well, yeah, this relationship. Yeah, he's saying the word, but I don't know if they... Yeah, mean, if you... I'm not, if, like, I'm not convinced the words are actually the problem here. I well, agree. I don't think it's the words the or the, um, no, like, the nature of him being on the... Like, him expressing in no uncertain terms how he feels. I don't think that's a problem either. I think it is the uh, how how we have come to see this these two develop. Remember, this This isn't far yes. into their scenes. It's like, okay, this is happening now. Yeah, they, it, like I said, we need to just rejig the whole relationship with these two in terms of its pacing and how, like, humans would communicate with one another mm -hmm. because this shouldn't be where it is and it we, we don't have as much investment in this relationship yet because it's so poorly paced and well, constructed. But this scene, if it was surrounded by completely different stuff, you know what you could say is on the nose? A lot better. And be, better acting. Uh, you, could, you could say dialogue that's on the nose is, uh, I love you, I know. But the reason it works so well is because mm -hmm. you buy oh, into their relationship yeah. at that point completely. Yeah. And there's nothing oh, wrong right. with being on but the nose. But that's by dialogue mm -hmm. because it's, it's very much in character for those two, too, you know. Yeah, I don't... Uh, there's no reason to make these boxes around 
what is good and bad dialogue like this so far it's i just i don't know why it has to be those things i mean i know that it's nuanced and contextual and it depends like i know those are not exciting answers but like that's the answer no i yeah i genuinely um, think the problem here every... is that the the scenes backing this one up aren't good enough i agree yeah, 100%. I think this, yeah. this is a bad example because you could say like if a character gets like hurt and they just scream out i am in pain i think that's on the nose and that's a better example of this particular like uh, sort of <laughs> argument than this this scene because this scene the lines are fine the problem is it just sometimes there will be some times when the characters will say exactly what they mean they will explain yeah. how they're feeling in plain terms as a general rule people aren't necessarily going to be so articulate that they know exactly how they feel exactly how they're feeling or even that they would want or to how to express that. it yeah but, uh, yeah or that they know how to express it but sometimes characters will say what they mean so it feels like mm -hmm. the thing that you need to add on top is if your characters are doing it all the time, it really undermines when, for instance, you have a really important scene where the character essentially explodes and says exactly what they mean. That it's more of yeah. a matter of balancing. Sometimes people will say what they mean. Uh, plenty of times they, they won't say exactly what they yeah. mean. When we, uh, um, and, and I guess as a, a little bit of a teaser for our, our, our House of the Dragon stuff and stuff that we've talked about before, there are scenes in House of the Dragon that we've covered recently and we'll cover very shortly where a character just comes out with how he feels about things and that's that. And there's not a lot of subtext at all behind it. It's very direct mm -hmm. and they are mm -hmm. excellent scenes that are written fantastically that are talking a joy the, to watch. Talking about the dinner scene? Or... The, well, the, dinner the dinner scene. scene. Awesome no, I, I was taught. I was. Uh, I was referencing uh, in season two, uh, the one we I already covered was Otto. And but yes, Otto and Alan. Oh were yeah, the yeah. I was the... thinking of yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are they're being very direct, very on oh. the nose. They're doing all the things that, I guess, by his criteria, seem to imply it's bad dialogue. But those are excellent scenes, and they're yeah. written very well. Very, very well acted. Very well delivered. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Really fucking well, good. I, I, I mean, think maybe the real stinker this... is going to happen in a second. I can't remember exactly what they say next. Maybe there's well, a real I, clunker I, coming. <laughs> I, I was going to say, though, that Nutso kind of mentioned that in this scene, it, Anakin is speaking in a way that is, is it's too poetic to be relatable as far as the word that the words that he's using, which is why you could make the argument that I love you, I know, is more direct but also it seems like something that han solo would say whereas we don't really have a context for anakin speaking as if he's like reading a shakespearean soliloquy to her so um, soliloquy to her i, I uh, it just doesn't feel that poetic to me it feels a bit I more agree. like high cup level yeah, <laughs> yeah no amateurish I, which i think humbly and all that case, i think has justification which is appropriate yeah i was gonna say i think uh i would be like, what, do you, what can you be critical of here? It's going to be like, well, what about the quality of the words themselves? Like, well, is it in line with what Anakin himself would say, has learned to say? And then is it in line expression-wise with what he would say to a girl like this when he's this, he has these feelings for her with absolutely no direction in his whole life of how to deal with it? It's like, well, I think those things match up. The thing that doesn't is us really feeling like that was earned. We sort of just it's, walk into this and it's happening and you're like okay it's the delivery of the line specifically i think like his mm -hmm. delivery. and there's the context um, of the all the scenes around them as well i think that's I think probably i think the performance is okay it just no. strikes it comes across as really just weird and strange and oddly paced and i feel like we haven't earned getting to this point yet and our in in the scene i mean padme's reaction to this is not great so yeah. <laughs> no. there's I mean, this, so this, this whole shit is I'm just a the senator, Doctor Han. Time. Like every time we come back to Obi Wan, I'm like, thank God. All right, oh, back no. to <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think that being able to describe accurately what does and doesn't work about these kinds of scenes, I think a lot of people just take for granted that oh, these scenes suck and they're terrible, and so therefore oh. everything about them is bad. But I don't know if they can actually elaborate on how they are bad or good or what, you know, what its issues are or aren't. Never have given me. You are in my very soul, tormenting me. <laughs> Believe me, I wish that I could just wish away my feelings. <laughs> Yeah, that one's a clunker. Yeah, I wish yeah. that but wait, I could that's, wish away my feelings. That's a clunker because 
the writing it's, is is it's not because it's on the nose. You, no, you're right. It's, a lot of it, it's, a lot of it there is delivery and how we got here and how quickly it sort of happened and yeah. Well, it's general just, so it's a, see, sentence. this is terrible. It's like, wait, we're, we're not saying this is good. We're, we're arguing whether or not he's accurate when he says the problem here is it's on the nose. I don't know that that is yeah. the problem. And the if first you're trying to get someone scene... to, if, if you're just trying to get someone to earnestly understand why you feel a certain way in a very personal way, you will be direct. You don't. You're not going to beat around the bush. You're yeah. not going to try and be, you know, subtextual about it. You want to. You want to be direct and on the nose yeah. with people about things. I mean, love confessions are the, one of the most like on the nose things you, a person could ever say. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't use subtext for that. Yeah, you, you might even say that people feel that the other person is in their very soul. You know. Tormenting yeah. him. Tormenting him, yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean... subtext, subtext can be used as almost like a, like a bit of plausible deniability slash smokescreen in a subconscious way for you saying something else to a person without directly saying it. And so when you're trying to be or appear vulnerable about your feelings to someone else, a part of you is going to want to avoid that. Um, you don't want to mm. give across the impression that what you're saying has hidden meanings or that you're really saying something that you aren't. You're going to want to be direct. And this is, of course, on-the-nose dialogue. It's stating exactly what he feels. It is not natural, and it feels totally cliched. It feels like something that's just coming out of an afternoon soap opera. Okay, but with with better context in terms of how the character writing and how we've built up to this scene... You could have these exact words. Let's say the performances are a bit stronger, and you could it could really work. It's not necessarily just the words. There is the clunkiness of "I wish I could wish these feelings away." You clean up that sentence, and I don't think it's really the words in and of themselves that's the problem here. It's the delivery. It's, well, it's if weird you to say said... like if you see two word, if you say the same word twice in in near succession, you want to often inflect it differently. You want to say "I wish." I could wish these feelings away. It shows that there's a deliberateness to it and you understand yeah. you're using the word twice. That's why you're inflecting it differently and giving extra mm -hmm. emphasis um, on that first wish. Yeah, even showing but, him yeah, struggle with the second wish and giving up and being like, wish, you know, like I'm looking for a different word, but I can't sort of thing. So it's like in recognize, but saying states his exact feelings is one of the elements for why it sucks. I think is silly. I think, I think that's bad. Silly. Yeah. If he didn't state his exact feelings here, I feel like that would be weird. And I'd be asking if he's trying to mm -hmm. like tell her how he feels. Why is he beating around the bush? Why is he using subtext? Why is he not telling her how he feels? He's also that's Anakin Skywalker. Here. He doesn't know how to use subtext. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's a little goober. Yeah. And also, then sounds. Like it depends on. Yeah. Go on. I was just gonna say sounds unnatural. I mean, that's that's more so what we're trying to determine about the whole scene. You know what I mean? Like, all these components mm -hmm. would determine whether or not it's unnatural for him to be speaking this way, which I don't think we've managed to figure out, you know? I feel yeah, like we've I mean, done most of the work here. It really depends on a character. Like, if you're talking about someone like Tywin Lannister, uh, that man uses subtext probably a lot. He mm. probably never says anything, like, directly, probably. Uh, but when it comes to a character like Anakin, you would expect <laughs> he would be, like, very honest. Yeah. Often. He's a very emotional, impulsive person, so it it di differs from character to character, I think. Yeah, that's a that's a very I, funny meme, but it's bad dialogue because I'm <laughs> stating my exact feelings. And yeah, I'm very on the nose. Uh, there's no subtext. Oh, I like your little smile, though. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And but because of it, we just, you know, we don't buy I into am. it. It doesn't feel real. And it's just... It's just that the way they built their relationship is why nobody buys into it. it, it yes. Give us yes. enough of if those this two. was a well... Yeah, if the relationship was better and this occurred, like, later in the relationship at, like, a breaking point in his feelings, then I think it'd go acro come across way better. I think um, I Love You, I Know. I think a lot of people would have advised against that. But when you see it in play with the, the performances... They did at the time, right? I think so, yeah. I, I'm not sure that they were... Isn't that ad-libbed? It is. It was. Well, I think yeah, you were supposed, supposed to say "I love you" back, right? Like you were supposed to say "I love you" as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, what I'm saying it. is, like, the it may not seem like it would work on paper, but then you see it in practice. You see the scenes they have before. You see the performances. And you're like, oh shit, they it's got this. It's fucking iconic. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy that it, it that dialogue really makes like a romance in a franchise like Star Wars work. I mean, we we saw Acolyte 
right? So it's it's a it's a pretty tough thing to uh, sort of cram into a franchise like this, but it t totally works, and that's amazing piece of writing. Even and if I it's don't want to, I don't want to defend the prequels too much because I really don't like them. But I actually don't agree that there's no deeper meaning here. Isn't part of the whole thing is that he's like extremely Emotionally passionate unstable. and control yeah. him. Yes. And that's a big part of the arc of the movie and oh, his shit, character. You're right. We are defending the prequels because yep. I agree with you. That's that's fair. That this is an example of the several scenes that show Anakin mm -hmm. is not the Jedi he needs to be. You know. Yeah. By the way, I um I double checked to see if the I know line was improvised or ad libbed. It wasn't. Um, Ford came up with a line while brainstorming with Kirshner. So he did come up with a line, but he didn't. He didn't ad lib it. They he he did come up with a line though. I heard before the people say that um, like it was supposed to be something else from the beginning, and then he felt it, like he felt it was unnatural, and then uh, he wanted it changed. Uh, but, uh, there's a little. Yeah. There's an excerpt that I briefly looked over um, on uh, Once Upon a Galaxy: A Journal of the Making of the Empire Strikes Back, and let me see. Ford says, if she says, I love you, and I say, I know, that's beautiful and acceptable and funny. Kirshner says, right, right. All right. Dull, because there is no deeper meaning here. He's just saying exactly what he feels. There is nothing to read into. Now, if you want a conversation between two lovers that is a lot more fun, take a look at Back to the Future, the early scene between Marty and his girlfriend, Jennifer. They're just... Okay, but... That's a very different scene in terms of the arc of the story, right? Yeah. Ideally, well, yeah. you would want to. You'd want to compare. Marty gonna, isn't going to turn to the dark side. In the, <laughs> in the you'd want to compare two scenes that are trying to do similar things, but one yes. does it well and one doesn't do it yeah. well. That would be the ideal way. These to two characters something. and their relationship are entirely dissimilar from the other two in their relationship. Okay. At the very the least, function... you'd want to pick like a crisis scene for them. You know. Yeah. Well, even the function of romance in this story is not not like I mean, is the romance in Back to the Future really important at all? Like I, I don't really think about it as part of the movie when I look back on it. Like between Marty mm -hmm. and his girlfriend, I I, I couldn't I, even I have told you. Super name, but consequential, but it's there. Depends. Let's see what his example has first. I mean, romantic trip to the lake. I'll play it for you now. Does your mom know about tomorrow night? Ah, no, get out of town. My mom thinks I'm going camping with the guys. Just gonna have to do some pause in here. Gotta be nice and careful. Yeah, and that was fair, a, fair. that was a line for her and a line for him. That's probably the most we'll let play at any one time. <laughs> Bing bang bong. <laughs> <laughs> la la la. Well, Jennifer, my mother would freak out if she knew I was going up there with you. And I get the standard lecture about how she never did that kind of stuff when she was a kid. I mean, look. Just being careful. Keep it all in your head, you know. Yeah. Keep it all as one big flowing Tell thing. Me. Yeah. La la la. Absolutely. Please, local, foreign. <laughs> la la la. I think the woman was born a nun. She's just trying to keep you respectable. Well, she's not doing a very good job. Terrible. This is why would Anakin? And... <laughs> this is so inappropriate for their relationship at all. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Anakin would talk about his mom like. Well, there's so many reasons why this would never be uh, Anakin and Padme's dialogue in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So, yeah. how is? Yeah. Well, maybe he'll explain it. Okay, so notice how neither of these two characters outright states how they feel about each other. It's obvious that they're boyfriend and girlfriend, they got this thing going on, they're they're hoping to hook up at the lake, but the feelings here are all in the subtext. The dialogue itself is just... Okay, yeah, but that's really not... Yeah, but the, uh, they're this not the negotiating their subtext, feelings in this scene, though. though. Like, it, it's a very different type of scene where, from yeah. the Anakin and Padme one, because Anakin and Padme are trying to figure out their situation. He's saying that why this works is because these two know their situation, so we don't have to get into that. It's like, well, it's a very different type of talk, though. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's it's not like it's like subtext technically, but like when the fact that they're they're doing what they're doing, the the inflection of everything, like they're being, it's like it's cheeky subtext. You know, it's not it's not the same kind of subtext as. Mm -hmm. I it, it's tough to like. Do, do I need to rephrase it? Do you kind of get catch my drift here? It's like it's. Yeah. I see like on different. paper the mm -hmm. yeah on paper sure if you read the lines you might not specifically know but the fact that they're in that proximity touching each other like that about to kiss 
smiling with you know the expressions the way that they say it it's only technically subtext it's like the most overt subtext ever it's it's practically sarcasm <laughs> i mean it's just a random scene of two romantically involved people it doesn't it doesn't serve anything uh, unlike, i mean i do uh, i do like the dialogue like it's just not yeah, really yeah, a good yeah. point of comparison it's, yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's good stuff but it it's not a good example here um yeah it's you know, too it, dissimilar it like autism, i guess honest, yeah. this wasn't going to work in the first place because we kind of disagreed with him on what the problem was in the prequel scene anyway he thought it needs to be yeah, solved by yep. getting more subtle which is just not at all what i think the issue was yeah because like not, that not wouldn't be natural it would break his other rule it wouldn't be natural necessarily for a character to be subtle and be subtextual so there is like inherent contradictions potentially in the criteria that he's outlined I appreciate the spirit of the point that there are many times where you need subtlety in order for characters to come across as natural, as in in-character, instead of always stating how they feel. Sure. I, we watched plenty of things where we're critical of how too many fucking characters state constantly how they feel instead of giving us something to think about. You know, I'm with them in spirit. It's a lot of fun, and it just dances around the subject of the romance, the sex, everything else that's going on here. But it's much better than the Star Wars example because neither one of these characters is outright stating, oh, I'm so crazy about you, I love you, anything like that. It's much more fun when they just kind of hide their feelings. Yeah, but there's also, you Should know... it be fun? Like, it's not a forbidden love situation. I was going to say, the back to the Marty's future, not a part of like a crazy monk order that prevent you from making attachments. <laughs> it's different. The time monks. <laughs> the time monks. <laughs> oh a little bit even though we know what's going on here the second type of bad dialogue is melodrama and i've All talked right. about melodrama on the channel before and what it is it's emotion that is way over the top it's emotion that is not earned what if you have okay. people better who are naturally Anakin melodramatic scene. what if it's in what if it is within someone's character to be uh, a drama queen to be to be melodramatic that would be because there are people like that there are children that in, though, right? like that I guess so, yeah. Let's hope that's the well, he's going with it. Well, it, yeah, well, if, if no... that's what he means by that, because emotion that's not earned, he could mean something else by that, but that's potentially true. So but I, I... is the problem over-the-top emotion, or is it over-the-top emotion that's not earned? Cause it's yeah, very because different. melodrama generally isn't earned. That's why we call it, like, it's melodramatic. It's over-the-top. It's excessive displays of, you know, emotion instead of it being ap appropriately you know earned when 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 uh when Anakin says I hate you that's not being melodramatic that is him using an appropriate <laughs> display no, yeah I agree let's see the emotion examples, that he actually uh, feels yeah let's see yeah, let's know. do it sometimes you'll see stories like, where two about, characters yeah are just yelling back and forth at one another but you don't really care about the conversation you don't feel the anger or you don't feel the passion or anything like that because it isn't earned that's what melodrama is now for an example of melodrama i want to take it from one of my favorite video games castlevania symphony right. of the night i love this game, game to death but it opens up with a prologue that has some absolutely horrendous dialogue now for well, context by the way i appreciate it's him the translation going to video games for example yeah that's so cool dialogue i feel like a lot of people wouldn't even wouldn't even give it any thought that video games are you know out there and they have dialogue and stories and characters so good on you this is a bit of a weird scene to use though because i absolutely know the line that he's going to use and this is famously kind of just a weird translation that, yeah, the, that um, kind of got by what is a man <laughs> shit right the what is a man a miserable pile of pile secrets of secrets yeah. oh yeah <laughs> which is it's funny Wait, yeah, this might be what Rax was talking about. It's kind of a good line, that, anyways, even if it was a mistranslation. That is in character yeah. melodramatic, is it not? I mean, I'd say so. I don't even know that I'd describe it as melodramatic. It's just, it, it's a strange sentence in English, and it kind of yeah, works to weird. make Dracula mm. sound distinct in Here, the, the words he's choosing at the same time really need to know is that the guy in blue here on your screen his name is Richter he's a vampire killer and he's going after Dracula and once he meets Dracula this happens time monster you don't belong in this world it was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute tribute you steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. 
Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind <laughs> ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Okay, so obviously the voice <laughs> acting here is bad, but one of the dead well, giveaways the voice that acting here actually... is just, to, just to be clear, the voice acting is fucking glorious. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's <laughs> super charming. Amazing. <laughs> um, I don't actually think it's the words, really at all for the most part what? i think a lot of it's just the performance I that, mean, that makes it so weird. melodramatic i mean yeah there's some there's a couple of things so where know... it's like you probably wouldn't translate it that way but you could have let's say i don't know if <laughs> i'm just like you could have charles dance or some actor like that yeah. give it like say those exact same words in a way that would not read as melodramatic at all well i don't even know that it would be better just from better voice acting what they're talking about is pretty pressed. dramatic. They're not. They're not like over. You don't understand what I'm saying. Like they're not making more drama out of the situation that would require it. It seems like there's a hell of a lot of drama to be yeah. had about this situation. It truly yeah. is. I think the performances. Uh, yes. I, I, I don't I think know it's entirely how much the about this game, but the. I think for me, this type of thing. If I see this, I'm like, it mostly sort of. Uh, comes off as more of a creative decision, sort of an artistic. Like, if these characters start started like spewing Game of Thrones level of like dialogue at me right now, I I would be like, I would not enjoy it as much as I do this. Like, it's sort of like artistic decision for me more so. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it really, like really works with the visuals and stuff like that. I don't mind it. Well there's all sorts of things that are intentionally over the top in camp by design. And I would say oh. that when they're successful, it's very much because they're melodramatic. Was, he, was that working for everybody? Because I enjoyed the scene. I oh, liked it's definitely it. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I liked it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It depends it's on exactly like, the game fun. from beginning to end. Yeah, I, I, I guess I need to be more familiar with the characters. Yeah, the genre and the tone overall. I, I'm not familiar with it, so I can't speak to it. Yeah. But in isolation, uh, I, it is an interesting line. What is a man, a miserable pirate, pile of secrets? I assume that's talking about how Dracula here, this vampire guy, this, uh, this, 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 this Dracula is, I guess he thinks that the like, humans are, they, they harbor lies and they're deceitful and they got a lot of problems and a lot of foibles and faults that they kind of keep to themselves or don't want other people to know that they're, they're deceitful. That's his view of what people are. Mm. I don't know. I, th I think that line specifically is fucking bullshit, but... Uh... I like the line. I, I like I like that line. <laughs> a miserable pile of secrets? I mean, it's... I, I, it is a man. Line. A miserable yes. I, I, pile I, I, of secrets. I think secrets. the line is fucking stupid. I don't, I don't think so. It's talking about... It, to, to refer to a man as a pile... Uh, a, a miserable little pile of secrets. <laughs> that's funny. There's all, to be fair. There's, I don't... That's weird, because when I hear that... There's nothing about that that's funny to me. I mean, Boogie because, is a pile, yeah. but I don't think of a man as a pile usually. <laughs> no, well, isn't that no, the point no, though? Because it's not like literal. It's not a literal pile. It's like figuratively. <laughs> He's dismissive. A man well, I know it's figurative. Large, <laughs> it's a I large also don't think Boogie is a literal pile, Rex. <laughs> He's well, also, yeah, I guess, I, I... ultimately expressing why are their souls worth saving? Like, the, like men are nothing. There's no point in feeling sorry for them. Yeah, if you're there's no good like in me. men because men are a miserable little pile of secrets. Miserable in the sense of that's what he thinks about what he's about to describe. Little in the sense that he thinks very well, little of them. He sees himself as better than them. A pile, think, meaning yeah, that they have a I lot think of these flaws and secrets, the game which is their deceitfulness. Yeah, I, I think well, it's I mean, yeah, that is kind of true because, again, the translation is notably not really accurate to what I think is apparently in the Japanese text, yeah. although I don't speak Japanese, the... so I can really tell you that. But at the same time, it, I feel like it works really well at the same time. Uh, nah. Yeah, I like it. I think it works really, uh, yeah, I think it uh, works well. Even though I don't know much about Dracula's character in the game, I think that one line says a great deal of what he thinks of people. He's more overtly evil in the games than he is in the Netflix series. All right. That it's melodrama is the fact that everything Richter says ends with an exclamation point. It's just a lot of yelling back and forth, and this dialogue exists purely... To so the marriage story example doesn't work, because that's a lot of yelling. <laughs> that would have had exclamation points at the end of most yelling. 
to create mm. a sense of conflict that really isn't there. They totally have. Do I don't even know anything there. about their He's game, but they clearly have. Him. They're there <laughs> to fight. <laughs> yeah. The last yeah. line it's is like, like "Time, I'm gonna fucking kill you." So, it's it's like, but enough talk, have at you. They're about to fight to the death. I don't think that's it's full a conflict. level boss fight preamble is what that is. Like, it's assuming just, it's like, not trying to be camp and funny, and it's trying to be serious. The only failure really is in the over the top performances. It's not the words, as far as I'm concerned. And because of that, it just comes off as laughable because it's just so over the top. So you don't want this type of melodrama in your stories. Instead, try something like what the Castlevania Netflix series does in this next example. And it's a very similar scenario. Mm -hmm. We have Alucard, who is the son of Dracula, going into a confrontation with Dracula. And they're going to have a conversation here. Pay attention to how different it is from the first example I gave you. Father. Son. <laughs> Your war <laughs> is over. Gonna do a safety pause. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> doodle, 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 Welcome doodle. to say whatever you want. I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. Netflix. This seems more <laughs> funny to me than the last one, actually. Well, out of context. It, it, yeah. I like this scene. It, well, it's probably much it's, better it's in context. It's just funny to cut to a scene where you just go, Father. 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 Son. <laughs> Wait, who talks because like that, you though? Say so. It ends in the name of my mother. <laughs> it's out of context, it's just funny. I mean, this seems way more overdramatic than the other scene. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the I don't have any the context for anything right. that's happened before this. Father, in the name of I mean, of if father. you were delivering this... <laughs> If you're delivering this <laughs> like the Symphony of the Night game dialogue, it would seem as silly. These exact words. It yeah. endures in the name of your mother. Okay, so notice how the dialogue in this confrontation is toned down and measured out. Toned down? It's the performance, <laughs> no, it not the dialogue. Um, <laughs> it's super fucking dramatic. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree that it's to toned down. I guess compared to shouting, it's Less just um, loud. You know, it's quieter. They don't say a lot of words. <laughs> because yeah, I can just, just easily, I can very easily imagine the response being, you know, it's because of your mother, especially when someone in the brings name up of my mother and loved ones. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly the way you just read it. it. You this can is all feel performance the notes. Yeah. motion boiling beneath the surface of their words and that's so much better than what we got in the first example where everybody's just shouting back and forth you couldn't feel well, what if an example <laughs> what um, well is this is bizarre yeah has the verbal battle attack and defend the last one did yeah, absolutely the last one did the last one was Michael very throws his wine glass yeah like, <laughs> he's attacking the floor with his wine <laughs> no the floor takes two damage Characters are practically restraining themselves from lashing out, and we get the sense of the subtext, the emotion that is underlying it. And also we get the verbal battle, the back and forth, it sounds I, natural. The problem is, like, Everything you need to make more of a case for why characters can't yell, because, like, that's kind of... Because saying, like, oh, well, the emotion's boiling beneath the surface, yeah, mm -hmm. that can be that can be fine, that can be totally fine. Um, but it can also be totally fine for characters to be screaming at each other. That mm -hmm. there are screaming is cringe, though. Well. Yeah, don't. I mean, I guess as long as we just decide that that's the case, I'm, it's it's more <laughs> so just saying like, yeah. See, the reason why this is good is because it's toned down. It's like, yeah, sometimes when it's amped up, that's the right decision. Uh, emotion boiling beneath the surface that can be fine. Sometimes it's it's better if the emotions are actually like bubbling over. In a classic uh, in chat. Really good. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't know. It's, I, I, for whatever reason, I'm thinking about the melodrama one would be uh, in Rings of Power, you know, the the one where uh, Galadriel is screaming. At, yeah. No, not that one. The, um, oh, the no. one where she's the other screaming one. at Sauron on the, uh, on the, raft? On the boat. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that one. That's, That's what I would think of as melodrama. Last episode, yeah. Yes, that would be Sorrow like lives. melodrama. Sauron lives. Oh. <laughs> it's just really, really, really unnecessarily cringy <laughs> and over the top. <laughs> it's a bad one about this oh, dialogue man. in the TV show is considerably better than what we saw in the video game. If now, the not, third type of bad so, dialogue is exposition, yeah. specifically exposition mm. that involves characters discussing things they already know. Oh, and right. this is often called the as-you-know-bob. Well, this will be the Which, easiest uh, one to nail. Like, yeah. 
this is way more so agreeable because mm -hmm. like as you know bob and then explaining what they know is, yeah, is yeah, a case yeah. of, there's very few times when you can just my, my character saying that exchange <laughs> I mean, they still... mm -hmm. sorry i just want to go back to the previous one very quickly i feel like the obvious counter example um is the boondocks where like they have that one really melodramatic scene and it's fucking awesome well, I think that's what Rags that? opened with when we talked about this subject, was like, there's, I hope he didn't mean all melodrama's yeah. bad, as opposed to, contextually speaking, when you are engaging in melodrama when you should not be. Because there are plenty of yeah. opportunities in stories where melodrama is used because the character is being melodramatic, as was mentioned, but... Yeah. 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 It's... Well, anyway, so you got characters discuss things they already know. Lazy exposition often sounds unnatural. I agree with all of them. Let's, uh... yeah. That if you have two characters agree. and yeah. one of them is named Bob, you might have a scenario where one says, as you know, Bob, the house down the street has been haunted for decades. Or, as you know, Bob, my wife works at the supermarket so she can help your kids get a job. Or, as you know, Bob, we're just saying this so that the audience can understand where the plot is going. Yeah. That sort of thing. The as you know, Bob yeah. exchange is not what you want in your stories because it's just a cheap attempt at telling the audience something. An example of this comes from the- Oh, oh. oh. oh my god. Oh. Wait, wait, wait a second. Of wait, wait, why, wait. This why, is- why, why this is my Of all examples This is my favorite pull. movie. Why is Lord of the Rings? No. No. What are we doing? No. Why are we here? Wait. Lord of the Rings or you Fellowship right of the Ring? Oh, is, look, is, oh is, no, is, no, is, I know what he's gonna say. That sign, that sign is exposition. Because we all know it's his birthday. There's no reason for that sign to be there. Take that shit down. We know why we're here. <laughs> These oh, people know why they're there. They don't sign. need that fucking sign. Bad all right. Dialogue. Let's not panic. He oh. could, this could be any. Who knows? First Lord of the Rings it's movie. Gonna it's gonna be the speech. God damn it. It's gonna be the speech. He's gonna criticize the dialogue in a scene that contains I like less than oh, half of you not, twice okay. as well as you deserve. It's amazing. Birthday. And Bilbo and Frodo have this exchange here. Pay attention for the as you know Bob moment. I'm very selfish, you know. Yes, I am. Very selfish. I'm gonna pause for safety, you know how uh, it goes. Blim blam blim 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 I mean, blim. Is it because they said Isn't as that you Frodo know? Frodo doesn't know. We're gonna, that have to, we're gonna wait. We're gonna have to wait for the explanation because holy shit, he's touching a nerve with this one. Yeah. I don't know why I took you in after your mother and father died, but it wasn't out of charity. Okay, so in this example, Bilbo and Frodo are discussing something that they both already know. Neither one of them is really gaining anything from this conversation. Not it's really, purely no. there. No, that's the not true. Oh, that's yeah. not accurate at all. Because he, he I don't think that oh. Frodo thinks Bilbo is selfish in this scene. I think gotta, Bilbo no. is saying, hey, wait, just so you, you might have think I've been very altruistic taking care of you, Listen, but it's Lord I was actually being selfish. It's so good, all right? Almost every part of it. So we got to roll it back. He's, it's the sack Phil Baggins is, uh, they're running around, and he notices them, and he's like, oh god, Frodo, hide me, and then he does, and then the context of this whole party is that he's leaving, right, he's building up to the speech, he's about to abandon yeah. everyone here and go to Rivendell, so what is he thinking about? Well, Frodo just protected him from the sack Phil Baggins, and he's reminding himself of how awesome Frodo is, and yet, he's mm -hmm. leaving him. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the conversation is him trying to reconcile that fact. I took Frodo in, I raised him, and I'm leaving him, and then he says, you'll be yeah. alright, right? Like, he's reassuring it's also, himself, it's also... um, building yeah. up to abandoning yeah. him. And he's also letting Frodo know that um, he believes he has the spirit to be able to take care of himself, unlike a lot of people in the village that he did not have that same relationship with. Which is not something and Frodo would necessarily know why he took him and why he raised mm -hmm. him when he is a bit of an he's, asshole, which is what he opens with. He's like, I am yeah, kind a, of an asshole. He says that after yeah. this, but he, he's, he's also yeah. like admitting something to Frodo that Frodo really doesn't, you know, know. That he took him in, but it wasn't out of charity. It was, you know, because of this other reason. Mm -hmm. He's trying to be, he's trying to level with Frodo and be like, yeah. no, no, I am. Yeah, I and, am and I think it's, it's not prompted randomly. This is because it, he's about to make a huge life decision and Frodo's well, the main person he worries about suffering as a result of it. Yeah. I I strongly believe that uh, not all exposition is bad. Exposition to some degree is needed and if it's natural and well written. Uh mm -hmm. it depends on a context you need to communicate uh, to the viewer that information somehow, right? You can't just show everything. To some degree you need to use exposition. And also what if the characters actually do need to exchange information on screen? What just because it could be counted as uh, exposition, make it bad? Because 
in reality, we actually do in our lives exchange information. And if we were in a movie, that would be labeled as exposition. Should that be written off as bad? You know? It is, yeah, it, so, it is often important for people to, for, for catharsis or to make sure to cover their bases that I, I'm putting out, I was like, you, you know this, I know this, just to be sure, we need to know this is the state of things, yeah. especially if a decision's about to be made or if you're about to debate on something yeah. or try and figure out a solution to something here's the situation it could be the finances of a company it could be the relationship between relatives that you're talking about it could be making plans mm -hmm. for scheduling and whatnot it's like it makes people feel safe secure helps them make more informed decisions if they say stuff like this as you know that that is one way to say it but sometimes yeah. i'll just say it the the whole cards on the table kind of you know well, to get thing really like down to numbers specifically as in there's people in a submarine so you have to pass information back and forth about the nature of locations coordinates and everything so it's literal exposition back forth back forth orders back forth back forth you could i think be valid in having it stay that way but then you know maybe part of a video i might try to construct would be if you have the chance then take it to infuse those pieces of exposition with character so say for example you know, they a character who overly celebrates when they actually get successful hits, you can infuse that into their dialogue. Or one that, through a realization of a bomb dropping on coordinates that are too close to them, you can tell just from the way that he describes the next set of coordinates or something like that. Trying to get well, character into if it. I can yeah. give one of my one of my favorite examples is actually from an incredible movie called The Blues Brothers, where yeah. Uh, yeah. right before right before one of the greatest sequences ever put to fucking film when they drive to Chicago and they wreck all those cop cars and everything. <laughs> Elwood says, it's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. And Jake says, hit it. And then they take <laughs> off. That is pure, that's exposition. They both know all that shit. It ex explains their attitude. We're in this. Confidence. Let's go. Here's what our situation is. Boom, we're going to Chicago. Love that fucking line. Great film if you haven't seen The Blues Brothers. Um, good stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would never say that that's bad dialogue, uh, even though it is, I guess, technically exposition. They are telling each other. <laughs> they always telling Jake things they both already know. It's establishing stakes in the scene and... Oh, hit it. Off they well, go. And just, you you guys... You guys know this movie better players. than I do, but it really seems like the the claim that neither character learns anything new is just simply not true here. Yeah. No, yeah, in this case, I think I Frodo, think he Frodo is unsure. because Bilbo says, as you know, when he's like, "I'm so, very selfish," as you know, and I think he's like, "Oh, this is an as you know, Bob." Frodo obviously yeah, exactly. already knows he's 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 words. Yeah, that's not actually the case. Even yeah, I know. know he, it's not actually true. Well, and I think just, I, I think he was trying to find an example. Okay. Might have like control F'd a few scripts with as you know, found this one, and just like yeah, okay, cool. He's telling something he already a... knows. Obviously, if you remember, he's he's kind of I saying a lot here, spilling his heart a little bit more than usual, and mm -hmm. I think it ends with Frodo saying like, "Have you been smoking the the weed or whatever again?" No, he, have you been, have you been drinking has. the... Really... Oh, drinking something. Yeah, yeah but yeah, point I being was... the... Um... Old, old, old Gaffer's Brew is the thing. Isn't it? <laughs> Bilbo being stoned is a given. It's have you been drinking in addition <laughs> to smoking weed? No. Well, point, point being, <laughs> yes, that's Frodo mixing finds... your medications again. Frodo believes like his attitude is unusual. So it's still... This is this is still a situation that's new for him with, with Bilbo. Mm -hmm. And then, of course... This is arguably more about Bilbo himself. He's saying this and it's for us to learn a bit about him as well. And then uh, no tension or conflict. Well, we we know more than Frodo does, especially on a rewatch. But the music itself is relatively calming. Like, the idea yeah. that there's no tension or conflict and that's why it sucks is very odd. Yeah. We've left the diegetic music of the party, which is present in most of the other scenes. Mm -hmm. And we have gone into, yeah, tone establishing soundtrack. I have a huge problem with this point, um, and it, this applies to like his last point about melodrama because it really sort of um, uh, disqualifies uh, the mentally ill type of characters, which I think applies to Bilbo here. Um, you know, the characters that are not themselves, that are mentally not that well, and express emotions in a you know not such a traditional manner. 
that Bilbo does here, he's obviously affected by the ring, right? Uh, so I think yeah. these types mm -hmm. of rules usually don't apply disabled. to those types of characters. <laughs> yeah, and to use them as an example is very... Um, I don't think it's correct. I think he missed here. Yeah. I'm not looking forward miss, to when yeah. he says, here's how to do it right. <laughs> here we go. Oh, <laughs> no. I think caught up to speed yeah. on what happened to Frodo's parents. And... Frankly, it's just lazy writing. Now, in the it's not oh. lazy writing. Damn, you didn't you didn't mention any of the fucking oh things we talked God. about. Huh? You know what's funny That's is because he just good. didn't notice the subtext, which is yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Yeah, Bilbo's, Bilbo's vulnerable there. Like, he's you know, yeah, he's feeling guilt about the the things he's done, and he feels you know, he feels that he has been selfish. And yeah. I mean, he's how is there more the subtext? How's there more subtext in the Netflix Castlevania scene? Yeah. I mean, again, like, I like that scene, but they're sort of just laying it out on any. the table there. <laughs> on the other hand, if you want yeah. to explain something through a dialogue exchange, do what they do in John Wick. What does this have Sorry. to do with... This... Uh, it's a different... It's a, okay. it's a totally huh. different scene. It's a cool scene. <laughs> I like this scene a lot. But yeah, like, his this points of comparison are weird. This is Bilbo should have punched weird. Frodo in the face. <laughs> the, the, this is just a case of actually relaying exposition that the character doesn't know and doing it in a way that's entertaining. Yeah. That's very different than the last scene. The last scene was subtext that you didn't understand. That's what happened. They're now, if you remember early on in the story here, Vigo, who is the main villain, he tells his son who John Wick is, and he does it in a way that is very cool and very creative. I will show it for to you right now. And the key yeah, thing to know here is that Vigo's too. son is not aware of John Wick's history. Isn't that key as a... That is... like That's the that's key bit of information. You can't do as you know if the character yeah. doesn't know. Like, as you don't the know, point. the whole point of as you know, as I is know. That, yeah, like the way, to, the way to present a good example of Actually, as you know is to find more subtle ways of getting characters to essentially disclose things that they know without, you know, the or it. This is think, this is just a different circumstance. He doesn't know, so you shouldn't present. Well, the way you get around as you know is that the character doesn't know. No, well, you, you need know to what? present the reason. No, you need to like, I think how. You know you a really great example somebody... of repeating yeah. almost a oh. million fucking times a piece of information everyone always knows but tells you something about the character? Take, for example, someone who maybe is not being super honest about a potential illness and repeats that they have it over and 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 over to everyone who already knows. Why would they be doing that? It's like, oh, it's poor exposition. It's like, no. They're desperately trying to God of sympathy for their illness. That's what they're doing, and they're doing it badly, I mean, but it's still say, character. Say what you want about Boogie. He's a well-written character. <laughs> He's well-written, yeah. <laughs> He's I, a I think complex I, character. <laughs> I think I've, th I've thought of an example, though, liar. how you can have you can have an as-you-know screen that's written with a, with a bit more tact than just saying, here, as you know, and then explaining all the things. Have the character who is theoretically doing or facilitating the exposition be asking them questions that they know they know the answer to and having that the a, a character who already knows saying it so be like so you already know these things so why would you have done this like if he says do you do you know who john wick is he's like yeah he's one of those assassin guys do you remember the things that he's done i think i heard a story about him killing someone with a pencil it's like and you killed his dog and thought that would be okay like that, that would kind of be the same thing, but that would that would be a, a version in which Theon here already knew. When this is not that case, he doesn't know, and he needs to be told. What well, I take from this actually... is uh, Bil Bilbo should have punched him in the face, like <laughs> punched Frodo in the face, and told him like, "You don't know what this, <laughs> who the Sackwell Bagginses are, do you?" <laughs> Let me tell you about the Sackwell Baggins. <laughs> what do you know? What do movie? you know about this ring? Oh, it's a nice little piece of jewelry. Poof. Let me tell you about this ring. The ring. Oh my God. The sackful baggins, they're the boogeyman. It's like they said the sackful baggins to kill the fucking boogeyman. <laughs> I mean, like a hundred years after Lord of the Rings, I think at that point you'd be, you'd probably have stories in the Shire. It'd be like, yo, the baggins, they've, they've been through two major conflicts. And they're like the only people who have ever you left the Shire. You don't fuck with the baggins, yeah. yeah. History is not um, what you did, but there's... son. Sorry, there's actually a good example of this in John Wick, though, where the mechanic calls up this guy and says, oh, yeah, uh, Theon 
killed this guy's dog and uh, stole his car. It was John Wick. And this guy just goes, oh. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the boss. Yeah. yeah. The boss calls the mechanic and asks why you why you hit right. his son. Hit his son. Yeah. Yeah. He explains I, I guess it. The... He's John Wick. He said, "Yeah, you're right." And he's just like, "Shit." Yeah. Totally understood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scene it's totally changes. It's who you did it to. Who? The fucking nobody. Yeah. By the way, the performance is so yeah. fucking good here <laughs> as well. Oh yeah. That John Wick is the good one. Nobody. It's John Wick. He once was an associate. John Wick is so good. Dude, this, these scenes are so fucking, like, not at all the same. I just, I don't even know where to begin. Oh. Like, well, broadly <laughs> speaking, what is good, what is bad? They're, like, okay. they're not even close in, like, what? Two hours. It's totally different. We call him Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. <laughs> we call him Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> 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 Well, John she made up with my silverware once. <laughs> because he disappears at birthday party. <laughs> they just established that Theon did know what Baba Yaga meant, because he immediately was like, yeah, I know, the boogeyman. That's what that means. Back to the boogeyman, he was the yeah, one who sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. Okay, so this is much stronger. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Oh, I, love I love the delivery. It oh. avoids being on the nose. <laughs> no, it is. It is, it not is entirely on the nose. nose. <laughs> it's <laughs> super on the nose. It's all on the it's nose. It's a and father explaining to his son that shit is about to go down. You fucked up seriously. <clears throat> Here is how you did it. It's super on the nose. It would be He's weird. If he was being subtextual nose. to his He's son. Just, is this a phone <laughs> video? Like, what, what? no, this is a. Well, this he is just writer, shows a scene. Nuts a lot, or whatever his name is. He, I think he's a fucking troll. <laughs> he no, he's not a troll. He's the man you send to kill. The he wrote man. a book. He says a lot on the notes. Would you just you, 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 you fake published a whole book just to make this video? <laughs> you would never. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, like, oh, I, I, I think need to see the bad dialogue dialogue video from Chuck Tingle. <laughs> he he chose a scene though to describe a void being on the nose that is very on the nose, but just is in a movie, a scene, and a context where on the nose really works well. It's not yeah. a scene that isn't on the nose. It's just a good one. <laughs> the Bilbo Frodo yes. exchange because stop even. Why would you even compare it to Bilbo and Frodo? I don't even like. There's no. There's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Vigo is telling common. his son something that he doesn't know, and it's also something that the audience doesn't know. We finally get to learn who John Wick is, why he's such a threat, why people are afraid. What the fuck is the connection, man? <laughs> we finally get to learn who the Sackville Baggins is. On. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> the John Wick scene has more in common with the opening dialogue, or sort of like like preamble stuff in Blade, where it's just like exposition of like, hey, yeah, here's the deal with this world and this dude in it, and this is why you, you should think he's awesome. This is Katana. She's got my bag. This like is the, the Hobbit you sent to kill the fucking Sackville back. <laughs> I feel like the perfect... I feel like the perfect example of what he's trying to go for here is um, TFA with oh, she's with uh, the captain of the Millennium Falcon, Han Solo, your because that's <laughs> way over explaining information that he already knows. Oh god, yeah. I hate that, that should have been the example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would be a better comparison, yeah. Yeah, the, you're right, because it's Snoke when when he's talking to Kylo. Yeah. And he, what do you say, the captain of the Millennium Falcon is like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we know who that is, and I guess he knows who that is. Your father. You're like, oh, well, alright then. He goes, yeah, Han know, Solo. <laughs> you're like, okay, stop. You don't have to tell <laughs> me every time, Snoke. <laughs> You know the guy. <laughs> he holds up a yeah. picture. <laughs> that one. You told me five times today, you fucking... <laughs> really Previously like about this dialogue. Previously known dialogue here is that Vigo never actually calls John Wick a hitman or an assassin. That kind of thing, if he were to say either one of those, that would be on the nose. Oh, He said he's the guy you send to kill the boogeyman. <laughs> but he didn't yeah, he... say the word assassin. <laughs> he he never said, Billy. as you know. He fixed he never his cars. He no. fixes cars for a living, but I didn't call him a mechanic. What? Yeah. What did? What were we supposed to think when he said he he's the one you said to kill the boogeyman? Like that he is just a painter. I, I, he's really good at trading stocks, I guess. I don't know. Okay. He's a good doctor. 
John Wick was a great hitman. John Wick was a great assassin. Nah, that's kind of boring. Instead, he gives this vivid description about Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. He's the one he's sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. Those well, are what would you like call assassin. a person you send to kill someone? <laughs> also, it's not fantastic as an explanation when you just read the dialogue to me. Like, yeah. yeah. Why is that good? Tell me. Great details. We're the fourth the great details. Okay. Great detail. You just described yeah. the job of an assassin. You just lit you didn't say the word assassin, but I it seems like a low bar for good dialogue. What type of bad dialogue I, mm. is forced poetry? Sometimes right. you have characters who normally speak like everyday people, and then some kind of event arises in the story. Mm. Maybe it's like romantic related, or maybe it's like a big moment in the story, and all of a sudden they start speaking power. in flowery language and purple prose and whatever it may be. <laughs> and it just doesn't sound like Edible. them. It sounds totally unnatural. I think one of the most notorious examples of this is Anakin Skywalker's I hate the sand speech. I'll play it for you right now. <laughs> I don't like sand. <laughs> It's coarse and rough and here. Pause, 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 pause. This is not poetry. This is not even poetry at all. Yeah. It's the opposite of the rhyme. Yeah, well, yeah, he's not. It's true, because if it does, I am haunted by the kiss. I think I'm haunted by the kiss is more poetic than, yeah, sand kind of sucks. Yeah, I was kind of expecting him to reuse that scene for this. Yeah, of course, well, it's rough and irritating, and it said. gets everywhere. Poetry. <laughs> sand is of land, and it is in my hand. And he presents it to Padme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good writing. And this gay, I don't want it to stay. Please go away. Irritating, and it gets everywhere. Not like here. <laughs> here, everything is soft. Pause. 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 <laughs> Wait. <laughs> The horny swallow. swallow. Does there. Yeah. The horn oh, swallow. God. It's a classic tactic. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> salivating looking at you wearing that. Better swallow before I choke on myself. And smooth. Okay, so Anakin should not be talking like this. It's way too flowery. It's not flowery at all. This is, <laughs> it's not this flowery, is, no. This is not at all flowery. It's coarse this and is... rough, really. <laughs> and it gets everywhere. And it gets everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like Shakespearean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's stupid. Tries also, too hard to be. This sand is coarse and rough and irritating. <laughs> and it's everywhere. Wow, what a poem! Like, why did you come up with that? Wow. I don't know what, what can you say about that. He's just not wrong. Like, like that's not the problem here at all. But okay. And it just comes off as unnatural. Now, this isn't to say that characters who speak like everyday people can't have a poetic moment every now and then. Because you can have characters who are gruff and nasty, and they come away with a line of dialogue that comes off sounding pretty poetic. But the thing is, you have to keep that dialogue grounded in their character. Here's an example from Game of Thrones. It all comes right. from the second season, episode nine. It's it involves the who is the head of the King's Guard, and in this scene, he decides that he is done with the King's Guard. He is abandoning his the army. The King. <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely confused, like because I was already confused. What's a poetic <laughs> line from the Hound? He doesn't do poetry. <laughs> Why the King? He's the least poetic person there. Well, I think that was was that not oh. part of his point? He was saying like even the least poet, like the most gross. I have to see his example. I'm a little lost here. And. In the scene, he yeah. has a poetic moment, but it is still something that sounds natural coming out of his mouth. Your king's guard, Clegane. Yeah. We must beat yeah. them back or they're going to take them. Okay, yeah, I know exactly what this is. How is, is this poetry? Where yep. This like, is so yeah, poetic. I was about to say, I was like, this one? <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully I can get it in one, but here it comes. Fuck the king's guard. Fuck the city. Fuck the king. That is so that funny. Is, that is, is, like, I mean, <laughs> is it, is it because a it's a triple? Is this, just like, to be clear. Yeah. Is this this is flowery and poetic? Which is apparently yep. poetic? I don't I don't know. I'm... Fuck the king's guard, fuck <laughs> the city, fuck the king. You might not this know. Is that, that, video. Is actually a very poetic word. <laughs> that is precisely what a drunken soldier who's just done would say. Yeah, I fuck yeah, this, yeah. fuck How the military, is this different fuck from you, fuck Destiny, fuck right. Mudahar, <laughs> fuck Medicare, fuck, fuck He never said How Boogie wasn't that? a poet, alright? But let's, <laughs> okay, let's, let's get the explanation. 
All right, so that exchange, the fuck the king's guard, fuck oh, the city, it. fuck the king, that is poetic within Come the context. Come on, man. Okay. What? It's anaphora, rhetorical techniques, starting consecutive sentences with the same word or phrase, dude. Oh, shut up. Oh, I, I didn't realize Wait. that every drunken weirdo that I've <laughs> seen in my life is now. actually a Shakespearean poet. I, also, I didn't go up to him and say, you were speaking in anaphora. That's brilliant. News you should be writing this down. Also, Most language like, has like, like rhythm 10 to seconds it. seconds or something. I want to hear is like how he says that line specifically. What anaphora or right? Like, like I, I thought he was chuckling when he like started saying this. Oh, okay. I, sure just back a little bit. Yeah. All right. So that exchange, the fuck the king's guard, fuck the city, fuck the king. That is poetic within the context oh, of the Hound's dialogue. That is something that, you know, it, it sticks with you That's when you watch the but no. So if, if he says fuck three things consecutively, that's poetry. All I mean, right. it, so if you use that with any, in any context, I, like, I love burritos, I love hamburgers, I love chicken wings. I love Did pizza. I just do poetry? I love bagels. Fuck, fuck, you know, fuck, I fuck. love hot dogs and mustard and peas. What is it? Fuck you, <laughs> fuck your father, great fuck your honor, fuck your cow. Fr Friggy, that, that's the Simpsons reference. I, mean, I couldn't remember it exactly. It's, it's, Wait, which one, sorry? It's when, fuck, what, it's when he's becoming a food critic, I think. They say, like, uh... He's like, you, you love food? Oh, right. Then he goes, I love food. I love pizza. I love bagels. Oh, I actually... I'm I not like breaking into songs. Mustard and peas. Hot dog, mustard and peas. Oh, Is that wow. it? I can't remember. I think so. Something like that. I love... Well, he says, um, I'll eat... Uh, Egg flan. I'll even eat. He says, "I'll even eat a baby, dear." La 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 la. Who's that baby deer on the lawn? The guy in the background goes, "Enough!" He's just thinking about eating all kinds of food. Great. Poetry. That's good dialogue. So I swear to God, it's oh. funny as fuck if you watch that that clip. The show. Yeah, it's something it's you don't forget good. because of the way it is delivered, the way that the dialogue is arranged. Yet at the same time, it's not flowery. It sounds natural coming from this character. And then the fifth type of dialogue is wooden. I'm gonna say it. This has been a really shitty video so far. Well, uh, you know what? This is terrible example. The broad examples are fine, but uh, the broad statements, rather, the examples are horrible. Some, yeah. some, yeah. Of, the some of them, yeah. some, some of them. them well, wait, I would say like, the like, first statement was 100% fine. So but, uh, I, I think he's right about the exposition. That's well, the problem is all of these are beset with unnatural dialogue, which seems to be the most important agreed upon thing, which is, yeah, don't have a character say something that the character wouldn't say. But you could yes. argue that he is now going into the subcategories. One, they expose it because the plot needs them to. Two, I was about to say the one on screen, which is... Yeah, so wooden dialogue. Um, we'll see what he says about that. But, you know, um, poetic where they shouldn't be, too expository where they shouldn't be, too expressive of an emotion when they shouldn't be. Like, I think we'd agree with all these as subcategories. It's just yeah. his examples have been horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. The, the points are flawed. The examples are abysmal. I still, I'm still a convinced he's a troll, to be honest. Like, I think this is real. I think this is... Fucking check the comment I mean, section, all right? Go find out if he's real. <laughs> this, this, dialogue. This, this is coming from a writer. Is really that doesn't surprise me at all. Rags, the amount of people we cover on this fucking useless ass yeah, site. <laughs> They're I'm like, a, I, you know, I've written for 10,000 years and I'm about to give you the 10 writing rules. Number one, fucking. Did you know that the color blue is shit always? <laughs> Number one, like, fucking. Why, why would, like, where this <laughs> always from? write with poetry. <laughs> You know, the, the number one rule... Are you turning into Trump right now? <laughs> <laughs> I would listen to Trump's right yeah, the best advice. Dialogue, yeah. Best yeah. Examples. I have the best writing, the, the best rules, the best the, the hero always wins. Fuck the king's guard. Every time. Yeah. Fuck the king's guard. Fuck the Democrats. <laughs> Yeah. It is funny though. Watch the, the, DC. To open with the whole, you know, I have so much experience this time, no I let you in on it. It's like, uh-huh. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> that is too formal, it's too stilted, it sounds completely <laughs> unnatural. Dokey. And one of the best and funniest examples of wooden dialogue comes from the original Resident Evil back on the PS1. And all you need to know in order to understand the context here, Resident Evil takes place during a zombie apocalypse, it takes place inside a haunted house, and the main character, her name is Jill, she is trapped in- Is it a haunted house? 
No, it's, zombies still zombies. Not a, it's not a haunted house. It's just a house that has zombies in it, which does not yeah, make it haunted. There are no ghosts. ghosts. It's not a haunted house. I don't think. I'm not a Resident Evil purist or anything, but I don't think that it. It's not a haunted house. Like, I mean, it's just right, a zombie. Fair, though, in the name, right the now. resident is evil. But the thing <laughs> but is, not that haunted. This is just like his. his <laughs> it's not Resident called haunted evil. Resident evil. It isn't a haunted yeah, this, house. Or resident this haunted. is very similar to a Symphony of the Night example. Because this is a Japanese game from the mid-90s that famously has a bad translation. Well, wait, what's what's his explanation of it? One of those rooms Jill where Samuel, the ceiling so, falls down on yeah, you. Yeah, but what's, you have to wait until he says Jill things Sashimi, so we can see what so. he says. She's basically like a SWAT team member, and she's calling for help, and one of her friends manages to save her. And Probably after she is point. saved, just listen to this dialogue. Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. But Barry, didn't you say you are going back to the dining room to do some research? Why on earth are you here? Uh, I just had something I wanted to check. Now, let's get back to searching Your for the ass. lost captain and Chris, shall we? <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that dialogue is so bad that it's good and it's bad again. Obviously, if you're writing a story, you don't want to write like this. You don't want to be repeating Barry's name four times. Translate. You don't want Jill saying things like, why on earth are you here? Like she's 10 times her actual age. You want to avoid these things. And what I actually did here, I rewrote Ten the dialogue. 10 times her actual so age? How old is she? What? <laughs> hmm. uh like, I just think there's something unfair about him using examples of things that were not written in English. Like she's yeah. talking like she's 300 years old? Like what? <laughs> the fact well, that two of the examples part used, even though I disagree with one of them, is, yeah, translations is, like, weird? Also, yeah, uh, It's weird to be using as an example to prove a point of why this is poorly written. It's like, well, I mean, but it wasn't written the language that you're criticizing. <laughs> You know, like, on the, mm -hmm. two on the nose to say thanks for saving my life? Um, I can buy plenty of people saying that when they get their life saved. It might just be the performance. You may not buy that she feels There's, that way. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. He played the whole the first, scene, the first, but... like, dialogue is fine, but the, the rest of it, this bit, you know. I mean, this is not a movie, so... Uh, but if this was a movie and this is how it appeared... I would say it's the problem with the direction and pacing, and there's a lot more to it than just writing. The, the silences between thing, pauses. Yeah, the important right, thing in that well. scene, from like the story standpoint, is making it suspicious as to why Barry was where he was, because one of the members of the team does work for Umbrella, and you eventually find out mm -hmm. it's not Barry. But it, that that scene did have a purpose beyond just a, we're going to say a joke about a Jill sandwich. Well, yeah, no, yeah, I think I agree that there's there's so many problems. This is not a great example to isolate the stilted thing, you know. That it works and makes sense. And a wooden, I think he said. Fits the character. So here's the rewrite. It's very simple and to the point. You okay? Yeah, thanks. Thought you were headed for the dining room. I got sidetracked. By what? Nothing. Listen, we should keep searching for the others. So with this rewrite, it's very simple, but... At the same time, it's natural. You believe that these SWAT team members would say things like this. You're not having them say things like, why on earth are you... I'm not impressed with this rewrite. No, it's kind of meh. And I, it really it's really highlights the... It's the really meh, and coming from a writer, before. quite frankly, my expectations are pretty high. The guy's, the guy's channel name is like writer. It, it's the, the writer name. It's and pretty he direct, started off by saying my credentials are a writer. We need to put Jill Sandwich back in there. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's within, if, if it's in Barry's character to be a bit facetious, then he needs the Jill Sandwich fits in fucking perfectly. If that's the way that he's he kind the, of is. He's the old dad-like figure of the team. Like, he, he's the oldest one there, and he, he is sort of fatherly towards Jill. So, I mean, him having a, a weird joke that doesn't really land super well is, you know, that's a thing dads do. Yeah, I, I don't know well, enough about Resident hashtag Evil. Hashtag free Jill sandwich. Game to, yeah. <laughs> you I also don't see so the problem with the line, really why on earth? Why is that a problem? 
Apparently she sounds okay. like she's ten times her age when she says that for some reason. I, I, I don't 300 know. years old. Oh my god, old, she's yeah. a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> totally natural, and there's heading. also that attack and defend going on here. Jill attacks with that line, thought you were headed for the dining room. Barry, he defends with, well, I got sidetracked. And then Jill attacks again. By what? Barry, again, defends. Well, she's just asking him questions that she wants to know. Labeling as attack and defense is... A, is it's a, like a bit of a, a stretch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really... that's. I just wouldn't call those well, things. It, it like, feels like if that, fucking, I don't know, Rags is like, I'll be right back. And I go, where are you going? You go, I'm hungry. And I go, what are you going to eat? And you're like, sandwich. It's like, wow, that was great attack and defend, <laughs> what guys. Of, what kind of sandwich? <laughs> Jill sandwich? Uh, yeah, we're this really gone too deep we're, into the attack and defend thing, and yeah, yeah, it's a bad example that he made. Yeah, yeah. This is Where just lame. Duel... It's super generic. There's nothing well, interesting the... about any of this. Yeah. It doesn't convey the idea that she was almost a Jill sandwich and she just had her life saved by Barry. <laughs> I feel like maybe the character, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you're gonna rewrite it, you'd be like, "What oh. the fuck was that? You're in a room that was about to crush you to death. What is this place? Yeah. You know, what kind of a fucking yeah. what kind of a haunted house is this?" <laughs> she's so <laughs> thankful. She it's says, one of those "Yeah," secular and then thanks houses. after an ellipsis. Yeah, like he's like, "Oh, you see, you believe it because it's uh, soldiers or whatever the fuck." And it's like. Well, they're still people. If you're like, I was about to die. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, if someone saves your life, you will absolutely be more grateful than saying, "Yeah, thanks." Yeah, he's doing the 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 <laughs> fade to badass or like, "Yeah, I'm okay." Good thing you happened by. <laughs> Jill I would have found my own way out of that room with the creepy <laughs> ceiling that falls Good down. Good thing you happen by is more more rewarding <laughs> to Barry evil. than yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it shows appreciation. It's a good thing you were, you know, you were here. And he says nothing. Yeah, thanks. Thought you were headed for the dining room. Yeah. And that, of course, puts questions in the reader's head. We're aware that there's some kind of subtext. There's something going on beneath here. Barry is not being honest with her, and that makes us wonder. Okay. Well, okay, what else is going to go on? Oh, he made a round two. Why is she satisfied by the by nothing as an answer? Like if, if this were a duel, she would she would interrogate him further. Mastering dialogue. Where's the yeah, cause writer McNulty? Bad dialogue versus good right. dialogue. Round two. Oh, we shouldn't, should we? we shouldn't. Oh, we should. <laughs> In part <Nah>. three. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe another McNulty. time. I'll put it on the back. <laughs> <laughs> On episode 350 over here. So only... three yeah. as well. I can only stand so much of this incredible writing advice at one time. <laughs> Just to give an idea, the sections are name calling, preachy, filler, relentlessly repeated phrases, and clunky comebacks. So, mm -hmm. so, Speaking yeah, of clunky that'll... comeback, how's. Mm. That'll be a fun thing we can do another time. <laughs> On in this story, so I hope this helps. Question: Why is it blurry? Why? Why are you? Oh, why no. is it blurry? Yeah, please God. excuse the blurry footage. Well, why didn't he? Look, he's a writer, it? not a filmmaker, right? Okay. End of the day, what like, is your not favorite a line of bad dialogue from a movie? <laughs> Let us know in the record it again. It's I like mean, a thirty-second yeah, bit. Yeah, like no autofocus no. can't be done on this video about writers. writers the the writer is making a video on bad dialogue versus good dialogue. And it was pretty awful video, and but it should be really important. This should be a very important video. I am a writer. I've written books. I my my credentials are that I am a writer and I'm published. <laughs> but I'm not gonna because he 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 edited. He had to edit it either way. You have to either edit the text that says "excuse the blurry footage," or you could not be a fucking amateur and you could not have the footage be blurry. Damn, Rex, hitting him where he lives. <laughs> Uh, it's just like, oh, my, my, do not have high standards. I don't. I really don't. Yeah. I do not expect much. Look, he really it's liked like, the taste. It's like a Zack you, Snyder. This is like a Zack Snyder movie. <laughs> the, the advice is terrible. The dialogue yeah. sucks and it's blurry. <laughs> and the camera. <laughs> Improper <laughs> use of shallow focus. God damn it, it's blurry. <laughs> On top of everything else, Zack Araya. <laughs> the only thing that saves it from a total perfect analogy is that it's not not enough slow-mo i guess yeah more slow-mo please there's no slow-mo in this if it had slow-mo slow it'd be yeah should have slow-mo the last fuck the king yeah <laughs> that's poetry this man. video stuck well that puts us to the next ladder because like i said we're oh. doing part two of that that guy all right it's not happening
<laughs> uh, so we got um we got our old friends extra credits and it's because there was no. this was a video we were considering covering at the time oh when we boy. last went over them but called why i'm lonely gaming because <laughs> <laughs> you're a loser to be lonely which is just too funny of a title not because you're, sa because you're a sad loser i can't wait you deserve to be lonely. Because you back, keep calling everyone a Nazi. Back in the day. <laughs> like, like you're alone you keep and sad. Everyone Nazis. <laughs> Why won't you play you with me? black people to orcs, man. They did. Well, all right. At least oh. I can get rid of the copyright cover. Back to regularity. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's see uh, here. I gotta get to play here. Is it mm. loading for everyone? anyone else? Back in the day. Yep. Is that for everybody? All right, let me reload the page. <clears throat> it's all good. It was just spooling up a bit. Okay. All right. Hey, playing games what? was a way to find your. Uh, hey, we, just a second. Who's, who's is it, name is that? I'm... Is that is that showing up on stream? Back. In... Oh no, <laughs> it's, the... it's not showing up on stream, but I can see it. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was... As well, we're gonna outro, Mister Mister Cash. Is it here, is it you, Mother? <laughs> hmm. Was no. Someone named someone named themselves. Uh, something very naughty. <laughs> Guarantee that that's Kretosis. So when, so when you play and pause it, <laughs> it, it shows that under the thing. If you play or pause Game it, it words. shows that. No. I already know. I know all of you well enough that that's Kretosis. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I could have done that. Thing, but yeah. I don't know if it's a YouTube thing or not. I don't. I don't care myself. It's just a I, you know channel thing. So. I, I use watch so together a lot to watch stuff with friends, and I I randomly named myself as a joke that once, and I, every time it asks me, I just put it back in. <laughs> oh, if it ain't broke, yeah, it, it's table shot. It's table. <laughs> Peugeot. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah, capital. I don't want to hold you longer than you're able to stay awake here. I imagine you go into the sleepy buys or something. I am. Thanks I for having me. Go, bye -bye. It was. We okay. will likely be completed a good time. on our journey, but wait, time you wait, awaken. wait. Hold up, Cap, you can't go yet. We we okay. we were talking okay. about other things. But the the ending of the last video, he asked an earnest question. He asked, what's our favorite line of bad dialogue? And we didn't answer it. And I feel like we should. Mm. We should okay. go down and we should all say, what's our yeah. favorite line of bad dialogue? Okay. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Excellent that's choice. a very good one. I was just about to say, a lot of them are going to be the poor performance in the delivery, but that's a good one just in the words mm. itself. Ah, oh, that's gonna be tough to beat. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the Master of Unlocking from whatever game that's from, I don't remember. <laughs> Resident Evil. Hey, it oh, was yeah, the yeah. same same characters. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'll go with uh, Mortal Kombat 2, the too bad you shall die. The delivery <laughs> makes it perfect. <laughs> Masterful. A number of examples come to my mind. For whatever reason, Jeremy Irons in Dungeons and Dragons, when he's up yes. at the top of that tower, just hamming it up, and he's like, "Let <laughs> the blood rain from the sky." Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's oh. so wonderful. It's beautiful. I, uh, I, I, I did, have, I, I did enjoy having an opportunity to put that in the King Arthur uh, movies, but <laughs> 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 fucking great delivery. Oh, so much time. Well, I can't think of a better one than somehow Palpatine returned. It's yeah, pulling all my focus. I'm trying to think of a better one. It's tough. You turned her against me. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah. I am all the Sith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are they all going to be from Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> I mean, a lot of them. <laughs> they fly What about out. the fucking... Uh... <laughs> they fly. Yeah, that, that's a good they one. What about now. the fucking my mother was re researching spiders in the rainwood forest? Oh, oh, that's a beautiful one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my mother was researching well, well, spiders in the, spiders the, in the though, Amazon. Right? That's the thing. It didn't make it to the final cut. <laughs> so. It was in the trailer, and it's in our hearts. So yep. it counts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is yours, Springy? Uh, well, what criteria do I need to meet specifically here? The bad, bad line, line of dialogue, oh, yeah. yours or his? Bad line. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could use actual criteria or this guy's. But, uh, but Kal-El Noah's, uh, pretty, uh... <laughs> Kal-El Noah. Uh, 
Amazing. Do it. Kill her. <laughs> No. Hey, oh, kill oh, her. Oh, yeah. And enough Why? champagne to fear the Nile. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or I need you to give me this stone. Oh, I think I think I've thought of a I think I've thought of a more deep cut one. Um, Spring Breakers. James Franco going, look at my shit. Look at all my shit. If anyone's ever seen that movie, it's a uh, oh, man. it's a really oh, hilarious God, scene. Oh, man. Oh, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh, oh man, God, oh, oh God. God. Oh man. Yeah. Then, That's probably wait, my favorite. This is not my world. Disappointed. Oh. What is the, the, the famous troll two line the guy says? They're gonna oh, eat them and then they're gonna oh, eat me. <laughs> then they're gonna oh, eat me. They're eating me. them and they're oh, gonna well, eat me. Really oh, oh my garbage god. Garbage day. <laughs> Garbage, uh, garbage day. day. Yeah. That's a good one. I wish pretty perfect. The eyebrows as well. The eyebrows <laughs> yeah. going up and down. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to the eyebrows. Yeah, they're just they're doing their own thing. <laughs> yes, they have. It a did mind not mind. hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's, <that's, laughs> did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> That's oh, I don't think you committed suicide. I don't know what. I don't think you committed suicide. Oh, that's the best one. I can't believe you committed yes. suicide. Oh, that's so good. I can't believe it. I can't believe you committed suicide. How could you have committed suicide? Fucking real brain, man. Is it Fateful uh, Findings where the guy says something like, like, I am now resigning as president of the bank? Of the bank. <laughs> yeah. He's now resigning <laughs> as president <laughs> of the bank. Not in his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, anyway, so bye, Cap. Happy 300. <laughs> Here's Thanks the 300 very much. More. Thanks for you. being here. Yeah. We will see you hey, later. Cap. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, what did you say? Well. Your it face was fair. asking. That's why I took the photo. <laughs> nah, no one guessed that. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we're losing uh, retosis as well. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, now that you have been... tomorrow, I'll try to be back. But it's five a.m. I've been up since nine. I think we've got so. eleven hours to go in total. Myself. Oh my god. I'm like, mm, yeah, it's gonna uh, start getting hotter soon. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining uh, us, and we shall see you in the future. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, happy three hundred. Oh, six thank years. You. Thanks, thanks, thank thanks you. very much. Later, people. We'll catch you later. More. Yeah, see you guys later. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is truly the uh, the dark hour. The, the hour of the of the owl or whatever they say where this is asleep. where you learn this is where you so. learn who your real friends the ultimate are, besties sure. i guess you, i'll leave them only ultimate besties yeah, would yeah. stay to watch extra credits videos <laughs> oh man that's yeah you know it's a lot to ask <laughs> that's fucking hilarious why i'm lonely gaming <laughs> Because you're a sad loser. <laughs> Next video. Next. We, we answered the riddle. It's all good. <laughs> riddle me this. What is alone in yet gaming? It's me. It's extra credit. Back in the day, playing games was a way to find your people. Your D&D group, your Warcraft guild, your Quake clan. Those people became your friends. And in a world that may have rejected many of us as dorks or nerds or whatever, games really... Yeah, like in the 80s. <laughs> it's still like... it's Why don't people want to hang on to the stereotype like video games and tabletop role You can still games. meet people through gaming. You're a social outcast if you play video games. <laughs> like, uh, sure. Okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, when I'm seeing Call of Duty of ads during the Super Bowl, I don't know if you can say that anymore. <laughs> Dude, frankly. look at that Kirby. Yeah. He's seen things. Yeah, the fucking monster. Yeah. Uh, whoa, is he meant to be alive or is he meant to be a toy? I think he's meant to be alive well, and his Sonic, soul has been Sonic sucked is meant out to of be... him. Well, Kirby Sonic cannot be is killed. That's probably impossible. a toy, right? Kirby's literally unbeatable. Is that where you keep your Sonic? Under your I'm death? Oh. Ugh, never mind. Well, I guess his soul got sucked out by Unicron. <laughs> That's a oh. shitty Triforce. Yeah, it's not, uh, not quite... Yeah. <laughs> the bottom right one. You get two wishes and a a desire. Someone failed. You get to have a desire.
We felt like they were the <laughs> method we turned to to both form connections and find community. But today, with... Except for all the stuff that we did in real life with our actual friends and our lives in the, the physical world. But apart from that, yeah, I guess that would be what's remaining. Look at this guy I boasting suppose. that he went outside. Good for you. <laughs> I, it's just so confidently cost? stated. This is how we made friends. It's like, um... <laughs> Calm <laughs> down. We weren't all lonely losers when we were growing up, just to be clear. <laughs> With gaming more interconnected and more popular than ever, study after study has shown that loneliness is more endemic than ever among gamers. And perhaps it's a radical new... Isn't it among everybody? Not just among gamers? Mm, yeah, it is. I yeah, mean, I, mean, I mean, I think so. Like... <laughs> Least in the West. Gamers most affected. <laughs> As always, <laughs> I want Trump to talk about the gamers are lonely. Your whole <laughs> that is horrible. We need to solve this. We need better gamers, best gamers. We need better gamers. We need better LFG systems. We I need to bring back Modern Warfare raid. Two lobbies. No more chat I need a healer, restrictions. But everyone no who joins bands. says hi. DPS. Where are the person. healers? <laughs> I need the healers. Where are they? New everyone wants to do damage. No one wants to heal. Thinking about <laughs> matchmaking that can really help us out. Thanks so much to Claritin and their new cooperative game priorities for sponsor. Priorities, a party game of absurd choices. Oh, okay. We can play now. Would you rather have a scooter or a tote bag or a PlayStation controller uh, or an Aztec with a smartphone? Is that what this, is? That what it is? Is a party game for absurd choices, and the absurd choice is like, would you drink coffee while you're upside down? Do you want a Fiat <laughs> I mean, Five Hundred sure. or an avocado or half an avocado? It's not even a full. Imagine avocado. trying to use your scooter, but it's like this on the floor instead of normal. Can you pull okay. a nose wheelie on a razor scooter? Do you want three randomly dispersed asterisks or a Starbucks? Imagine you look like this deformed approximation of a person. Wow. That's, That's like really a, racist, just a real That's photo. So <laughs> listen, listen, the, the Egyptian hieroglyphic does not appreciate your commentary on the appearance. So sorry. I would say his, but I do not fucking know, so... Oh, today's no. important gaming discussion but more on that awesomeness after the episode okay i want to give a quick shout out up top to john uk the co-founder of game tree a platform dedicated to helping folks find teammates and form friendships through gaming for Aww. providing us with data on this subject and helping to write this episode thanks john all right get okay, so get you're, afraid you're, chat you're we're about to find out no why incentive. with data I'm why you're lonely distracted by, i was a little bit distracted because the delivery is it's just bizarre yeah. It's not natural and melodramatic. It's bad dialogue. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's it's bad bad. a writer told me that once. Despite games being an absolute pressure cooker for interpersonal connection, self-reported gamer loneliness is hovering around 50%, oh. which is way above the average adult loneliness figures. Meaning that oh. young adults, oh. for the first mm -hmm. time since we started collecting these numbers, are actually the loneliest group in the world. But why and what can we do about it? Because they're sad losers. Why is well, everyone strange. avoiding gamers? What's wrong with them? Why are they disgusting? Let's find out. <laughs> why are they disgusting? Why do gamers they suck? Well, the thing is, is that I'm actually curious how much higher it is in the average. I presume that that graph is probably not accurate. Probably I mean, not. I wouldn't uh, trust it. Because it, it made it seem like but it was, you know, 20% or 15%. <laughs> Rather than what it could be, which could be like forty percent, you know, like if gamers say, yeah, they're about five on average five percent more of them are, uh, you know, lonely. Then I mean, why would you single out gamers on this one? It just sounds because like they're the most depressed lonely. class. Yeah. Our reducing friction to play together, to access information about our favorite hobby, and even finding a game you want to play seems like it actually ended up isolating us. Because think back, right? There was a time where we all gathered around the kid in school who had, say, the latest issue of Nintendo Power or something, where you shared tips and tricks, talked about strategy. Who do who wears a hat that has the same logo as the like what a that's so well like it, it it's conspicuously uniform. It's the Flash mood. It's isn't like it? the, it's like a baseball big, player. Big Flash fan right there. Yeah, I guess. It's odd. It's odd. It's too matching. 
and plotted your next play session with your peers, with the people you actually... Maybe it's Zeus. No, it's and the that's their lightning like, bolt. Big fan of Zeus. Just fan of Greek mythology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Light on its I, like, I just really love Zeus. This is his. Yeah. This is his thunderbolt. I hope that. Uh, I, I hope that. Um, uh, what's the actor? The Le Miserable <laughs> sing the. So what's his highlight? Did he just say he get bullied the for gaming? Gladi- Russell Crowe. The people gathering around the most popular gamer guy. Well, that's how they well, now, used to be. Wondering that's wondering how it used to be. Like already, I'm gonna wonder how superfluous. Like. Why singling out gamers specifically going. is going to be pointless? Because if you're just saying, "Hey, you know, back in the day, there used to be more requirements Couch to co-op. interact with people in the real world, but now there's less," that sounds like a. My guess would be that would be a, a general problem, not a gamer problem. That the same problem yeah. applies to people in terms of social media, or like I, I, I'll be curious. Why we're singling out? Well, I presume it's just because they're extra credits and they're making gaming videos. But I don't know. I don't know. I think this could be applied to anyone who spends, uh, you know, has a hobby within like that is um, correlated with the computer or something, you know. And also, like, I have a lot of gamer friends, and most of them are more social than I am personally. I think it's because we used to be a strong people, and now we're all just whiny little bitches, and we can't take it. I'm not. That's I'm not very so social. I despise can we, can we talking get, to people. Can we? Can we not? Yeah. Can we not get political? Okay. <laughs> we're that, uh... People are yeah. okay. Make gamers great again. <laughs> exactly. Gamers are shitty. There I said it. <laughs> and they spell bad. I've been around them. So we knew, or at least could grow to know, rather than watching content creators on YouTube or you know looking up a guide on Fextra Life. There was a time that you <laughs> that had to funny. set up a server or get a party together if you wanted to play your games. And I mean, you, that's does this not still happen? That why there used to be a time where you had to set up a server or a party to play a game. Well, how do we I do mean, it now? Yeah. That's still a how thing. Like, I mean, that is still, still a thing. I'm sure of it. That's still a thing. I think I arcades think was... are a better example of this. Like, when he was saying planning your next play session with your friends, I thought his big point was going to be we used to have to play video games together like in person, but now we can just do it over the internet, and that's made people more lonely. That's but saying we used to be able to set up yeah, servers not, is yeah. wild. You I, can still do I still, that. I still play yeah. miniature games all the time with my friends. Like I play massive yeah, games that are way oversized, and we can't fit the pieces <laughs> through the door, so we have to play outside in the heat. And it sucks. Megature games. That's why yeah. we smell bad because we have to sit out there in the heat because we can't get our gigantic you games inside. You have to carry all these huge fucking things other. all everywhere. And you get Ugh. sweaty. <laughs> oh fuck. And to do so, you had to work with people, forming a small community as you went. Whereas today, many of us, myself included, more often than not, just slam that solo queue button. I mean, it's just easier, right? Couple that with the rise in toxicity. Thanks for. You don't have to. Oh, in that solo come on. Rise. What is he? What is he? Yeah, there's Nazis. Wait, everywhere hang on. And no. They hate you because you're black or whatever. Surely but... the argument would actually be the reverse. It was more toxic before. You guys ruined yep. everything already. <laughs> you made it so that everyone gets banned. I don't even know why we'd be needing to, like, not to set it, but I mean, arcade. Surely that's like one to point to that it used to be that a lot of the ways that people would interact with video games was in a communal space where they could meet different mm-hmm. people or hang out with their friends compared to just, yeah, you just go home and you just boot up a video game. And that, like, you may have had friends that you played it before, but that as more time goes on or the longer that that remains the common way of playing, that it means that there's less and less opportunities for people to naturally form friendships. Not this. I'm just... <laughs> if anything, all of the all of the tools are there. You have the infrastructure and vehicles and planes and all sorts of stuff to meet up with people at varying distances. Your ability to find people who are around you in order to meet up with is shockingly easy. All you have to do is just go do it. People just aren't going and doing it. All of the tools are there. It exists. The well, issue sure, is why do I mean, people not I... feel like they want to? Or there are they too socially awkward to do it? Or like that's the that's the question i think um i think i think it's more so a matter of if you give people the option not to socialize that people will actually take that option a surprising amount of the time Mm -hmm. whereas compared to if people are forced to socialize if you have no choice but to go to the arcade to play video games you're gonna interact with turns out you'll like it 
Well, mm-hmm. it's 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 just mm-hmm. an interesting thing, right? That like if you give people the option not to socialize, they won't do it, but then they'll be like, "Oh shit, I'm lonely." Whereas if they have no choice, then that can actually just gr- create better outcomes. Because like, yeah, yeah you have and... no choice but to be social. Yeah. And by the time uh, they get how, out, how... and okay. yeah. um, no, by the time they get out uh, in the world and need to socialize. They just lack social skills that they never gained in the first place because there was another sort of um, option for them. Yeah, and then you just screwed. <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. good. You, you also, also can, wondering, like, even, how, even how far back we go with this, like, you know, you, you had big gaming calls, so you could just sit at home and play those as well, like back in the 90s. Like, you even, know, you have to go back pretty far in order to have, you have to, like, actually go outside to socialize with people. Like, there's, there was no other options. Even in the 90s, when arcade games were cheap, you can only spend so much time in an arcade without spending a bunch of money. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. like you can you can waste a dollar on Street Fighter easily within 10 minutes if you're not great at yeah. it. And, and if you had like, all least, that money, you could definitely afford a gaming system at home. So you could just sit on. Yeah, that. and that would <laughs> s- end up saving thing. you a lot of money because you could just play the game yeah. as much as you want and not have to worry about pumping quarters into it. <laughs> yeah. But then it would be that the only way that you could play it was, oh, you got to go together and then, like, play split screen. The only way to play together was, like, yeah. in, you know, a real-life setting. But you could still play oh, single-player, like, by yourself. Yeah, oh, I mean, even oh, the yeah, NES so. had two controller ports. Like, there, there were in-person multiplayer games on consoles as well, as far back as consoles were at That's least what popular. I'm saying, is that, um... That yeah, but you have to socialize them like, if you're gonna play, you know. How much split-screen is there anymore, you know? Like, you, you need to know someone really. who's willing to invite you into their home. Yeah, uh, well, and that's what I said, that I thought the route he was gonna go with his argument was saying that the decrease in couch co-op is a thing that people do socially is the big thing, but... Like, I mean, he's really just talking about solo queuing, which you never have to do. Like, you, if, if, especially if you want to do well, like if you're playing an MMO or even a shooter like Destiny, having a group of people who know what they're doing and can get through the raids will always be yep. easier than just joining a bunch of people who you've never met before and no one understands yeah. the teamwork involved in successfully completing those challenges. Yeah. yeah, and pubs are like, totally communities different. Communities are usually pretty welcomings to like but new that... players because they usually need more people to like go on raids and shit. But that's the avenue yeah. to making friends. Is yeah, those people you just queued with. You at any point in time, you could message any of them and say, "Hey, can I add you to your friends list and let's play again later or whatever?" Or "Hey, you're in a yeah. guild or a group or a clan or a whatever it's called. Can I join your group?" At any point, you can do that for free and it costs you nothing. And if you can't make that tiny little thing with like no risk i just i don't know what what is it going to take to get you if if i don't want to be i don't know if i want to be friends with someone who can't even do that you know i feel like our vibes just wouldn't match at all uh well sure but like if you're trying to solve the problem of like broad loneliness and you're just like man if you don't put in the effort to like make friends then shit like that doesn't really die alone and sad no that doesn't you know that's okay i will i will also that's how we (laughs) enter Hello, man. <laughs> Hello. Hey, man. Hey, happy 300th. Yeah. I've been told I'm going to die alone, which is a good start. Yay. <laughs> Only if you play games. Only, Only if you gamers. want to. Cool. Well, nice. I mean, it's yeah. just easier, right? Couple that with the rise in toxicity. Oh Thanks for that, humans me. plus anonymity. And we have a powerful brew for isolating folks within. Like, a, the, the toxicity plus anonymity, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just don't think that's even close to explaining anything. But also, the constant... internet's been around for, like, 30 years. So what do we... Like, surely 30 years encompasses a huge amount. Unless we're really... Like, if we're talking about the 80s at this point, like, in terms of these anecdotes, that, I mean, how you... You know, that was, like, 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> why, are you, just... why are you an adult who's such a fucking pussy well, Why would, Why would... Like, you... Come on, man. <laughs> They've reduced toxicity extremely extremely in the past decade so why would loneliness have yeah. increased if that were a problem yeah i mean arguably one of the things that has mm-hmm. actually prevented people from socializing is that there is less of a culture of socializing with randos on xbox yeah. live or like you know well like in call of duty it used to be that people would just have their mics on and that they would talk to each other but now yeah. like there is no culture for interacting with randoms on uh video games because people generally when presented with the choice of nothing or randoms that's the choice that people will make is nobody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
in our games, mm -hmm. even the multiplayer ones, rather than having. Oh no, he called someone a new. Oh no, he oh, called him a new. Oh, oh no. He's crouching up and down on top of me. Do you like oh, this? No. Do you like this great. middle guy who's that. like, oh. oh my goodness, you call? How could you? How could you do oh, that? Oh my god. He said WTF. Oh my gosh, I know what the <laughs> F stands for. What the fuck does that mean? It's. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> them help yeah. meet our social need so how can we solve this well of course there how can we solve as if you guys well, are yeah, gonna the, solve it I, I mean, yeah like it, I don't know. Again, this the feels solution. like it is a Man, small baby. part of a bigger problem but i don't even i don't even know if where you can begin to figure out how to solve the problem of loneliness in the 21st century oh i, I know, know. you make it third you... places all of that shit you know that's a good place to start you add more words and phrases that can get your entire account banned and all and, of your and, purchases forfeited. You make people <laughs> and afraid related of accounts. communicating. Huh, interesting. Yeah. How come no one wants to communicate anymore? Weird. There are the Jeez. tried and true methods. Things like inviting people you know in the real world to play or learn. Well, wait, if you're, talking about, if you're talking about what people individually can do, they have a million options. I thought we were talking about like society as a whole. Just, yeah, the, what, the tools so for socializing like, are more expansive than individually, ever. Individually, it's exactly what Rag said. Individually, you can make a million choices that will improve your life. I thought we were talking about like broad social change or like something. Like the psychological general societal whatever that makes people not want to do that or not feel the need to do it and because if this mm -hmm. is purely a make a, 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 a video that talks about the mechanics of why i can't find anybody then you're you're actually stupid <laughs> like how to socialize step one socialize well, it's even worse Basically, right because yeah. it's like uh you need to find people to play games with well then how about people you're already friends with it's like thanks man <laughs> Yeah, that was like I my mean, main why idea. Don't you just cherish the few friends that you have yeah, left before they guys, inevitably I'm leave just, you. I'm just imagining the guy watching this and drawn in the the extra credit style, sitting in an empty dungeon, just in darkness, illuminated only by the light of the screen. Nobody around. Oh, he's everywhere. doing he's doing the SpongeBob thing where he draws the smiley faces on his fingers, and he's like, "The gang's all here." <laughs> <laughs> or he just gets oh, like God. some puppets. <laughs> These are my friends. Looking for like-minded groups on social hubs like Discord, but as designers, we might be able why to would do that. That's, that's why like would the that... basic but... fucking thing. That's yeah, not but, helpful. But, yeah, I mean, I, I was just about to. Higher, then why would that? You know, shouldn't everybody be toxic there too? I was just about to say though, like, do you think this past spring it would have been difficult for people to find a group to play Hell Divers with if they wanted to? Very. If they smell. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, no, like, go on a couple social media groups or forums and say, hey, night. like, you guys want to do a game <laughs> and talk, yeah, have voice, and bad. I feel like you can only play with so many people before, like, you click with someone, right? It's weird, because I, I've been recently getting into Daisy again, and, like, a couple weeks ago, I just randomly bumped into this other guy in a server, and we just hung around for a little bit in the game and went up and down and stuff. And before the server restarted, I'm like, hey, let, give me your Steam so that when the server restarts and everything, we can keep playing. He was like, yeah. And so now we play Daisy sometimes. And that was just like, oh, that's just all you have to do. Yeah, there you it's, go. You, it's just, it just happens. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I thought it was just normal to do that like a human. But because I learned it from humans. I'm not one. I'm a dog. But, you know, you, you pick up on some <laughs> things, you know, cultural diffusion. But yeah. normally I just I, sniff I... people's asses and, you know, it just things work out. But... <laughs> I, I used to play that with one of my. I go to the Iron opera in Italy well. and I'm in a lot of friends. So. <laughs> as long as you do it with your pinky up. Yeah, it's a bit of high class sniffing. More than that. So I'm going to throw out a wild idea. Whoa. One sparked by the research the Game Tree folks have done. Whoa. What if we match made for positive social interactions? Oh. <laughs> I want you people to stay the fuck away from Jeez. video games. Always. Okay. <laughs> right? Let's. What do you think when they gave when they had the fucking inception of the idea of people talking to each other in games? Did you think they needed to label it? Hey, this is the nice conversations place. No, they called it just the chat because what the fuck would be the point in creating the nice place? All the fucking negative people would go there. <laughs> this yeah. is like yeah, perfect they, trolling they, ground. We need more yeah. policing in gaming. That's what we need. What if we made a club for penguins? Oh, yeah, we only let the nice people in. Effect. 
Is you, this video we, sponsored content from that website? Because he, he just referred he, back to it again. Where it's like, naive. here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to create a, a social place. You can this go is where the everybody's nice people nice. place. Be nice. You just don't leave. Like, what? <laughs> Only nice people allowed. Problem solved. <laughs> and then you get the people doing moderation. And then someone at one point says, man, you weren't very good today. And then someone else goes, excuse me. Excuse me. Calm down. This is the nice people place. <laughs> like, you can't say saying. WTF. Yes. Did you just call that player a noob? Why are you crouching noob? that much like that? How could you do that? They're not a. You can't call someone a noob. That's no, a thing. And then you'll find and leave. And then you'll find. You know what? I might go to the group B, the spooky group that are allowed to swear. Oh, <laughs> feeling spicy. And then even if they get blocked for dumb shit, you're like, you know, what? just put me in the fucking bad people group. <laughs> so at least they're allowed to talk yeah, to each yeah. other. They're real people, unlike you. Uh, what a what an awful first solution, right? Like like we've got it. We'll make it a nice group. <sighs> <laughs> For decades, we've thought of matchmaking in exactly one way. How do we match you against an opponent of approximately your skill in a short amount of time? And most all of our design efforts have been towards making marginal improvements to that process, to finding tiny refinements to improve match time, or matching you to a more evenly matched opponent. And that's really yeah. common. Well, wait, what, what, what that, the solution was the question. What, why did he phrase it? How did we find out to match people close to their skill? Well, we made improvements to matching people with others no, close no. to their skill. He's setting up. So he's saying this is how they're doing mm -hmm. a thing. He, I think he's about to say this is how we could do it with people being nice. Which is fucking insane. Or, or we're to see exactly why. Too much on... You can check out oh, our video. Oh yeah, we like we rank what? people on like slurs per minute or yes, something. Literally, <laughs> I think it's <laughs> really low. Wait, don't yeah, don't, don't make don't be people. laughing. I think he's about to say it. What if we radically rethought yep. the parameters of how we approach matchmaking? What if we try to match you for the most enjoyable game rather than the fastest, most competitively balanced one? What if we well, actually so, did this isn't so even will, a new idea. This is not even miserable. Even Do we not have it's social not matchmaking for a reason? That, like Xbox it's, has had this forever on Xbox Live where you can like you can pick <laughs> your place. Or, yeah, you can you know, there's there's a couple like groups you could be in. I think one was casual, there was like a, I think one was called core underground. for like, the hardcore one. <laughs> was underground the one where Edge like it was supposed to be the one where you can shit talk? Oh, that was all of them. <laughs> oh. This isn't this even was, remember back in the day. The this was this was when you could just send people voice messages. <laughs> I feel like what I'm talking about might be like mid those are funniest part. <laughs> I don't remember it well enough. I'm just I'm just perpetually I amused do. by this pathetic attempt to fix the world. <laughs> it's, it's just like literally know. all of their problems was, was, no would be solved if they just weren't such massive pussies. What yeah, just grow thicker skin. That's the solution. That's already a, like, but what does that even mean? Like, that's what do you even well, mean when you say that? But like, that has been addressed before the idea of matching, not necessarily just for skill. That is not always you know, what's being factored in. You know, Rag said about uh, slurs per minute, or with people like us would be second. But uh, that kind <laughs> of like actual rating, how could you not end up wanting to try out the worst? You know, like match me with the most slurs per second. I want to see what that server <laughs> yeah. looks like. <laughs> <laughs> jump in as a card game. I would just... only play in that. It's gonna be scenario. full of just a bunch of memesters who want to I know, meme together. but then you know for yeah, five facts <laughs> that one of them would actually just I be guess... like, they get tired, then they just go, so you guys like cards? Like, like, yeah, it's good shit. Like, which one's your favorite? You know, just back and forth and they actually make friends while the people in the fucking zero SPS yeah. server are just like, hello. How are you? Don't you hate toxicity? Yes, I hate it. <laughs> Uh, it sounds oh, like Henry... almost a cheat code to get into the good server. You have to say the N word at least one second per minute. That's a server and password. Then you get in. Yes, exactly. It's the and it's the ultimate in. like entrance exam. If you're not willing to type out the password, we don't want you in here anyway. Hmm. I'm seeing merit to this. Yeah. Forehead tapping meme. Did social matchmaking. Because think about it. I know for me, there are lots of times when I'm hopping into a casual game of something, and I'd much rather be on a team with a handful of awesome people whose play style and reason of play matched mine, even if they were a bit worse at the game than me, rather than suffer through a half hour of rage and toxic. Oh my god. I would rather so have a good experience than bad. This, like, is, okay. <laughs> this is SPS. You have the power. You have, you have, you have skill is... and then social niceness. You could like just mute. You could come from his skin because like he didn't draw the lips. Dude, if you don't like it, just mute him. It would be yes, so it funny. Five-year-olds. 
if objectively the statistics ran, it's just like the fucking more slurs that come out of a person's mouth, the higher skill they were. <laughs> it's like, that's God probably damn it. unironically <laughs> true. That's yeah. almost that's yeah, actually probably. almost certainly They're probably true. Yeah. aggressively competitive and they just don't give a fuck mm -hmm. about social cues in any way, shape, or form. But it would just be so funny. It's like, I want to win, but I, I don't like them. They're mean. It's like people this who grunt at the gym. The case. I want the entire world to be catered to my sensibilities. <laughs> Make me a server filled with. But that's freaks. all I want. That's all I want. <laughs> I can yeah, call freaks, home. Sad loser freaks like me who can't get. Fr I would <laughs> make a server full of all the lonely you people know, and put us together. So the it's thing that awkward. The bugs me about this so much is that they will eventually, as soon as they're big enough, like draw a line and then it'll get carved into pieces that particular community because they've already purity tested to get there, and they will continue to do so. It'll just. Always keep on going. You know, it's nice to have the, uh, we hate all of those horrible, horrible players, don't we? And everyone in the room nods their heads, and then one person goes, well, they're, they're, they all look at him like, oh, get out. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like it just, oh, so, you think you're so much better than all those evil players being mean online, don't you? you gotta make a whole playing yeah. thing. He's practically blaming these fuckers for the destruction of, like, you know, social bonds. Fucking gamers saying mean words like you ruin my Christmas, my Halloween. Don't you my, think it might be <laughs> something else? Toxicity with people who are technically better at no scoping or something, or to be consistently grouped with people that had similar interests and social decorum, meaning that in-game chat was actually an option worth considering. <sighs> but what if someone just like lies and they're like, "Yeah, I want to be nice." No, bring, no, no, no. Yeah. no, that would never happen. I mean, you never get happen. three of those, three of those in a game a day. Through that, but people that are just stealth into the <laughs> server, go in, shit talk, get kicked oh, out, God. make an alt, and do it again the next you day. Know, if it was... All of this drastically increases the complexity of these systems. Yeah, which is a waste if, uh, of fucking time, isn't it? Why the hell would devs do exactly. so much work for this? If Yeah, that's that's work. You have like all these requirements of boxes to tick. You even have like filters where you have to talk to people to prove these things. Like, what are your interests? You have this, 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 this. Are you a nice person? You have this skill level. You, you play generally mm -hmm. to not well, win, but to enjoy game. and all this stuff. They finally get in. It's a huge server. Everyone's talking. Then they take a deep breath and everyone's like, oh, fuck, he's one of those. <laughs> he cheated the whole system. He's yeah. about to lay out every slave ever hit. It's like, no, run. <laughs> <laughs> You already have How a shared interest. You're playing the same. You're literally playing the same no, game right. together I, already. I want to play with Lord of the Rings fans on my Call of Duty game. Okay, so I want that specific. What about group. Lord of the Rings Gollum fans? Yeah. Well, it, it, any true fan one. of Lord of the Rings is group. also a Gollum fan. Exactly. <laughs> true. <laughs> Yeah. In this system, though, how frustrated can you get before it's like, oh, now you're being toxic, you're out? Like, can you say fuck when you die? No. And it's like, oh, well, now you can't be in the good group. <laughs> that's way too far, dude. Yeah, you get degraded like, into the, the like, smelly that's, uh, group. That's a warning. Look, yeah. that's where you belong in the smelly trash chat. That's where you should be, saying those horrible <laughs> words. Personally, yeah. I'd even be willing to wait a bit longer for a match if I knew it reduced the likelihood of, say, someone giving up in the first 10 minutes or throwing the game. What the fuck? Well, you, it's really it's hard to a... fucking account for that shit, man. Like, we yeah. can't I mean, have I what we want. I guess you could track the, uh, I guess you, you can. could track the amount of times that someone, like, leaves, but they, they already put in They're often are penalties. What if, what if they do, yeah, exactly. uh, what if they do what Wings does, though, where he, like, actually just closes the application instead of rage quitting, like, through the menu. As he throws the controller. I don't know if that necessarily... Really gets logged. Well, but there's. Like if someone I mean, I've, it does, does that, but there's uh, also just a lot of stuff. I can just this is only going to work on hugely played video games because once you wipe out everyone who isn't reliably remaining in games that can be decided in the first five minutes, you're going to come across a lot of these players with this kind of history. Yeah, the truth is that the the smaller games are just not going to have the player numbers to be no. able to give you a lot of scrutiny in who you have, which is, I mean, good and bad. No, no I mean, there are some games where when there's not that much of a population left, it means you're almost guaranteed to have, like, invested good players left, not a bunch of, you know, casual trash or random people or people who have no investment in it. But it also means that you might have to settle for, you know, you can't be as picky. Yeah, and also this is risking, like, the euphemism treadmill where, like, um, you can not say a single yeah. slur, but you can say something really close. Like, I think on TikTok, they mm -hmm. say regarded instead of retarded or acoustic instead of autistic. And they just basically ADF say the same shit. There's a big one coming up, yeah.
No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like how humans you must be really one. fucking passive aggressive. Oh, you and, did and great, dude. Yeah, you did so well. Yeah. Replacing letters with numbers. Yeah, literally just doing irony. You just train everybody to avoid saying the thing because you've become boring. Yeah. Because of personality <laughs> clashes or someone raging that the bottom lane got off to a bad start. Yeah, but if it fucking destroys the whole game, they're yeah. a little bit welcome to be upset, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe people should be held to a fucking standard in a video game if, if they're on my team. Maybe learn to fucking I mean. play. The MOBAs... How frustrated can you get before you're just booted out of this service? It's how it, it, when the top lane nails like... it, but the bottom lane has fucked everything so that the carry's already <laughs> shot off. You're just like, well, that's it, isn't it? You fucks. <laughs> the whole team will like, if I'm, excuse yeah, me, sir, that's very toxic lobby... of you. It's like, yeah, it is. If I oh, make my okay. Deep Rock Galactic Lobby and we're playing Has 5 with modifiers and your level 12 rank have an ass comes into my lobby, sorry, how about you <laughs> find someone else's time to waste? Well, that's Bye. not very nice, Mr. Rags. I'm not going to play bet. with you. Fuck that guy. <laughs> well, you can waste Is that a slur you're spoiler. planning on using on me? <laughs> Despicable. <laughs> And You're I'm sure that most of you watching have had that experience too. Your precious few hours of free time that you got to sit down and game just ended up leaving you stressed and maybe more miffed than you were before you played because you got matched with jerks. What the fuck? <laughs> you got, no, matched like with... Matched with noobs. <laughs> got matched yeah, with noobs. I got matched with the fucking like, what... the blob. Like... What's the bigger problem? <laughs> yeah. At least this one. What's with your fucking puking, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be on All a the team of people who are crass them. and good or people who are really nice but terrible at the game? He's so toxic. You know, the mute button it. exists, guy. I'm just saying. Years he... and years ago, when I played, um, years and years ago, when I played Guild Wars 2, and I was like super casual into it, it took a group of people telling me that I was not doing good and like where I needed to go to look at like info and builds and stuff to get me to be like, oh, like, is it, like, I shit, I had no idea that I was actually not really performing well, but I, I thought I was. And that kind of was like a wake up call for me for that game. And now I take it a lot more seriously. And I'm very grateful to those people who years ago told me, hey, you kind of, you kind of are doing badly. You kind of suck. You should leave our group not at all, and learn how to play. They were bullying you, and you shouldn't have accepted that. <laughs> Thank God. This example God for toxicity, bullied. is that just Medicare's avatar? <laughs> like, red shirt, white face, like headphones. Missing the hat. As someone's TFG's highlighted, yeah, this person that. is a pro gamer because they're not even letting that controller go while vomiting. They're keeping that game in hand. They, they're doing they, they do what they need yeah. to do for their team. He doesn't even he need eyes know. to play, man. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. need I, I can't see trigger stops or G Fuel. I don't know if they're... Uh, hmm. do they, the extra buttons on the back of it? Yeah. <laughs> Such a <laughs> dumbass video. Welcome, I'm, Nick. Yeah. Welcome back. Hello. Hey, Nick. Hello. Good Boy. morning. Hi. <laughs> we're uh we're going strong as you can tell we're watching a video you, you about gave how... me like an estimate you gave me like an estimate of three hours so i took a nap and i set an alarm and like on the moment you're like did you fall asleep and i, I was back i was awake i was good oh well, yeah <laughs> I, I suppose Respecting. chat can guess what's gonna happen after this video you know obviously oh I'm my ready. god i'm ready instead I'm of so people ready. you liked so what if we offered the option to matchmake you with like-minded players? Ugh. The easiest way to do this would be to offer Fill a survey I, clear. to explain how nice you are. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're oh, oh, this is like work so people. well. You're over 18, <laughs> right? You can visit this website, right? This is so oh. stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm totally 18. Are you generally positive about all races? <laughs> Fuck up. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts Obviously on ethics not. and games journalism? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just hate women. How do you feel about <laughs> equality? You're like, it's terrible. <laughs> it's the worst thing it's that's ever happened. Equality. Oh. For you, an opt-in survey as a player to set criteria that matters to you, and a toggle that said match make me with like-minded team or match make for skill. Or there could be a third party service that could collect the data. Why not have so match make me are, read so my mind and match like make me to the perfect person I could ever video. want? Why not that? Let's just go just further. Clear, all of the people who are insanely good at the game are going to choose for the former and then they're going to destroy you just for the fun yep. of it because it'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All you can do is pray that they will eventually get bored of having no challenge and watching their numbers go burr, so that you can maybe have a good Dude, experience. by the time you get through this fucking server, there's gonna be nobody left playing this game. This theoretical game that has a million servers. Are you saying that I- 
Are you saying that I can't match make with you? I've been playing video games for 30 years. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Data one true and then believe supply... will get through. That to games you play on an opt-in basis. Heck, we could even make those after game pop-ups that say the thing like, did you enjoy this game? Actually mean something and use them to refine our social match. Nobody cares about those. Whenever you get the pop-up of like, can you please write, you're like, get out of my face. Get the fuck out of my face. I want to get back to the lobby. I need to change my gun. Matchmaking algorithm. The system could even try to proactively match people who have played together and gotten along in the past, helping to naturally foster new friendships and weed out bad actors who- No, the vomit man. <laughs> No, oh, he got, he got his eyes back. back. He needs help. Oh, oh, he yeah, he got his eyes back. Got it with the claw. God damn. Just want to troll. Dude, all that's and gonna simply... do is spread it out. Oh no! <laughs> People who just right. want to troll. Oh no! <laughs> They're trying to help. They lift him with the crane, and the vomit just splatters and splashes everywhere. <laughs> They're like, no. He's clearly disabled and needs some help. He's puking all the time. Like, it, how is this not? How is it not malnourished? Like, how is it not dead yet? Well, this person is sustained puke by his pure hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> puke bender, oh my god. Only by conceptualizing matchmaking in this way, we'll start to find new and more powerful techniques to allow our games to once again forge the social bonds that we so desperately need. So everything you've suggested so far feels to me is just going to separate people game, more and more like... until there's nobody yeah, left in the you, servers. You're literally, you're literally saying we should compartmentalize people more so that they won't be lonely. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, all right. Dr. Phil. We need more divisions. So let's use these ideas to fight back against the trend of technology to separate us, to divide us, to allow us to dehumanize each other, and will instead not divide us. use it to make our games <laughs> feel more akin to <laughs> dropping by your friendly local. Like, am I not, am I not no, wrong? Most sorry. of this seems to just be about people being mean online. Yeah, this is not going to help yeah, me. This, this has nothing to do lonely. with the current loneliness epidemic, just people being mean. Are you kidding me? People have been mean forever. Yeah. It's yeah. another rant about people being mean online, yeah. Google Game Store. <laughs> Let's create community and find each other, rather than pushing each other away or shutting folks out when we fire up our- <laughs> He's got a no shit to tell people no. <laughs> the white blonde- the blonde white guy. <laughs> he wore is telling the- the- <laughs> the African-American gentleman or gentleman why would he wear a shirt that has no written on it? Because <laughs> he's on. a Maybe negative man. He's a mean. He's so negative. He's so mean. He probably bought that. His hair is melting. He probably bought it to the shit on the sure Acolyte. No it's one. an anti the Acolyte shirt. It says no renewal no. on the back. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it says on and he put it on up, up inside out. Maybe. You know what? We'll be the first to start in a small way. Aww. Until something akin to that social matchmaking exists in our games, we're inviting all of you to join our Patreon and. Oh! For a My small monthly is... fee, you too can have friends. <laughs> All of the videos we've seen so far so are like, brazen. please wow, give us money. Jesus. Fuck oh, off, extra so credits, brazen. damn. You asshole, you fucking cunt. <laughs> Oh Aren't you goodness. feeling lonely? Oh, <laughs> but you're also yeah, lonely. Like oh. just small pay with the five dollars. No, it's worse than that. It's, it. No, it's not about you. Look at the title. Why I'm lonely gaming. Please join our Discord so that you can <laughs> yeah, play please games with friend. me, please. <laughs> and I also pay me. Please. Yeah. Please. Also yeah, pay my rent and be, be my friend, friend please. <laughs> pay me with your time and kindness. This whole video, it was oh just him God. being like, Get, is there a way to solve my two <laughs> I problems? I'm poor and I'm friendless. I need money and I'm lonely. <laughs> wow. There oh, it is. You didn't gosh, ask for this. Diabolical. Yeah. There it is. Literally <laughs> someone out there wants to play the most fucking lamest gay D&D &D game it's ever such conceived with me. Poor shit. <laughs> like, they shouldn't be able to get away with this. Like, they're the ones that would call everyone else toxic. They just tried to sell friendship to the world like <laughs> <laughs> Like, how did That's you find your wife? Oh, we, we met. We met in extra credits. Patreon Discord. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking yeah. run. We were playing friendly yeah, and the Call other of members Duty. Members of the Polycool are away right now. <laughs> god.
hop in our Discord, uh, where we're planning to host an EC Community Game Day in uh -huh. the coming months. I'm really pumped uh, about this, and we'll post exact dates. Well, really well, oh, you can tell this. you're pumped yeah. about it. Would you put that hat? Is that a hand, or is that something I else? I might even make some friends. filter out assholes? Oh, Making money it does Lord. get people well, Yeah, there's a form you fill out, and it asks, are you an asshole? And there I always go. put the no option, because it's a lie, so that I can get into the game. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it's it's like putting a finger you up think, an invisible butt. You think you'd subvert it there, but they actually have a follow-up question for real, though, are you an Asshole, so they'll get you on that one. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. no. Shit. Oh, uh, no. So if you I are an asshole, they just refuse your money or what? <laughs> no, they would take your one life and ask you to be silent. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need your pity or your money. <laughs> well, I'd like to keep your money, he though. Needs, <laughs> he needs your pity, though. He really needs your pity. <laughs> this later. video but doesn't work then... if you don't pity him. Please join us on there, hang out, chat it up, and make some new like minded friends. We'd also be remiss if we didn't also point to Game Tree. So, okay, so this video is, what is if I just. To make friends oh, who you don't, don't think say. Exactly it's, a, like it's an me. ad for something else they've made. It's a way to promote their Patreon, and all they've done is say, everyone is lonely, including you, because people are mean, but we're not. Come to us and pay including us. Including you. Yeah. It's like better help for this, gamers. This is totally sponsored content. It's pathetic. Like, even, even if it's like, well, it's our stuff. Because I think, weren't they saying that the tree thing helped write this? The tree uh, yeah, thing? Yeah, right? he's like the, yeah, yeah the they guy. said the stats Doesn't from him, and all they said, they the surveys. all they fucking yeah. said is that people are being mean. That's it. That's the stats they got. No, from yeah. the, the stat was gamers are lonelier than normal people. That yeah. was the stat. And then people are mean. <laughs> and then and people are mean over and, over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Since they kind of got us thinking in this direction in the first place, uh -huh. their goal is to help gamers connect mm -hmm. and game with like-minded folks, so you can check them out as well. Most importantly, though, just know- Oh god, your hand's between his torso and his head. Oh, Jesus, you oh decapitated my god. him. <laughs> You're killing this man, You're he can't breathe. Like, he can't breathe? I Spare think. that poor or... bad. Is he one of the toxic yeah, people he doesn't do you need happy. to do this? that you're not alone. Really fucking scared. Look, we've all been there. I've had plenty of no, nights I where haven't. the only light is the glow of a screen. <laughs> Can you lose your hand in the extra credits universe? I, I have not been there. And, like, and, oh know, no, look, he's so sad. It's oh. raining outside. Where I want to have he a meaningful it. conversation with another person, but it seems just so difficult and distant, and I didn't know where to start, so... So please pay me money. Oh. Also, <laughs> people you're playing so games please give with. me money. <laughs> Playing games all the time with people, just talk to them. But they're also mean, no, Rags. They're toxic, also rags. mean. They they're call toxic. him a noob. They call him a noob, Rags. <laughs> oh no! The trauma they of being called, called a noob. noob. I want to do. I want to have all the benefits of friends with doing zero. He's gonna of become the, the Joker. Ever. But a gamer. He's got post-traumatic <laughs> noob disorder. The Joker is a gamer. What are you he talking is a gamer. About? That's true. That is true. He is the, the, he is the patron saint of gamers. <laughs> he is our Joey god. Stan he created the society that we live in. I, I just, just want to keep. Up I, game, I want right? this guy to keep dropping ads. Like he'll just be. Like, That's when I found Manscaped.com. <laughs> I started fucking taking care of myself better, and then people wanted to talk to me. There's Turns a out my disgusting hairy pubes were turning we, away. We everybody, except for the people who live in Italy. Oh, it's a real game of movies. Going for the sponsor combo in that case. <laughs> That's really hard, and it's understandable to feel lonely while engaging with this hobby. But it is understandable when you I block just, out every last fucking person for arbitrary reasons. Just, yeah, <laughs> if you set the yeah. standards, it, so much of this, so much about life is setting expectations. And if you're setting the expectation in other people that they have to find like the perfect, like-minded, identical clone of yourself in order to game with, then yeah, you're going to die sad and alone. Why just yeah, what what if you just chill and play <laughs> games with people? It's not a life or death situation. You can just play games with people. You don't even have to talk about politics or anything. You can just play the game. That the, the aforementioned random Daisy guy, I don't know like anything about him. He we've uh, he's told me a little bit of personal stuff and vice versa cuz that's just what happens when you communicate with other human beings. But I don't know like anything about the guy really cuz we just sitting there we're playing the game together. We're having a good time just chat chatting here and there. Who knows they're, they're, if we have the same political views or philosophical views? Well, I don't know. They didn't finish this drawing. She doesn't uh, have do any feet. Because <laughs> there's a hidden under the dress. Often. Shouldn't there be a glass box hmm. and then a series of things to grab? Yeah, there should what be something is, in yeah, there. What's the claw? claw? Yeah, what's what's the claw what's getting? Is the claw because it would drop the YouTube thing there? Then that doesn't make much sense. It, it looks the claw's it trying to grab all of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Extra credits. It looks like the. 
It looks like the roof is like solid as well. Like the, the, you know, Maybe that's the point. It. Oh, that's the sad reality. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're grasping for something that doesn't exist. It's very abstract. Oh my god, she's the oh, bird okay. in the very cage. Friends. She's the bird in the cage. Oh my oh, gosh, she's the wow. claw on the box. She's the claw on the box. <laughs> wow, best movie ever. Okay. That's the good claw writing. Desperately humping it's... against the box. It reminds me of so many things in Aliens. Well, so that claw is shit, by the way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's not a great claw. Listen, I would, I would make it into their pure server, right? They boot me out straight away. That's if there's right. anything you take evil. away... Sucks from this episode it's that i just want you to know that there are people out there inside the game or outside of it in communities on the internet or irl i found a lot of mine thanks dude Man, thanks for telling thanks, me there are people out there it's not all yeah, yeah, yeah. i should just kill myself you know like yeah. thank you so much. and the first step of course <laughs> is becoming a patron thank you I agree. <laughs> dude, that like giving story. money to me, you can find friends. This that is, is actually like crazy to to be like, yeah, That's man, good. are you lonely playing video games? Here's some stats. Anyway, if you're looking for some friends, pay us money and then join our Discord. You might find some yeah. friends. I feel like <laughs> anybody who covers extra credits cringe should cover this video. This is a classic. It's just not... No. It is. It's nice and short, too. It's pretty funny, it's pretty stupid, somewhere. and it's actually pathetic at the end. The... The premise is I'm lonely and not as rich as I'd like to be. I can solve those two problems all in one well, the, go. The I, would, I would say it's like borderline evil. Like, you know, he's... Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's desperate he's, um, and sad because he's, he's, a, he's a sad loser, like I said at the beginning, and I was once again yeah, correct. He's, well, he's preying on other, like, sad, sad tired people. These he four fuckers here friend. in the picture... Please give me money. <laughs> are, they, are they paying There's him? Five. Are they patrons? Oh, this is yeah. Those are his patrons. <laughs> you have to pay to get access to this really cool guy. He's like, oh, I met so many wonderful people. That he holds out his hand, and they all put a doll. <laughs> He's like, thank you so much, friends. Yeah, isn't this fun? <laughs> he like clocks out after an hour, and he's like, please pay more, and I'll continue to discuss Lord of the Rings. And then in two years, he gets like exposed for harassing one of these people in his Patreon. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he becomes yeah. a, like a massive yeah. drama. Four years from anybody. now, yeah, one of these girls is going to be like, yeah, he was a super mega creep, and he touched me in inappropriately, and he was weird, and he smelled bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's very toxic, right? That was the top tier option on Patreon, unfortunately. That's what it the cost. title seems kind of distant from what he actually talked about. Why, Why I'm, I'm lonely, lonely gaming, gaming, yeah. He didn't really talk I'm about that. It was I mostly people should... I don't know. What was it? How was it this much? Of the it was. It was yeah. stop being mean online. That was the main thing. And then pay me. Yeah. Yeah. Stop being online. Stop being mean online. Pay me. Join my thing so that you maybe I could be less. Lonely. Who would be perfect for this? Would be someone like Boogie. He'd want to get it on this racket. He'd be like, you know what? You you run a good <laughs> idea here, buddy. You're like getting people to pay yeah. you, and you get people to admire you. I like it. I want to be a part of this. Oh, it would brand it as like play games without Francis. Play them with Boogie instead. <laughs> The, the guy's like, <laughs> no, to I'm to Francis. Like, I'm genuinely oh trying to find people who will pay me to be their friends. And then Boogie's like, Yeah, 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 I got you. I got you. Me, me mm. too, man. Me too. Boogie's Boogie's writing notes as he watches this video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Patreon. <laughs> I'm gonna need to do one of those through the extra credits community and i'm very thankful for it and i do <laughs> truly believe that if you don't give up searching you can really find a like-minded and... oh my god jesus christ man is that oh, moses Lord. so pay us just to be clear is the answer if you are end of all of these the... sentences if you ever find yourself wandering through the jungle and you randomly stumble across two people playing a game that you're happy and excited to join you've been you've been bewitched no, you, right. you're you dehydrated, you're hallucinating. <laughs> Something's very yeah, you're wrong. hallucinating, or you've, someone has cast a spell on you, and these oh, people found are the jungle of your imagination. Yeah. Just laying it on so thick, though. Like, Look, how many is, times have you just said basically he the same thing? And then he found friends. Well, he, just, he keeps, like, resetting into, so don't despair. Don't think the entire world is filled with people who will never speak to you. It's like, whoa, when Maybe one day, there? big companies will pair you with good people. Anyway, give me money and join my Patreon. <laughs> and hope the big Maybe companies Moses will can join fix your our Patreon loneliness. Too. Ooh. Yeah, there's nothing that you can do in this. There was no, like, advice for a lonely person. If yeah. they came here it's looking for advice... Gamers are toxic and it's give me money. It's, yeah, gamer, like it's gamers just... suck, actually. Maybe one day the corpos will solve your loneliness. Give me money. I assume somebody already <laughs> kind of said this, but, like, anyone who thinks the way that the extra credit guy does, it's probably good they've taken themselves out of, like, the general gaming population. 
You know, well, that's the I, eventual you say result. That, I thought of that. I thought about Making saying that because it didn't occur to box. me. Maybe it's good that these people have been sequestered. It's like when yeah. they got the porn off of Tumblr, and then all those people flooded into different communities, and things got fucking weird and out of hand. It's the same thing. Yeah. Maybe I mean, but naturally are, the filters these are removed actual from toxic them. people who want to like police everyone and Ugh. tell everyone what's you know okay to say. It's like what happens to the you world if League people. of Legends servers shut down? It's like well, well now we've got a fucking problem on our hands because those people have to <laughs> that go. That kept somewhere. them busy. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it kept them busy and off the streets, all right? Any moment you spend playing a video game is a moment you're going to spend not doing a crime. And now they're... It's like if you had an EFAB survey, like a section on how you'll vote in the next upcoming election or whatever, and that would decide if you're allowed to watch next year's streams or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trick is we'll bat anybody who answers. That's like... Yeah. If you, if you, if you felt strong enough to Fuck, tell I'm us, bad. you're out. No. <laughs> If you have any, if you have any investment in the political process of your country, then get the fuck out of our <laughs> We don't watch you. Here. <laughs> we got memes, baby. Doug Ray Scott played Moses once. Oh, caring get community was well. also. Sorry for the <laughs> he bit got of emotional list at the end of the episode. But, and uh, said, it's important to me. Me? I hope this stuff. It's important to me that you pay me. <laughs> I just <laughs> so fucking insincere. Got you thinking about ways oh. that you can combat your own loneliness if you're experiencing it. And thanks again to John for sharing all the monster? data he and his company. Yeah, that was a loneliness yes. monster. Yeah. Okay, she was battling her loneliness. And Collected it's like because it did monster. really put a lot into perspective about how even though we can all feel lonely, we are definitely not alone in that oh, fact. Jesus Christ. You are alone. Mm -hmm. The title is Why I, I'm Lonely. Like, you I shouldn't mean, be alone. It's not, that's not a fact. We're not all lonely. Some people are not lonely. <laughs> well, the video started off with a massive projection, and he's like, you know how you're fucking miserable? I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I guess that slipped my mind. I, I like that. He's like, well, this the video's not for you. Is, you know you're how happy the only way to socialize life, is You're probably games. not going like, to pay no. me. <laughs> so wait, he was I, literally I, projecting. I, I think that, he was projecting hardcore. Mm. You must be miserable. I am. Mm. Yeah, but like I, I've been in a lot of different like online communities over over the years, and what I found yeah, is but... like if if you're not a fucking massive cunt, it's really <laughs> easy to make friends on the internet. Yeah. Like if you don't if you don't go around just telling everyone what to do and what to say and, and like just be chill, it's really easy to make friends on the internet in whatever community you're in. They're gonna be like assholes yeah, it absolutely shit everywhere, is, but yeah. you know, yeah, because yeah. I'm one of them. So yeah, you'll bump into me eventually. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you may not have but I know what my but here's the thing it's like I said managing expectations I have an abrasive sarcastic personality and I have a very dry yeah. humor and I, I suffer fools not particularly well depending on the game I've been kicked out of communities <laughs> because for, for reasons that I've because oh, that's man. just how it is I've been kicked I out of shocked. groups before like that's just how it goes you know <laughs> And in a stroke of very good luck, our sponsor for this week is actually a game designer. Oh, isn't it enough that you oh, did the God. Patreon you plug? Like, board game. Wait, Seriously? Board game. Wait. Come on. And to bring people together. Oh, if yeah, someone, the board game. If someone with blue hair in a board game tries to enter your home, you need to shoot them. Priorities by Clarendon Games. <laughs> so as you know, games are really in our blood here, and we're always very, very, very excited to tell you about a great game when we find one. You know, you might even okay. say, it's our oh top. My God. What the fuck it is this? So Just tell ass. me what this thing is. I need to know. What is it? What Why is the style change? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ah, thank you, thank oh, you. I'll be here for the rest of this read. In all seriousness, uh, priorities. Yeah, no. <laughs> the dog I is you. pissed off. His only, fr his only friend is yeah, a cat and it's a drummer. Is he actually going to show the game? Or is well, it I'm, I'm, like I'm expecting that. I need to know what this game is. It's a heck of a lot of fun. It's this easy to learn party game of extreme truths and absurd choices, where each round you and your friends are tasked with ranking five random items from love to okay. loathe. Oh my mm. God, look mm. at these options. It sounds Do really you bad. love draw, Hawaiian okay, pizza like or selfies it. more? Stop, we have to start at step one. Jesus Christ, Mahler. What do you all mean? Right. I just I, I just cut to the funny part. You, no, don't read all the fucking the shit. It's just this, ordering uh, five things, no. rags. The man. No, I, it isn't. I, I, Draw five I, everyday I, item cards and rank them from love to loathe. Okay. Step two: working as a group uh, of like-minded people. Hopefully, the uh, other players yeah. <laughs> try to guess your order. Compare the two lists. It's everyone versus the game. Oh, good. Of, of course, this soy nerd wouldn't want a pvp game okay um it's everyone versus the game when points when items are in the same rank it sounds like hell who is alexa 
Is she no, like that's like the, the robot. That's the Amazon. Oh, assistant the robot thing. lady. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon oh, you just Hawaiian activated it for like three thousand people. It just Alexa. Went off in house. Hawaiian Play pizza Despacito. selfies. Long hugs, people. What if would you, you like rank? Pizza, you number one. Man, baby? Do you prefer selfies or long hugs? <laughs> selfies. Oh wait, are like, long hugs with clothes? Depends on who I'm hugging. Uh, yeah, like yeah, this that's is this true. is a fantastic prompt to have as as a scene in hell. Like just a little animated thing where a guy yeah. ends up in hell and then they present this as the video game or the game he has to play, the board game with with a person. Why don't you play shitty party games with extra credits for, for eternity? <laughs> and like they go to write something edgy or funny, and then the person immediately says, No, no, you can't write that. No. And it crosses it out and you're mm -hmm, like, yeah. oh, okay. But it's just but it's just the country of Nicaragua. It's like you can't type that. You can't <laughs> yeah. say that. Put something wholesome <laughs> like a turtle. Okay, man. For example, Tortoise. let's say I pull oh, friendship, Taylor Swift, climate change. I, can we, I have to stop. <laughs> No, no, already. Oh, no, friendship, no, Taylor video Swift, video and climate change. Why are you hurting me? We're finishing. Don't you want to play this game, change. gamers? <laughs> what? I love, yeah. Fin go, being go, go. right and kittens. Would be being right. Um, being right. Being right. <laughs> Should you be able like to guess how I rank them? Any rankings you get right go to the players, and any you get wrong go to the game. That's right. It's a <laughs> the PvE experience, We're having so where you and your friends fun. are working together against <laughs> well, the game. Well, I know I'm because right about climate change. The word Wait, he just called it a PvP the the game card. where you play against the game. No, that's called it's PvE, PvE, my friend. It's, it's called PvG. <laughs> Players versus game. This is First so lame. wins. And I gotta say, after a few rounds... Oh, like, you know what? The game was real good, I gotta say. And the thing I'm promoting was really, really good, actually. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I get 50% of the... every sale. <laughs> Why is this woman wearing a bird skull around her neck? What the fuck is going on with that? She's a witch. Uh, it's called style. Is that like her, is that her fetish? Like, or like her totem or something? Is... She's a Tumblr witch. That's how she controls animal drags. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. oh I've never the police. seen oh. a goat skull or something. <laughs> or is that a bird? She, I guess it's a bird. She grasps the, the bird skull necklace and she, she chants, and then she can read his mind to know what his card is. His nose priorities and win, yeah. <laughs> that there's a bunch of stuff about my friends that still surprises me. No, you, you know, <laughs> I didn't know that Sylvia valued a good oh, hug over a nice fitting shoe, but there we are. I found out a lot about her today. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she doesn't like uh, long hugs. <laughs> Turns out she <laughs> likes Taylor Swift. Who would have thunk? <laughs> I'm gonna assault her later. <laughs> Grab your copy at the nearest Target. They sell at Target. Oh my yes. god. No. Add your own copy target? of priorities oh, at your nearest there. Target. <laughs> or if you'd like to prioritize your time, you can click here. And no. then afterward, why not rank another one of our videos here? No. Once upon a time, Michael Hawkins and Koya 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 Joseph being played, so. Oh, that was terrible. Game nice design of Genshin Impact's login screen. That was just awful. Oh. Well, these guys used to be decent. That's the that's the really sad thing. That's the ancient law at this point. Make... Well, they were different people yeah. back then. It, I think they it was were. like just yeah. legitimate. It was just different people. Yeah. yeah. Because they, Other guys, they another make, channel. Like, you know, they they weren't amazing, but they used to make like decent videos back in the Extra day. credits is a microcosm of why monarchies are terrible. What? Because eventually, because uh, event eventually the good king he's gonna fucking die, and his asshole dumbass son is it's gonna the inherit same the guy. kingdom. <laughs> bum, bum. Well, it's the same guy. Actually, a modern I critique of capitalism. That. Shots fired, Aiden. Because the old the old voice was a sped up, higher pitch guy, wasn't it? But he used to make points. That and it was like better. robotized. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, well, the original it guy got another channel that does like more was technical. It? breakdown animation stuff now are you sure i thought it was the same guy oh there's no, definitely the, sounds totally different. the meme with the both the voices is they suck for, for different reasons like the other one was annoying and grating yeah. but this one is this one is just yeah i thought it was still the same person but just like sped up but okay well, how is this game priorities? How is that not going to create divisions? And you find out that your friends you don't you aren't actually like minded. Like, what if someone oh. likes Taylor Swift more than or less than climate change? Right, you should collect. And you're like, whoa! <laughs> collect a bunch of these people and write all their names on the cards, and then go go on rank your yourselves against each rank other. Rank us. Who do you rank like the now, most? Do and who it. do you like the least? And just watch them tear each other apart. <laughs> you stare Any at them. Number... Yes. Do it. Rank us. The Any power is these... yours. Any you number go to this guy's house. 
two could like spark a spark an argument. Like if you say you're like Taylor Swift, someone could say, oh my God, she sucks. It's like, Ooh. what? And then like all of a sudden it's not a friendly game anymore. That's not very <laughs> like-minded of you, my dude. I mean, you yeah. Well, like, house, they, uh, like, they did you fill out the survey? The, basement. the survey, sorry? Yeah, yeah you, wake, nice. you wake up in like a saw scenario <laughs> or whatever where you have to play this game and depending on your uh. answers, depends on if like, you lose your limbs. Someone here does not belong. To be fair, that would make mind. the game way more interesting. Because, <laughs> like, the stakes are actually. Oh, important. that's going to cost you a finger. Oh, dear. <laughs> and he has to talk in that exact tone of voice the entire time. Oh, no, no. You uh. can't leave. <laughs> if you say the word nickelback in any room, we will in break Canada, your soul. An argument might happen. Wow. Uh, on that note, we have officially melted Nuts's brain, and so she's probably going to head out now. <laughs> but thank you so much for yeah. joining us. It's been fun. Oh, thank you. Quote unquote. <laughs> thank you for having me. Huge congrats on 300, and much love to everyone in the chat. Thank you for having me. And don't encourage yeah. them. We'll <laughs> see you next time. Thanks well, for joining us. Bye. We bye bye. See boy. you later. Bye. Much it's probably good that she doesn't stay for the boogie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never come back. She'll never be able to recover. It's not gonna... There are hospitals, I know, but are they good enough to solve this problem? I don't know. But yes, <gasps> this is a traumatic oh, boogie. Oh my lord. What... Was that okay, a wild that boogie is... at the grocery store? Well, so this is indeed... Nah, he never goes there. If part one was revelation, this would be gluttony, and we're gonna be exploring another aspect of the boogster. Uh, penance would be part Revelation three. Is... I appreciate oh, the title. Okay. Oh man, Beach yeah, Whale title. Two, Electric <laughs> Scootaloo, <laughs> Scootaloo, Boogie, Boogie Lou. But uh, yeah, oh, I mean, scooter. Boogie Nights. There's, there's. I mean, we've we've done a lot of intellectual discussion in the past six hours, so it's time it's once like again you. to wash your brains it's through it. with sludge. It's and time slime. to pay the piper. Let's be honest; they're all excited for more tipples. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Wee! Strawberry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right it's off right, right off the bat. Number right one, off. it's Diet Mountain Dew, and number two, as I explained, <laughs> I'm so Well that makes it okay then if it's that diet, because it okay, as we've man. established, Diet Mountain Dew mm. is like water. Yeah, it's like not, a, not, not at all unhealthy for you. Not at all. It's zero fine. consequence. 20 minute video my friend flint was here we didn't have anything for him to drink and he's the one who fucking filmed this for me Water. i was going to fucking cook for him at home so i was going to fucking no, feed weren't. him wait you see how excessive this is like, ha like it's like 17 uh, lies he's terrible at it he's, it's just like a child where they go cook for him. no you weren't do you see he started with actually it's not even that bad and then his brain was like wait just say it's for, not for you and there's like uh, actually it's for a friend <laughs> which is Oh, it's like child a friend ever. because he he can't drink water because he's got an allergy to oxygen molecules. He's full of shit. We know he and drinks like by the gallon that shit. He's, you know? uh, he has reverse diabetes. He can't drink water. And I was and I was gonna cook cook for him. Yeah, I was gonna cook for him. And so I, I yeah. So I needed to marinate the chicken in Mountain I'll, Dew. I'll, also, no. his diet, so it's okay. <laughs> Diet Mountain Dew's like breathing, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, he said this chemicals in the air, so. Hey, so we're gonna. Yeah, we're, this is what he air. drinks. This we're, is what he drinks. So we're supposed to. We're supposed to believe that you went on a shopping thing, got Diet Mountain Dew, what you drank for your friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. Oh. The Even story, Boogie I, was like, yeah, when he says it out loud like that, it does sound fucking retarded. But yeah. I have been stunlocked, friends. I have been stunlocked. Is that I a Teletubby on Wings' sofa? Or, or is that I else? hope so. It looks be. like it. It looks or like is it. That I think like... it's, oh, it's, I think it's that asshole Poe. Poe's red. Who? Well, yeah, the, yeah, this one's worn. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. You can tell it's Poe because he's just got the rod on his noggin. He just has the one, the, the oh, pole. Oh, people saying it's Grogu. He just has the pole one. Yeah, it's Grogu. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? Is it? No. Oh, oh, it, it is. Yeah. You gotta look real close. It though, looks like Poe. I can see, ears, I can see dude. the ears. Yeah, but it's the, it's the color of the outfit isn't very uh, Grogu. But okay. It's like a Timu Grogu. It's like Valley Express. No, it's also, a well-used Poe. 
Does he just not it's open a his well closet? Used does, or does he move the Pikachu every time he opens it? It's true. The red has become like a pale pinkish, and he still has the little rod on the top of his head because Poe has just a straight rod. He, Tinky Winky's got the triangle. Ditsy's got like a circle. A slut. What? Which one does Lala have? Lala's got like a, I don't know, something else. But Poe's got just a big red rod on the top of his head. Why did he frame that jersey so weird? It just doesn't like. It, it's just kind of yeah, sagging. Yeah, he could have done a better job of that. Yeah. The actress for Poe did lesbian porn. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Tinky Winky was we we remember that thing about Tinky Winky being gay because <laughs> he had a handbag because <laughs> of the handbag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was He's fun. a gay icon. I have friends. What over are we Wednesdays like? Fucking on <laughs> Sundays. I have friends over Wednesdays and Saturdays. Every Yo, Wednesday and Saturdays. Buggy, There's all yeah. kinds of fucking buggy, sodas and drinks in this buggy, house. Buggy, buggy. Drink. Am I fucking twelve years old? Like, there's a ton of fucking drinks. Oh, no, then you want to date him. Drink. Mommy, there's coffee, there's mommy, tea, this alcohol there's wasn't. I don't drink any of this mommy, shit. mommy, this alcohol wasn't for me. It was for my friend. Like literally, that's what you're trying to do right now. Do you know how I'm fucking dumb you, that is? I'm telling you. Wait, what did Boogie just drink there? I have to make sure. Well, you can't see it because it's in like his little rewind the tape container. Hey, it was thing. for my friend. Like literally, that's what you're trying oh. to do right now. Okay, do you know it's how fucking hiding it? Yeah, it's probably Mountain it's probably Dew. Probably the it's it's those yeah. Mountain Dews that he bought. He's probably, drinking yes. the Mountain Dews currently that he's denying that he got from. There's himself. two of them in there with extra sugar. Well, well, <laughs> Boogie's the god of self control. So Boogie putting himself Boogie in a scenario lie. where Diet Mountain Dews, his soda of choice, is just in the other room. He would never drink them. Did you see him buying Diet Dew and then adding sugar back manually? Oh my... Yes, I can. Wait, what? Wait, he actually can. did? What? I was yoking. No, no, I can you see him doing that? Like, I'm just thinking of the hypothetical. Like, I can see of course, that like, happening. Yes, absolutely. It's impossible I not to imagine that. that you know, it's happened. That's got to have happened. There's just no way oh, it would have. He's got, like, the this, this stevia packets from Breaking Bad that he just well, puts he, into it. He thought, you know what he thought to himself? He was like, <laughs> they make this taste pretty good without the sugar, so imagine how it tastes with the sugar put it in, too. And I'll get the healthy sugar. Yeah, I'll get that's, the Yeah, that's how, he, sugar. that's how he yeah. rationalizes it, but it's like, bro. I'll get the good happy The premium sugar. Raw sugar doesn't annually. count, right? I'm you, dumb that is? I'm telling you, I'll that's what he bad fucking... I wouldn't have put it in the video otherwise. <laughs> I wouldn't have put it in the video otherwise. Would I? have? <laughs> I don't know, you're, like, you're pretty clumsy. <laughs> I mean, you, you Can apparently you were, were, were going to lie anything? anyway. Yeah, that doesn't really work. If you, it's like, why would I have done any of the horrible things that I would have done when I? Yeah, like, dude, you I mean, can't use that. You need to th think of something else to say. Mm -hmm. You kind of lied about cancer in a video once, twice, three times. Why would I know? do that? Yeah, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck if me. I was gonna fucking lie to you about this shit, I wouldn't have put it in the video otherwise. It literally in the video, what? Flit asks if I will fucking. No, I don't. I just you don't believe he's fucking got the 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 batteries in him to do two runs at the same time with the supermarket. You know, like the the for the camera run oh, yeah. and then all the bonus sugar run. I think he just just like. Oh yeah, fuck fucking no! Run. He's not. He's not going there again. No. So me? all you would you would just pack it all in one <laughs> and then be like, oh, it's all for a friend. Yeah, hundred percent. It's all for yeah. a friend. Yep. I, I'll deal. I'll do it. I'll deal with this later. I'm too fucking tired to fucking yeah. care right now. <laughs> have you guys <laughs> followed any of the? Um, one... Have you followed any of the Mr. Beast stuff? Not really. Yeah, I know a fair amount. Uh, yeah, are you guys aware of who like? Are you aware of who Delaware is in that yes. story? Yes. No. I've heard the oh, name. So I don't he know. hired a guy named Del. Just for context, he hired a guy named Delaware, uh, and apparently the guy can't go back to Delaware because he's a registered sex offender. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Um, yeah. Now I remember. So that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Like this guy's name is Flint. I wonder uh, what his deal is. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> can he not go back to Michigan no, anymore? <laughs> yeah, David. Uh. No, but I'll get that it for was, you. That was one of the main fucking things I said. Is no more yes. Mountain Dew. But this might be the most obvious lying that you've ever done. What's the Lie! It's it's always <laughs> obvious, but this might be the most fat man goes to grocery store, orders a bunch of fucking shitty foods, and then says it's for all my friends. I mean, I'm with Kim. Like, uh, how can um... he not see that it would seem like a lie? Like, I mean, why would uh, be like, yeah, I guess I understand. Fair, this looks bad, but if we could rank his lies, Chad. he's been telling some like radioactive 99 out of 100 lies. This is like a a 10 most. So he's like, yeah, I can tell some 10 lies. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. 
most obvious oh, lie. You know, the, the funniest thing well about this video, I, I'm now do right now, right? Why. Right? I, I may as well crack one right fucking now. No. And see, that's the logic you probably <laughs> pull. <laughs> if he was accused of murder, he'd be like, "Man, we'll just kill everyone." <laughs> if you just get a believe Now I'm gonna it make anyway. you talk me into <laughs> drinking one of the things that I definitely now, didn't buy, so I yeah, could drink. Now it's your fault if I do the thing. It's like, wait a minute, like, how did you manage to do that? Oh, Except I'm not I going to, oh because I don't drink them anymore. I don't want this shit in my house right now. I don't want this shit. Oh yeah, so that's, he bought a Mr. Beast bar, and now he's like, I'm crushing what? it on camera. Oh. Look at me, I'm crushing it. Shit in my fucking oh, house right see? now. now you're... He's virtuous. I normally buy this to support a fucking of course, YouTuber. Yeah. I do this because there's YouTuber shit in the store. I used to well. buy Harley's shitty food. Now I and fucking buy like Jimmy's fucking Ugh. shitty food. <laughs> Probably house. There you go. He's making a steak. I was what is that making? Like, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Virtuous, man. There's a payoff for that. Wait, so now you're virtuous signaling that you're <laughs> some good person because you no, fucking destroyed. I just destroyed... don't want it in my fucking house. I just don't want it in my fucking house. Uh -huh. I bought it in your stomach when you bought it. Can eat. It's like, it's like I, I was gonna eat that popcorn. chocolate bar until Jimmy fucking had a controversy. <laughs> then it became bad yeah. chocolate. It wasn't because yeah. it's like high in calories. No. It well, yeah. No, no difference will be chocolate. made to Mr. Beast, but he can show everyone at home he's, he's virtuous. It was what keeps us. I was just like, he loves that pack. Yeah. yeah, that's the chocolate equivalent of the airport thing when he started pouring out the Mountain <laughs> yeah. News. Pretty much. Oh, he fuck. left that go... package intact for a reason when he threw it in the garbage. He's definitely going back in and eating that. Mm -hmm. Split that open right now. Why? You're fat. You're, you can't be eating that stuff. Because it's low calorie, because it's popcorn. Are the popcorn Cheetos popcorn? No, that's yours? Popcorn is carbs. Popcorn is corn. It's carbs. The roommates yeah. get the, uh, the classic No, I mean, I'll probably eat them both by the time it's over with. <laughs> eat them over both when it's over? What does that mean, it's when it's over? Cheetos oh, popcorn. that is popcorn. Cheetos popcorn. Cheetos popcorn. Like when the great eating How? is over. No, it's, it's not, not even popcorn. like... It's, it's not, not even... making a popcorn, then. Yeah, it's Turn not even it plain over. ass, like, Amish country, Cheetos popcorn. Like, of course he buys popper. Cheetos popcorn. Take a look at the calories the per serving. The Let's taste. flip that over. Let us find the calorie. Count. Why would you get the knockoff if you're going to get the, the name brand? Because I never Shatter, had the, yeah. I never had the Cheetos one. I wanted to try the Cheetos one as well, but I normally get the fucking uh, movie flavored one. <laughs> The movie flavor, flavor. Which is butter. Does like, it mean I mean, that is, it says classic movie butter, butter movie right theater. there on the front. Let's movie see the calorie butter. count on that one, too, Bookie. Stay this guy, Stay he, I guarantee he went to his local movie theater Daddy to try Daddy. to buy the Wolverine, the Wolverine fucking bowl thing. Dude, look at the stuff Puff's nutty. No wonder this guy's poor. What, I mean, yeah, like, buddies? look at everything else there. It's just junk food. <laughs> There's not a single vegetable or piece of meat on that register conveyor. Hey man, yeah. popcorn was vegetable once upon a time before the popping. You gotta think, is this like a bit then? Is it just all, like I bought all the fattest shit possible so it'd be funny for the stream? <laughs> Well, okay, this uh, is yeah, funny. Like, I, just, I just think this is what he regularly eats. Like this, I, was, this I actually think this yeah. is this is a reserved version because he didn't want to come across too bad. Trust me, yeah. with the way that he tries to rationalize this, you'll understand what I mean. He's just making a thing. Oh my god, god. I've never seen it. Welcome, heel In his versus head, babyface. This is ass. low cows. Oh, hey, ass. What's up? Hello. Congra oh, hi, 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 hi. Boy, Con congratulations on tree hundo oh. fappings of the electronic every frame. Thank you, pausing. dearie. And you know what? We've got a gift for you <laughs> as a thank you for joining Ooh. us. It's more boogie clips. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> do I, do I, do I, do I have a link? You do, do have, have a, link? a link. It's right there. It's you ready do to have go. a link, but you don't have a choice. <laughs> no, I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Your link, if you choose to accept it. Which you oh don't have my god. Oh, oh no. Okay. We are currently uh, <laughs> looking at Boogie's grocery shopping that he's trying to justify to Keemstar is actually not that unhealthy. Oh. So, is oh. that Nutella? Like a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah well, it's, I'll roll it back a little. Regular, little you know, regular shopping trip. Here know, we go. You know, I'm ready. My no, body's no, ready. Fucking, uh, movie flavored one. Ooh. Oh my god. I've never seen this shit before in my life. This is some sort of fucking s'more shit. You're not even to try this. I've never seen this shit in my life. Okay, what but the you're not fuck? Even... So he's bought he, so he's got marshmallow <laughs> fluff and he's trying to okay, He's got a Nutella okay, thing. Nice. I don't even know what size that is. It's and then he's got another one. Like half marshmallow. 
Yeah, it was. He he, bought, he's, he's buying two. Yeah, two. And he's already <laughs> buying oh, s'mores flavored puffs. He's just buying sugar in yes, bags. Yes, it's and, various yeah. forms of sugar. He's just buying sugar. <laughs> he's just buying sugar and carbs. The two things you don't have lots of if you want to lose weight. He's specifically attempting to gain weight. Boogie. <laughs> Again, Boogie. Not protein a bars have gotten really good. Chocolate protein bars have gotten really fucking good. Buy them. Why, why, why can't you be happy for him? Why can't you just be happy? <laughs> Celebrate. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve it. Life. He's because developing he's managed a unique to... shape. He's, <laughs> yeah. he, he's managed to defeat bariatric surgery. Come on. <laughs> he's a champion after a long yeah. battle yeah. with surgery. <laughs> <defeat>. <laughs> he's a winner. Like an Elden Ring boss. <laughs> oh, Boogie. Wow. Boogie was walking down the aisle, and then he saw the bag that said, stay puffs. And he's like, well, I guess I will then. Yeah. You think there's a picture of the planet Jupiter up on his wall as his idol? His, <laughs> his third animal, animal if you will. Jupiter? Mm. Jupiter? Jupiter. Jupiter. Large and large and gassy large with and not much substance. Covered in red <laughs> spots. Oh. And literally <laughs> sucks everything in its vicinity inside of it. And I got the gashes. Uh, but if any of it's healthy, it coughs it back out. <laughs> like, oh, the things that <laughs> the things that surround it are much more palatable than it is. Interesting. Yeah. No. Jupiter's dating Pluto as well. Um... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh. It took me a second, but I got it. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, oh dwarf no! Planet. Not even a, <laughs> You're not even a planet. <laughs> Oh, no, it's an underdeveloped planet, no. She's tiny and ice cold. Yeah. I, I saw Pluto on only planets the other night. Holy no, shit. No. <laughs> but she's got a big heart. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, but you're not uh, even... That, that is so she's, unhealthy she's, for you. I know. She's got a <laughs> large heart. Boogie's got an enlarged heart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> graham crackers with it you're literally getting yeah no i already have graham crackers at home you're literally getting nutella with extra sugar in it <laughs> no 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 no. It's, it's, it's no egg. and that's natural peanut butter by the way and <laughs> that's natural peanut butter <laughs> that's not <laughs> like it's i said so it's, I mean, it's the still super the, high we have peanut, peanut, butter, peanut here, butter's boogie. good peanut butter's good peanut butter's a good is thing it, to get it's just yeah, funny. Peanut butter's good. You know, he's, he's like desperate. It, it's like, look, this stuff, it's not all chocolate. Yeah, it, it's weird. You know, it's like, you don't have to defend getting peanut butter. That's a totally fine thing to get. But he instinctively, you're right. He was like, this is natural. It's made from pe peanuts yeah. from the ground. <laughs> well, the brand is like peanut butter from the It's even the healthiest item. That it's is definitely the healthiest. Fall. No, in, there Sugar's is buried in this. He has strawberries in here somewhere, I think, so. Well, you, know, you, know that, okay. you know that I, he has uh, a Nutella and peanut butter sandwich. Come on now. Oh, yeah, we all know this. No, it's, it's just the peanut butter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Nutella is for his friends. Spoon. It's not for him. It's for his friends. <laughs> peanut butter is how the dogs take their medicine. It's the only way I can get their medicine down. Them, hey, but I do eat hey, that what? peanut butter. I hey. do eat that peanut butter. Listen, do you think that Boogie is going to die the same way Elvis died? On the toilet? I, I, yes. oh my God. 11? Again, I'm no. not 100% sure he's <laughs> 11, 11, no. <laughs> 11 and talented, no. He, he will not die those things, no. But on the toilet, halfway through a shit, after eating one of his trademark sandwiches. Do you think Vegas will be wow. full of boogie impersonators? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing, dude. Random boogie impersonators screaming at random people. Oh, chat, someone suggests he's gonna die in the bath. Imagine finding that, like, oh, yeah. three days later. Jesus. Oh. Like The Shining. <laughs> oh. You want to eat nothing but a tip. The natural oh. peanut butter is the only thing. <laughs> no. You right. can't oh, eat man. Nutella. You can't eat that smart shit. I never, I barely ever fucking do it. Says that's, in the house. For that's months. basically Ooh. like eating candy. <sighs> it's such a fucking lie. I, mean, I barely eat it, which is why I have to get it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can tell me you eat it losing by how you look. If I didn't, it's, I barely eat it, so I bought two. He's got like buckets of sugar, and he's being told that's not good, and he's like, "What? Buckets <laughs> of sugar? Really? Fucking hell." Jesus Christ. I mean, what else would you call the Nutella the thing. things? They are basically buckets of I, sugar. I, I, I thought they watched like buckets of sugar on top of that as well. Oh, <laughs> not like literal buckets what you do, of sugar. If you probably would though. Yeah, yeah. If, if you want to lose weight, you use it for you its eat diet a meal. 
that right after you eat your meal, you go to the grocery store, you feel full, you don't feel the desire to buy things to eat, you don't mm. even bring the shit home. That's your first step. Don't bring that shit home. Don't bring it to your house. Yeah. Leave it at the grocery store for other people. Don't bring it home. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. And then right, it'll be a lot easier even, for you to not even eat it. even need it that much. It's for a friend. Yep. It's for a friend. Oh, well, fair enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, well, this, I know. Is why the, this is why the sad, lonely loser for add extra credits is really thin. He doesn't have any friends that he has to buy Nutella <laughs> and bags of sugar <laughs> for. Oh, so, he can stay in, true. so he can stay in shape. Because yeah. he, he's, he's lonely and sad. Dude, if as we covered a video a month... from extra credits that basically said, like, this is the solution to everyone feeling lonely, and it is to join our community and join our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a board game. Wow. It's actually true. Yeah, Unironically, yeah. True. Yeah. Absolute cunts. <laughs> Did you? Um, you know what? No. Yeah, yeah, we joined, of course. <laughs> Crazy. He basically I'm, prostituted I'm at a group himself of super at the end of the video gamers the on the Tree Friends place or whatever it's called. <laughs> happy happy, it's been happy Tree Friends? Hours. Happy Tree Friends. I understand you might not have opened yeah. it yet. But to say actually, that you've never I eaten actually, stuff, I actually I opened man, the s'more stuff last night. It's exactly. found man. Yeah, you're, I actually eat this morning. You're, you're the, the, shopping the, the, the along. Thing, the just, thing that he hardly ever eats, that he just bought two eaten. tubs oh. of, he's already what? opened up and stuff for me, man. Uh, he's full of <laughs> shit. Why does this get squared away Literally. in the timeline, though? Because he said, because remember, he recently did that video about the miracle drug that's making him lose weight. So, like, was this happening while? I think. <laughs> oh, that's like, like, I, I think it's doing He's definitely going to lose weight. If, if he and and one of the things that he says in that video is like, oh, he's not even eating anything like shitty food anymore. Like, oh, he loves cherries and stuff and fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember, he, yeah. he actually hates the taste of sugar now. So, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. He hates <laughs> the oh, taste true. of food, remember. He hates oh, the taste God, of God, I don't yeah. even like food anymore. <laughs> if Welcome, you Metal. You're here just in if... time. Metal Commander. <laughs> How do you do? Oh. Hey, Metal. <laughs> Finally, we get some disabled representation in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm the cripple on the fort. No, no, it's, 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 right a, there. it's a situational disability, it's, don't worry. Yeah, it's a reference <laughs> no, no, to... You, it's um, not, right, it's you not one of the up, real you ones. You fucked up it's, again, yeah. and you just can't take it. You fucked it up. Hey, what's, what's up, guys? It was <laughs> approximately 15 and a half hours ago we discovered situational yeah, so disabilities. That was early on in the timeline. Yeah. I, I oh, saw on Twitter and I was very sad I missed it. that epic occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? Situational so, disability? Oh, you would have fucking yeah, loved it, dude. You would, have, you would have loved that ass. You would have loved it. <laughs> we, we found out, <laughs> so... so fucking funny. <laughs> we were learning about accessibility in video games, and so, you, you know, you have a deaf person, they are disabled, and then you have temporary yes. disab disabilities, like uh, a ear infection, and then you have situational mm -hmm. disabilities, like a bartender who has people talking in front of him. You see, he's disabled uh -huh. like the other people because he can't hear as well. Oh wait, this is like a is it Alana, Alana Pierce? Is it yeah. Alana Pierce with a situational disability? Yeah, well, yeah, which, we covered this. Okay, story. okay, yeah. her baby. Yeah, so <laughs> her baby. So to, to, to get to that, well. right, you have the the physical disability. So for example, you lose an arm. There you go. And then temporary disability, mm -hmm. you've injured your arm. Situational disability is you're a parent. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't the, the picture in the, in the chat. Oh, you, you, you I'm the terminology Microsoft approves. It's, it's pretty straightforward logic. Beef already. Well, and, and, you, a... and just to be oh clear, where metal comes in, yeah, they say a the speaking document. disability would be if you're non-verbal, a temporary one would be laryngitis, and then a situational speaking That's disability... That's what that fucking meme meant in the channel. ...would be if you're metal. <laughs> yeah, if you're a Mongolian swordsman, you have a situational disability. Or you're metal. <laughs> well, first of all, fuck you all. Uh, so but, is, uh... is being German is being German a situational disability then? Yes. 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 How, how is it situational? I don't know. But it just <laughs> is, buddy. You know it, it's good to see, even when I'm not around all the time, I get bullied all the time. Geographical disability. Hold on, metal. In the absence, it's not racist at all, right, man? <laughs> so, what was that? Uh, in the absence of, of you in that situation, everybody was saying that I was the one who was situationally disabled, so don't worry. No. <laughs> There's a hierarchy, you see, a hierarchy mm -hmm. of disability. Yes. And Every the... time Metal That's pronounces tough. something too German, we lose like 20 viewers. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. No well, more you know, I didn't know I have that kind of power.
Well, another, yeah, because when you say like Gifnish, right they're like, look how they're using this disabled man to entertain everyone like a clown. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. And maybe so, if your great grandparents fought a bit harder, we wouldn't be here sitting oh, <laughs> making fun of oh your my. heavy accent. True. <laughs> yes, this this meme is top tier. Oh yeah, my fucking, god. Fucking XQC is basically the elephant man of situations. So that's, that's, a, it's fucking that's, a, that's a permanent disability is being XQC. <laughs> being from Quebec. Uh. <laughs> anyway, back to the other person who claims constant disabilities. Oh, yeah, oh true. Stuff yeah. Last night. Wait, is, is there a, a, a watch together some Oh yeah, there it is. Yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah, you're, actually, you're you're shopping. Oh yeah, just to be clear, that fucking combo of whatever that was, uh, Nutella plus marshmallow stuff. I, I, I don't know what he said it was, but uh, he said he's already eaten it. Delicious. <laughs> that he bought How it the previous day. Your Remember, it doesn't fucking matter. Oh but my god, it ate all of it. It's like oh my god. Actually, oh, I actually I opened yeah, the s'more stuff last night. Hundred pound actually... man. Yeah, I you're this you're, you're shopping all wrong. Wait, you ate... wait, wait! Did it? Did he say he had it oh. last night and this morning? Yeah, he's gotten into okay, it, man. Well, he's he had two jars. We call two we call those sessions, all right? He had two. <laughs> oh. He completed the task. A jar a day keeps diabetes stay. <laughs> all you have to stay. do to lose <laughs> if you really need to stay. Yes. <laughs> if you're at the grocery store and you want to lose day. weight. Keeps the waistline away. I know. <laughs> you Spend a month in buying nothing but chicken well, and salad. You will lose a bunch of weight in that month. I guarantee. Chicken salad is awesome. Hell yeah! I do that yeah. happily Lookie, all week. Ben Lookie month. keeps the waistline away, as in like proximity. He keeps yeah. it further and further. It's further, getting further and further away from him. It's constantly. a gradual process, but yeah. it is further away. Soon he won't be able to reach it. Yeah. yeah, it is a type of progress, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> No, last night <laughs> he wanted to try it, so we tried it. By the way, it's a happy birthday to me. Now that chocolate bar, I will still eat. That I will still eat. Right. <laughs> Sony's chocolate alone. Oh, oh that's, no, that's the you, treat. You yeah, eat everything. Lonely. The rest of it you is just. Right, this There's is the treat. There's two there. That's fine. That, that one's bad, the reward for eating so uh, healthy. So, hang, hang on, catch me up here. Well, were they just filming them going to so shop, or was they like, go, 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 go <laughs> shop whatever you normally their do? Their extensive and difficult challenge was to record themselves getting a grocery shop. Just an average one, and this is his. It's filled oh. with This sugar. is his healthy yeah. shopping. Well, this is the one he well, did for the camera, this so... Is... <laughs> yes. Well, this is ethical shopping, because Tony's Chalk Alonely, if you didn't know, their, their big thing is their, it's ethically sourced, like... Pr like ingredients and stuff they're big into the whole right like a bunch of african kids are basically slaves on cocoa farms and da 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 da, da. so <laughs> but we don't use any of that stuff so you can buy Aww. our chocolate and it's because yeah we were like 100 that doesn't sound very authentic free, so. i i i only I buy extra credit for right? like your children yeah yeah the me, children me yeah, chocolate make, taste I, better yeah, because if I don't true. buy the chocolate and eat it, then all those kids and orphans suffered in the chocolate mines for nothing. Exactly. And yeah. I don't, like, to, but if if I don't all the chocolate that, was yeah. made like Tony's chocolate only, then Vosh would have had a moral or legal argument as to oh, why no. certain <laughs> things. Oh. Also, oh my God. also, this is a this is a lesser known fact, but uh, the favorite, <laughs> the favorite, <laughs> the favorite. The favorite chocolate of extra credits is Tony's Chocolate Lonely. So yeah. oh. it is, you know, it all, that's, that's, that's what I said. Back. I thought there was extra credit credits made. Yeah, you already made that joke. Right? Hmm. Oh, yeah. right there, <laughs> Tony's chocolate. That I will Get eat. Some new material. Come yeah. on. Boo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And you eat like that, bro. It was technically new. It's I wanted to be my, honest. My joke sorry, wasn't as good, but it was the junk food that I will eat. I don't like being in public. With a fucking face tattoo that says fucking liar on it. So for some reason, I don't like lying. being in public no, right no, now. No, nobody can is. see. Nobody but can. nobody can you see. Never like he keeps arguing public. people make fun of him for that. It's like, no, they don't. They can't even fucking tell. No, <laughs> they make fun of you for all the other we reasons. We can barely right? tell you got a fucking liar tattoo. Quit yeah, except that they're two story. different fucking people that fucking noticed it in the store. You would say, oh, I no, have cancer. Didn't. Poor pity me. Poor, poor me. Look at <laughs> that cat. You would Look at that cat. Look at him go. Oh, great and most people. Yeah. Well, this is, so That's a good. I cat. mean, the cat's great, but right now this is a cancer survivor talking to Boogie about how he used his cancer for sympathy, and it's uh, a little oh difficult for God. him to say anything back to it right now. I'll tell you, I don't even like it when, <laughs> when Jordy says I was a cancer survivor. I don't like it. 
Because I feel like there's so many people that are in worst case shape that I don't want anyone's sympathy. Put that to someone else. Oh, bless her heart. Okay, so there's that. You rode in one of those scooters. You didn't even walk down the yes, aisle. We oh. in there for an hour to film, and I can't stand up for an hour. I can barely stand up for five fucking minutes. I don't use them when I jump. Well, that's <laughs> not true. He was already you disengaging, feet, man. You can see Keith just bullshit. disengaged. He's going to talk about yeah. how miserable he is. <laughs> he's so also yeah. minutes when he's going to so I for like ask minutes. him the question. Yeah. <laughs> his, his community <laughs> service <laughs> question. The stream is done. <laughs> his community service portion disproves that statement that he can only stand for five minutes. That is not true. Hop in, pick up three mm. things and leave. But if I'm going to film for a fucking hour, then I, yeah, I'm going to be in a cart. Oh, so you had a bad cancer day. I <laughs> 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 love that he's like, for fuck's sake. No response. Wow. Listen, when you're boogie, oh, every day is not leg day. No. Your, oh, oh, day. You, should we show you're the, the one, new people you're the one, Because Wait. you're the one. Because you're the Oh, you mean the, the four months ago thing? Well, the we can just. The legendary fucking new clip. Well, yeah, I, we can just tell as about it. I don't think he needs to see it because it's it's not interesting in and of itself as like a clip. It's just the news in it. So, um, yeah. I happened to find through pure luck of someone in a chat saying something that uh, Boogie admitted his cancer was not, um, I guess, confirmed four and a half months ago on a different stream, and uh, oh. it's, a, it's a clip that like fuck it, everybody missed, including obviously myself. And then he says it to Wings and Team. Both of them missed there. it. The whole audience missed it, but uh, it was funny. It's just. <laughs> kind of like shocked the shit out of everybody wow. there. Yep. And he, he admits oh, everything and says he, did, he and says he did it for money as well. Yeah, he says he did it because he needed money. <laughs> yeah. No. What, yeah, why, yeah, why, no. Why, why, why like, am I saying oh, no? no. <laughs> why it's am I mind no. blowing ass? It, it is yeah. a big deal. <laughs> it's funny. I saw that clip. I saw that clip and I was like. Oh yeah, that kind of checks out. That would happen. Yeah, okay. Was it Molly is supposed to be a book story, and every book story was shocked by this. Okay. Yeah, everyone missed this. Fucking like, <laughs> book This was story breaking and... news. Jeez. This was it, actually. Well, yeah, I think that shouldn't be, but it is. It's like the only instance like of the... breaking news we've ever had on EFAP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an old lie, but it checks out. Yeah. yeah. The boogie sea scrolls. Yeah, we don't even need mm. Nicholas to talk to Keem anymore. Yeah, well, yeah, as uh, yeah, right. Kubsaw came up, on. Yeah. He came on to confirm the clip. <laughs> Just funny. We, got, we had a little platoon and fucking Keem went at it about the morality of using a cancer faker to make money. Yeah. Little platoon was fucking based in that. It, was, it, it turns out Keem wasn't that bothered by it, so <laughs> he can believe it. I mean, it seemed a little bit bothered, I think, but, you know, it, it didn't, didn't show oh, it. Oh, he was much. definitely bothered. He, he fucking. Uh, like, I didn't get a DM about it. So he that's was shitting all over okay. little platoon. He kept doing, like, I don't know who you are. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Who the fuck are you? Oh, but that's a terrible argument, though. <laughs> He does not use ethically sourced lol cows like Tony's Chalk alone Oh yeah, he oh, said God. Platoon was sadistic because he wants Boogie to be out of a home or whatever, right? Yeah, and they called the chat peasants. He did. Like, he did oh, call the chat Boogie peasants. deserves to be homeless? And I was like, well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe. actually, probably. Yeah. I mean, you could also have something in between, you know, we don't don't maybe need a massive mansion. He won't be homeless. He won't like be fucking homeless. Or it's not going to happen. Studio yeah. apartment yeah, he'll be would dead be more his there's, pl there's plenty of things he can sell and he can downsize. Even even he yeah. can downsize. Okay? I mean, the only thing he, he, he could argue. die on this fucking size himself. Hades nuts. Listen, store brand snacks are very cheap and affordable. I think he'll be fine. What Boogie are... being in a situation where he has to downsize and adjust his priorities might arguably be the most healthy situation yeah. you could put him in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, <clears throat> yeah. Boogie can kill two birds with one stone in that he could save money and eat healthier if he just stopped by, like, a local food pantry and just picked up <laughs> food. It's really funny to me as well that he has fucking... He has a chef in his house and he still buys all this fucking garbage, like, at the store. To, you know. Yeah, but the yeah, chef is yeah, a guy could, that could that. actually cook for him like every day. But no, let's just. <laughs> is the I chef making Boogie Nutella sandwiches? Like a... What is he doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Only the the most exquisite your, your Nutella s'mores, sandwiches. Sir. <laughs> 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 oh, the bun it's just old Nutella, like when it's like the Ooh. wide selection. It's just no. Nutella. <laughs> like, oh, wow! Oh, he freezes <laughs> the Nutella in the freezer, and then he creates these two Nutella 
buns and he then slathers Nutella in between. It's like a self Nutellering sandwich that he Find just all the stuffs into his oh. cutlery and the plates. Oh, that's that's really good, Nutella. actually. <laughs> <laughs> he puts the Nutella on the brioche or he gets the lettuce again. Oh, no, no, not the yeah. lettuce. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, I'm picturing him at like a soup no. kitchen right now screaming at like an 80 year old woman. Like, why can't I have a diet do? Why can't I have another diet do? <laughs> Give I me a goddamn you. diet do. I beg do. you. I'm in tremendous pain. I'm in tremendous pain. <laughs> help me, help me, help me. Help me. He makes sure like it's I'm only the, the ethically sourced Naomi's <laughs> Nuts Alonely. Ayo. Nice. Not Alonely. The one I think of a name that still started with N and Ryan. You're the one who knows. That's the reason I'm going to the doctor. Wait, what? Naomi's Nuts Alonely. Yeah. I mean, I usually not when I'm lonely, to be fair. you know. It's... Yeah. I got a word that begins for that. <laughs> it's because I'm still being treated for this shit. Uh, a Reddit yeah, user you, said... But you don't have it, though! Wait, what, yeah, so it, doesn't, it's okay. it doesn't matter if it turns out he has cancer. He lied about having it. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You we've been through this. Been <laughs> yeah, we have been through this you several wrong. times. <laughs> you can't I'm taking, unlie uh, the cancer. I'm constantly taking ibuprofen in case something swells. Like, all You're right. taking what? I, I, ibuprofen. I'm killer. taking ibuprofen tablets. Yeah, painkiller. Anti-inflammatory. Ibuprofen. In, ca ibuprofen? in case. Yeah, that's the Australian way to say ibuprofen. Yeah. Australian way. Australian. Advil, Motrin, same thing. No, we say ibuprofen Racism. down here. Oh. Um... Look, if you're going to pay uh, Tommy the full amount, the world. Okay. Okay. you might as well take the money from Boogie. Why the fuck should he make money in July when he faked cancer? He's right, you know. Because oh, we're contractually the is it, is obligated the to pay me because we ripped up our fucking contract. <laughs> That'd be a good reason. Wait, did you have an actual written contract, though? <laughs> he we did for the... Verbal he, he, he did. Did. Actually, <laughs> Do you get, we have a verbal <laughs> agreement. Like What? So, what watch watch this bit now. Oh. Just, just Mudaha's reaction is just funny. No, we he did no, have one that we no, ripped no, up. He, contract up? Yeah, we, we had a physical contract. We ripped it up. He Does it still exist? Has it been notarized by a lawyer? <laughs> no, I, no, it's. Well, been... I, guess, I guess it doesn't count then. You know what's. Really... <laughs> <laughs> it means about as much as me filling out the yes, I am a nice gamer form yes. on the extra credits. <laughs> <on site. laughs> I'm a very nice gamer and I play as a good team member and I very rarely, if ever, say the N word. Oh. <laughs> Once oh, or wait, twice. Did you know? <laughs> very rarely. This, this happened. I didn't say I was time, honest. Uh, okay. Wait, this happens the last one. time I was here. Did you know that it was confirmed that none of these people have shares of this show? Yeah, that no, it's, it's 100% all... 100% owned by Tim? Yeah, it's all... He just says that's the case. None of it's actually real. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. They all trust... They all admitted it. Like, the, that's a thing, I guess. Because they talk about ownership all the time, and I've always wondered, like, do they actually have all of that in writing? It's like, no way. And no. they didn't get the, uh... They didn't get that $50,000 sign-on that he was claiming. Did nope. they not? Oh yeah, that was no. that was dependent on DSP being uh, on board as well, right? Yep. Something like that, but yeah, nobody got nothing. No, Keem said that Wings said that he was getting twenty five percent of the show, so he just ran with it. That was his. Uh, that was just a public facing thing. That's Did, not well, true. Didn't they say they had to they have to buy Tommy out then? Right? Is that happening? No, they were saying they'd have to buy. Um, they, they were saying they would have to buy. Boogie out if they got rid of him. But, but they all get rid of Tommy. Tommy though, right? Yeah, but they, then that was gone then. No one was talking about buying anybody out of the show. Oh, okay. The discussion would be whether he deserves to get paid for his last month he was working there. Oh, so they've just dropped the whole 25% just... ownership for everybody thing. Yeah, completely gone now. Right. They admitted it's completely fake. Mwah. Really sad is he just went shopping for our show, Muta. And you know what this guy bought? Nothing but junk food. I'm not joking. Like multiple I different, bought, multiple mother, different. Mother. He bought multiple different oh, fucking not, chocolate he's bars. Off, he's off. Off. Chips. Where are you? Like, you have, like, it was so stuff. much junk food. Congrats I can't. Like, I mean, this is good stuff. You're making him exercise. I can't think of anything healthy. It, there was more junk food than there was actual food. It was, it was actually, actually astronomically <laughs> insane. Well, you, you, For the you know Come on. You don't I think know. he's eating. I know, but you can't be like, hey, I got all these medical issues, and then go shopping, and that's what you buy. Chocolate bars.
Like that's I mean, like, insane. Okay. Yeah, but the oh, taste and yet here we are. And yet here we are. Mm-hmm. Well, he's about to he's about to Whatever school Boogie all of you. Look at look at him with his healthy Whatever food. Boogie presents if it's grass. green, it's a Mountain Dew. Oh, oh look at all these chunks. Oh, let's see, let's see. How we about have... this fucking uh, junk food? Oh, oh, that's junk food. How about this fucking junk food? Oh, notice oh, that's still here. Oh yeah, fucking strong. He just yeah, that's the only thing that's that left. On. Yeah. It's unopened. It's, yeah, all unopened, unopened and fully packaged compared yeah. to the uh, he, uh, uh the he, he, Someone else bought that chicken. He, he bought did not that chicken. That chicken. <laughs> yeah, he bought that chicken for his favorite dish, Nutella chicken. Oh, <laughs> Mountain Dew chicken. Oh. The, the Nutella oh. fried oh. chicken. Oh. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no, I can't do this. My problem is when I go and buy a pint of strawberries, I just sit in front of the fridge like a fucking asshole and just eat them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, they, and they're like, it's, "Oh, I'll save some for tomorrow," but they, they, I, they don't. It's the meme where you like close the the fridge, Look, almost like, "Oh, one more." No, I just, need, just, I just kneel in front of the package. fridge and eat can all. Can we also because berries, uh, cause berries all, are candy? In all seriousness, can we also pretend that he doesn't dip the strawberries in the Nutella? Oh, <laughs> that, that is 100% what he does with the strawberries. He just well, you coats to, them in Nutella and eats them. You have to dilute the healthiness of the food. <laughs> it's like one strawberry per Nutella, Nutella, Nutella yeah. bottle. Right? It be too healthy at once. He like blends the strawberries. strawberries and then spreads them very thinly over a very thick spread yeah. of Nutella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. Over an entire what? bowl of Nutella. <laughs> If you're oh, gonna yeah. do that, if you're gonna use a fruit as like a, a medium to consume something, you're dipping it in. Well, like you could do something like celery. Too. No, that would like a strawberry is in its own a like big thing of sugar that you're eating. Uh, no, Ooh, great yeah. idea. Like there is sugar, sugar in it, sugar. but it actually tastes. It actually tastes way more sweet than the amount of sugar that's in the strawberries. Like yeah, that's you know, true, healthy, but, but... Uh, there, there's more there's more sugar in a strawberry than there would be in celery if ultimately what oh, you're yeah, doing is using it as a yeah, spoon celery that you can take like a shit bite of. Strawberries are fucking delicious. That's my point. It's like he's, he's not even trying to make the yeah. medium healthier. So, so here's the thing. The government wants me to believe that like strawberries just grow on plants. Like there are plants out there that just grow this <laughs> delicious red candy, <laughs> and you can just like pluck it. It grows from the ground, and they expect me to believe that shit. <laughs> it's manna from heaven, you know. Manna. Uh, yeah, I'm betting. I'm betting he gets the personal no. chef. Bananas. I'm betting he gets the personal oh. chef, and he just pokes a bunch of holes in the strawberry, and then when he dips the strawberry, it becomes like filled and gorged with Nutella. The ultimate Ooh. Nutella strawberry, and he gets them. Keep talking. Makes me fucking one. hungry, dude. Stop. Keep yeah. talking. I'm, 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 I'm getting really hard here. Keep oh, talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can go all day. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. oh, I was no. like, yeah, my seat's Oops. gonna be on the outside too. <laughs> <laughs> Time to bump up the age rating. Let's go. Fucking junk yes. food. Oh yeah, fucking strawberries, <laughs> fucking cherries, fucking bananas, fucking apple. Oh, you're right, such fucking junk food. All the fucking goddamn nutritious in the world that I told you to eat this Yo, shit. Yo, calm down he for said- a second. Okay. We <laughs> saw all the other shit, dude. Uh, all the other. It's yeah. It's not as funny. It really just. It ain't as funny as uh, the outbursts. It, the it tipples one is still the best. Tipples is top tier. Oh, I'm just screaming about wanting to die. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, help me! Help me! Help me! Like help me! Flanderizing. <laughs> he's flanderizing yeah. himself <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Boogie, actually eat a cherry on camera, you coward! Please, you're asking <laughs> a lot. Would a It'll be like a marshmallow cherry. cherry. Just dangles yeah. in front of his mouth and just keeps sweating. It's like, well, I can't do it. Puts it in front of his mouth, then turns the, the chair anyway. all the way around, goes, Nom! Oh, there we go. Oh, no. I, I <laughs> oh it was great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the actual bounty of the earth repulses the boogie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, the gluten episode, when Mr. Mac is like, Dad, eat that gluten, you know? Okay? And then the guy eats the gluten and he starts melting and his dick flies off. Oh, I can see that happening. I'm feeling great and good. <laughs> Hurt and there... Wait, 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 wait. Was there you're more? A fucking liar. We saw the video. What are you talking about? Was there more <laughs> junk food? Oh, fucking bot. Was there oh, more junk food? Bot. Was you're there more? Listen to what right I'm saying. Here. Listen to what. I bet, by the way, that all the fucking you know hellish shit. You spent sixty bucks on that. What the fuck? Do you think that's? Mudahar is, is recognizing kind of the sweat there. Is that what's happening? 
Look at his face. Do you see that? That's, that's a, some sweaty titties, man. Yeah, that's, that's a sweaty titties. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's some sweaty that's tipple. Oh, sweaties, yeah. yeah. So, it's, gotten... it's, it's, so we're all agreed that it's not a bad thing. It's not all bad. <laughs> You know, we've also gotten to the point where we need a uh, an emotional support animal live on the stream while this Hello. happens. <laughs> that, that's called Desi. No. I hear that. Oh. oh. No. no. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what I'm saying, was there more junk food than real food? No. Yes, there was. No, Wings. there wasn't. Wings. Wings. Look at that goddamn receipt. There, Wings. There was, there was s'mores. Maybe not in the way at the moment, but certainly in the... Bars. There was a... And a lot of that yeah, I won't I fucking eat because it's for my fucking oh, cool. girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't think, I don't think she sure. eats. She's yeah. not eating. Like, if, yeah. like I said, I was about to say, I don't think stuff is for her, and he yeah. eats all the yeah, food. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. People would actually believe that. Like, ah, yeah, people would go for that one. Yeah, not for me. We saw Boogie going grocery shopping. I'm willing to bet all the fruits and chicken and stuff that was bought by someone else in that house. It was not bought by him. <laughs> well, the reality yeah. is that like it doesn't matter what he says. Look at him. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. What you eat, dude? Like, you oh, are yeah, a massive no, I'm healthy. I'm stack of carbs. And stuff like that. He's like 400 pounds. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of the you story. can't say that you shop healthy when you could audition for Baron Harkonnen. You just you can't do yeah. it. <laughs> uh, this, is definitely, this is definitely during the um him on that drug, the miracle drug that he said made him lose thirty pounds. Cocaine. Because yeah. I remember it was <laughs> just he, he was screaming about that on the uh, the last compilation we did, right? On that, like he was screaming that he wouldn't have the money to pay for the medication on the uh on the the big freak out one, the I begged you one. So, hmm, I'm wondering about the story and how it gets reconciled, because in, in the video, he's talking about, like, oh, yeah, I don't even, I don't even want to eat, like, sugary foods anymore. I don't like it anymore. I like eating, like, cherries. But, like, look at this. Like, cherry he, cherry Coke know. doesn't count, just to be clear, Boogie. <laughs> I just find it funny. I also find it, I mean, I presume that that's going to be, we'll get around to the that later. So he was going to go to Mr. Beast chocolate bar after Mr. Beast put out these all these disparaging videos. The you have the first fucking thing about Chris, because none of the oh, money goes to cut. Chris. This fucking new video <laughs> today, I fucking was done. I Just for for anybody who here who missed the clip earlier, he he had a Mr. Beast chocolate bar that he bought, and then he crushed it up on stream to prove that he would never support Mr. Beast and that that was a mistake. Uh. <sighs> He bought the bar. Oh, you could have. You could have just you not have bought the bar. <laughs> you paid for it. Well, you, see, you you must understand. He discovered the truth of Mr. Beast between the time that he bought it and that it was called out. Yeah. Not all him. <laughs> right, not all him. It was the same as the Mountain Dew thing, right? Of just like, oh, I don't even want to eat this. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then just you, you catch him with a fucking his hand like, deep in a bucket of sugar, and you just be like, this isn't even for me. This is for my cat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, like, in, in much the same vein of like pouring out the Mountain Dew into this bag that some poor cleaner is going to have to grab yeah. I can imagine yeah. going I don't even want to eat this chocolate here dog eat it <laughs> oh no oh, oh my no, god eat. Oh no! I, well, it's I'm just it's 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 always he's always so hapless in terms of trying to make himself look great. Yeah, <laughs> like that Mount Doom one is so funny of just pouring it out into a bin. Like, ah, yes, this makes me look like a good person, ruining some minimum wage like cleaner's day. I throw that shit away. <laughs> wow! You threw the candy bar away. Just just yeah, like he poured the Mountain Dew into oh, the uh, bin. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> so the funny thing is, of course, at least with a chocolate bar, if you crunch it up and throw it away, it's like you could always go back for it. So he's gonna have to prove <laughs> that that's not a possibility. Dude, as soon as the, destroyed it. Dude, as soon as the stream ends, he's gonna take did. it out of the garbage because all he did is crumple it up <laughs> and like oh, throw it in there. Into his yeah. the uh, see, look. I'll, 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 I'll throw it to you. I won't. Wait for, for it. Well. Wait for it. Wait for it. I didn't even rewatch. Wait oh, for it. Something no. about to happen. What, See, look, happen? he's still oh, got no. it. It's still eatable. No, it's no. still eatable. No, no. Oh god. <laughs> You're just making it worse for when you go when you dig what? it out the garbage. What? Later, what? Oh, he warned brother. What? God. What? 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 Oh, okay. to, to prove oh, he can't eat it, he's putting peroxide oh, on the god. chocolate bar. Oh my god, he lifted his arms. Oh, look, look at, at that his shirt, sweat. bro. Oh my god. Oh, oh, god. god. 
Whoa, existence is pain for that person. Flaps, okay, you gotta you gotta watch out for them sweaty flaps. <laughs> the underdogs. No. Like his body is straining to exist right now. <laughs> Things you could say about your eighteen wheeler and boogie. There is more <laughs> liquid on his shirt than there is in the peroxide bottle. <laughs> <laughs> if you, Why is he like peroxide? If you like strain uh, the shit, it just, it just rub water the, just rub flows the out. Away. Like, uh, yeah, that like, yeah, actually might be it. <laughs> Isn't it just fascinating that this sad fuck used to be? Yeah. I fucking look at him. Movie. Just fucking look at him. He's on the, he's on the top of the mountain guy. once. This is a, this is the second act low point of Bookie's life. He got to the top of the mountain, but then realized getting down is right. so really <laughs> the fucking hundredth second act low point. He keeps coming back to the second act low point. <laughs> he is he is a long series of low points. <laughs> but wait, wait. So he still has dogs, right? And he just poured it onto the carpet that the dogs presumably yep. walk on. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, light it on fire, you know, buggy. You would Boom. be a little bit cautious, <laughs> but nah, I was gonna say, y'all fucking eat it now, right? <laughs> I don't know. You <laughs> probably will. Why, why do you have some bad mood? Mm -hmm. Like they, they were right. It was still there and edible. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you paid Mr. Beast a dollar for it. So yeah. Yeah. Paid <laughs> it oh, you triples. did more than most people do. Most people don't buy it, but you went out of your way oh. to buy it to show how much you don't like. Uh, Ragsy actually something? said quickly at one point he doesn't support YouTubers, but before he knew that Mr. Beast was a horrible YouTuber. So there you go. This guy has no money. And he buys just I, trying I to support people. One. Darn it! Yeah. Darn it! You're trying to do a good thing. Happened, it happened to do this shit. If you want to send every frame a pause, uh, a couple juicy super chats with that cancer money, then man, you fucking go for it. <laughs> Help some YouTubers out here. <laughs> And You're asking Patreon Boogie <laughs> if he wants to donate to support Eva. I'm sure he loves yeah, us. Man. We're good. We love Boogie. If Boogie's you're feeling great. lonely, you should be sending super chats to Eva. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, no. Dude, we're be your lonely friends. gamers. <laughs> we're lonely you know, gamers with no friends. I, I just realized the dog situation is even worse because now there is chocolate and peroxide in an open bin that the Why dogs is the can peroxide access. there? He has, to, he has okay. to prove he the wouldn't eat bar. the chocolate himself. Oh wait, you mean why is the peroxide there in general? I, I'm not even sure. Probably just trying to get rid of the tattoo. Look at the Discord. The tattoo. I just, I, yeah. I just posted a screen cap. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's yeah. actually like, hey, if you want to fade a tattoo realize. while it's He's healing, like, apply yeah. hydrogen peroxide. Let me prove that I'm not going to eat this chocolate by revealing that I have a substance that can be used to <laughs> like dull a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it, within oh, arm's reach. Like, you win. It's right yeah, here. He's probably reapplying it constantly. Like he's trying to get it off. <laughs> uh Boogie, look, you know, when you were gone, I told these guys I go, look, I can't like I can't just not pay him. I'm gonna Out of curiosity. So he his plan was to he threw it away closed and in its package in the waste bin that was right next to where he sits at his computer that was empty apart from his chocolate bar interesting <laughs> gonna have to pay him right That's we're funny. just kind of trolling him now <laughs> but i think you should volunteer some of this money up like honestly i did a thousand i fucking need the rest to pay I, my I, fucking bill I love how he, he, he has to yell about charitable donations. Like, he doesn't even realize that it might be a good idea not to scream about how much of an inconvenience it was to donate to charity. Yeah. No, well, didn't, didn't he say to, um, to Muda last time that if Muda gave him back his $3,000 that he gave to charity, he could have his uh, button? Yes. That was the, yeah. that was the reason he donated right. it, I think, was to get the button. It was mentioned. like the, Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fucking bills! Wait, I thought that 4000 was split. I thought that was from the crypto Yes, money. I emptied my bank account presuming that I was going to get my paychecks as I normally do. But now that oh, I so you fucking... didn't do it out of altru... You knew that you no, were just... No, I did it out of altruism, but I also didn't know Bullshit. I'd effectively no, been didn't. fucking fired so Tommy could eat <laughs> when I fucking can't. That Tommy gets water, Tommy gets electric, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy can eat while gets... he... Uh, no, yes. you don't drink water. <laughs> you, can, you can eat because we just saw yeah, what, you what buying a bunch of water? 
okay. It really, it really yeah. is a hard sell of like, that oh man, feed I'm the person for I don't a month. have money to eat food when first of all, you're enormous and second, you live in a mansion. <laughs> first of all, you're enormous. <laughs> yeah. I, it's just crazy that he screams about his dire straits while living in this giant house. Yeah, to be clear, like, Boogie all, is all made the... out of provisions. <laughs> all the food they show there, I can live with that for like weeks. Fuck well, it's, it's, it's kind of sweet meat. It's almost sweet the innocence of it, but when when Kim first sees the two sweet meat because of all the Nutella in his <laughs> when he when he sees the two <laughs> Nutellas and the two popcorns, he like reads out them and then just goes, "But you're fat." <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> yeah. you can't do this why are you doing this also the classic shitting on the person that is currently not in the call uh, yeah, of course that. and oh, then next time in the call and they go uh, love you though love you though <laughs> you didn't love it. I didn't fucking know that my bare essentials were gonna be in my fucking pocket I might have fucking decided differently at the fucking time whether or not I should empty my fucking bank account if I know I've been effectively uh. fucking fired Oh god. Oh, you could oh, shut up again. Oh. Someone someone remind me not to join when I have to hear Boogie yell again. <laughs> that's that's the, se the same thing that happened last time I was on. <laughs> it's the this uh, EFAP year 6 is the year of the boogie. It's the uh... It really How is. How else could we celebrate the anniversary? <laughs> this is this is part two of three, by the way, as of the boogie sections of the anniversary. Really the more? audience. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's the, the final section is the community service. <laughs> I can't wait to see a boogie action sequence. Can cash his fucking check for being on vacation? It's still that land you inherited pretty cheap to make it's, it's called the holiday thing. pay. That's yeah. what it's called. It's called you holiday pay. Yeah, 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 remember, it's got, got land in West Virginia. Yeah, but he said before, it's like nobody's buying it. He could try and sell it, but nobody's gonna fucking buy that shit. Oh, and she's been fucking getting shopped around by a realtor for two fucking years. Are you buying I can't even a piece of shit right land now. that's covered in shit? Can I, can I, can I just, sorry, sorry. Can I, that is an impressive Why amount of titty sweat. sweat. It is. That is a really impressive amount of titty it's sweat. It's regular for right Honestly, we've we've commented on Does it like it four or five different times, but it's been fair every days. time. It's It was worthy it's of being appreciated. I am envious. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, there's likely yeah, an ecosystem in there. It's like I mean, a terrarium inside, you know? You'd want to find that in the desert. I watched with the heat last night. <laughs> oh, God. Last night, yes. Why? 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 No. More, more, like, more like boogie in a dessert. Oh, oh, imagine lifting hey. that up. Hey. I don't want to yum, find yum. it in the dessert either. Ew. Man, just like, just imagine just grabbing it and lifting it up. Just it, the, the, the heavy and... flapping, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Get it in there, just drag. No. It. Why? How about taste salty? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Wait, oh. Hang on, Mr. 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 Can't handle hot cream is suggested. This I was shit. about oh, to oh, say, yeah. That's disgusting, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quit talking about hot cream. That's nasty. Hot cream is way <laughs> better than boogie yeah. sweat. Yeah, stop, stop talking about hot cream. Let's talk about no. boogie sweaty no. pits. No, no. salty, <laughs> salty <laughs> cream is way worse than boogie sweat. Let's talk about licking out of boogie's tit. Like what the fuck? No, stop. That's nasty. Now put it in the same bowl. Put it in the same. I'm a salty the Rub some Nutella on that bit. Put the pot oh, on in the microwave. Man, the man, on top just, to be fair, Nutella cream. would improve the situation, I think. But why? <laughs> but why? You want to get that, that half Nutella, half marshmallow? Sweet and salty, baby. Sweet and salty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, salty. In town, Virginia, which is a town that just. Incorporated. Dude, you Are need, you a, you a, need a new mic. You need a, I can't hear you. No. You need a new mic. It cuts out. Just stop yelling you know. into it. That's probably yeah. it's I don't know, but you buying a house in unincorporated pound now? Okay, but listen, why can't you? I, I can't scam you. You're, you're going to get paid, right? I, I can't do that, right? But I wish I could because it's so morally <laughs> wrong. <laughs> what do you think you could do to make people like feel better about the situation? I don't know. Get a liar tattoo on my face you're gonna uh, profit maybe don't oh, I would, yeah it uh, on your forehead look at muha already That's like uh, <laughs> that fucking tattoo <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many funny faces beauty nobody buys that fucking tattoo four thousand four thousand how much how much will i get paid in that much you're, you're saying you're shopping around the figure was he about to say oh yeah four thousand dollars donated to charity that makes up for all i've
Oh, yeah, four thousand dollars, really? So I can make. You yeah, so scam people make, for like, two years with the cancer. Two years. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. He made more money on the crypto. Boogie thing. really, like, Boogie literally just considers it a morality tax. Do you think oh, yeah. Dude, were originally he, want, he wants it to be written down and figured out by like a scientist how much money is worth <laughs> his buying morality back. Like that, as simple as that, please, and let's get it done. But the but the problem is that like if if it actually starts to get to a point of like oh shit, but I can't buy like video games or I can't buy as much food, like then he that's where it stops. Yeah, it's like yeah. it will only be so mm -hmm. much as before it actually infringes on his comfort, and then he won't do it. We'll That's the why the community service f felt like it was different than the other things, because it looked like he was That's in serious a pain. One, it's so upset, and it's actually doing some good. It's perfect. Yeah, it's physical <laughs> effort and actual charity, the two things he hates more than anything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 3,000? How I know. much were you shopping around? You're how gonna how much am I getting paid? You're going to profit. You're going to profit. Well, they already leaked. Tommy already leaked it, so I don't care. It's Eat around the six grand. You're okay, so Please. four thousand of it's already gone. <laughs> Would you like me to donate another two when it comes in? Wait, how yes. is four thousand of it already gone? Because I donated I, it to Saint. Because I donated it. Yeah, that's right? a that's a good cause right there. I yes, it is. That so I'm going to donate the. I will donate the equivalent of the entire check, the original four thousand, and an additional two. How about that? Uh, the check ten. About, well, no. you're give another two. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 he got ten, not six. Oh, they're saying the six thousand is the lol cow monthly thing, not the crypto oh, scam. Oh, he's, he's still everyone's efforts trying to etch out the fucking crypto scam money. You're getting there though. <laughs> it's gonna keep getting him to donate more. <laughs> yes, I will give another two grand. Do you care to match like it with me, Muda? Do you care to match it with me, Muda, on the day I do it? It already matched four grand. I know, but why not match two more? You yeah, can afford it. Fake cancer. Why you're, you're the one. Happen? Do what? <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, every time he tries to like yeah moral trap yeah. people everyone is just like i didn't think he was wrong matching it is already doing more than he needed yeah. to do yeah. i know i'm just saying i'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you the opportunity i'm just wait, giving wait, you the wait, 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 yeah thanks well, boogie I, for I giving me the opportunity up, dude what a fucking he always has the opportunity to donate you can just do that Hey, wait. Said, I oh, don't even understand why he did it. Yeah. And you're like, I don't even understand he did it. Why he did it? Ten thousand dollars isn't even a lot of money. Yeah, actually, if like, you're scamming your audience. $10, <laughs> yeah, that was, was like, that? scamming your audience. That's uh, to that's sell sell yourself mm -hmm. out fully to scam your audience via your live cancer through crypto mm -hmm. fucking send bullshit. Yourself. Yeah, it's like, what's that worth to you? Ten thousand. It's like, wow. Well, like ten grand. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Boogie's trying to moral grandstand on him by being like, 10,000 must not be much to someone who's lived a life of luxury. You wouldn't understand. Like, the hardworking man, 10,000's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that flip yeah, is so like, funny. A mansion and all Sorry, the... I mean, just got a question. Yeah. How, how much money did Boogie lose in uh, crypto? Wasn't it over $700,000 or something? Yeah, it was a well, lot. Well, remember, Please. though, that what that was was that he gained it, but it was paper gains. Yeah, well, so, he, like, those those so paper games he could have cashed out on. He yeah, could have turned that like, paper when, gain when into Nutella, loss, but he didn't. Like <laughs> a loss means like a net loss, not like a potential gain that you didn't realize. If it's unrealized, then like that's just not what anybody thinks of when they think of a loss. They think you are actually down like seven hundred and fifty grand, which is not not what happened. Mm. I think that his at next least, punishment, least... should, his next paycheck, should have to go to casino. Like, he has to put it all on red live on stream to see if he can pay the bills that month. <laughs> that would be funny. He is a lot of Double money. Double or nothing. Is it, is it enough no, money to scam the audience you built over 17 years? No. Wait, listen. Listen to what he says here, because Keeb's stuff picks up. Uh, right. right now. Is it, is it worth giving the audience you built over 17 for $10, years? $10,000 oh. right like, now? Like, oh my god. Whoa, whoa, I would no. rubble your brown whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I can't just... You can't just... Fuck. Yeah, That's you can't a lot just of money for a person of color, see? Yeah. It's so weird. That's a lot of money for a person of color here. Keeb's still noticing. It's like, wait, what? I'm just saying. The point that I'm making is ten thousand dollars is factually quite a lot. Why are you saying out of touch? Why are you saying brown? Oh no! To be fair, the reason he called it a brown cock is to distinguish it from a regular cock. Okay. Right. Very, very simple. Oh no! So weird though.
fuck? video. Is it, it was worth right a long-term long reputational video. damage? Yeah. yeah, you don't know what... Remember when he was talking about foods he didn't like when Muno was in the cold of fist thing he said was curry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and then he was oh, like, I don't like God. plenty of things, curry, um, um, it wasn't, um, ch hot chips. <laughs> He's like struggling hot to chips. Fight. <laughs> he might, he might not like curry, but it's not in a little Nutella mist and can't fix, okay? That's true. Oh, Nutella that is curry. True. Oh my 10 million God. fucking dollars is worth, 10,000 yeah. dollars is worth, like, uh, any you guys, of your I'm fucking eyes. I don't know what 10,000 dollars is worth, 10,000 dollars US. When's the last time you put in 40 hours a week? Because I don't spend it on hookers. When's the last time you spent 40 hours a week? Yeah, so Boogie's trying to pull on him, he's like, you've never worked, like, a full week in your life. And Munahar's like, I didn't spend all my money on hookers, you fucking moron. Like, value is worth it's hilarious that Boogie would try that on Muta, because Muta actually has, like, still a normal job on the side of YouTube. like. He definitely works like forty hours on top of doing. Uh, YouTube. Guys, I, I, I got a, I got a confession. I got a confession. Oh. So, oh. Um, uh, I, I just had uh, some breakfast put in front of me. <gasps> oh, uh, and oh. in the uh, yeah, I know. In well, it nearly. It's it's pretty much Nutella. Uh, it's it's uh, avocado on toast with an egg. <laughs> Hipster oh. Taylor Lorenz. That special. sounds good. So it's well, I just uh, ate it, a kiwi. It's, it's pretty much Nutella sprinkled with popcorn, and pretty I would like now. to apologize oh, to the chat wow. for the hypocrisy of uh, trying to do this. Be true. No, get out. Not, not get us, out. Just a shout. <laughs> yeah, chat. Chat's mum is a. Uh, she's a. She's a great cook. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so many know, similarities. Yeah, I ate a kiwi to balance it out. So many similarities <laughs> between you and Boogie. You live with a chef. He lives with a chef. You're losing weight. He's trying to lose weight. There's a lot of things about your life. It's like a parallel. You're blood brothers. Well, chocolate with peroxide has a lot of calories. So he's got sweaty tits. I've got sweaty tits. You know. Oh, yours brothers can't brothers compare. He's got waterfall tits. Waterfall <laughs> tits. <laughs> yeah, I, I walked through the heat yesterday for like two hours. So I wasn't really waterfall weird. sweating like that. <laughs> He's got the, was it, the Reichenbach falls of tits right there. No, you know, <laughs> falls of tits. mind the salt of his body when it's, starting, like, when it's done sweating. Oh my god. The Niagara Falls of tits. <laughs> Mariana <laughs> Trench of tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. uh, Mariana Trench of is far more beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Really Mariana's Trench is uh, <laughs> rear end, you see. Fucking did this. When's the last time you spent 40 hours a week? Because I did this quite a bit what? in my life. When did I time? spend 40 hours a week? 40 I actually hours spent a week. more than 40 hours a week at a job, actually. I was a cybersecurity yeah. expert. Yeah. I spent way more than 40 hours a week at a and fucking job. Did you office. get paid about as much as I did in the rest of your fucking eyes? Or were you getting about $1,800 no, a month? I didn't get paid too? nearly what I spent. You got paid about $1,800 a month or two? Because mm -hmm. that's what I fucking made. When I was working what? forty hours a week, I made about eighteen hundred dollars a month. What is eighteen hundred? Wait, what? What is, what is, what is, what is what? He is trying yeah. to outworking <laughs> man Mutahar. He's trying to be like, I've lived a harder life mm -hmm. than you. Just, could you just fuck Boogie, off? I got paid like, like shit. Where did he work? Why is was he that every that? week? Boogie's been like doing YouTube videos, the most like low effort. Yeah. Like, YouTube uh, turn on the webcam and then just start talking. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, who are we kidding? <laughs> like, the amount of work Christ, that's man. put in. All right. And also, he's not even in any position to do this. This is like right after the biggest mistake. Yeah, well, imagine trying yeah. to be like someone trying to shame you when they faked cancer to get as much money as possible. You're, just, you're sitting like, you can't be serious. Man. I, I, like, I, I, what's all this about? The idea that he should be donating as much as you when you're the one who fucked up. It's, it's, it's like I'm standing in front of a child that just stabbed to death and someone's like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, well, when do, when did you last work 40 days or 40 hours in your life? <laughs> just give another stab in the neck. It's yeah. like, what are, what are we doing? Why would you try to moral grant like, after all the things you've did, you fucking moron? You can go from like a can't stand up for five Ooh. minutes to look at how many hours I've worked, look at how such a hard worker I am. Yeah. It was a month. Or yeah, hours he, a week where? He worked Fucking hard a, driving a around that supermarket. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Team shop up at the uh, fucking hyper security building. Well, that's your career fucked up right there. I was working my ass off for a good compensation. Still not enough for what I deserved, 
But yeah, I made good money. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of people out here who are working their asses off too, and they're not. A lot of people out there that aren't faking cancer. Yes. He can't win an argument anymore. No, yeah, it's I mean, possible. can't do anything because everyone can obviously just play the ultimate yeah. trump card of you faked cancer for profit for years. Yeah. yeah. It, yep. It yep. nothing else matters. There's a lot of people out there that are working to make ends meet. There's a lot of people out there that aren't scamming their audience for ten Gs. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's their problem. I did. Yes, it is, isn't it? It is a really good point. Point. Can you uh, one uh, time stick to this point? Oh, Ten thousand dollars to everybody watching this right now is factually quite a. Ten thousand dollars to somebody in their fucking fifty shouldn't be a lot of money because you should be smart enough not to have burned it on hookers, smart enough to invest <laughs> it wisely. Yeah, <laughs> especially after yeah. scabbing your Basically, audience yeah. with fucking ca fake cancer, you should after have way more having... than that. Yep. After yeah. creating mm. a YouTube channel with millions of subs. Yep, yep. four and a half million, and he ran it for well, how long? 17 years successfully? Actually, 10K to somebody your age shouldn't be that much. 10K for somebody that's willing to throw it into crypto? That just I know it won't pay for one of your fucking Teslas. I know it won't pay for one of your fucking uh, expensive... That's actually... Wait, didn't Boogie want to get a Tesla? Well, how was he yeah, going to talk yeah, about didn't yeah, he, yeah. he tried and failed. What a weird yeah. criticism. He keeps... <laughs> Like yeah, Mudahar buys his cars money's his urge. I don't even understand what the argument is. He, he's trying to say like, Mudahar, mm. you're a bad person because you think that ten thousand dollars isn't worth that much. <clears throat> Yo, Boogie, you <laughs> faked <laughs> cancer. Yeah, he's, like, in, he's he's looking these, at the wrong list. Not equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at the things I shouldn't mention list, and he keeps reading from it. <laughs> How yeah. many orphans do you think you could feed if you drained Boogie's fat reserves? Oh my god. Can you mm. go away? <laughs> well, are we allowed to slather the teller on top of it, or is that like... Oh, no! You, you may. Sweeten it. You may. I should have stayed As long bed. as the hot cream goes next, along with a little pinch of sweat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's actually funny. You scammed your audience for a Tesla. I worked my ass off to buy a Tesla. You scammed your audience for a Tesla. I had to work my ass off for one. Every single thing Boogie says is just like, dude, there's a whole history that's recorded all of it. You're not going to yeah. escape. It's, it's, it makes it so easy on other people. It's like, oh, have you ever worked? Like, yes, actually, you haven't. Mm. You scam people. Well, did you buy a Tesla with your money? Yeah, and I didn't scam people for this. Like, God damn it! If he actually gets the, the cancer <laughs> diagnosis, it's, gonna, it's just gonna be funny to people. It's not gonna be seen as some kind of like, oh no. no. It'll just be like, oh, there he goes. Boogie. There goes Karma. Boogie is the, uh, Boogie's the training dummy of rhetoric. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, like, if you can't pass him, you're fucked. <laughs> you gotta be able to be. Yeah, him. it's like, yeah. I need to practice all, my all archery or my 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 sword swinging or whatever so you, you hit the training dummy right he's that but for just like he's the living straw man <laughs> yeah living straw man. <laughs> well every single thing he says is like all right now so everyone together but you faked cancer there you <laughs> go <laughs> uh, you faked cancer <laughs> welcome God, random it, film Leroy. talk how you doing hola hey guys hey, dude. um how are you guys holding up? Because um, I tuned in last night before oh, I went to okay. bed when I was a little bit drunk, and uh, I heard <laughs> that some some big shot jumped on and called everyone peasants. Something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that did happen. Yeah, I think we're at sixteen hours and a half, so still yeah, eight about. to go. Nice. Yeah. We're okay. Doing, doing just fine. Kept alive. Doing kept right. well by right. Boogie's antics. Um, mm. If you want to, yeah. right. please link. tell me you haven't been talking about boogie for the last 12 hours no <laughs> no just the last just the last six just most of it <laughs> if you join us you can you can come in on the uh, last third of the second third of the boogie content for the anniversary we got some okay. uh, boogie 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 got plenty of surprises oh, I... to go after this as well my my knowledge of Boogie, just so that you guys know, is basically nothing. I haven't actually watched any of you guys' Boogie content, but someone oh. in my Discord did give me a TLDR, so I huh. don't really know who he is. <laughs> well, this will oh be even God. more interesting, Yeah, it's, it's better that way, probably. Yeah. <laughs> He's the guy in the top oh. left, if you didn't know. <laughs> and your audience oh, yeah, I... I, 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 I 
I, I heard worked my ass night. off to <laughs> buy it. I've never had one. I've never had one, Dipshit. You're the one driving one, you No, dumb. you yeah. spent your money <laughs> fucking inverted commas LA 10s. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. <laughs> would have mentioned that. Like, he's fucking already shit on him for if he's not realizing. <laughs> Why? Well, I worked his fucking face. I worked hard to earn it. I never had one. 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 I how has it gone to this? It's it's genuinely because Mudaha just said that he didn't think ten grand was much money, and this to was sell out for the idea of how much money he ought to have donated, or yeah, yeah like alternatively, what he sold out for. That's that was what it like, was. Which I, is... And now he's like actually trying to moral grandstand because he said that. I completely like, oh, agree. Well, though never had selling out for ten k sucks. Like try and have some price. Yeah, yeah. yeah ten thousand dollars. Like come on. Guys, people have had sex with this man with those sweaty tits. No, I just want to no. put that. Why do you keep bringing this up? It is in my what brain. What do you think Nutella was for? One for me, one for my hooker. One for me, one for my hooker. No, the flapping. Oh, we're making s'mores tonight. Get in the. Oh, and he once said it was on top. He could be on top now. Ah! But you spent ah, never had had one. money on hookers. <laughs> you never spent had had money on hookers. You spent oh more God, money than the MSR. He's doing it. He's doing he's the I never did over the, the new yeah, set. Yeah. The, the the funny yeah. part is he still tried to buy one and then was like, oh, I actually can't afford it. Can I get some donations, please? Yeah, so I can't yeah. afford it. Oh. Remember, we watched the clips where he <laughs> yeah, said, he please, was like, dig deep. Yeah, give dig me deep. money. Yeah. Dig deep so that I can have buy a fucking a Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's stupid shit. We remember yeah. what you I'm still traumatized. But like, I don't even know why he's like, because it's the whole point that Moodoo is saying is like, yeah, you could have had a Tesla if you didn't spend all your money on stupid things. You know what's also funny? I, I, sometimes I look to the bottom right, it's like, oh yeah, Wings is here. He's just hanging out. Yep, he's yeah. just chilling. He's just chilling with his cat. Yeah. Chilling with his cat. Just chilling. Yeah, he's like, oh, I feel bad. Uh, down payment on the Tesla. I hadn't done any of that shit. No, but like you spent two hundred thousand dollars on hookers. You spent more and than again, the cost of my car. car come on, on your show, you yeah. lying piece of shit. And whoa. Oh, oh nice. suddenly so love you though. Yeah, I love you. You're though. lying, lying. <laughs> <laughs> said that that was not the actual number. on your show and said that that was not accurate. So you're a again, false, you lied about, but you spent that money on travel and everything, right? So you okay, spent you Tesla money on shit like hookers and Disneyland and stupid shit. So what the fuck? Not having cancer. Would any of these hookers be willing to come on the low cal live show and oh talk god, wait, stop! He <laughs> <laughs> stop put on his protective shield because he's. <laughs> Why would you want to do that to the poor woman? Because Why that's fucking that? interesting. No, none of them. You know, it would be a lot better. Poor woman, like he gives a fuck. <laughs> but what what has he done with Desi? Right, his girlfriend lady, right? her. especially at he the comedy her. club. He basically her. hoisted her up to be made fun of as like a as a as a magnet for his insult fetish or his humiliation what? fetish. Turned the bones he... into kindling from the Mike Clum no, documentary. Seen this. Yeah, but remember the Is clips person... from uh, the second round of the the lockout live stuff where he was talking to Tommy about how he was like. You keep her name out your fucking mouth. Like whenever oh, people yeah. actually <laughs> make fun of her, he does that. Yeah, whole the only charade. one allowed. Yeah, the only one allowed to dehumanize her is me. Pretty much. Yeah. Is this the person that he had a that he had a bath with, or is this someone else? Yep. Yes, that's yes. the same. Girl. That's yeah. that's her. Okay. Isn't, isn't, okay. It's, 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 uh, isn't he trying to pimp her out on OnlyFans now as yes, well? Yes. 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 Sure. It's, oh, it's so uh, fucking how... disgusting, dude. Yeah. Imagine the, how the bathroom uh, the smells that's... when he gets in the water and the and the sweat mixes with bath water and then you keep. Can we kick oh, meme finally? It, Jesus. Yeah, okay, we can. <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine, being a degenerate. <laughs> imagine <laughs> saying that you got together with a girl because you had a shared uh, history of abuse. Yeah. And then you yeah, tried yeah. to pimp her out on OnlyFans. I know. Yep. It's, yep. it's so fucked up. Oh, we, we, had a, yeah. we had a trauma bond. She was abused, and I kept doing it to her. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The running that theory. Literally, he yes. said he half expects that she will like outgrow him. That there will be a time where she'll want to leave. That's sort of something he's already said. No, before. nobody will outgrow you, Boogie. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean do that? Actually, if impossible. I spend two hundred thousand dollars on hookers, I would neck myself. Okay. Saddle him. Not out of shame, just alone. Like I would too. Well, no, you. What? Why would you say I would too? I can't neck myself. You're right here. I can see myself. But 
Um, if I had actually spent two hundred thousand dollars on hookers, I would too. Yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. What? What are you talking? Dude, I would love. Well, to he's have trying to say that he didn't, he didn't do hookers. Right. He didn't do it. Yeah. Didn't do hookers, which is interesting. I never did. It was more like. Uh, oh no! It's just no one, what no happened to one for me, one for my hooker? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, is this, uh, what happened is this, to the hookers um, that were interviewed in the documentary? Uh, mm. Well, did Boogie That's say, oh, them. no, I, we lied, I lied, I made up. Oh, he'll explain, out, he'll explain, actually... don't you worry. Oh, okay. That's, that's, oh, okay. that's great A content. Well, again, I never did the hooker thing. How about the one that you that, that quit never hooking? Wait, you never did the hooker thing? Wait, what? Now you didn't do hooker? Yeah, yeah. get the fuck sugaring, out. Which is a very different thing. If you're sugaring, very That's different. Oh, he's oh, just doing. Oh, oh, oh. It's more expensive. Oh, oh, oh. wait for it. Keep Saw's reaction kind of sums wait up the audience. Wait, wait, reaction. whoa, 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 whoa! I continually the pay them over time. Is what he's saying there. Well, yeah, but didn't he say in a documentary, I'll take you out, we'll have a nice time, I'll get buy you food that you'd never be able to eat because you're I'll a scrub. put your children through school. And, uh, yeah, and then <laughs> maybe maybe we'll go back and fuck, he yeah. said. Yeah, so argue, yeah. it depends on your perspective, arguably more pathetic than a hooker. It really depends on yes. what you think. But More like expensive said, and fewer guarantees. It's a hooker. Very familiar it's with maybe oh, implied an option, though. They're still hookers. No, it's completely different. Yeah. about? A lot of these women I never even slept with. There's no sex involved. How can you be a hooker if there's no sex? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's that, not making you look better, dude. This guy, said, this guy said that he would kill him. Well, no, he would, um, what was it, neck himself if he spent however many hundred thousand dollars on hookers. And now he's trying to claim that he didn't actually have sex with them, as if that makes it better. Yeah, well, just yeah, saying, dude, yeah. it's, dude, the actual, the top tier bullshit big fed here, like the, the, the little, the little intro from Keemstar's perfect. So then I never even slept with. There's no sex involved. How can you be a hooker if there's what? no fucking What the fuck? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me, you fat, dumb piece of shit? Go, man, go. There he is. There he is. He got there activated. He is. <laughs> That's Pete and Keemstar right now. Yeah, That's happening yeah. right now. It's gonna uh, be painful. Someone who just fed me s'mores while I beat oh, up. It's totally different. I spent a two hundred to die. Look at Budahas. Two hundred thousand dollars on hookers. Looks fucking Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, I can't imagine spending that kind of money on hookers and still having the feeling of the inside of a vagina being an enigma to me. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wild. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Aren't man. you like a little like at what point are you a little curious? Just all four of them right now, that's fucking the, all the faces. Rags, you put like... kids through school, okay? <laughs> you oh. paid women to fucking hang out with what he you? Needs to do. No. no. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, oh my god. Had one oh, of my god. Dinner, oh my god. Oh my god. I bought them dinners. You I paid them... women. Uh, you paid women I to hang out with you. No, nobody. Very few women First thought like a chick. Okay, okay, Very okay. Listen to me. Like listen to me. Stop interrupting me. Stop interrupting me. Stop, Stop talking. You're going to listen to what few, I'm saying so right now. Some of them did. So some of them <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. Well, some of them it did. It is really, pay their bills. really, really fucking pathetic to go online and like simp to like Pokimane. It's even more pathetic to pay for some girls' OnlyFans. It's even more fucking pathetic to like pay for sex, but it's got to be the absolute most fucking pathetic yes, thing it, I've ever heard that you're here. fucking paying a woman to go hang out with you in real life. I that I is fucking dinner, pathetic. Which is not what I did. Of that course, is. That I bought them. What dinner. did you do then? What? How is that not <laughs> the same <laughs> thing? Yeah. What? Oh, so like you were uh, dating? Was, you were in a relationship? Yeah, yeah, well, it's not even man, dating. Right? That's just yeah. it's. It's not real, you know what I mean? Like they're well, only doing it. That's what it would be it. if you're like in like a normal yeah, world yeah. with like a a moral god and things, right? That, that's what we call like <laughs> no. dating. That's, but that's, he's, he's talking about something he's completely trying different. To, like, oh yeah, I bought that woman dinner. Like oh, because you're. He's like, trying to argue it like it's um, do, it's high class or something. When it's the reality is it yeah, is yeah. dating without the actual relationship, and you have to pay for everything, yeah. including their time. No, it's it, it's dating yeah. where you're paying for the relationship. But, it, Wait, but so you, don't, but the, yeah. you don't even get and the relationship, it's really. Fake. Yeah, but it's all fake. It's yeah. all fake. It's not. It's the what's like. What's the inverse of it, it's? It's strangers without benefits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually it, it may very well be the worst possible thing benefits. you pay them for their time you pay them to them to eat you pay for them to go to nice places they might fuck you you have to pay for that as well and then they'll abandon you the second the money runs out like i 
How is this yeah. not the worst <laughs> possible version of all the things I just what, went through? What do you get out of this? What do you get out of you this? You get to yeah, pretend like someone loves you, you <laughs> if you just believe. That's what you get. Bankruptcy. Wait, what you're know, describing is also finance, way more expensive than an actual hooker. <laughs> what what yeah, you're describing is like when... going on a first date, knowing that it's going to fail, and knowing that there won't be another one. Wow. I miss Ruined the days you could just fuck a hooker and there wasn't like a microtransaction attached to it. <laughs> well, there was a microtransaction <laughs> attached to it, but uh, I didn't get the, the hooker DLC. Damn. Yeah, this girl's the offering DLC. some really cool DLC. <laughs> Maybe if he's lucky, she'll, she'll twist his tipples, you know? Ooh. Top tier package. <laughs> So fucking gay. It's so gay. <laughs> that is gay. Hanging out with I mean, you just buy the a fucking odd trailer. That's a fair comment, you know, in all fairness, that is a fair comment. Oh, God, if you're paying yeah, for it, yeah. you gotta fucking get it. Well, you can't I mean, not just get letting, it, man. That's, that's letting someone, like, it's like consensual robbery? What do you even call that? <laughs> I just love the idea that it would have been several people where he spends the night with them, they just don't like his company, but they keep around to get the food, to get the place, then they're like, okay, bye. <laughs> He's like, oh. I don't like his cum, either. Ew. Nutella. It never gets to that. What Apparently. I'm saying is we had dinner, we they sat don't even around, know if they like his cum, and then afterwards, they went True. home. There was no cash. I didn't, like, fork over $200, thank you for going to dinner with me. That shit doesn't happen. That's not what sugaring is. You pay well, for everything. Like, what do you how mean? Much how much did you, meet, you, the, buy how did you meet them? They pay for On it. He's lying. Like, he fucking pays shopping. for everything. It's it's like a distinction without a difference. Yeah. I didn't fork over two hundred dollars. I just paid. For... Remember, he'd go to like hyper high end restaurants. You made a whole thing about this yeah. in the documentary. The, the the way it works, he oh, like go yeah, to yeah, that's right. His profiles. all kinds of like crazy places the just to experience what it's like if he had someone who cared about him. <laughs> oh, that is the saddest way you can describe it, but it's so accurate. Because I'm so no one who's a hobby. Do you just buy them shit just to, just to hang out with them? So how did you spend like $40,000 on hookers, but it's really $40,000 on meals for hookers? <laughs> <laughs> Building your audience for 17 years, the long-term reputational damage. It's like, it's the ultimate cuckery. You're providing her with the calories to fuck other men later. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 That's cannibalism. Boogie, That's not even, you... that's like... Like four degrees of separation. That's like ultimate mega cuckery. Boogie, Jeez. unironically, if you had just paid for sex, you would be in less financial ruin than you are right now. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. yeah if the... you just fucked her and w was done with it, and then you could uh... just. But no, I say it just sounds like the LA Nines or something like that. Like, yeah. And you get to have an orgasm too, man. Come on. Whoa. Is it, so do you think it's seriously though? Do you do you think it's because he just wants to be seen in public with a woman that he deems to be attractive? That's got to be a to problem, elevate yeah. his probably yeah. yeah. I think it's a I think there's it's another degree to it. it. I think there's, there's one more degree, degree to it. it. He can't get hot. It's not. It's just. It, it's not just being seen in public with a woman. It's being seen with a woman that everyone recognizes and knows instantly is way out of his league and the implication that he must be paying for it, mm. which plays mm. into the, uh, if they see me with this kind of woman, then they'll understand the dynamics of this and what its implications are. And that's like a humiliating, sad thing that people will think of me. So that's, yeah. it plays into the, you know. Yeah, and he doesn't have enough money. He doesn't have enough money to keep doing that, so he dates younger now. So it kind of conveys the same message without him yeah, actually. Because younger women are cheaper. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> no, they are. What, yeah. Younger people are. It's it's a lot easier to impress a younger person. So it's not going to take nearly as much money as it would like an older woman who expects more. You can take a young person to. You don't have to take her to some place Depends super class or anything. Like, I mean, maybe McDonald's. Hell yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, maybe we're going down. She, well, what age are we talking gonna, about here, Rex? Boogie's going to drown in the ball pit, so he can't. <laughs> Help! 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 Maybe he'll get stuck in the little tubes. That'll be his fatality you and you're standing with the, the next Mortal Kombat, the ball pit. <laughs> can I exchange these tickets for more pizza? <laughs> the rest of the people in the community is worth the $10,000 that you earned through this scam? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you <laughs> think raping every fan you have up the asshole was worth a penny? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, what? Can we roll that back? What the fuck? fuck? <laughs> this, this is an interesting, this is this an interesting such hypothetical. Um, wild I, response. What? what? I, like, where did, I guess, how? Hang on. I, 
I surely I fell asleep for a second there. What, did, what was that happening? <laughs> All right, I've, I've, rolled, I've rolled back one, like 11, 12 seconds. Here we go. Okay, full context, I'm pretty sure we were talking Three, about hookers two, or something. One. Um, okay. Meals for hookers. Building your audience for 17 years, the long-term reputational damage to you and your standing with the rest of the people in the community is worth the $10,000 that you earned through this scam? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you okay. think raping every fan you have up the asshole was worth a penny? Oh, you didn't do that either, did you? What? Did you? <laughs> what? I, I, I agree, I, mean, what, I agree. What? Is, is what? he is well, suggesting that were he not I sugar think... daddying, he would be Why? Like, well, essaying no, his right? fan? It wasn't... It was the, the, so no is the answer so to the hypothetical. The simple thing is just like, why did you do activity? And then the response is, why did you blow up the moon? Yeah, for the same reason, because we both <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> exactly. well, that would have been fun. better. <laughs> but everybody is now just <laughs> thinking about <laughs> raping everybody. Like, why did you like, say what? this? You what? didn't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. The only thing that got raped was Boogie's bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Down it went. I am bringing up rape consensual. into this. What? I don't know. Okay, whatever. I'm stabbing. <laughs> I'm stabbing. <laughs> okay, we'll switch to stabbing, no, stabbing. people. Okay. <laughs> What's happening? Was, what? Is stabbing every one of your fans for a penny worth it? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm trying to find no, I guess worse not. Than what is? How does this address anything? I wish I wish to assure chat, if Fringy Rags and I were offered to stab all of you, we wouldn't accept it for a penny. We would go higher than that. No, oh, yeah. I would. Oh, I would stab every single one of you. Oh, you oh, would sweet. rape them up the ass, though, right? Oh, you're I a to, real need, good one. Go yeah, I need to stab everyone so I can afford my Nutella. We are the most It was a moral. rare penny. What the fuck? Yeah, okay, what about yeah, stabbing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about stabbing, oh. what about what? stabbing then? What yeah, about I don't stabbing? think stabbing anybody in my yes, audience is good. Buggy, 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 listen. And listen, listen buggy, stop, I, I stop, stop, stop. Stop. Muta, thanks stop. For I don't know why. Stop. Why is he even retarded. going back? He's already said that he believes that he it was a scam anyway. Like, he believe, he said that himself. So what's mm. he even talking about? Yeah. He does this where, like, he'll admit to it and then try to run back to, like, a nice... Like, lie anyway, like, after he admitted to it. I don't get it. Like, does, yeah. he, does he think that nobody's paying... Why, does he think this is effective? Does he think <laughs> anybody watched this and thought, wow, that's a very compelling point, uh, Boogie. Yeah, no, I agree with you now. You're a good person. I, is there a single person in the world I mean, who that worked on? <laughs> Listen, Boogie is a rhetorician. That's how he's described. He's very good at this. He's Ooh, convinced everybody. Of course. Of course. The only thing I can think is he's just trying to find something that is worse than cancer or faking cancer so that the report <laughs> he only has a dig for that. $1,000 isn't worth a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What's worse than faking <laughs> cancer, <laughs> raping four million people? I guess. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Right. yeah. Thanks, man. As always. I mean, I'll engage with the hypothetical. Oh. I guess. No. But... Oh, Wait, are we having a love you though moment just now? Yeah, I was about to say, watch out the love, the love you though. It's so good. Muta, yeah. thanks for coming on. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Muta. As always. <laughs> love you though. <laughs> Oh, my God! Yeah. It, it really it's, it's so fucking funny. It's so insincere. It's bullshit. <laughs> Thank you, Muda. Love you, Muda. At the end of the day, I I <laughs> don't the... like him as a person, but when he's on the show, he's extremely entertaining, and I think the audience likes him. They like how he fucking go, gets up in my shit. Yeah, I'm all about it. I'm all about well, it. Well, he's also funny. Just sit here and listen to him. Oh, lie. Yeah. wow! What a guy you are, Boone. What was the lie? <laughs> Wow. He's so in on it, well, guys. I mean, he, like, he's not okay, mad at all. Uh, Wait, but... he's done another heel turn, though. Where yeah, are you yeah, going yeah. with this? Do you, do you see? Because uh -oh. he's now gradually just taking the opportunity to absolutely shit on Moose. Yeah. He's gone now. Yeah. He's also uh, funny to sit here and listen to him lie over and over again. Oh, that's... I, oh, yeah, you, that's, you never that's, do that, That's fucking you, rich you coming. Never lie. Glass he's cancer raging. wars, Boogie. Glass cancer wars. <laughs> well, uh, watch, he's, he's a very... Rising. Boogie does a very deft rhetorical flourish here that you probably don't know about because you're not very smart, everybody, but I'll help you understand it, right? Okay. So he calls... Uh, you oh, watch thanks. him, he calls Mudahara Liar. Oh, that's... I... And then Keemstar says, oh, that's rich coming from you. And Boogie's very clever because... He thinks like, oh, because Keemstar's calling me a liar, but I can twist it. Watch how he twists it. It's very clever. Oh, that's okay. that's fucking rich coming from you, buddy. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, to lie to me is fucking ballsy. That's so oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Uh, that doesn't make any fucking sense. What? The sheer skill. Okay. The sheer skill. He's if we're going to be really good at lying to do it. That's what we call a verbal oh, response. 
How does he keep walking into these fucking rakes like all the time? <laughs> it's like the fucking He's Simpsons retarded? meme. <laughs> if you don't lie to Boogie, no balls. Yeah. Oh, right. Just sit here and lie to me is fucking ballsy. That's crazy. Oh, That's oh, crazy. I, just feel know, like I don't even also... exactly know what he means by that, actually. Wait, I, mean, I just I like wait to so ready to just stop. <laughs> Wiggs is so ready to just go, just go offline. Oh. I don't know. Take Wiggs shit does sometimes come across as though he's like, "It's this. It sucks that this is my life, but I've got to do it. Like it pays the bills." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. At least I, I live with like... this nice lady, and I have a cat, and I have a know, Pikachu on this... a column. You know, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I think the funniest outcome worse. of all of this would be Wings just having all this debt pay off and just can chill after all this he, like done, announces he's and... leaving lolka yeah. live because he's paid his debts. <laughs> like... yeah i used all the money to actually get my shit together and i'm just gonna oh. hang out with my wife for the rest of my life i just yeah. thought of a brilliant pun that pikachu is ionic oh fuck that's good jesus christ that's so fucking good it's so good that most of you won't get it oh well uh, that's great can we continue <laughs> <laughs> oh. Because uh, of the type of column, there's like Ionic, Doric, and Corinthian, and that's an Ionic. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's moving it's on. It's really good because Pikachu is the most Pikachu iconic there. Pokemon. But that's a rich Ionic Corinthian column. leather. Did someone mention oh. moving on? Well, Rex, yeah. you forgot them speech disabled, it's so, so I don't get it. Fucking good. <laughs> Come on, say it, Rex. You think that we wouldn't all get it because we're all peasants? Say it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a Ionic order. I'm a peasant, so I don't get it. Yeah, we're happy right. in peasant land, doing peasant land. I get it. I'm get it, and I'm satisfied. I and I've got, I, I got my strawberries and my sand, and I'm just having a great time. <laughs> sand. Okay. That's a great like, combination. Peanut butter. Yeah, Jesus on Christ. Top of that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. I mean, is it even one of those peanuts? Out of quarter. Yeah, when it comes to the whole fake and cancer thing, like, like, Ionic, Boogie doesn't understand yeah. the real but evil of that situation yet. No, I sure you, I do. What is, is an, the real evil what is the real evil? The real evil, in my opinion, is the people who have been affected by cancer, either having lost a loved one oh. or dying themselves. Wait, oh, wait, 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 like Medicare being genuinely hurt by that not just in the regards of okay. man hearing about that sucks and makes me feel like shit but also no, it because it of makes, it makes you feel other like shit you are... piece of fucking wine to be fair <laughs> to, <laughs> to be fair you are fucking lying no he feels bad because he got caught <laughs> that's why <funny>. yes <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The only yeah. reason that is the only reason he feels fucking bad is he got mm -hmm. fucking caught. He doesn't he feel feels... bad about the people. He doesn't feel bad that he fucking lied. He doesn't feel bad that he's a degenerate piece of fucking shit that's fucking pimping he's out. He's not his degenerate. He doesn't on fuck fucking the hookers. Fans. Kill him. He doesn't feel bad <laughs> that he fucking does nothing to help himself whatsoever. He doesn't feel bad because of his fucking attitude and the way that he behaves towards others. He feels bad because he fucking got caught. Tattoo right soul. across your forehead. Was... Cunt right across <laughs> it. I would accept right that. Right across it. That was some good ass content right there. <laughs> what what would you prefer, like, actually? Yeah, yeah. Would Fuck you prefer you. liar in perfect, legible, like big stamp on his forehead or cunt? I kind of, I'm not sure which one is better because the liar one is liar. Li li lying cunt. <laughs> what about liar? <laughs> All right, yeah, there we go. Liar. From salt. I think liars. Yeah. Why actually not both? suffering to try to raise money to pay for their fucking medical treatments and bills seem a little less <laughs> trustworthy. Well, see, so, uh, to be fair to Mudahar, he's kind of killed him here because, on one hand, either he didn't answer well, and it would have been like, well, you're just a fucking idiot for not knowing the damage you've caused, or he answers well, that it's like, why the fuck did you do it? Mm-hmm. So it took you two years of faking this illness to realize that? <laughs> That's what I mean. Oh my god. No, I've Stop known it the whole he's... time. I, like, I... I've known it the whole I know... time. No, <laughs> oh, why would you say oh, that? God. That's what I mean. Oh. There's another rake. Rhetorical there was another bastard. Rake. He stepped right into Rhetorical it. Rhetorical bastard. <laughs> after he's fucking... clearly operating after... at a level that we just cannot comprehend. Maybe it's not sweat and spilling out there. It's just brain fluid. Years from now, we're going to wake up in the middle of the night and go, holy fuck. It's just so interesting. because so smart, and I never knew it the whole time.
You know when you when you talk to someone and you realize you fucked up, you said something wrong or offensive, and you're like, "Oh, that no. was pretty bad," and you go like, "Oh, damn it, <laughs> that sucks." But Boogie just says that and just keeps going. It's like, "Oh yeah, I knew it the whole time." Anyway, uh, did you rape anyway, your audience? Yeah. <laughs> Boogie takes, yeah, no, Boogie takes the. Boogie he hates being alive. He hates being alive. He hates just keep alive. going to the extreme. <laughs> I've spat so many times this stream. For having shit. done it, I'm like, having talked to my doctor, he's like, well, you know, look, we're going to treat you for this. Do you, do, there's no reason to get the diagnosis. I'm like, okay. Well, and then oh I just, we're going to treat you for this. There's no use getting the diagnosis. <laughs> That's I don't believe, I don't believe a doctor ever said that. No. Well, what's don't funny too? That. There's no point getting a diagnosis. Here's your treatment. But he's playing into his usual spiel, and you catch Keemstar's already losing it. He's like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. Again. It's in my head time. the whole time. I'm like, okay, well, they're still treating me for it, so I'm going to keep letting Wings them treat me for it. And technically, I still have it. And then we got on this fucking show. It's and you the guys doctor, by me. the way. It's, it's the doctor's fault. Yeah, of course. It's the doctor's fault. Yeah. Remember, yeah, even if the doctor could speak English. <laughs> he could say, he could oh, say polycythemia yeah. vera, but He's he couldn't four, say cancer. That's yeah. why he hates Mudahar, because Mudahar reminds him of his doctor that can't oh! speak They made those jokes. He said the, uh, Dr. Gupta? <laughs> he kept saying that back <laughs> no. You know, the doctor was from one of those African tribes that mainly speaks in clicks, except for polycythemia vera. So yeah, of course. Like, yeah. Everyone knows that. Vera. Just... <laughs> to be fair, though, if you go to a hospital and you can barely understand your doctor, it mean that it means that guy earned his way into this country, all right, and he's gonna heal the fuck out of you. All That's right? what I mean. Boogie genuinely tried to use that in order to like fuck over the. Cause remember, because people started like questioning. He's like, "Well, I'm not gonna give you more research." He's, he's like, "He's like my family doctor. I wouldn't do that to him. I wouldn't bring him on here. He wouldn't talk about it. as if like he wants to throw them under the bus, but also prevent any information from actually being discovered." Of course. That's the way the boogie does it. And they're like, well, technically, you don't have it. And hooker. until you fucking technically have it, we want to fucking fuck you, piece of shit. I'm like, I know, but I still have to what? pay the fucking bills. You're like, I don't care. I don't care that you have to pay the bills. I want a fucking diagnosis. Get your bill drone, uh, don't bone drone into. And I'm like, no, Wait, I'm not going to do that. So now I've effectively paid cancer. What? I think he's just, he's just trying know, to lost. make a cohesive it's... story. <laughs> to talk. Uh, <laughs> what? 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 It's, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> oh, he failed. And one now that that's me, out there, yes, one that's when it did truly <laughs> occur to me after hearing from dozens and dozens, of, including channel members. I can't hear me. this anymore. I can't hear this anymore. <laughs> I, I agree, team. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yes, fuck off. Like. But yeah, thank you guys. Uh, any final words? That's all of it. Thank you guys Festival. for tuning in. I'm going to go eat myself to death. <laughs> no, my. <laughs> <laughs> he had to leave. You, you, with you've been doing that all your life. So, you know, yeah. so yeah. I've, been fucking, I've been staring at this food. Hasn't killed you yet, chicken Boogie, for too long. It's like yet yeah, another suicide yeah. bait when he leaves. Like, of course. That's yeah. like more. Yeah. Than what than you yeah. reckon he's gonna have medium rare chicken rags? Oh, mm -hmm. why, are you why would you rags? have medium rare chicken? That's not. A, that's not healthy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It yeah, really isn't. You probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't eat medium rare chicken. That's not good. No, no. it shouldn't rise. I feel like I'm missing context here. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> never mind. Speaking of, medium rare chicken. Just to be clear, medium rare chicken literally exists. There are ways to measure the wellness of meat. You could make chicken. That's, that's not the context rare. I was talking about, Rags, and you know it. What? <laughs> what's not the con? What's the? What is it? What is? What is it? I'm, 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 no, we well, have I'm just not gonna. <laughs> more things. <laughs> Goblin Jr. See, uh, there was a rake right there and I avoided it. Unlike how, how, uh, is anybody in need of leaving Ooh, right at this moment? I, uh, I yes, I, I, I have to uh, depart oh. and get ready for uh, my little streamy poo. Oh, of course, oh. of course, my good man. I know, I know. Uh, congratulations on 300. This was a lot of fun. Uh, Boogie's a piece of shit. He'll never kill himself because he's too in love with himself to do that. Uh, he will continue to try and scam people through manipulation and pity through until the day he actually does die, which will probably be due to an overdose of fucking Nutella. Uh, have a good day, gentlemen, and I shall see you later. I love you all. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye, bye. Bye -bye. So was he fucking the Nutella in that context? Stop it, man! Stop! <laughs> Listen to Stop metal. You. He yeah. knows the limits. Sometimes you unscrew the jar and you look inside and you see the nut hole and you're like, oh, Boogie's been here. Uh, We're making oh, s'mores tonight, my lady. <laughs> yeah. That's gruesome, that is. Well...
Next, because we were mentioning, um, you know, eating foods that could potentially make you ill and, and end up making you maybe look like Gollumish, which is relevant to the next subject. I bet you're all oh, like, what the fuck goodness. could he possibly be talking about? Yeah, I mean, I could go for some lunch, about? so I'm, I'm That's down. That's not what I'm referencing at all. Oh my god! Damn it. <laughs> oh. We never oh, covered this. Actually know about this. The rest of the We're internet's already covered cows. this, but we have it. Oh my goodness. So, wow. a, little, a little context for everybody, because there's just vague interactions, but it's led to something that needs to be read out because it's so fucking funny. And uh, genuinely, I, I don't know if uh, Rags and Fringy, I don't know if you, you think there's a person here that would best have a voice to read this in terms of just how funny it is, but they, whoever we choose has to go full throttle when there's caps lock. You gotta read it. Like it's caps lock, okay? But, oh, uh, yeah, oh I'm ruling out meme because he'll blow out his microphone doing it. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, you know what? Maybe you should do it. <laughs> what? I mean, if if I, I we wouldn't want to do it in myself. an American accent. Well, so anyway, context first. This is indeed about Xander Hall, who I uh, mm. I think the uh. first interaction I had with him directly was when he accused me of saying that um, uh, Rings of Power was bad because woke. And then I was like, find ex one example of me saying that. And he was, uh, he was having a back and forth. He got very angry at me. And then I called him a cheap copy of a bunch of streamers that are much better than him from like an older era, which gets to him because it's like the thing that he says to everyone he hates. And he got very yeah. angry at me and did like coverage of how wrong I am and everyone else is about Rings of Power. And I went on Adam and Sitch's show to talk about it. And he famously said that he very much enjoyed Rings of Power Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2 because the CG was awesome in the big fight scenes. And then he said, can't wait for the remaining 48 hours of Season 1. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I still remember that. Yeah. The, uh, the, old, the other more of his IQ test that he did on stream. He did oh, indeed yes. oh, do an my. IQ test on the stream <laughs> that made it into my Quantum Media video <laughs> for eagle eyed viewers. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Let's, let's just say that like Xander Hall's in the double digit clubs. Sounds oh, no, like he, it didn't um, go so well. He's quite far <laughs> down in the double digit clubs. He, he didn't use <laughs> that guy until recently. He recently what? just started using banks because he put his entire balance in PayPal, and then someone <laughs> hacked him and spent it all on Steam games. Oh no! <laughs> Some things I just don't understand. And so, uh, oh, just on the, I, I guess, a four a format four. of lol cowery. Uh, he, uh, he he had some friends in certain areas who eventually became enemies and have decided to leak things that he had said privately. And my goodness. Oh, what a what an adventure! So, like I said, I I'm happy to hear some goofy ass coverage of this. We could go page by page or something, but I just the fact is I just want it read because it's so funny. Um, I could go first. Is that all right with everybody? Shall we do it? If also, hi Dev. <laughs> Hello. You have to read it accurately though. Good morning. Oh, Dev's got it already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and by the way, we watched the recording of him taking this test. Oh, God. I don't know how he scored this high. Yeah, we were surprised like, I, he I scored so high. I know high. it sounds like a joke, but I'm legitimately shocked that he scored this high. If that, if watching him take that test, which was painful to watch him take that test, <laughs> what a moron. If he gets a mm -hmm. 97, I must be a genius. <laughs> I remember it being lower, but yeah. It's... <laughs> All right, let us begin. See, I, I thought it was I thought it was ninety two actually, but I looked it up. No, it's ninety seven. There is another. Yeah, it's like, I don't I don't know. Well, how he's, he's got a higher IQ apparently than Sneeko, who, who also did a test. So hey. It was frustrating watching him take this <clears throat> test. I understand. All right, I'll do page one. So we begin, and again, I don't know if there's any more context I can do to say to help this. This is with his editor, I think he's talking to, and uh, he's just losing his mind a little <laughs> bit. So, mm -hmm. it begins. Okay, so I think I'm fucked. Still no money, and still does not show as pending in my bank account. Okay, the number was wrong, confirmed. The 4K went to some rando. It has to be stopped. Cherry, ASAP. Emerg <laughs> Emerg emergency. <laughs> emergency. <laughs> Fucky. Fuck Fuck you. Yeah. Homeless. You I am now homeless. <laughs> Cherry, <laughs> Cherry. Homeless. Why? 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 Andwa, answer it. No! I know you! Oh, no. Please! I'm going to be homeless! <laughs> Cherry! I'm gonna be Cherry. homeless. I can't afford E! So. He's in a fume state. 
A few <laughs> oh. A POV, your cherry, <laughs> you open Discord and you see this for the first time yeah. all at once. All right, who wants, to take, so uh, who wants to take page two? Yeah, you see Xander Hall's icon in like a 37 <laughs> next to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll do this one. Uh, oh, my Lord. Cherry, 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 me, me, cherry, me, 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 it's control V. It's control V. Oh my god. Oh no. What is the inside He's thing they had? It's doing so violently that it's not. <laughs> this, <laughs> Discord's <laughs> bandwidth can't keep up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, v, I have never been paid by P. Before, according to all my bank info, not ever before. Cherry, answer now. I will be homeless. 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 Sorry, homeless starting tomorrow. Cherry, cherry. Okay, we are buying my ticket back to California now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You know, it's a change in tone oh. a little bit. I think, Rags, yeah, you'll have to do number three then. And there's no response in between. No. He's probably okay. asleep. Yeah. Nice and normal. <laughs> all for of context, this. you know what money he's talking about? He was uh, working with Progressive Victory, if you're familiar yeah. with what that is. Uh, yeah, uh. So, so basically they just bring you in to like sit you in a meeting and tell you like the uh, the approved talking points that are going to help the uh, fuck it, help the Kamala campaign win the election. Oh, right? oh my God. And he gets paid $4,000 to do that. That's oh. it? And you have yeah, to they're they're oh, yeah. bankrolling small streamers and like paying for their lives. Well, they, they bought out a together. fuck ton of people apparently. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, get away. <laughs> Thank you for completely ghosting me tonight. I'll never forget it. Never. The only way to save me is for PV to pay me everything. They owe me. I have never received a single <laughs> payment, not one. I am fucked. I am fucked. Cherry, answer now. Cherry, you have fucking killed me. <laughs> why? <laughs> why, why? Why? Please, just answer. Please, er. Please. 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 Answer now. Answer now. <laughs> I have messaged Brianna myself. When you are back online, we need to have a conversation about your future employment. Oh, no. If I am saved, it will be no thanks to you. <laughs> if I'm saved? That's Brianna, that's Brianna Wu, by the way. All uh, right, yeah. So who's doing the next one now? Should we pass it over to some guest I I don't want to do this, please. <laughs> Well, I guess I we could just good, we could just cycle this. B rags and friggy, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I could do one. I Go on, Mark. I've messaged Brianna myself. When are you back online? We need need to have a conversation about your future employment. I, if I am saved, it will be no thanks to you. If I am fucked, it's your fault for not making sure they paid me. You swapped the fucking numbers, and they weren't able to pay me because of that. Email by Cherry sent to PV to get Xander Hall his payment. Not the 4K, not, not the 4K is on its way to some fucking guy. Now, I'm waiting. I like the noble ones, it's just, I'm waiting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> like, what will happen so. next? So it, so I guess Xander Hall... <clears throat> is, Ch Cherry is like in charge of all of his money? I think so. You, she was, she was, from what I gather, she was uh, she was in charge of like everything, like for him. She took yeah, care of him everything. So what does Xander Hall do? Uh, show That's up. That's a good question. Very good show question. Up. So you he can't even yeah. You can't even arrange your. But why don't they, they don't just deposit it into your PayPal or your whatever? And why do you need a middleman for this? Yes. That's uh, wild to me. <laughs> How I, yeah, how come you have to pay a middleman to ensure that you get 
I don't, I don't it's I don't know. Yeah, I normally that's a bit of already done and then it goes to your bank account that's 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 how my <laughs> payments work from work they just appear there yeah, because yeah, I a lot of the times before. it's just automatic it's just yeah. every <laughs> two weeks or whatever or whenever it is it just boop it's there and then they give you a stub to be like this is what we deposited to you yeah we, we have the technology it's crazy on it yeah they give you the thing and this is your stuff the, here's what you're paid for and why we'll do um I mean, I'll read. This is long, but I love the you power. You want me to do this one? Out. Oh yeah, if you want to, okay. yeah, go ahead. Yes. All right. I want you to know that if I have to fly to California tomorrow, I can't bring my PC. I will not be able to afford your pay. Your job will not exist tomorrow because you wouldn't message me back. This is still salvageable. But time is now slipping away. And if you're asleep and you see this in the morning, it's already too late. Oh no, it's I'm cold. also now in hot water with Brianna because I look bad for having you handle this shit while I was busy. You were the one who got me to join PV. I told you I'd be too busy to handle this stuff. And you said you would. I have to pay another $250 so my mom can reschedule her <laughs> flight and extend her rental car for next week. My lease ends what? in 25 hours, but I won't be stranded here without her when I get kicked out. I could have locked, uh, I could have locked in this house hours ago if you were fucking awake to send me the W-9 <laughs> and pay agreement from PV to verify my income, you fucking fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I like how he edited that, you could tell that he, 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 edited he it, fucked yeah. up somewhere and he had to edit it. Great delivery, dude. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, yeah. I, I would have had this place and moved in by now, you motherfucker. You are the only person holding this whole process back now, you fuck. <laughs> and if I, oh my God. I end up being made homeless because my place gets nabbed up by tomorrow and I'm stuck living with my abusive mom again. And my fans ask why I'm back where I started. I'll make sure they know it was because of you. Oh my God. <laughs> That's how you really God. feel. Jesus. Oh my oh my God. God. <laughs> Oh, we got an additional did, character did now. Like all of them? That was fucking awesome. Oh my god! Yeah, it was <laughs> great. there's so many yeah, things in this you. in this text. Was, I'm just so confused. So she paid her mom for a rental car and extend before the flight, and then it's like I don't want to go back to her I because guess, she's abusive. Um, I, just, I'm, I don't even know what's happening. Now, I, now I want to, to carry on, but Nick, keep playing Xander and Metal play Cherry. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> take the Cherry <laughs> Metal. You probably won't even pay me this month. What do you think? Oh fuck! Sorry. <laughs> why do you think I won't pay you? Tell me why you think I can't, and how it makes me bad. You didn't last month. Why? Say it. Why couldn't I pay you? And how does that reason make me the asshole? I'm gonna get evicted at the end of this month. This rate, Cherry. We have not made enough money. I can't change that. He sounds like the um. Joker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Say it. Do you want to know how I got this poor? <laughs> also, eviscited. Ever cited is a, it's some fun it's spelling. Get so, cited. <laughs> so, is, is this position? I didn't make enough money last month to pay you, my employee, because I had to pay my rent, and now you need to get me more money so that I can take care of my stuff. It's... Otherwise, you will definitely not get paid ever again. I think because she controls his ins and outs with certain connections, she's, he's like blaming her for not having the money he should have to be able to pay her her money for doing work for him. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a tangled web, but he's he's lost his fucking mind. It makes you wonder <laughs> what he does. By the way, this gets the most unhinged by the end. We've not even reached the unhingery. <laughs> Yo, no, I, that's right. Oh, God. The hinges really come off <laughs> in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Are we just going to keep going? Yes, take it away, gentlemen. <laughs> You're excellent. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's a bad time. <clears throat> I've been your number one supporter for two and a half years. I'm worried if I don't agree to this, you're going to hurt me. Holy I'm fuck. Not <laughs> <You don't... laughs> I, I'm not Keffels. I'm not Keffels. You talk about wanting people to die. <laughs> 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 a lot of people need to die, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that story. Maybe it would be, yeah. <laughs> we're, st we're still friends, right? Like, you want to see my dog and stuff? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, um, it, he, the way you say that, it makes me think that he's threatening to kill his own dog. Yeah. <laughs> you want to like, see my dog, right? You want to see my dog oh, again, my right? You wouldn't want to be violently petting the dog. You want to see my dog. <laughs> my dog. <laughs>
Is the dog even uh, real? We're That's still the big friends, question. right? After all this. Oh god, you're a cub. I want all of them to die. I would kill <laughs> Keffels in a heartbeat. I'd even shoot her. I'd beat her to death. I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't even shoot her. I'd beat her Please. to death with a gun. <laughs> You're not in a good mental wow. state. I will no. kill her. What is her address? <laughs> I want it. I want to know where she's at. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. She, she's in Ireland. It's not public. Please stop. You're spiraling. Someone has to die for this. I won't be <laughs> until someone has died for this. Ideally, Keffels. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to die for this. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take anybody. <laughs> throw someone. You don't Where want the that on your record, fellas. Uh, Jesus I'll pick Christ. a random Irishman. What the Her hell career is, is going to die? I can't. Even, like this is like the, the, the cherry parts are just so normal. It was like <laughs> someone has to die for this. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's funny that Cherry, after being told like, "What's your address? I want to kill her," says. She's, she's an island, but it's not public. <laughs> not public. <laughs> anyway, don't uh. kill it. <laughs> and You're Velvet good. and her fucking orbiters. I have to kill her. Really kill her. Stop her heart. <laughs> Zed, stop fucking her stop. First. Calm down. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Please. Okay. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this this is just a fun one uh, on top of everything. Oh I, I think, Nick, you should probably read the quote tweet as well. So this is just me celebrating the acolyte got cancelled. Uh, this is someone Read it like it's tweeted. Xander Hall. Yes, read it, it like it's Xander Why not? Oh, how does he... Uh, I just mean, the Mawler. voice you were just doing, whatever. You... Oh, okay. <laughs> just imagine it's his icon and text right above it and... <laughs> Well, I was kind of thinking, like, are we gonna go? We're gonna go. We gotta go, like, smug, like Mauler, you dumb, smug, condescending, <laughs> pathetic bitch boy, motherfucker. It doesn't. It does not deserve this, and you know it. Your small, insignificant ass might have won, but the rest of us normal people with media literacy have lost. <laughs> Okay. Just, no, was that no, tweeted no, no. before or after? What? Wait, it's definitely after. I think we just said twenty twenty three. So that's funny. Right? Yeah. That's funny. This yeah. is Xander Hall, you're not normal. I need someone to die for this. Us normal people, uh, we want no, to actually. Yeah, normal people <laughs> don't Media have Media literacy is like a slur. <laughs> <laughs> it's a self-report. Oh boy, it's No season two hilarious. for the Acolyte? That's like 40 hours of content. I know, right? Mm. Cancelled. Believe me, oh. we're the ones that suffer the most. Because no one else was watching it. You know what I'm <laughs> benefiting the most from this? I like, wasn't. It, 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 if it didn't get cancelled. Yes, um... Oh. I don't know what the latest news on Xander Hall is, but he's clearly an unhinged disaster, and uh, Crazy, we wish yeah. the best for him, I suppose. Oh, well, Do that we... doesn't include him being able to kill people, <laughs> if that is his best. Yeah, don't hurt anybody, <laughs> yeah. Xander Hall, if you're listening to this. Seriously, don't don't hurt people or kill anybody. Hey, go to Canada. Don't go oh, to Canada. No, no, get, a, get the fuck away from Canada. He <laughs> 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 wants to go to Ireland. Ireland. He's a oh, yeah. crazy little lad. <laughs> All right, next up, I've got a selection of this. Just this leads oh. from Xanderhole right into Twitch streamers in general. We've got some some oh, Twitcherinos, some some wonderful clips all okay. over the place. I'll explain them all. Don't so you worry. Seven. This first oh, one boy. is one of those people. A classic Wife. real BBC oh, episode where I'm explaining uh, some history that you guys are aware of, but there's an extra chapter now. So this is like a context. But it's XQC discovering the concept of condensation. And, uh, oh, that again. Classic. Oh, no. A classic. So this I should be able to let play. You'll understand. Someone sent me a clip where XQC he comes up from downstairs and he's on his stream. He's got a drink next to him. This shit was so fucking funny. <laughs> and then he says, chat, chat, chat. He pulls up paint and he's got a drawing of a drink and he says, what the fuck is going on? I go to my <laughs> fridge. I grab my drink and like it's fine. Everything's fine. I take it upstairs and then like five minutes later, I gotta pick it up, and it's fucking wet. Why is it wet? <laughs> Where the hell is oh the water God. coming from? It's leaking. What the hell is going on? Uh, condensation. Correct. <laughs> this is a uh, true pop culture, by the way. His his video was edited into oh, this. Yeah. Condensation makes a lot of good nice. real BBC fab and open bar memes. That man. And he's uh, popped up a few times on your stream, Metal, I think. Yes. Yeah, Forge. He was on our Alien Romulus episode that was like seven hours, and he loved it, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, was, <laughs> he was the biggest fan of that. Yeah. Film. He meant to watch the the Spider Man <laughs> re release in the cinema, and then I made him watch uh, Romulus instead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning from the. I'm learning from you, Mahler. I'm doing the thing I you do never, all the time. I would never ever ever. <laughs> 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 oh you no. He googles condensation and goes oh. Condem, con, condem. <laughs> and then he says, "What? What the fuck is this? What water just?" Just water just exists from nothing. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I legit was like, no way. <laughs> oh, oh no. I can... This is the clip, by the way, one to one. I don't exaggerate anything. That's exactly what happens. I yeah. remember when I learned about condensation, but I know it was a single digit in age. high school. We're doomed. Uh, you're gonna want to look at the screen for this, okay? So this is no, this is a no. This is another classic clip, Nick. If you haven't seen this one, you should have. It's an XQC certified, just core core memory unlocked sort of situation. You gotta have this. He's one. playing one of the Uncharted Perfect. games, and a quote <laughs> comes up on screen, and then he reads it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Just give this a listen. Okay. Chat. Jam a man of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Jay must seek my fortune. Henry Avery's 1994. Play that again. It sounds like me reading a super chat, to be honest. To be fair. <laughs> Jam a man <laughs> fortune. <laughs> Jay must seek my fortune. Cartilage Henry A. Mentally disabled man. 1994. This is why people watch him. <laughs> What's great it is that he sees sense now. <laughs> Dude, I... it, it's incredible that his, his, he clearly, there's clearly two different symbols next to each other, but he I just know. calls them both nine. <laughs> Dude, fair. Fucking lost it. Jab my <laughs> So yeah, this is XQC looking at that clip where he doesn't understand condensation. So he's come oh, a long damn. way, come a long way. <laughs> I bring it back up, right? Old. And when I touch it, I don't get wet at all. It's not like, even the same my hands thing, are fine, though. right? But when I let it there, after a couple, after a couple of times, dude, I play the fucking game, I get it, and it's fucking full of water, dude. It's full of fucking water, dude. Look at that shit. And by full, I mean <laughs> on the outside. The English it's, is you know, just it's full of remarkable. Probably covered is the word you're looking for. No. And after a couple times. No. Okay. Yeah. That's like, because the water is in the air, right? Oh. And the coldness of the bottle is making the air in around the bottle, okay, transform it into water. Look at that. It, he still doesn't get it. He's, he still he's, doesn't. He's no, made he progress, the Rags. Appreciate the progress. The Appreciate. I guess it, it is progress. Yeah. Why does he have a doctor disrespecting him? Look at that. Oh, that's probably b before times. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's so. dripping. Why? Is that it? Condensation. Okay. What about condensation? What about it? What does that shit fucking do? <laughs> okay. So the water in the sky. <laughs> annoying. Where does it come from? Six, six. Condensation. So now he's he's in what? the new clip. Right, he's asking, go. where does that water come from? He's asking. Though? Where does the water in the sky come from? Yes. Well, the, well, the, the rain sky god. Water. The rain god. <laughs> the rain god. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the rain god, Kanuchti Kapoklek, is it's the... Boogie's yeah. condensation. Who do you think we fucking sacrifice? Can you spell that right? Water Jesus collects Christ. as droplets on a cold surface when humid hair is in... Crap! The oceans! Okay. Yeah. So it evaporates, the it's hot, it evaporates in, the, in, the, in the sky, and then it, boom. And then they, they collect boom. it. It evaporates yeah. in the sky. He got it, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> It's good enough. I mean, it's like, uh, well, but, I don't like, think you, so. well, it's stage this two. Like stage three school, will be like, even better. Stuff. You, learn, you learn about he, the water cycle and evaporation well, and then precipitation. They skip that part, and... I guess. <laughs> he's getting there. Mm -hmm. and you know what? I'm proud of his progress. I'm really happy that he's getting there. It's... We're going to be teaching yeah, him wait, math he's graduated. Now. He's graduated to thinking that this coldness, the entity that the coldness transforms air into water, which is closer to reality i think than not even knowing condensation exists at all and being confused by it it would have been that sort of progress way too tempting for chat to try and convince him there was a water goblin that cast spells on drinks if you leave them out <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, the way he just, just explained it made it sound like the ocean is breaking into his house and attacking his bottle of coke. He probably does think that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can sense that it has I have a delicious chat, cold chat, coke in the you ocean once a week. Secure your drinks from the sky. Oh my lord. Chat. Fuck your bottle of coke specifically. <laughs> the ocean is rising. Oh, this is another classic. I uh, was sent as well. Like six in the morning. Okay, now I'm about to go. To, I'm, I'm, about, I'm, I'm waking up. Thirty. Oh, I'm about to go to bed. Sex QCF. What? And my phone rings, and out of anybody, it's fucking Linus, dude. Right? And dude, he just did the same thing I said on on fucking Reddit, dude. He said, "Damn, dude, how the fucking t I don't know. I don't know where he said it, but he's like, holy shit, dude. It was you. Now it's me or something like that. You know, like, oh man, oh man." I think Luke, what the fuck is is what it, what, so what is happening? So, to, to help you out, nothing has necessarily <laughs> been said yet. Uh, what happened was he he was about to go to sleep. Linus Tech Tips called him and said, "Haha, mm -hmm. I was being cancelled, and now you're being cancelled." And this was in reference to the uh, React takes that he had. That is the story up to this oh, point. Definitely. Nice and translated. It is, chat. <laughs> That's what it is. I got more out of the high top films video. <laughs> No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. I don't know, this is fucking probably... This is copyrighted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He still says that he doesn't agree with my, my thing about React, though. I was like, you know what, that's fine. I'm gonna just be careful here. Yeah, so Linus said, I don't yeah, agree uh -huh. with your take on React. Uh, listen to this follow-up. Because he still made sure to let me know chat that uh, he still does not agree with any of my takes. He says I'm being deliberately stupid, and you know, he's right. Did you catch okay. that? <laughs> so he's, he, so uh, XQC is saying I am I was being deliberately stupid, or the I'm react takes, stupid. yeah, being deliberately stupid. React yeah. takes. After all that weird, well, he, he just did. admitted. Well, yeah, yep. didn't he just come out and say like he doesn't care if he's a shitty person or a stealer or whatever? He's gonna make his millions and fuck people. Let's, well, the, that's I don't think as mean. much as that. You never said I was just being stupid. It was like, oh, well, I guess there we go. That's the closing of that chapter. He was he was more being just like evil than stupid. I guess I did. I mean, he is right. Okay, yeah, that's that. I was Chat. only pretending to be retarded. Chat. <laughs> and then the final XQC Chat. clip, because, uh, you know, maybe enough is enough already. Chat, if you use it more than two weeks, I swear, Chat, guys, 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 as, as a DJ myself, okay, guys, I'll give you a little bit of advice, Chat. If you use it more what? than two what? weeks. So when he says, if you use it more you use it more than two weeks, he's, he's talking about a towel. Use the bath towel? Yes. Oh, it's a towel. Oh. How many You're times Tom Aspinall okay. uses his bath towel? Okay. One time, I used it for, it for a month, and it molds, okay? And I had double ear infection because of it. It's really bad. You... All right. Fuck you. Oh. <laughs> Wait, okay, so like a, you were, like the, the towels I have in the bathroom that I used to dry myself after bathing. Yes, that, those. those? Yes. yes. He's referring to those. Yeah. He said he didn't wash moldy. or dry it for a month. It got moldy. He dried himself off with it. He got double ear infection as a result. Yeah, because he probably just puts it on the fucking floor. And yes. Doesn't, you know, yeah, just crumbled up. Like, <laughs> which, that's very fine. Okay. Stuff like this is just But like... then it doesn't even fucking dry you properly the next day, so I don't even know why you would use it. <laughs> it's just so stupid. You just how, need to hang how it somewhere it where it, when bathing. it can like, dry without being, you know, bungled up. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, you really ideas. just have to not leave the towel on the floor and you'll be fine. Yeah, because yeah, if you fine. just hang it up when you're done, it just dries, dries on. Dries. Dries. Hang it up yeah, on like, the, like the shower curtain, you can hang it up there or on the little racks yeah. you have on the wall where you keep the towels. Yeah. Oh, the, there's or so like many things the door, to say about this. On the, on the fucking door somewhere. I mean, maybe after like <laughs> yeah. five or six showers, you still got to wash it again, but... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the issue isn't that it's yeah. not clean. The issue is that he's leaving it wet, right? But you just wash it yeah. with your yeah. laundry, typically, right? Well, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Probably, like it was like he was, he was probably just leaving it on the floor, picks it back up, drops it back up, drops it, and then he's like, "Wait, what's? It's getting mm. gross. How oh, is this happening?" Goblin getting yeah. Yeah. I mean, that adds up with the not the understanding get... condensation. What is this towel wondering... doing to my ears? It doesn't understand bacteria <laughs> culturing either. Okay. Mold, mold. Well, he's probably asking, how is this towel getting more fuzzy? Yeah. yeah. It just, <laughs> builds in it, like, and then you yeah, wash your head with it, shit. and it puts into your ears, and it fucks your ears up. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. I know, right? If this what, happened to me... parents teach him anything? <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, clearly no. not. He doesn't know. He had to learn about condensation yeah. from, like, it's, his Twitch his chat. chat. And they, they've tried. <laughs> God bless them, they tried. <laughs> They're trying to teach him this stuff. <laughs> oh. I swear Don't this do is a serious question. Did he graduate high school? 
Probably not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Probably not. <laughs> was, he doesn't know about the school, water though, cycle. Could, yeah, Did I just realized like, that no there is actually a there is actually Probably a through line here. He, he doesn't understand how moisture works. <laughs> yeah. Well, he XQC mm. couldn't spell G E D. Uh, maybe he doesn't believe in moisture. <laughs> like it's not a real. He's thing. actually a fire wizard. His water is just like one weakness. Weak uh -huh. max. And even if you look at like if I ever gave myself an a double ear infection from using my disgusting nasty towels because I don't because I live like a barbarian. That would, like, y'all would never know. Barbarians would never I let would that never happen. I would never tell anyone. <laughs> True. Yeah, well, this, a barbarian really... would just drip dry in the summer breeze. A barbarian would they know, yeah, they, they wouldn't let that happen. They, they'd know. They would just, like, get, they'd walk out of the river, and then it would just sort itself out, like yeah. it does every yeah. time they do that. It's so, so... <laughs> the thing is that, like, I, I, I did something, like, comparable to this, but I was, like, eight years old, you know? It's, yeah, it's one of those well, where, like, <laughs> how do you live with yourself? Yeah, like, oh, I was a dumb kid story. Yeah, when I was a dumb kid, no. this thing happened and we laughed because dumb kids are dumb and we were all that at that mm -hmm. stage at some point. Now, this is an okay. example of just a few snippets of um, a discussion that was had by several Twitch streamers about, uh, not politics, media that uh, is fascinating. Uh -huh. Since we're all very much into media, listening to them discuss media, you'll, you'll sense very quickly why it's Cringe, painful, and horrifying, and the, it's good that the, the spheres are separated. The most popular who is trope. Who is it? Is this Captain America? Who is this? <laughs> I don't I know who he is. I assume because of the iconography. But I don't know who he is, but he yeah, says funny like, things. Yeah. I think this is on Deadpool's job. Oh, that's podcast. Lauren Chen. Yes, that's This is Lauren Lady, Chen. okay. Where, who is Guy? Chen, yeah. I don't know I who Guy is. I think he was on the Whatever podcast. Okay. If you look Lady at like the most popular tropes in films, they all are in a way like right wing. I mean, you know, the good oh, over the good evil, Lord. the strong over the What? <laughs> oh, no, I've seen this one. Oh, <laughs> like, I mean, why do you bring this back to my memory? <laughs> it's such no. a fucking funny clip. Oh my god. All of film no. is right wing. The, the good strong versus oh. <laughs> the bad wing. When good <laughs> wins, that's right wing. When evil wins, that's well, left wing. Yeah. <laughs> oh Wait, does that god. mean that Joker Holy is a left wing shit. movie? Absolutely. 100%. Oh, Maybe. Yeah. Or... Well, they certainly don't want to take oh. ownership of it. Interesting. The week, the triumph of good. Jonathan Bowden writes about this extensively. That's right wing? <gasps> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of the traditional media is actually, if you depending on how you analyze it, a lot of the movies we had growing up was actually the overcoming of toxic masculinity. They... Ugh. What? What? Jesus, <laughs> what, 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 what is what? happening? <laughs> no. I don't like this movie. Why is it putting away? I'll use your retardation to <laughs> this fight. This is what I mean. It feels <laughs> like retarded wizards <laughs> casting spells. It's like, stop this it. The thing, like, <laughs> political, there's something about political like YouTubers where their media takes are fucking wild. Well, it makes some sense, right? Their whole, everything is politics to them because that's their job. So when it comes to media, it's just like, slot it right in wherever it'll fit and go. The rest of yeah, us must yeah. suffer. This man has not seen Commander. <laughs> this was Xanderhal's thing for a while too. This was that was Xanderhal's mm. plan, right? He was, he was gonna yeah. infiltrate. He he just infiltrate, said on a stream yeah. he's gonna infiltrate <laughs> lefty video essayists and turn them further lefty. Or was it centrist? He was gonna go <laughs> after. Commentary. He was talking about. He was talking about me. Commentary. He's gonna get you. Did he get you? Did you feel yeah, God? Yeah, me, Turkey Tom. No, I, I yeah, You've no, we just God, laughed at him bitch. for a while. <laughs> That's true. So they will take like a right wing sort of concept and they will redress it to be more egalitarian because they will replace, you know, the, the man with the woman or they'll add like woke stuff or gay stuff. Not or even. Have you. <laughs> don't even put the fuck. Well, I, what is that? Is that the example? Example? What, like, I there's some other funny. Yeah, ones. I heard. What the I've fuck? heard the it's words a... and I was like, what? Yeah. It's hard to track. So he has. Really... This is this friend. It's this bizarre. He has a picture of a. Well, you know, and it's. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? Do you need a doctor? He's, listen, it's, um, been, it's been a long day. day. <laughs> it's been a long day for Ags where it was. Oh, 17 hours. Look at this. What's happening? What's happening here? He has a floor for a wall, which is already strange. <laughs> but, <laughs> hardwood walls. He has this picture of a chicken, right? Yeah. Like, okay. It's a cock. Nice. It's a cock. cock. But, yeah. It yeah. And it's got the, the flint lucky pistol. He's got a guitar. Like a telecaster. A samurai weapon sword. And they're just like, cross over. He's a patriot, but, and he's a weep. But it, but like over, but it like overlaps on the picture, and then he has a guitar randomly. These and are all representative of his hobbies and interests. 
Is this just like, like yeah, this. I like swords and guns and chickens, and I'm going to put those three things over here. You know what? And I play the guitar. I, like I kind of like those as well. <laughs> I'm a fan. They're just like, <laughs> there. there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just like randomly, I don't know, sword, gun, chicken. There we go. It's also guitar. It's like the least aesthetic thing I've ever seen in my oh, life. I know, the least right? aesthetic thing, the really. Up the right With all the way. videos we've covered. <laughs> we just <laughs> laid up. <laughs> laid up. An hour ago. We saw Boogie, oh, like, you know, yeah, we saw Boogie. I was gonna recently. say, we had Boogie. His wall also kind of looks like a floor. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You are so correct. Oh, let me, so, yeah, let no, me repeat not, something we said already as well. Uh, tired, there's a chicken on there. <laughs> I went and saw the new Indiana Jones, and I, I got, like, crap for it just because, like, it was woke or something because there was a female protagonist, which, you ever oh seen those God. movies? I mean, that's, like, always a trope, and people are like, <laughs> oh my god! My brain is shutting down. He's all the going to bat for Dial of Destiny. He's going to bat for. This is know. what I mean. You just don't know what's going to happen. You enter these worlds. Holy shit! The this is why it's fun yeah, it's covering Ben Shapiro. The guy, what they will say about it. You never know what'll happen. They'll say anything. But like, oh, it's woke. She's such a girl boss. But that's kind of the point. Is you know, this girl is so prideful and annoying that her like literally eighty something year old. Uh, a godfather has to come in and like you know show her how it's done. That is not what happens. <laughs> not what happens. <laughs> not what happens at all. <laughs> not even close. Oh, I haven't seen it. She has to no, beat him Indiana the fuck Jones up until he's knocked out to drag him away from his suicide. The fucking people. To be yeah. like, she tries to kill him multiple times. Oops. Also that he was watching that movie while telling himself that that's what was happening. I don't know what and movie not, he not watched. Maybe he deleted like his page in the middle of it. Making up his own lore. Dude, this is the personification <laughs> of the person who goes on Twitter and tells you that you don't understand the boys. <laughs> no, <laughs> not those people. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, the boys he is, is the right wing. The adventurer. He is Indiana Jones. They got rid of Shia LaBeouf. And uh, yeah. you notice too, a lot of the like more like woke film movie. critics don't like that movie. And I think it's because Indiana Jones and James Bond, these kind of franchises are like one of the last sort of authentic displays of like real no. adventure or like a uh, hero archetype that like men have to project themselves onto because now if you look at like captain america like you mentioned what that has devolved into is like captain america fights for gay rights and stuff <laughs> what where did you where what? are you i mean i what I, is I, what what? Remember, oh God, just remember in Endgame when like Cap was like, but... Gay rice, and he stabbed that <laughs> with the <laughs> price of the movie, yes. As far as I know, canonically, the gayest thing Captain America has done is compliment his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, Which you I don't even to... think is gay. I don't even understand anymore. It's like you can't go you to can Cap in the movies because he's fighting for gay rights. <laughs> like... I think that would be gay because it's an alternate timeline version of himself, so it is a different person, right? And yeah, it is a different person, but it's like the gayest thing he's done is he's like, yeah, that is America's ass, and it's like, yeah, I, yeah, that's it's fair. Like My funny, brain is kind of shutting like a multiverse version of me, it's like that with the whole like <laughs> MCU, me. and I just don't think that that's as good of a, a role model for like what masculine leadership looks like. I feel like <sighs> remember Squid Game? Oh, totally right wing because and and these, uh, the, here we go. <laughs> Oh, totally right. Oh, oh god. Oh my god. I, 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 I'm, 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 finish your point. I got I got to rant on this. They uh people were like, "Oh, oh it's like this don't. critique of capitalism." I'm like, "Okay, well that's kind of right wing." But then it was also like the way <laughs> Wait, a critique of capitalism what? is right wing? I don't understand uh, anymore, uh, right? Like, it can't follow it uh, anymore. You're really fucking far right wing. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> fucking writes an r slash Hassan Piker. Okay. Uh, yeah. Too, yeah. If you want to go like very extreme far right, there's some anti capitalist stuff yeah. there, but it the mainstream very, right like, now. It's yeah, very like white the fascist noisy. state should control the economy, so capitalism's mm -hmm. like bad or whatever. We the characters were the whole show thing, basically. Being oh, yeah. successful wasn't like, you know, a girl boss. Like, there were the women characters who were using, like, their beauty and their sort of charm to, like, seduce the male characters. <laughs> it was like, you know, hey. might is right. I mean, the, str the stronger mm. ones were winning until they were stupid and uncalculated. Like, that big guy who ended up getting killed by the woman on the glass panel one. Sorry, spoiler. It's been two years. Watch the stupid TV show. Only um, two years? Yeah, so wow. I think it was fall 2021. Uh, okay, I, I, got, I got around on this because when the movie came out, I was like, wow, this the movie. <laughs> What movie? What this movie? A huge movie? Critique of, of communism. Yeah. Show, and I get all these what? leftists being like, "Tim's so dumb." Uh, Squid Game. The guy who made it said it was a critique of, a cr critique oh, of capitalism. This is so. This while we were talking about the characters, the plot, oh, and the will building, the B plot being like a frustrating thing, the potential, the future, what it, the world of the Squid Game and how it like works, whether or not it's believable. People like Tim Pool and everyone else were just arguing whether or not it was yeah. mean to communism or capitalism more. 
Yeah. Yeah. All the political <laughs> tubers yeah. are trying to figure out how can we make this be pro our thing. Yeah, because it, it's a popular not thing. To be like, if thing, how, yeah. how does it confirm my beliefs? Right. Right. So if thing is good, oh, well, we need to make thing our bad. thing, so then it makes the other people feel bad. <laughs> Very bizarre. Yeah. I, we kind of got a glimpse of this in the Ben Shapiro one, where like a lot of the commentary was oddly about like whether or not it aligns with his personal politics. What a bizarre <laughs> world where like every yeah. single thing is filtered through the lens of like your yeah. your political um, motivations. God damn! It's a strange place to start from when you're trying to analyze media. Be like, okay, yeah, how does this agree like, with me? Mind all the time, I don't know <laughs> what happens, right? If you're just like so. <laughs> you know, immersed in it, then you just, I don't know, but like, god damn. It, it, it just skews your view rock. of everything if you come at it with the, you know, the, those those precepts. Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. can mel you can yeah. mold and meld everything into anything, it's easy. And I'm like, then this guy doesn't know anything about communism or capitalism. Yeah. Let's use the red light, green light scenario, because it's been a long time since I watched it, but this was a really great example. In which system, contestants, are you likely to find Everyone wearing the exact same clothes, starting from the exact same position, and then being told, good luck. A capitalist system or a communist system? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard, uh, <laughs> what the why, fuck? Like, why would the be, whatever. Right-wing <laughs> commentators say that it's anything uh, where there's, like, gray areas morally is leftist because of moral relativism. It's like, okay, I understand what you're trying to say, but a good villain will have their own justifications for what they're doing. Otherwise, it's just cartoon evil, and uh -huh. that's not yeah. interesting. And uh, we we went a little bit over, so I'll end with that's my final thoughts. That's made. why Final Fantasy 16 is awful. <laughs> <laughs> just find that wait, wait, like, How did we go to Final about? Fantasy 16? Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> they probably talked well, about it earlier, mean, I guess. Mm, yeah, I guess it was a terrible Ultima game. Is... I stand by this. Like... Everyone's allowed to be mad at me. Uh, I won't spoil the game, but it is, it There's is no lower than game. one dimensional. So yeah, Damn. which uh, isn't always bad though. I will well, say that there is a play. There's a time and a place for Game of Thrones, which is incredibly seven dimensional. Yeah. Okay. God bless the ending of that show was so funny. <laughs> uh, and there's also a time and a place for Lord of the Rings, which is incredibly one dimensional. I, 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 whoa! Oh, I don't get it. Wow! Don't, get it. Oh, don't understand. Oh. How does this, <laughs> the, the dye has seeped into his brain. It's, I don't understand. Uh, Lord of the Rings is incredibly <laughs> one-dimensional. Like, uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings is oh, yeah, fucking amazing. Of, There's loads of aspects that are complicated. There's way more to say yeah. about Lord of the Rings than simply the one dimension of the good but guys fight the bad guys, so to speak. It's Great. literally it's the biggest off because baddest I, bad guy and the goodest guy. Yeah, the, the baddest bad guy versus saying. the goodest good guy. Yeah, I, I, I know what he's saying too, he's just saying it badly. Yeah, he's it's really more, not phrasing this yeah. very well. If you want to scale you know it, I think I, if you want to scale it, I, I don't think like Lord of the Rings do. should be the one on the one to ten. I don't think it should be. I think it's more yeah. complicated than yeah, that. I, the, I think because the, you, even if you phrasing it as one dimensional, it really is, is just. Oh, sorry, Mark. Go ahead. No, I was just saying phrasing it as one dimensional is insane because all he, he should have just said the morality in Lord of the Rings is much more clear cut. There are. Yes. There's yeah. a clear divide between good and evil. That that's a point that makes sense. Saying it's one dimensional is like, well, I mean, not exactly. Like that's that's really kind of. Well, being let me just ultra. Let me just lay this out, right? So if if one is the simplistic, they're clearly on either good or bad, and ten is the it's really hard to tell because of all the details and dimensions. It's like take a um a, you know uh try, trying to get like a complicated ish character in terms of how they maneuver the world. Maybe a Tywin Lannister. Like, is he strictly evil? It's like, well, I think there's more complications to that, and you have to go through his history, blah, 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 blah. And then vice versa, you might be like, okay, Sauron. You're like, well, yeah, okay, he's, he's definitely evil. But I think you can flip this pretty easily. Ramsay Bolton, nobody's going to defend him as anything other than pure evil. He's essentially a Sauron-level character. And uh, Ned Stark is often just described as basically the, the pure good, 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 good guy. But then take someone like Denethor, or someone like Boromir, these characters are a little bit more complicated than the good is good or the bad is bad or anything exactly. like that, right? And I just feel like at this point we would just be cherry picking and and treating it almost feels unfair to Lord of the Rings to be like, you're the simple one where Sauron is evil and everyone has to stop Sauron because he's a big evil evil and he's gonna do evil. It's like, well, there's there's a hell of a lot going on. It's it's more it's more in general like general generalities with the different factions in the world, right? You know, in Lord of the Rings, you have these factions which are, you know, good or evil. And in Game of Thrones, it's more like, you know, a bit gray. And like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So in, yeah. Th in those think, terms, you can actually yeah. agree with that. But, uh, you Sometimes know, it, it when, feels... it comes down, when it comes down to specific characters, there's, def there's definitely a lot more nuance there. Yeah, there's so much You've interesting things to in... talk about. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, so in the Lord of the Rings, you've got like uh, characters like Boromir and Denethor and whoever else, and I guess Faramir to a lesser extent. 
they're going to get they get tempted by the ring, which then gives them much more, I guess, ambiguity on the scale of of good to evil. But in the context of the Lord of the Rings, if we're just taking the films, they're basically being corrupted by something that is just absolute evil. Like that's not ambiguous. Yeah. Um, and what I, I, whether Destiny knows that, I have no clue. Um, no, but yeah, the if, films. He's, if he's comparing so you, that, you know, like if he's Gollum, comparing for that example. to Game of Thrones, yeah. Well, because like Gollum is definitely uh, yeah. a complicated character, but the fact that the yeah. ring is like pure evil, I I don't know if Destiny knows that necessarily. I, I'm oh, not sure. So this is the thing. I actually do think Either that there the are aspects that someone could list to be like, see, Lord of the Rings is more one dimensional. But I'd be like, but there are plenty of those in Game of Thrones. It's just like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm happy to concede Lord of the Rings isn't as politically complicated, but I mean, it's just I wouldn't want to undermine Lord of the Rings. And obviously, this is this is the more interesting conversation out of all these clips because the rest of them are like fucking can't even start because <laughs> it's like this this thing my <laughs> thing I like is actually pro bi political thing. You're like, okie dokie, thumbs up. <laughs> you, you do you. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's because the central conflict in Lord of the Rings does end up being a lot more clear cut in the end. No, so this well, is well, the problem. It's all, Thrones, it's all, it's all, no, no, no. It's all POV because in Lord of the Rings, you've still got to build armies and connections that are complicated with people who may or may not have the same motivations as you. Yeah. In Game of Thrones, all of it eventually comes to a head of we have to fight the army of undead monsters that simply want all things to be dead. That's yeah. not exactly complicated. One night. You have, you have the historic feud between the, the elves and the dwarves, for instance. In yeah, the it's really, like to I, me, I, it feels unfair to Lord of the Rings when we do it this way, you know? Well, also, I, I, gotta, I, I would bear completely in mind. agree with you. I, I would have completely agreed with you, Mahler, if they if they actually ended the show on the Army of the Dead and they didn't. It's like, well... I mean, you're not arguing that they made it complicated failure, and interesting at the end, are you? Yeah, no, like, I mean, no, I'm not. they make it just pretty clear. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, now evil no, 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 is the no, no, no. I'm not saying go. it was a good ending. But I like yeah, but it's not it, it's it not multi-dimensional. They just say the, the guy with the little... best story gets the throne. That's you, Brad. Which was just like what? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we got to remember as well that like the Lord of the Rings, extended Lord of the Rings is obviously long. It's like what eleven and a half, twelve hours or something. But comparing that to eight seasons of Game of Thrones, that's like sixty hours of yeah. content. It's obviously going yeah. to be more complex. And uh, yes, I guess yeah. to round it out then, I don't know that it's necessarily saying that anything is bad because it's one-dimensional. I just don't think that Lord of the Rings is one-dimensional. I think it's a bit more a bit more complicated than that. Bad example. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's 100%, it's no. I, I guess if you had like a scale of simple good versus evil story and then, you know, more complicated everyone's Shades of Grey story, Lord of the Rings is probably closer to the simple good versus evil story than Game of Thrones, but it's not well, yeah. one on sure. that scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The politics Absolutely. in Lord of the Rings are simpler because, like, there, there's yeah. the the factions are very far apart. Like, Gondor isn't near Rohan, which isn't near uh, Rivendell, and they can kind of just keep to themselves. And there's no war for any one throne. So the, the right conflict in it is just against the big evil kingdom to to the Mordor. Oh, oh which yeah. sorry, it's not over yet. We got no. more. Good, it's good. The there's also, a, yeah, the there's a time and a place to enjoy different types of media. I think, yeah. So this, yeah, right. I threw this in just because it seemed relevant. This was uh, the recent thing with the Fallout stuff, which we mentioned, I think, hours ago on this anniversary. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now this yeah, is the actual yeah. image. You did mention it once. They got, Critique of capitalism was never the point of Fallout. In fact, the game went out of its way to mention that other countries like China were also behaving terribly. If anything, Fallout is a comment that war is inevitable given basic human nature. And then you've got Reddit mods are deleting one of the yeah. Fallout creators' remarks that the game is about <laughs> war, not capitalism. Mm -hmm. And Chris Avalon uh, uh, said, let's ask yeah. the creator of Fallout what he thinks about things and then not care what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a so, second, this um, person doesn't align with me politically? Yeah, get him out of here. Yeah. Oh, Fuck, so, so I can't I, use this piece of media as a weapon in my so political this, um, war? The, the way I want to sort of uh, mention this as well is because it comes up with Bioshock, it comes up with uh, basically everything, actually. You could just say it about pretty much anything. That uh, is like, you didn't notice... What was happening in the game you love? You think it was about this, 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 when actuality is a big critique of this thing that you actually maybe like, maybe don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I feel like there's a bit of a turning tide as of recently. Those people felt like they saw more. They had more to analyze, more to break down, and more to humiliate you on for not having noticed all of these amazing, deeper th themes. But, like, it's starting to flip in terms of why would it be that Fallout is more meaningful as cri criticism of capitalism as opposed to criticism of human nature, which is a far more fundamental... Mm -hmm. Uh, prospect of like figuring out what it means for war to almost be perpetual, inevitable. It never changes in yeah. the sense that it always rises in the same way and always has the same level of destruction, at least 
on a scaling sort of format and what does it say about humanity as opposed to well, it's about an economic system having flaws you're like eh, okay well, the 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 unsatisfying answer but i think it's true to that question is that a lot of the people who do this type of analysis they're usually very very far left and they're usually just very anti-capitalist and they don't believe in human nature generally so they don't believe in human say, nature. oh it has to be capitalism oh yeah that, that's a big thing on like the, the very radical left right now is just a complete denial that human nature exists well We're even just kind of blank slate oh i i figured it was more so a nature now, that can still develop from after birth i don't mean like it's a necessary thing that we have values that relate to war from the moment we're born i mean the the nature you know the the nature that is nurtured somewhat by the lives that we live anyway in societies that are built but some stuff that i think is super interesting to talk about is like a core that would have matched throughout history as opposed to more so rose with a political system or an economic system I mean, I suppose it's fascinating, right? Because I mean, the 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 tagline of Fallout is "War never changes," and apparently that was too uh, subtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I, I recently got into it. About. Maybe a few months ago, I got into it with a um a bread tuber named um Dead Domain, and we kind of went back and forth a little bit, and like you know, do, doing the reply guy thing, and one of her big points was basically the inverse of what we just saw some of these people say in, in this clip. And because she basically said, yeah, so if you're if it's a piece of media and it's critiquing the government, it's left wing. Don't you guys know that? And it's like, listen, listen, uh, it's 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 hmm. more complicated than that. But this it does really kind of boil down to this this type of thinking again. Right. I, I mean, um, oh, hold on. Well, so, so right. I, I, I dollar I, me. I was joking on my coffee. Sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, this, this, this uh this this Tim Kane Fallout thing um that you have up here, Mahler. And I think Chris Avalon also worked on Fallout as well. Yeah. I posted something a Tim few months back. I'll I'll put it in the chat here if you want to take a look at it. But I posted something a few months back on the exact same topic that took off because I found a clip oh, yeah, of Tim this. Kane in an yeah, That's Tim Kane in, in an interview show. said Yep, it was because of the show. And he said basically that uh yeah, in, in the original lore, China China launched the first nuke, and it wasn't actually, you know, a thing of capitalism. It was actually about war. So this is from a few months ago, Tim Kaine saying the same thing. And I had so many people shit on me for, like, digging up this clip. This clip. And people are saying, like, it doesn't actually matter what the, the original creator meant for this work. And I'm like, hold on. Isn't, isn't that the whole point of, of, like, the media literacy conversation? Is, like, you know, you dumb right-wingers oh, don't understand Oh, they'll say it about Starship Troopers, yeah. Means. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you dumb right-wingers don't get it. You don't get it. This, this This piece of media is laughing at your ideology, and you're too stupid. You sit there and you laugh thinking it's a it's a good show, but it's making fun of you. But now that the tables are turned, you know, they start dusting off the, the death of the author hat, you know? Oh, well, yeah. I, I, it's fascinating to me that it would, that would actually be deleting the remarks of the, what, the creator of the series on the subreddit that's based on that series that that guy created. Like, no, we don't want to see what he has to say. That's really uh, cringy. <laughs> um, that's really yeah, awkward. I think, that, I think there's now a sense of, you know, it's no, it's no longer in Tim Kaine's hands. It's no longer in Chris Avalon's hands. So now Why we can would, do whatever we want with it. That know? doesn't so change gonna... anything. This is, this is related to Fallout. Related. And it's not really, what are you meant to do if he says, yeah, that wasn't like what we were going for. That's the end. That's what he thinks. So well, it's exactly like the tweet says, ask him what he thinks and then not care what he thinks. Yep. Only care what he thinks if he agrees with you. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I think I spoke to you about this, Regs, privately. I'm working on a pretty long video on this topic. Just how how some people will put on the death of the author hat and then take it off as it suits them, you know? Oh, yeah. There's no, there's not going to be any mm. consistency. I mean, it's, mm. it's going to be, can I use this as a tool? Oh, I can't discard it or change my stance or don't be consistent with things. Yep. Speaking I, yeah. of tools. Give me a second. Give, 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 give. Okay. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I am. So if you remember. Oh, this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we we once animal. checked this out what? and I was made aware. That we only oh. saw the first half of it. So for anyone here who is not familiar with this, you're about to have a fucking riot. This is a uh, uh, two guys. Are they that they're flowers or something? Uh, bah, bah, bah. Two hour, two guys what? just having a chat, and you're gonna get the full thing. Okay, this is from start to end. Don't you worry about it. Here it comes. What's the animal in this world that you fear the least? Fish. Animal. Fish. 
You can't just do this so Jesus casually. <laughs> what animal do you fear the least? Fish. No animals. Like, wait. Fish. Fish <laughs> is not a valid answer to the category animal. What, what is it? Fungus? Fungus? Uh, mammal? But the, well, so yeah. this just gets Animal. better and better. Just uh, okay. enjoy. <laughs> okay, okay. Don't, don't, you're starting and I'm not. A fish is an animal. No, it's not. I'm talking about an animal animal. Like fish, 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 <laughs> fish. That's he went, I think he and XQC went to the same school. They <laughs> 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 must, must have been classmates and then never showed up. Fish. They never knew they were classmates because oh. they never went. It's like saying like an ant. That's not an animal. Fish aren't animals. <laughs> That what, what, uh, so ants uh, and fish are not that animals. Face right there. <laughs> okay, so fish and fish and ants. We're figuring so it out. We're I, getting I there. I guess by extension, all arthropods are not so like lobsters aren't animals either. They're plants or whatever. Yeah, plants or concepts. What? I guess. Concepts. <laughs> um, maybe they're the like gases idea. or plasma. Um, well, all right. you know, we can edge this out and just get more information, right? That's the way we'll do it. So like, so that's like a, that's a sea creature. A fish is an animal. You can't go to the zoo and see a fish. I did it not too long ago, actually. It's so fucking funny. It's the reaction as well. What a weird criteria to like animal, whether or not it's a zoo. Yeah, that's not even good criteria, but it's just funny as fuck that he said it. That's like that's a sea creature. A fish is an animal. You can't. Wait, 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 what's weird is that he calls it a creature, not an animal. Yeah, cre uh. creature is his umbrella term for it all of a, it. Yeah, it is, it is a creature, but not an animal. So there can there be are animals that zoo. are... Saying like a wait, that's not an animal. So I guess, so I guess Ant under his animal? classification, creature is not an umbrella that covers animal, but all animals are creatures. Yeah, the solution the here might that actually be... Pigs and all, but not all pigs are, pigs are boars. But we've got I to guess. figure out what he thinks animal means. I, mean, I guess so. Yeah. Whatever's going on here is not normal. So animals so, are non animals are not necessarily not ants or fish that are not f ants or fish. Okay. Uh, this is this is fucking biblically accurate. I love it. <laughs> like, Jesus like what it means just mammals. Yeah. Saying like yep. an ant. That's not an animal. Fish aren't animals. That's like a, that's a sea creature. A fish is an animal. You can't go to the zoo and see a fish. They don't yeah, have zoo fishes. There's actually so <laughs> many fishes. There's fish zoos. No. You can go to a fish zoo. No. <laughs> yes, I mean, he's so confident. Yeah, so I, it's the confidence. Sea world, motherfucker. You are so. If someone's telling you there are zoos for fish, and your instant like reaction is incredible, like <laughs> like you're so confidently, what's the word? Not not even skeptical. By it. Right? Like the idea of going to see fish in a zoo is, that's wild to me. How can you be so confident? What is it about water that just breaks these people's brains? I don't know. It's the connecting <laughs> factor, know. though. They got too oh, much it of it in their brain, clearly. Kind of dinosaurs good. are not animals, except for birds, because dinosaurs. Well, dinosaurs are might be. Mm. We yeah, that's a, a tough on one. We gotta find oh, out. No. Assuming... Hold on. Assuming no, he thinks dinosaurs zoo. are real, he might. Who knows? Oh. Who knows where he stands? Well, you can't on see. That. You wouldn't go to a dinosaur zoo, so therefore they're not animals, right? True. I can't see dinosaurs <laughs> at the zoo, <laughs> and I don't Different think we birds. count alligators. I suppose or birds, their descendants. But so many fishes. There's fish zoos. No. You can go to a fish zoo. No. Oh. There's so many fish that they have their own fucking attraction called an aquarium. <laughs> That's different. That's like sharks and shit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> All right. There's so many this payoffs. Is, it's just a, it's wild. a payoff machine gun. This clip. That's different. Okay. Yeah. Just I'll okay, play it again. So just make God. sure you catch it. Okay. Fucking attraction sharks, called an aquarium. Fish. That's different. That's for, like sharks and shit. Fish. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> sharks, are, sharks are fish. 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 Are sharks are fish. Yes. Wait. So well, so fish are classified not by anything about the fish, but where you would go to see them. Yeah, fish right? zoo. Fish so zoo. maybe it's size. If you go to a maybe fish zoo, size, right? Well, he said sharks. There's the a sharks difference. Sharks are fish. So sharks, like a tuna sharks small, you are know? sharks are not fish because they are in aquariums, which we have freshly discovered do exist. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, seconds, they're, they're not too fair. Ago, they're not fish. They are sea creatures. Rags, <laughs> not fish, sea creatures. Just to be clear. Yeah, they're sea creatures that are not fish are at. The Aquarius, which didn't exist a moment ago, but they do now, and it's for sharks. Yeah, he's 
he's wheel building. Only sharks. Uh, this is actual brain oh cancer. My God. Holy fuck. That's like sharks and shit. <laughs> no, that's why they have different names. I'm talking about an animal like a monkey zebra. That's like saying a mammal. You just ended yourself. If you would have <laughs> said mammal, I would have gave you different answer. You said animal. That's not a fish. Fish is an animal. No, fish. fish. Something with paws is an animal, dog. <laughs> Something with paws. Something with paws. So humans, okay, human, yeah, he oh, just so humans are animals. animals. He's fucked uh, up animal and mammal, it seems. Oh, holy fuck. <laughs> is a lizard an animal? No. It's an insect. What's a lizard? reptile? What are reptiles? So Wait, what's a human? Are we animals? Well, hang on. Did he just say lizards are an insect? Uh, I think that's what he just said. There's so many things being said. <laughs> it's it's hard to track. There's an animal. No, fish. I think something with paws is an animal, dog. And fur. Is a lizard an animal? No. It's an insect. What's a, a lizard? reptile? <laughs> what a reptile. It's How can you slide that in? How can you just like s slide that in? I, I, that I, lizards I, are uh, insects. Yeah, it, it does sound like he's mistaking animal for mammal. His classifications are all fucked. Yeah. No, yeah. this is way past that. <laughs> <laughs> That is one tiny building block on the, in this cathedral of ignorance. That is one tiny. That's a brick. That one brick. Ignorance is fucking what, charitable. What, what age did you guys all learn about the five you know animal groups? Was it like I don't grade one? know. I don't because remember. It was so, it's like a core. It's like core <laughs> knowledge. It's like when did you yeah. learn multiplication? It's like I don't know. I just assume I all like I came out of the womb knowing it. As just, it's like one of those those basal facts that you learned so early. You just assume. You just always knew it. Like, when Whoa. did you learn what the colors were? Like, I don't know, yeah. man. That's just like innate human knowledge. Oh, when I had eyes. Around yeah, it was like five years old or something, phase, I, think. I think. Yeah, it's like one of those super, 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 super early, early things. Oh, yo, you don't yeah, I had know, eyes before I was it. five, but. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be sure? Dinosaurs, that's when I found out. Oh, oh, shit, shit, right. Right. It takes a few years to grow in sometimes. I don't remember. It's an insect. What's a lizard? reptile? What are reptiles? So reptile, What's a human? So are we animals? Are we animals? Because we're humans? Mammal. Exactly, it's a mammal. It's not an animal. Which is an animal! Okay, so mammals <laughs> can't be animals. You are an animal. animal. Well, no, this, yeah, this cool. builds up. This is... I think this is... Uh -huh. Okay, fish are not animals. Animals are not mammals. Sharks are sea creatures, but not fish. <laughs> no, sharks are fish. But they're also Unless sea creatures, unlike insects, fish, which right? are. Yeah, I thought he ruled them out as fish. About being an animal. Oh, so, so what can actually classify as an animal at this point? So I, I, think I got it. I said paws and fur. Paws and fur, apparently. Mammals. Yes, oh, yeah. I think, dog I is think, an animal. I think what he, so I, I think he thinks that just animal refers to like like household pets. I think it's yeah, like it, it's a dog, but right? not like, but, yeah, but not not dogs bear. or cats, like common common animals that are hanging around in the house. What about rodents? I think rodents have paws and fur. So yeah, they would probably be like, well, they all hang around your house. Too. Rodents that's are an order. Creature. Bear is a like forest a creature. <laughs> category. Yeah. That's like a pest or something. That would mammal. be the response. Exactly, it's a mammal. It's not an animal. Which is an animal. So we're animals. Animal. Listen, you said humans are mammals, I right? Can't, I can't. Listen. I can't. Do listen to my explanation. Just get into my brain for a second. I don't want to get into get into my brain. I don't love so this whole slimy place. We're not an animal. You are. I'm an animal. I won. Comments. I won. Explain it. You Wait, explain what? it. Well, how am I an animal? You asked me. Yeah. What animal? You're talking, with your mouth, <laughs> like. Stop. <laughs> you, you're breathing. You're, you're my least you you know. me an ape. With lungs. Like you're literally a great ape. Like you're a primate. I don't know. It's, uh, we're, no, we can't even bring that shit up. No, fuck no. How am I an animal? You, you asked me. Yeah. What animal am I least afraid of? Well, you called me an animal. Fish, fi no, I didn't. Yes, you did. You just you said brought, I'm an animal. You brought human beings into me. Why you are you screaming at me? Because you're stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> you're stupidity. Why are you screaming at me? <laughs> oh my god. His little expression when he oh, says your god, stupidity breathing, is absolutely classic. Mm. It's so sad. Human beings into me. Why are you screaming at me? Because you're stupidity. He's screaming. Why are you screaming at me? Fish. I'm an animal animal. I don't care. Animal, animal. Yes. about car cars. It's not a Mitsubishi. Okay, car you, what is the definition of a fish? What, what is it? Aquatic. Aquatic what? Aquatic what? <laughs> Aquatic what? Yeah, you saw what he was about to say. He was about to say. Animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was about to say animal. He was about to say animal. He was about to say animal. He had to say creature. He, he had to say creature. Yeah, he fucking yeah, knew. He knew. He knew he'd fucked up. The two little brain cells in there knew enough that he was going to say animal. Finally collided and made a thought. What is it? Aquatic. 
Aquatic, aquatic what? Yes, yeah. <laughs> aquatic, <laughs> aquatic what? Aquatic is creatures. Animals. You're saying you're the same as a leopard. You're not a leopard. You're a white man from Dallas. Oh, you're not a leopard. But, 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 I'm trying to but, tell you okay. something. So a thing, so he I'm thinks that cate like a thing can uh, only be itself. It can't belong to other categories except for the things that can be themselves and belong to categories. Uh, oh you boy. cannot simultaneously be an animal oh, and a person and a mammal. You saw it's like pick two. <clears throat> you choose that, wisely. That was like concentrated brain rot. Holy, that's insane. That How that is this person? This person probably like <sighs> operated a car on like. A motorway with other people, yes. and they drove to work. I don't. How does this happen? I oh yeah, An animal. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> your pet Traitor. is fur and Traitor. Fish is not an animal. An otter is paws and fur, so he would say it's an animal. No, it's a traitor. But he wouldn't say so, that like an elephant or a rhino is a, is a animal, God, right? Well, I because it doesn't. I mean, they have they have hair, but not fur. But I don't, don't, I don't know paws. if you call them paws. Well, I don't no. think an, animal, well, an elephant doesn't have paws, right? No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, wait, that's not a, an elephant would have paws. Yeah, no. feet. Yes. Do, you, do you think that humans turn into fish have, when you hop into a yes. bathtub or something? Yes. Yeah. Fish. Okay. Well, no, we turn into sea creatures. Aquatic yeah. creatures. Aquatic creatures. Get in the hot tub. A pool, a pool is just a fish zoo for aquatic creatures which are people um i gotta do some booting we gotta make room for three people god oh, damn. damn so nicholas i guess oh, we'll oh, see no. you for the next boogie oh, yeah, round you, you can yeah you can <laughs> be back in like eight hours uh, uh, thanks for having me we'll see you later for Should be like boy, six boy. we'll go with six boogie all right video. see you then buddy six or i'll set an alarm again Peace. all right doodle pip god damn <laughs> fucking champion batman and, um, uh, am I am I the next one who joined? Like next longest one? I don't. Well, does anyone here intend to leave anytime soon? I think it's I mean, I you just got and, here. and me, Mark. Okay. Yeah, I think it's you and me, Mark. All right. Have a good talk, guys. Love you guys. You bet. We will do that. We will yeah. see you later, later on. Bye bye. bye. Adios. Oh, bye bye. Adios. Ah. Take this lull. I survived to the next round. Yeah, not bad. Just uh, enjoy the peace for a moment before we enter more. Mm. Wait, how long is this part going to be? Is it not yeah. going to be 888? Or what no. we, what's the... We can't do it like oh, that okay. because the availability of guests is completely random and scary. You have to move Man, around for them. Spooky. It shouldn't be yeah, that me, remember, Rags, here in the and States, it's Bringy are now. accounted for. It be everyone That's else. ridiculous. We got, some, we got some fun lads along the way, okay? For fun discussions. La di da. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. Look who it is. Hello. Like your beers. He's going to drink them all. Drink, you've missed so many <laughs> events. <laughs> oh, look, it's Ryan it's as well. Oh, my goodness. If only we I mean, had Ned Rotic, that would complete the racist trio, and then we'd be able to summon oh, something. Oh, it would. I can, I can <laughs> fill in. the holy trinity of bigotry. I love it. Oh, I remember yeah. when I, as a German, was like peak racism. Yeah, no, you're getting outclassed, man. You gotta yeah. boost it. Yeah, that's bullshit, You can't actually. rest on your laurels forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. your, your generation doesn't know how to do proper racism, Mel. <laughs> well, I think I have to strap in and get us back on track. <laughs> I believe in you. I'm never that quite sure. The public office medal. Yeah. I'm never Good. quite sure what's going to get me uh, blasted. I'll say what I think is the most offensive possible thing I could imagine on Friday Night Tights, and then I look at <laughs> Twitter and it's some <laughs> just absolutely retarded clip uh, from some video I made on some random channel three years ago that gets called me racist. Yeah. So. That's how they get but you. I'll never going, know. Boys. Happy, uh, happy six years. Oh, thank you. Uh, we got. I got I something I special. Specifically for you, Ryan, or rather, some I wanted you here for it because I came across this at absolute random, and it was so fucking funny. Uh, jump into the watch together, gentlemen, if you haven't already. Got to get going. We don't, I don't know how long there. I have you for. Okay, I got to be quick. Now, I will stay as long as I can. Beautiful. So, this is Pray. from a channel where this 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 video is called "The Truth About Star Wars Exposed: Pong Krell, Clones, oh, Morality, George Lucas, and Original Text." Now. You may think, Mola, why, why, why is this, what, what's, what's, and she's like, you know what, I almost don't want to say a thing, I'll just let him talk, because 
This this goes places. Video I mean, honestly, places. you had me at Pong Krell. Like I was. I would have thought so. <laughs> so. B a... Pong Krell, really? B Pong yeah, Krell, who in there? Yeah. What what what's what's, what's, what's funny is creature. I feel like Ryan's the only person who knows who that is. Who's he? <laughs> yes. So like this, just for uh, for context, I suppose before we even get into it, this Pong Krell is a uh, he's a Jedi in the Clone Wars era in the Clone Wars cartoon. Oftentimes, when people tell you you have to watch the Clone Wars, Dave Filoni is just he is just a master of storytelling. They will refer to this arc as just like peak Star Wars, right? Which they've said that about mm. literally about every peak cringe Kong. thing that's come out. But th this is usually the one that they're talking about. Well, well, let this us begin. Quick. I'm looking at this picture I can, here. Well, I can I'm tell this just by looking at him. Yeah, is is this guy a fish? Or an animal. No, he's a sea creature. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no. Uh, We're not doing this again. We're yeah. not doing it's good to know that his <laughs> pronouns are he, him, though. Thank goodness. Well, I, I, gotta, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to misgender this fictional character. Original texts are later. Oh, shit. It's a bit cool. And I really have to get this out right now, or else it will impact the quality of the video. What? Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> Why does he talk? Right. Fuck all the clones! Fuck all every of single one of these rat bastards. They are rat the reason bastards? the entire setting has become a shithole by the time of the original trilogy. Why the huh? fuck are they all portrayed sympathetically? They don't deserve sympathy. Not a uh, fucking ounce of clones? it. They I mean, they don't literally an ounce of sympathy. They've, they've been, been that literally bred for to be disposable, war. Since... Yeah, disposable people to throw into the meat grinder of war. I can sympathize with that. That sounds like a pretty. That, that sounds well. Okay, let him bad. finish. He's they, they making, are what they are. Laying they the literally, groundwork. They don't know how to be anything else. I'm feeling Why compelled right now. He seems passionate. He must know what he's talking about. They deserve nothing but contempt, disdain, Damn. mockery, derision, <laughs> spite, and scorn. <laughs> they were made Damn. with the express purpose of killing the protectors of the galaxy. That's what their fucking purpose was. It sounds like he should be angry at the person who made Palpatine. them. Palpatine made them, yeah. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah right. not because it's, it's not their choice. Is it's that like even getting true? angry at a, at a nuclear missile or something? Like it doesn't really have a, a say in what it's used for. It was just created for that purpose. Yeah, it's it literally is not an agent in the same way that I don't think clones are agents in a sense. Like are they? They, like, what, they don't have they, agency. Do they have free really. will? Do they? Yeah, yeah, so are they like some of like heavily animals, programmed? Or... But I, I think on that one of the things that through. one of the things that Clone Wars, the television series, did that that a lot of people praise it for is they do feel like it gave the clones like more personality, and you you do have like more sympathy for them and all these things. One of the other problems is that they turned it from they turned Order sixty six from hey. These clones, they, they are actually just going to be loyal to the Republic, right? Regardless of all these friendships or whatever. They turned it to like this chip in their brains that when it got switched on, they just turned into like animals, no pun intended, who would who would just kill the Jedi. Um, as opposed to it actually being, hey, these are people, and they might even have these connections to the Jedi, but this is ultimately what they were bred for, what they were programmed to do, and they're going to kill them indiscriminately. Yeah. So I mean, correct me if I'm wrong as no, well. I, I, like, once the Clone Wars were over, were the clone armies not basically discarded, like in favor of just mass conscription? It, I it's just wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, they got phased out because I mean, obviously, clone. The reason that clones are uh, were able to be so readily available, the accelerated aging and things like that. So they didn't hang around for very long. So once your once your force started aging out, they did conscription because it's way cheaper to just conscript all these masses then you know pay somebody to make these clones especially after what they did to camino yeah so know, essentially like... not only were they created like with the sole purpose of of being soldiers and had essentially no say in the course of their own lives but their lives were extremely short and they were thrown away once they'd served their purpose so i'd say that deserves quite a bit of sympathy really Surely they've, the they've, clones yeah. must be cheap time. if the republic never noticed that they had a pinch uh, hey. had actually Okay, all for, right. Oh, We're trying to listen to this oh, guy's oh, arguments. Okay, sorry, sorry. Here, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it was is actually uh, I believe it was bankrolled by Darth Plagueis. Um, I'm almost he paid sure. for it himself. Um, yeah. So Darth Plagueis is actually um, 
he's one of the richest people in the galaxy. He's a, a very influential person. Well, Higo Damask is his real name uh, in his normal day. Uh, but yeah, they he essentially gaslit Sifo-Dyas into believing that um, the time would come where the, this big war would be in the galaxy and the Jedi would need to okay. be ready. So one person can fund an army that could take over. This is madness. Not helping the Republic win the Clone Wars, but to kill the Jedi. They're not even. You can do both. Give them some credit. Well, so <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about this. I remember at some point there was an Order sixty five where the the clones could be ordered to kill the Chancellor instead of the Jedi. Was that was that retconned or did Disney took it, they take away with that or? Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look that up. I'm not sure about that because I think I think the initial purpose of the clones is that they would have all these various fail safes built into them so that if one part of the Republic became too tyrannical, they could turn on them. Also, Theo just loses his mind in chat. I will say this is this is more to just appreciate this man's POV. Okay, so uh, the play of these clips just to let you know that there's people out there who really feel this passion. Just just start to appreciate some of his um. His ideas for the for what should happen to certain elements of Star Wars. They're not even human or Mandalorian or whatever. They were made on a goddamn assembly line from in a goddamn lab on a goddamn ocean planet. They're I'm no different now. than the separatist droids. Every clone ever deserves to be wiped out as penance for what they helped accomplish. No exceptions. <laughs> I don't care if there are good Jeez. ones like Rex or Cody oh, or whoever. Jesus. Just oh kill goodness. them all. And Bit of a moral absolutist, this guy, isn't he? <laughs> well, this guy. He's going further than that. Me. He this ain't stopping is... at the clones. Oh. Bring about a of oh. darkness upon the galaxy because that's exactly what they fucking are and you can't change my mind. And if they okay. don't deserve death, oh. then they at least deserve to rot away in a slum on some imperial city planet with no food, no money, <laughs> no friends or family, and just be no cheered at by every passerby. No access a to streaming services. <laughs> they deserve to starve well, I mean, and rot. He, he's, he's actually kind of winning me <laughs> over, to be honest. Um, I, I kind of agree. Just take all the clones, put them on one island together, just just them. Uh, they just end up, yeah, they just end up butt fucking Australia each other. them. On. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Do, Do they have it, genitals? Yes. Yeah, oh, I think so. Really, they're not, they're not just like smooth Boy. down there. They're not. They're not gonna like Ken dolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your only purpose is for war. No fucking allowed. <laughs> that would actually be. I would have sympathy for them if that was the case. Yeah, well, they could be castrated. Yeah, like, they, like they could be like the Unsullied from oh, Game of Thrones, yeah. where they've been castrated. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if I were living in the Star Wars galaxy in that time period, I'd. Bit on a on that clone, kick Damn. that clone in the nutsack, <laughs> gather oh. a crowd of people to do the same, before ultimately doing the galaxy a favor by throwing that clone off an overpass. Fuck <laughs> it, all of them. And I know what you're gonna say, oh, but they had a control chip in their brains. They didn't have a choice. Mickey Mouse. No, they did have a choice. <laughs> the choice to blow their brains out for being clones and built to serve evil. They what? Don't... All right. Did they have a you know, choice but though? Did any of them do that? Really, no. And who cares never. if they didn't have the control chip to begin with? They ultimately would have killed the Jedi anyway, because as products of the dark side and products of an evil man, Ugh. the dark side would have overpowered them and made them kill the Jedi anyway. Either that, or they simply would have done it anyway by taking advantage of their bullshit. He's body. like, he, every way ends in killing them. It must. There is no, there's no innocence to be found here. ...with the Jedi. Hell, that's exactly what happened when Rex Hitler. almost killed Ahsoka. He wasn't resisting the control chip. He was pretending to resist it so Ahsoka could let her guard down and he could kill her easier. So in summary, fuck the clones for being no better than the Death Star. Fuck Rex for being <laughs> full of bullshit. Fuck Cody for being useless. 
Fuck Dogma for killing the unsung hero of the show, Pong Krell. <laughs> fuck this one clone for having. <laughs> oh, like, I'm like, pretty clone. sure I watched that episode. That uh, that Ark and Clone Wars. Basically, it was this Jedi guy who just went out of his way to get clones killed, and then there was a massive fight where he killed like a hundred clones single-handedly. Yes, that well, that's Pong Krell. He's got like four arms, so he's got know. four arms and he has two double-bladed lightsabers that he wields. Oh, yes. yes, he sounds that's cool. Pong Krell, buff Dexter Jester. Well, just can just, I just ask Ryan a question quickly, just for clarification, because I I only know the films. I haven't seen like any of the extra stuff. So, did they um, recontextualize why the clones were actually made? Like, were they specifically made to kill the Jedi? So it, it was all. For anybody that uh, that would be interested in reading something ever, unlike Mahler, um, mm -hmm. the the book the book Darth Plagueis gives so much uh, very interesting context to some of the things that are going on behind the scenes in terms of the Sith, and yeah, so the the idea of the clone army was from like the Sith. It was from Darth Plagueis, and he found a handful of Jedi who did truly feel like uh, things were going to go off the rails. They saw these fights breaking out around the galaxy. They saw what was happening with the Trade Federation. And after kind of uh, over a decade worth of like discussions and like careful manipulation, um, they, they were able to convince sifo to, play to place this order because they felt like the Republic was going to need it at some time. But the truth was the entire reason that this army was going to be made was so they could do this, so they could help to, you know, destabilize everything and eventually use them to overthrow the Jedi. Like, all at the same time, okay. they have to be taken out, the vast majority of them. So to okay. add on to that, I did decide to look it up, and Order 65 was a thing, but Disney retconned it. Oh. There was, there was yeah. originally 150 orders that were basically so, contingencies that different parts of the government could order the clones to do if one part of the government became corrupted, but they just, Disney cut most of those out, so there's no it more. Was order was Order 65 to take out the Chancellor? Yes, the, the Senate okay. could, order, mm. could order the clones to kill the Chancellor. And is it a coincidence that on this man's computer it currently reads 65 degrees Fahrenheit? Hmm? Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. It does make me well, wonder though, because like who has the ultimate authority here? Like, say the Senate orders them to execute Order 65 and the Chancellor orders orders them to take out the Senate. Like, well, which one do they obey? First come, first serve. Does it depend <laughs> on who has a chip in their brain? Well, that this that all those orders were before the chip thing. Okay. Um, like before the inhibitor chip was created. So the thing you're talking about, I, I didn't remember the the number or how many there are, but that's all from all these uh, Clone Wars novels that Karen Travis wrote uh, in kind of the mid uh, 2000s. And she did a lot of work building up what the clones were, what Mandalorian culture was even. There's a lot of crossover and stuff there. All of that got completely wiped away with TCW. Like just mo the vast majority of it just got wiped out. This was even before Disney, right? TCW just started retconning all that stuff and overriding it. Damn. They always retcon the best stuff. Yeah, typically, and it's typically a bitch like Dave Filoni and everybody praises him as a genius, yeah. The show, Paul yeah. Krell, fuck this one clone for having, for making like clone <laughs> Twi'lek hybrid babies, because the last <laughs> thing that the Star Wars needs is for clones to be fucking up the galactic gene pool. Fuck Palpatine oh for making God. the clones and being the Lucifer of Star Wars. <laughs> Fuck the Kaminoans for making these piles of filth. Fuck the Imperial Troopers for wearing armor similar to these fucks. Fuck Dave Filoni for continuing to rewrite the Star Wars lore. Hey, there you go, right? <laughs> hey, thank you. I, I'm telling you, this guy's winning me over. can agree. He's winning yeah, you over. This guy's winning me over. Yeah. It's simply clock, making man. more pro clone and disparaging the name of Pong Krell <laughs> and fuck all the clone <laughs> simps for loving them in spite of the fact that they are obviously mass murdering machines. And frankly, all evil and its byproducts need to be purged from the galaxy. Palpatine and all his cronies need to die for being evil. That's obvious. And yes, that includes Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> aka Man, when this when this guy watches the original <laughs> trilogy, he's gonna be very satisfied. I'll tell you, leave that, you leave that trilogy angry, a happy dude. man. Darth Vader.
Anakin had every chance to resist the dark side and not give in to it, but he did it anyway. Death is a suitable punishment <laughs> he did it for all anyway. dark siders and former dark siders. This guy took some very interesting lessons from the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he's a simple man, you know? Evil, you're gone. That's it. He's he's to kill all. everybody that's evil. You know? Look, he's synthetic do. man's Redemption Padawan. Redemption should okay. be absolutely impossible <laughs> for anyone who's turned evil. Darth Vader deserves to go down in history in the same way here, like freaking Hideki Tojo go, goes down in history. True. He was the right hand man for the guy who plunged uh, uh, the galaxy uh, into darkness uh, and he continued was the, to help him out after he screwed him out of an arm, his uh, legs, mm. his wife and kids, his wi and his, his wife that he killed, by the way. And speaking of his kids, Luke and Leia need to die. Too. He says all of this like it's like it's okay, real, it's, you know. Jesus Luke and Leia need to die too. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. I was with it's you to a point, but eventually, at the hands of Disney, they did. In, okay, we'll let them in. I didn't know people that Anakin based even existed. Jesus. Firm, oh meaning they too will inevitably fall to the dark side. Luke was already showing dark side tendencies when he was negotiating at Jabba's palace and when he was fighting Vader on the Death Star 2. So we might as well kill him then and there. <laughs> kill them all. Might as well. Just, a, single, a single drop of dark side and you gotta kill him. You gotta, this guy wanted to be masturbating too? Get it There's out. something to be said about the idea of um, like angelic beings that can suffer no imperfection and so they're like essentially evil in the way that they they, they seek out the the purification of uh, of everything that they see um and I'm, I'm getting these vibes from him like this super like, he's like this an angel evil creature that mm, yeah he's, puritan, like, he's like this yeah. evil evil super puritanical creature that can absolutely accept no imperfection not a single drop of this kind of blood that kind of blood the the imp the, the whole galaxy needs to be purified and, and you eat the last clean. cookie yeah. fucking die yeah yeah i can imagine he's he <laughs> operates this way in his everyday life like he gets a new puppy and it pisses on the floor and he's like you you put up. You made a mess on the floor. I don't care. You're out of here now. You deserve to die. That's yes. it. One drop of piss and you're gone. Yes. All of the puppies need to be thrown into an imperial gutter and starved and have their balls kicked by me. This they need to be removed from the gene pool. The street just gets you bumped into me. Shoots him on the spot. Also, hi Gary. Oh hey! Oh hello! We're talking about, hi, we're talking <laughs> about the purification of the galaxy. What yes, are you up to? naturally. Oh, is this a doll? No, no, no. Meeting? We mean we mean genetic purity. Just click that all watch together, please. and you oh, can join us for this yeah, yeah. Nazis. wonderful seminar. Okay, cool. There's only there's no, only a minute left too. of of what it's I wanted us to listen to. He's just finishing up his um his manifesto. And Leia even <laughs> turned evil in one of the Star Wars Infinities comics. See, look, you can see her right here. And <laughs> he's see, look, oh, she's, she's drawn evil. evil. She's in the shadows. <laughs> her on the cover, so yeah, I'm shadows. convinced. She's been drawn you evil. You can tell she's evil. I'm yes, not bad, I'm just that drawn that way. Like is like <laughs> non-canon Elseworld type of shit. But it's as I'll always say. If it could have happened, it'll surely happen. Uh -huh. Han Solo uh, he's and Batman. That's an interesting death for phrase. Petty yes, criminals. so hold on, hold on. This guy's puritanical nature is such that if you could have done an evil thing in an alternate timeline, you're still responsible, even if you didn't do it. Well, you say you have to, to die. If it's possible, yes. it will happen. It's, it's pretty so sure, sure by logic, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, once this guy has killed every living organism in the entire universe, I'm sure he'll be quite content that he's purged no, the it. The dirt will yeah. still get him. Everything is... The dirt will still get him, Drinker. That's yeah, well, true, he's, yeah. He's just gonna kill all the animals, but the fish will still be here, don't worry. <laughs> There's always a new enemy. <laughs> Couldn't you draw this even what... further and blame the midi-chlorians? Just kill, kill everything. Them too. Just kill it all, yeah. <laughs> And by the way, George <laughs> Lucas is the one who created this thing, so he needs to die too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the people who procreated, who are capable of creating George Lucas, well, they need to go too. <laughs> or that they ended up joining the rebels anyway, or that they were good guys with hearts of gold. No, they are criminals. 
and all criminals deserve death. <laughs> Boba Fett Jesus. is a contract oh, wow. killer. So all right, I'm dead. Like, even if you're jaywalking, it's like, well, criminal <laughs> death for you. Oh, wait. What well, I think what he said about Boba, Boba Fett didn't do anything illegal in that he bounty hunter is legal, right? That's not breaking the law. So he's okay. Didn't he vaporize people, though? Yeah, that he might, disintegrated people, necessarily. apparently. That might not that might not necessarily be against the law if he's doing it within the bounds of his bounty hunting work. Because he was... Mm, it's quite extreme. The Empire... you you're, as a bounty hunter, you're there to bring people in. Well, yeah, I mean, some bounties well, are uh, dead, dead or alive. It depends on the bounty. Dead or alive, yeah. and some of them are just dead. As in, like, the bounty only counts for them being dead. They just want people dead. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want I mean, to I did often wonder, like, how do you? There's how do you no prove more room in the gutter. You, so you vaporize the bounty. It's like, well, that's well, why you, you don't know, vaporize them. Work for it. I guess you, you have could... to live stream it to Twitch. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you live stream it, the right. vaporization on Twitch, then you're good to go. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think you, you actually sweep just sweep it into like a little dustbin, and you bring that, and they'll test it. <laughs> Here's his ashes. In my experience, you just press Y and claim the dead body. That's what happens in the bounty. Yeah, once you string them up and press Y, yeah. Oh, if yeah. if yeah, Boba Fett is that. off the hook, because it's his job. What, what's the job of the clones? Isn't it to fight? Yeah. Well, listen, we haven't figured this out yet, so I think I think <laughs> okay. we have. It's just kill everyone. It's pretty straightforward. Well, wait, wait. I don't know. Is it their <laughs> job? Do they get paid? They don't get paid, do they? The clones? No. no. They just get they okay. Just get ah, there we go. We found our our loophole here. They don't get well, paid. They're like for Discord it. moderators. They do it for free. Yeah. yeah. And, and the they're happy clone. to do it for free. <laughs> they take <laughs> on top of that, so he should die too. C three PO should die for being built by Anakin. Finn should <laughs> oh die for God. being Empire two <laughs> Finn, soldier. Finn's down. And no, I don't care if he defected. And Ray should die. Oh, right, we got you post on I, Ray I, should die. I get his thoughts on Ray. Come on, I gotta well, know why Ray dies. Do the thing he said before then. Like C three PO has got to be the most innocent character in Star Wars. No, he surely. was built by Anakin. Yeah, even. Yeah, evil tries to with murder evil. C-3PO. He's been tainted with evil, obviously. I, I do think he said Boba be... Fett should die, right? Yeah. Like that, that, that doesn't surprise me a bit of C-3PO. Should die. Yeah. An Empire 2.0 soldier, and no, I don't care if he defected, and Rey should die for being Palpatine's granddaughter. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I can agree yeah, with him. Him. All yeah. evil. He's it winning me over. Easy. He should have just <laughs> listed who doesn't deserve to die, and the video would be shorter. Yeah, True. he's killed most. Oh, and byproduct. We're, not, we're running out of characters from the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Who's gonna be hold left? on. All right, everyone. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, we're yeah, missing. I, let Let's go back just a little bit. We got to hear the end after as we go through the like the book of names of death. Again, Finn should die for being an Empire 2.0 soldier. And no, I don't care if he defected. And Ray should die for being Palpatine's granddaughter. So I'll repeat myself. All evil and its byproducts need to be purged from the galaxy. Hmm. Jesus. And you're the man right, to do well, it. I'm sorry about that. I had to get that off or else, <laughs> else I would have like... It was a burning desire. I <laughs> really had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Been holding that in for a long the... time. <laughs> it has to come out eventually. I'm glad it came out in this I'm productive glad. This format. is a healthy he expression. Yeah, yeah. With this a is gun good. Or something. It's good that he did it. So he yeah, has to purge evil. the entire galaxy of all life because it's evil. Yeah, um, straightforward. Does that make him evil? Or, no, right? no, 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 no. He's he's the agent no, of no, good. No, 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 because he's doing it for justice. He's, he's, yeah, he's the last good yeah. man in a in a galaxy turned evil. No, so he's, Bob, so he's, he's hold on. He's hold on. So he he wants to purge all life, but he's less evil than C three PO. No, just no, no, not no. Just not all life. He's still less evil than movie Bob. Just, just, just evil most life. of it. <laughs> yeah. Evil. It's byproducts, descendants, and all that assisted in its creation. Yeah. Which is fair, right? He can abide no imperfection. He is like the lawful, evil angel now, of purity. I have just the perfect video since Gary and Ryan and Drinker are here. This is just, oh, oh what a beautiful one. Do you I know, know what it is? you know what it is? Hit it's, us with it. Is it something about us being racist or something? What is no. This? I hope so. It's House of the Dragon. Oh. A review. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ooh, you guys okay. like that. Review oh, House, House of, the of the Dragon's pretty cool. Oh, I we like, like House of the Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Review I like, by... I like Kristen Cole and Alicent until the... Ben Shapiro. Oh, oh, ben. 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 We're double dipping oh, on Ben. 
<laughs> yeah, it been truly my fault. is an anniversary. Oh, wait, uh, this is ben. this is uh, Ben. Uh, Captain America is John McCain Shapiro. <laughs> okay, let's just keep that in mind. Solid takes on this one. Yeah. I almost want to, oh, like, boy. I just want you guys to go ahead with this one. It'll be so funny, because I, I know oh, what he God. says. <laughs> so excited. All righty, folks, we're here to... Oh, wait, one sec, let me... Uh, the the uh, start is pretty strong, by the way. Ben so... Facts don't care about your feelings, Shapiro. Hell fucking yes. He's got his battle yarmulke oh, actually... on. He's ready to go. He's got... Look at these candles. <laughs> Those are nice yeah, candles. Candles. Yeah. candles. He's, like, about to do a seance or something, yeah. Yeah. To recap, yeah, season two... This, okay. By the way, so this is even new for me. I didn't watch it. Oh. Of House did, did, of House of did the Dragon. Did Ben have to look away when like all the dongs and boobs came out? Does he have to? Yeah. Did he cover his eyes? I think he yeah. probably got someone to edit it so he didn't have to look at those things. Yeah. Like he got oh. like a sanitized version. Oh yeah, he got his assistants to purify the show first to make it kosher, so that when he watched it, it was a okay and it didn't break any of the Talmudic laws or whatever he follows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like looking. Actually, I think he was like looking extremely hard. He's like looking to see if everyone's circumcised or not, and that's going to be like part of his judgment <laughs> of the show. <laughs> he's like, the I can Shabbat only judge Mahler. one character, Amond. <laughs> yeah, he's Real like, quick, I, I really the chat saying, uh, <laughs> What the chat saying? The video is way too loud. I saw it. Don't worry. I had to boost that previous guy because he was so quiet. House yeah. of the Dragon. Here's the quick recap. Nothing happened. For a whole season, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Boom, sponsor. <laughs> I mean, ExpressVPN, ExpressVPN. Be careful with him with the fucking music got us in trouble in the previous stream. Bastard. Ah! <laughs> Burned us. That scared oh, me. Look at that production oh, quality. Nice. So, just finished yeah. season two of House of the Dragon, and that was the worst season finale of any series that maybe I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, wow. Jesus okay. Christ. Not Game of Thrones season eight? Really? Yeah. I like that no Lost way. comes up as opposed to the much more suitable connection, which would be Game of Thrones Season 8, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when we last left our story at the end of Season 1, it seemed as though the High Towers and the Targaryens were about to go to war. And when we left Season 2... That's a way to, that's a way to phrase it. The High Towers and the Targaryens are the... That's the dividing line. Sure. Yeah, Blacks I mean, he's, sim he's oversimplifying it. It's but, fine. Yeah, yeah like... It's to some extent. I, yeah, but yeah. I wonder, does that, does that bot, like the crown, does the, the little point in the middle, does that like push down and cause discomfort? Ooh, yeah. You could end There's up with a big dent in your forehead. Underneath. Certainly hope not. It seemed like the it's High Towers and the Targaryens were about to go to war. I know, it sounds like I just said the same sentence twice, but I changed the part about which season it was. Because nothing happened for eight episodes. I'm sorry, it's the worst. Damn. There's basically one half of one good episode. So episode four, mm -hmm. there is something called the Battle of Rook's Rest. And it's about... Motherfucker, do you have it's to use like the music? It's called is the it, Battle of Rook's Rest. But it, it's, it's like his whole his measure for like things happening in a show is like the entire landscape action. of the world changing. Yeah, like everything no, blowing up. Armies oh, destroying no. each it, other. It's like yeah, it, you understand that just two characters talking in a room can constitute a massive piece of plot development, right? Yes. Like. It's not it, defined is, by action. This is the the incredibly, I suppose, like normie take we've seen about this season. The people that are screaming that it was somehow. I remember Gary in our uh, in our finale review that we did on your channel, and I'm just seeing these people like legitimately not trolling. Look like, at me, I'm friends saying, with Third Rock. <laughs> Yeah, like legitimately saying this is worse Crap than the friends. Acolyte. This is worse than season eight of Game of Thrones. And it's what like, I, I don't know. How, yeah. I, there were people saying that. I don't understand how you can come to that conclusion. Well, yeah, because the actually, only thing worse than the Acolyte is Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> I actually mm -hmm. do think that like, the basic part of what he's saying with that opening, hey, it seemed like at the end of season one, we were about to head to total war. And now at the end of season two, it seems like we're at the end of total war. I do think you can you can like make some criticism about that specifically the last scene of season one when they decide to show Renera it looks like she's about to go kind of full mad queen or whatever I, I do feel like now in retrospect that doesn't kind of add up to then what we see for the next I don't know six seven eight episodes of season two but to pretend like nothing happened when we have this entire Damon arc when you see all of these different machinations that are going on at King's Landing with Otto and Aegon and Aemond and Laris and the, all these characters. It's just mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand how these people actually watch the same thing we did. And like on the 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 conflict front of all of this, you know, 
they don't just immediately go into total war and just like smash a bunch of armies together like the two sides are trying to probe each other's weaknesses they're trying in some cases they're trying to seek a diplomatic solution the other houses throughout the westeros are trying to decide which side they should come down on and there's like little skirmishes breaking out here there and everywhere there's stuff happening constantly it's just not the big payoff you know set piece battles that you might be looking for but that stuff is just superficial. If you've got a bunch of characters who all have their own arcs, who have their own objectives and are pursuing them and are actually doing things towards those ends, that's what you need in a story like this. And that's what you, that's what you get. That's what, it, that's what it was. That's what Game of Thrones used to be. And then it fell into that trap once it passed the source material and just started making spectacle. And that's when it absolutely fell apart. But uh, as you know, Ryan, you know this, everybody knows the ratings went up. So that's what they fell into, but they forgot what got them there and what it was before. And it's dialogue, it's intrigue, it's it's betrayal. It it's a lot of time the court. The best, some of the best scenes in the season were uh, sitting at the you know at the council and uh, listening to them argue over and over again, watching people lose power, gain power. That's what it is. And the battle is supposed to be one episode per season, not two or three. And you know, even even if looking back at the Battle of the Bastards, what a ridiculous battle that was! It was freaking yeah. with the with like. Well, let's not even start about the the second Battle of Winterfell against the yeah yeah freaking no uh, like yeah. My, there, there's my... things there are things to criticize for this season. There are there there are certain uh um uh, oh my god, Missary like needs to die like a, a slow death because I or a quick one just to get rid of her. Up. Um, He's and that last up. scene. Uh, but I mean, it, like. This isn't a good excuse, but the strike did affect it. They were uh, told by a HBO fucked them. So HBO told them to take off the last two episodes to save uh, money, and they couldn't rewrite anything to lead up to an ending because of the strike. But so they should have probably ended it with episode seven because that that ending at in uh, episode eight was the, the very ending. That last scene was ridiculous. It was ridiculous, oh, yeah. unnecessary. And, and they felt like they needed to get there because uh, – uh, I don't think I'm breaking any news here. Renair is not a good guy. And and yeah. she's, yeah, she's not a good guy. No, there's no good guys in this. And all these people rooting for team. God, I hope there's a bunch of idiots out there naming their daughters after Renair right now. <laughs> I, <really don't. laughs> I guarantee it. I, I, think, I think that legitimately the majority of people who by the end were watching Game of Thrones season eight, I actually think the majority of the Game of Thrones viewing audience probably binged the first couple seasons over a weekend yeah. to then become a uh, part of something big, yeah. something big part of game of thrones so i i actually do think there's like a massive disconnect from a lot of these people who didn't watch these seasons as they released and instead just binged it to get up to season four or season five or whatever to be part of this big thing that was going on and they have no true understanding of how the first couple seasons of game of thrones actually felt I think I I think you're probably correct. I think it attracted a lot of normies towards the end who were entranced by the spectacle of it, and then once that was over, they just moved on and they didn't care. No, and uh, I mean if you've read the books, there's a lot more of this. There's a lot more of setting things up. There's entire chapters of Tyrion just being drunk, uh, but they're good because the dialogue's good. It's setting things up. It's world building. You're getting to know Tyrion a little more. Tyrion, the villain, by the way, mm. who's a villain. Uh, yeah. So it's it's spectacle versus storytelling. Uh, but at the end with that tease, though, I I can understand why people were pissed. I can completely understand why people because they just put a big trailer at the end. Oh yeah. And uh, it, you know, so it, they like they were. Wasn't... Caught in a rock in a hard place, and now that you have to wait two fucking years, that's the thing, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna hurt their momentum because they. It yeah. feels like the show doesn't have a huge amount of like popular momentum to it. Like, don't get me wrong, it's definitely got an, an audience that that really appreciates it, but it feels like it's so much smaller than what Game of Thrones had. It, and it is even it's, even it's lucky. It, yeah, yeah. It's even in the early seasons, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's lucky that it's really good. Like, I honestly expected yeah. nothing from it from the when they first announced it. So it's been way better than I ever thought it would be, but it just definitely doesn't seem to have that cultural impact that Game of Thrones had. No, I don't think it ever oh, will no either. Way. 
that's uh, really hard to recover. They had something huge and they fumbled it. I don't know if I don't know if any show is going to have that anymore because there's so many shows and the way they're watched now. I just don't think we'll get that. If we do, it'll be mm. rare, really rare. Yeah, well, like appointment viewing, right? When everyone is sitting down at the same time, kind of everywhere watching the same thing, as opposed to ah, uh, you know, I think I'll go to bed early. Maybe I'll catch in the morning on the streaming service. Things are just so different now, and I don't yeah. know if we're ever going to really get back to that. We kind of got that with the Acolyte in the, in the wrong <laughs> way. <though. laughs> it did oh, bring yeah, us together in some ways. Us together, yeah. <laughs> Family would gather by the TV. <laughs> Have a Dad few laughs. Would get home from work from the mines, and he'd sit down in his chair. Streaming mines rags the streaming mines. The chocolate mines. <laughs> 20 minutes of awesome, and that's kind of it. The rest of the season is comprised of various attempts to assassinate the others. Right? Oh, isn't that good? Oh, and, oh okay. He's an overview. So Rainier doesn't want to do anything for the entire season. So let me just go through real fast what happens to each of these characters during this season and why it makes no sense. Oh. Damon takes his dragon, runs away from Rhaenyra because he thinks she's a pansy, runs over to Harrenhal, <laughs> sits there for an entire season, and gets high and has weird dreams and then bends the knee to <laughs> Rhaenyra. That's his entire oh, season. Oh, come on, dude. Oh, oh, like, oh, lame, 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 lame. Your perspective dude. is boring. Yeah, read a book. Oh, yeah, where's the lie? Reliable, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, through that one sentence that he's trying to sum it up in, Damon has his entire worldview flipped on its head and he's yep. forced to confront everything that he's been running away from his entire life. I, I, and we get to see it. It does, you know, take several episodes to play out. We, we get kind of breadcrumbed through the thing. But, you know, if Damon had just gone there to Heron Hall and immediately got that vision, he would have rejected it. He wouldn't have given two shits about that vision he saw at the end because he wouldn't have been receptive to that. That's not how his mind works. Uh, but it's everything that he went through uh, combined with the real life struggles that he was going to uh, through with the Riverlands folk and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought Damon's arc was awesome. Oh yeah, he's such an interesting around. character, and like there, there's so many conflicting motivations for Damon. You know, he's a guy who s was spurned from leadership initially. Like, you know, his brother got the the throne when he perhaps felt more entitled to it. Renera then takes it. He's a man who's fiercely loyal to her, but also has his own personal ambitions. He's trying to prove himself. Like, he's trying to prove himself as a commander, as a, a king potentially. Um, but also struggling with his failures and his flaws as a person. Uh, and there's a, there's just a lot going on with him. And to boil his arc down to something as simple as that, like, oh, he goes to a place and gets high and then feels weird and then b bends the knee to Rhaenyra, it's, it's just such a superficial recounting of events rather than the subtext behind it. I mean, his, um, his experiences, I doubt, would be described... Like, you know, like Luke in uh, Empire? That probably wouldn't be described the same way, would it? When he goes into the into the cave, I think most people would have a lot to say about what that scene means because they'd give a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. deference to something like Empire, but they're not doing it for the Harren Hall sequences for some reason. Hmm. Doesn't seem fair to me. Spends because the there was no dragons blowing up things. Oh, yeah. oh I was <laughs> gonna say Luke. Luke didn't fuck his mom in that tree, so maybe. <laughs> 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 Being angsty about whether to go to war with the High Towers, who literally have killed her child, which makes no sense. Jaceris Valerian, Why? who is her kid. Wait, that was oh, a summary okay. for Rhaenyra? That was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was it? It makes no sense she didn't go to Rhaenyra. war with That's the people. That's his entire who season. Kid. Rhaenyra spends the entire time being angsty about whether to go to war with the High Towers, who literally have killed her child, which makes no sense. Jaceris. Well, one of them did. Yeah, and but, she really wants yeah. Aemon dead. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and what undercuts it, obviously, is that uh, Damon takes action in it. Which, by the way, I think would be more believable had J Jaehaerys been mentioned in the Alicent Rhaenyra scene at the end of the season. Oh, yeah. Should have. It was missing yeah. for some reason. Yeah. But that definitely undercut her vengeance arc, having one of the baby sons killed. It was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Valerian. And plus, yeah, like, this is, this is a story of people trying to show restraint despite their declining influence and control over the people under them. You know, the, these people like Renera are trying to find a better solution, uh, even though as flawed people as they are, like, they do not have full control over the all of the lords and the armies and all the individuals underneath them, and they're gradually, yeah, all of this stuff gradually undermines their ability to get a peaceful resolution here.
And they're that's good. That's good storytelling. <laughs> like they don't just immediately want to go to war because yeah. going to yeah. war is really bad. And it's really bad. Die. And what's factored in is the small folk. They they pepper that in throughout the entire first two seasons. Like we can't just go to war because we'll lose the small folk. If we lose the small folk, we're all dead. Yep, we're all yeah. dead. And and like going to war, total war with dragons. If we use ours, the our opponents will use theirs, and then the entire kingdom burns to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, the, and yeah. the people, yeah. the people <laughs> who have a small sense of that, like Kristen Cole, you can see he's still in, he's still got like PTSD from seeing that battle yeah. and everything that happened, right? Like that, it is it is not fun when dragons fight, at least not. Yeah, because most people, yeah, because most people haven't seen it happen in this world. There hasn't been any out out war for a long time. There's a long peace with Jaharis and uh, Ceres. Is hurricane. so yeah. Pretty is horrifying. A complete waste of space. He sits there being wow. incredibly whiny. Whoa. Rainies. Oh, we're done with that. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I mean, look at what we did with Rhaenyra, and she was like a, a super important. We didn't mention the dragon seeds, or like the plan to you know sway the power balance and how that's going to screw up. You know what I mean? Just like, all right. Well, because we only got like. Do you think it'll speak positively to any of the characters? Um. No, Simon Strong. <laughs> Maybe that. That'll be oh, he'd, he'd better. He'd, he'd better. better. Who might have been the only decent leader in all of this, decides to ride a dragon to get killed. For, again, no reason you can discern. Aegon. <laughs> I mean... I, well, I love how, like, because I actually think there's, like, plenty of room for criticism for Rainey's like, kind of in general. Yeah, yeah I didn't, sure. I didn't I love her as a character. The fact that she is viewed by Ben as the like the best most positive character so far is, is kind of funny <laughs> it's when he says she she and decides to ride a dragon and get killed for brand. no reason it's like she was specifically ordered to go do it <laughs> like where do you want well and if you kill vega you win the war for the um the black and, and also point. no one knew no one knew it was a trap right they like they, they were going there to ambush them when they were trying to take take rook's rest chris and cole laid this trap for them um and Renera wanted to show everybody that hey i'm not just sitting here avoiding this stuff let's go protect rook's rest and uh and Kristen cole laid up a really fine trap that he didn't know that yep. aegon was going to also run into and she had it weighing on him which uh, we felt was decent repairing but not full that um it had been held over that she fucked up in episode nine right and this is almost yeah, here, yeah. like trying to correct that mistake does nothing the entire season except be Wait. a drunken sot. Eamon, who's the only person... Wow. 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 Aegon does nothing in the whole season. Aegon's like... He's, oh, he's that, top tier, man. Aegon's one shit. of the most dynamic characters in the season. Yep. He... I think that, to me, Aegon was one of the most compelling characters of this season, based on what we saw yep. in season one, where... He was just, listen, he never had any plans of being king. He just thought he was going to be able to drink and fuck a bunch of whores and watch children fight in pits and do whatever he wanted, right? Um, never, never wanted they, they that They literally have to power. drag him to the, to the coronation. Like. Mm. Yeah, never wanted that type of power. Was kind of, he did not have a father as much as, you know, Renera's father paid attention to her. Uh, didn't pay as much attention to Aegon. Uh, but as soon as he gets in front of the small folk in the dragon pit and he hears them cheering, he's like, I actually really like this. I want the love and appreciation from all of these people. And you can see the first couple episodes is him trying to get that from the small folk, even promising them things that he absolutely should yeah. not. That's, that's pissing Otto off because that's how badly he wants to be loved by everyone. But he has no training in the politics of this world because he was never expected to take over. Um, yeah. I, 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 and then to then lose everything in the first time you take your dragon into war by being betrayed by the brother who you let on the council. You defended him to the council, to your mother who didn't want him in the room. Um, and then he's the one that kind of betrays you. And you're sitting there, you're burnt, you're hobbled, uh, your dick exploded like a sausage, according to him. Uh, and he now doesn't have an heir. His entire world has come crashing down. Almost great is the I mean, you, final... You really saw his frustration. You the final big frustration he had to make is, this... cuts into the, the, the just the point he's making about the um, you know the realm's delight that 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 last push he needs to actually save himself in the kingdom before despairing to the point of possibly committing suicide. It's still all based on the potential adoration. Lost his strength of himself. Lost the p ability to produce an heir. Lost his dragon. But he can still get that love that he's looking for from the from the realm. Mm -hmm. By repairing it. 
What are you going to say, Drinker? There's nothing. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, to build on the point that uh, Ryan was making there, you saw his frustration during the small council meetings where other people were very clearly making plans behind his back, and essentially he was just a figurehead. He wasn't even in control of the war. Um, he didn't even have proper awareness of what was going on. And it's like, he's a guy who clearly wants to be involved. He wants to be seen to be the leader, and he's just being cut out and treated like a child. So part of his decision to get on the dragon was just yeah. motivated by that that frustration yeah. and that desire to prove himself. And then he got um, pushed over yeah. by his own mom. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. His own mom shamed him into doing it. <laughs> the entire season, except be a drunken sot. Eamon, who's the only person with a plan, doesn't enact any of those plans this year at all. What? What? But he does. Uh, he but, did. Uh, how do you think well, he's, he's, he's accused of treason for doing so? He, what? He, he is now <laughs> the he is now essentially sitting in the Iron Throne. Uh, yes. He is the regent right now. He is taken over. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> at all, Helena suddenly is like warging or something, and there was no hint that she was going to do any of that. Oh no! Was She's a dreamer. All? There's been. There was no, no hint. hint. No hints but throughout the entirety oh, of season on. one in the beginning of this one when she's we knew uh, there was something going blood on. and cheese. And, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is, again, I think this is one of the things. This is why I like weekly releases. She's, and in a lot warging of is warging things. into an animal, by the way, just mm -hmm. to yeah, get yeah. well actually on you. It, like, I, th I think that this is one of those things that happens and why I like weekly release uh, kind of. I prefer it to binge because it gives you more time to sit there and actually think about what happened as opposed to th this comes off as one, somebody who really doesn't understand it at all, but also to somebody who watched the entire season in a day. Th that That's how this comes off this review. from Yeah. Them. I think you're right. Yeah. She also seems bizarrely undisturbed by watching one of her children beheaded. Like she's, she's disturbed by that very briefly, but it seems like for a person who is, you know, the victim of incest of her brother as promoted by her parents, and then watches one of her kids beheaded. I feel like she should be a little more screwed up than she is. Raina, well, I mean, it's kind of the point of the character. She, like, she doesn't really She's process pretty... things the same way we do. Well, well, if you had paid attention, Ben, all these signs that you are missing that Helena might have had, like these these strange special gifts. Uh -huh. She was literally sewing her child's funeral shroud in the first episode before he died because she had already seen it. She had dreamt it. She knew that this was going in to season happen. One. In season yes. one, she mentions it, yes. Well, maybe well, they didn't set it up at all. Say, yeah, ben. Hey, he's getting to Reyna. There's some criticism he I can just get. one of her kids beheaded. Okay, I like yeah, I'll probably agree with is. it. Reyna just stumbles around the landscape until she finds a dragon, correct? That's her entire storyline? Yeah, that, that I, was I have great. No I love it. With this. He gave her okay, the I same mean, level it's... of summary as everyone else. At least this one, he's right. <laughs> this one, he actually yeah, gets yeah. on it. It's like, yes. For some reason, oh, she had a oh yeah, wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, go on, go on. I, I, I have a point to make about Reyna after this. There's like a lady who she goes to live with, and apparently they don't get along, and then she just gets thrown out and then finds a dragon. She's not thrown out. They go to Pentos. Like, <laughs> this, this is yeah, the yeah, plan. Yeah. Wow. So the best part about Reyna is uh, she took yeah, another character's uh, she took she took another character's arc because this show had met its quota of black people. Uh, there is a character named Nettles. Who's she's taking her character, which is the only character that George wrote black in the story who has a black person, uh, but but the Valerians weren't. So since they changed them, they decided to take over the one character that George decided to write as a black person. People have you know I Gary, find people hilarious. still have hope that Nettles exist. Climbs onto that dragon in the first scene <laughs> of season three could. and eats Raina. Okay, so you know, <laughs> hold out hope. That would be actually, great. You know, oh, that would be cool if it turns out the dragon wasn't wild all along. I would apologize publicly if that happens on say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that was awesome. A, <laughs> I think there's a 5% chance, a 95% chance Raina hops on that dragon and is, you know, has her yeah. dragon or whatever. Which I, so you I, mean I, I there's still like hope? I, yeah, I would not like that. I do think there's a 5% chance that because this obsession, Ryan Condal actually talked about it a little bit that like Raina's entire thing has just been about this dragon. Like that's her, her obsession. That that's where she places her value. She doesn't think she has any worth in her family because she doesn't have a dragon and all these things. If she were to get there and, you know, fail to, uh, and not die, but it fail and, and then accept no, that, Hey, I can do other things and then actually go back and kind of do what she's supposed to do with that family. 
I actually that that would be great. I think that would be great storytelling for this person that was like completely and totally obsessed with this. You know, maybe not abandon the children that you're supposed to be protecting. Yeah. She's but in terms serious of serious repercussions art. when she gets back for doing yeah, all that. Yeah, and 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 okay. uh, the people who were with her who didn't go on. A, there's no search party yeah. or anything. I mean, we have a royal no Targaryen a running ball. around, <laughs> running around in the era, nah. eerie. And by the way, and coincidental timing, I'm sure. George R. R. Martin put a big blog post about dragons uh, and about like, basically I'll, I'll sum it up how, how his dragons behave and where they are. They're, they're not uh, creatures that just fly around everywhere. They, they, they like, they mainly stay on Dragonstone. Of course, they're in the dragon pit in King's Landing too, but they're not all over the world. They like to be near volcanoes. And I think they're in the mm. dragon pit just because they're with their riders, but they don't like, they would prefer to be on Dragonstone. They're not in the, they're not in the eerie hanging out that, uh, you know, that, that that's really unusual. So he, and whatever, but he puts this whole thing on like how my dragons behave. And when you don't uh, honor the source material, your story falls apart. And it just coincidentally came out like a couple of weeks. Yeah. That post a couple of weeks, maybe uh, before this episode. Mm -hmm. Curious. Weird. I'm pretty sure that was all eight episodes for her. And then, there was Bela, who just kind of exists. Well done, writers. Like, seriously, solid writing right there. Nothing happened. Nothing. And then when you get to the high towers, Allison sits around being upset that her kids are brats and annoying. Basically, she's willing to let them die. Man, Gwen what a travesty. <laughs> what can you even mm -hmm. say at this point? It's like, damn. What a tragedy. It, you know. Uh, <sighs> Bela got more of a discussion than Allison. <laughs> I know. Allison, who came to terms, which was starting out to be a pretty good character, came to terms with the fact that she was a shit mother, uh, was uh, pretty good. Oh, yeah. Allison is fantastic up until her last two scenes. Yeah. Up until the last couple of yeah. scenes, she uh, is actually quite, quite high. Really, uh, really liking what they were doing with her. Someone said you can't say uh, anything because it's objectively true. It just gets tiring to re recall all of the scenes in the season. Everything that happens with Allison, right? Like, Every last piece of her power being stripped away gradually and her realizing just how responsible she is for the monsters that are her sons and still desperately trying to reconnect but simultaneously realizing every last piece of her that is within them makes them worse. Having that direct comparison yeah. with Daron, everything that she feels in relation to her family and her position of like trying to establish and maintain power, torn away and then realizing none of it even matters. And arguably a lot of it was destroyed by her own doing of misunderstanding or misappropriating like where she would focus, what she would do, where things should be moved, what things should be done. And, you know, launching the season with her basically deciding uh, Eamon is done to her. There's nothing salvageable about him after what he does mm -hmm. at the end of season one, right? Yeah. And then what she mm -hmm. sees happen with Aegon. Alicent's top fucking tier in this season... And then she gets ruined <laughs> right at the end. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right at the end. Ugh. <sighs> but I mean, it's weird to start, you know, with every character with bed just goes, they don't do anything. It's like, right. <laughs> so, unfill <laughs> scroll. This is what they did this season. This is Wayne Hightower, who, again, the actor who plays him, Freddie Fox, is really quite amusing. And he's in a bunch of different stuff now. He's becoming kind of a, a, a thing. Basically, his entire role is just to follow okay. around Kristen Cole and say snarky things sometimes. And Kristen Cole, his entire job is to shoot up at Allison and be really good at battle, but have no actual plan to be a nihilist. So, just wow. did, wait. Did you say have no well, plan and be a nihilist? He had have a, a plan he had actually, he had a plan that would have worked very well uh, yeah. up until you know uh, Agon came to fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah, up until yeah, the royal and... family had their fucking squabbles that destroyed all of his war plans. Yeah, and I feel like it also forgets the entire first couple episodes where you see uh, Kristen Cole feel responsible for the uh like for the assassination of jaharis which he rightfully should because he was fucking allison instead of being on watch like he should have yep. been um and then he he's completely overwhelmed uh he ends up trying to correct that by uh gaslighting another member of the king's guard into thinking that they were the ones that failed and send him on an assassination attempt where he's forced to go there not only to try to kill renera which he feels conflicted about but then also ends up having to fight his own twin brother and you know die which causes the other twin to kill themselves out of like all the shit that they've been through um and then ultimately after all these things clearly showing he's out of his depth and doesn't know what he's doing he gets promoted to hand of the king yeah, um mm -hmm. and then has to uh, deal with that responsibility on that note we have to say goodbye to mr critical drinker yeah
know it can be I'm sorry. difficult to jump in and out, but appreciate it all the same, sir. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, I'll catch yeah, you probably tomorrow. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. And well done on 300 episodes. Damn. Yay. Ooh, yay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we will catch you later. Thanks for 300 years. 300 years. 300 yeah, years. 300 years of this. 300 years right. of streaming. Oh, damn. 300 years of violence. Laters. Bye. Later. Bye. Bye. Wow, that was that was great. Ooh. Oh, all right. Here we go. Everyone hey, thank God he didn't talk about Simon. What? Thank God he didn't talk about Simon. Jeez. Oh. Drivers in House of the Dragon are Aemon and Damon. Damon was sidelined for the entire season. Ooh. Having weird visions of the future, the wall and Jon Snow and all this. And for some reason, that's supposed to change his motivation for a reason that I can't quite discern. And here's the thing. We already know how that ends. Oh. So I have to help prevent what? the end of the world. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. I need to play my part. And uh, it's not the one that I would like to do, but I still have to do it. Otherwise, shit's no. fucked. So and it still probably... reinforces. It still reinforces. Like, he's a Targaryen supremacist. So it still reinforces that they are kind of the most important thing and they need to stop this. It's just not him. Yeah. It's actually quite good, you could say, but, you know, uh, maybe I'm just wrong in German. Well. So it's not even I mean, suspenseful. It's not the first time. I actually don't happened. like the Damon storyline at all but, um, this season, not just because hey. he's wandering around <laughs> like he took too much ecstasy and weirdly hugging trees and such, but mainly because his what? entire driving motivation <laughs> in this season is he doesn't think that Rhaenyra can do the job. She's not harsh enough. She's not cruel enough. He can do the job. He was meant to be the king. And so he spends the entire season doing nothing Ugh. and then eventually bending the knee to Rhaenyra because he had a vision of like the White Walkers at the wall. Bro, did you not catch any of the other visions? When he sees Rhaenyra sewing Jaehaerys' head back on, what do you think that means? Yeah. yeah like mm. Damon, Damon actually spends the entire season in real world, not the visions he's having, but in the real world, realizing just how difficult it is to actually be a political leader. When you can't just chop everyone's head off, you can't just run away yeah. to the to the to the islands. You can't just use your dragon to you know blow off some steam. Actually, being a leader is extremely difficult and frustrating for him. Yeah, because the one time he does it in this in that season, uh, it comes back to fuck him over, and then he has to kill another guy to make it right, basically. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, well, it's probably how a pick for the best arc in the season. It's very fucking well done. Every last second is taken advantage of. It's just the it's so character focused that I think a lot of people don't necessarily see as much value in it. Um they they want more scenes that break it up, I think, less of him experiencing it through visions, more of it experiencing it through places in the world, perhaps, moving around the map sort of thing. Right. Hundreds of years from now? That's stupid. And meanwhile, Amond who should be the active participant, right? He's the only one who actually drives the action on the high tower side of the of the narrative. Does he he sidelined the entire season. He appears for five minutes Kristen the entire Aegon. season, which is weird because when we left season one, he was so the first one of the opening scenes we get him in season two is him planning shit with Cole, and then we find out that's all to do with the Rook's Rest yeah. shit, which is some of the most impactful shit in the season. And, yep. and then he is the uh, the figurehead of action for the side of the high towers. Remember the scene where he takes over in power, technically over from his mother, mm. over from Aegon. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this assessment. It's very strange. Yeah, but there were no dragons and killing in that. But there scene, were so. dragons. As <laughs> no, the driving force, he's dragons. the one who killed the Targaryen kid, which means that he's the one who's leading off the war. But then he goes completely missing. Meanwhile, <sighs> missing. He, didn't go mi he doesn't go missing. I'm very confused. Aegon spends the entire season lying sick in his bed and talking about how he doesn't have it that works anymore. And meanwhile, you have Otto Hightower. We skip. We skipped Aegon again. <laughs> the poor guy. Yeah. He just doesn't yeah. get any fucking. All right. At least the parallels yeah, with Otto. his father. Like I think I seem to recall Viserys being in bed and sick for a long time. Oh in yeah. Season one. Yeah. MVP performance who again was a driving force who is sidelined within the first five minutes of this season and he's sent off and now he's in prison or something get to the end and you realize that he's been in prison by someone but we don't well, i mean we all regret that he didn't get more time we need way more auto yeah. yeah we need more auto yeah. more but, auto but also this entire review is it feels like it's skipping the first four episodes basically yeah or at least three and a half 
because yep. to say, you know, Otto just in the first five minutes of the season. Otto was extremely impactful. I had one of the best scenes of the season yeah. that was in episode three. And it was after episode three where he gets sent off and kind of taken out of power. So uh, to, to say he was there for five minutes, he was there for three eighths of the season. I don't know exactly whom. So the driving forces in the season are just gone because Rhaenyra is unbelievably passive. She's kind of like middle of the series run Game of Thrones Daenerys. Or Daenerys you think is going to be like this driving force and then you just get an, end up sidelined doing nothing of relevance to the plot. That, that's Rhaenyra. She spends the entire time kind of wandering around. Dragon Seas, you could argue, are pretty relevant. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Being angsty about having to be at war and then having like a random lesbian kiss with her advisor that ends up... That was retarded. Nobody's denying that one. That, that was, was retarded. Yep. And it did feel really very dumb. random. Yeah. Cringe, you might even say. Undercutting her character mm -hmm. because the entire question of whether she's going to end up with Damon is one of the driving forces. And then they have her kind of like be a bisexual with this. Like it's just, it's randomly thrown in there for woke purposes, I can only imagine, because the lady who plays Rhaenyra is apparently a bisexual, non binary, a gender human, even though she's obviously a good looking woman. So basically, none of the season made any sense. Rhaenyra Alex in the books did fuck women, just <laughs> yes, for, for the well, record. But, yes. yeah, they did, but they did a terrible job of setting it. Uh, that scene is terrible, like just yeah, how awful. out of nowhere it comes and who it's with and all that stuff. I, I agree with that. But yeah, she does. Uh, she gets down with Lena, actually. Her Damon and Lena have some threesomes in the book. Mm -hmm. there you go. Nice. Alicent Hightower is portrayed by the end of the season as the true evil driving force in, in all of this. History will paint you a villain. Let them think what they must. Even though in the actual plot line, she's much more responsible than Rhaenyra. She's the only person who sees any attention to duty. She's forced into this whole situation. Except motherhood. By okay, wait a minute. Yeah, like, I thought we just made a whole point about how <laughs> Rhaenyra's, you know, not moving fast with the war shit, but the Alicent's the more responsible one. Why? Because she does, does her duty, which has been shown to be, obviously, like, it's fallen apart at this point. Yeah, it was really responsible fucking a Kingsguard while your grandson getting killed. Hmm. Her dad. She's a victim in all of this, and suddenly she is the person who's the evil person. While well, Rhaenyra, who... She, you know, <laughs> it's just... She's, she's, she's had plenty of years to take plenty of actions. I think she's a big girl, and even she recognizes she's made some mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Has spent the entire series basically being wildly irresponsible. Is suddenly the responsible force, which I, I didn't point see out. at all. You get to that last. I just scene. want to point out, hot grandma, by the way. Yeah, that's true. So, sure. Where Allison Ill. meets with Rhaenyra and basically says she's willing to sacrifice even her own kids so she can be free of this whole burden. And Rhaenyra is really terrible to her. I mean, really, really unkind and nasty to her. Even though we should remember that it was Rhaenyra's side that actually killed her grandbaby, like, as a baby. This is a good point. It's a good one. Bringing up Jaehaerys mm -hmm. during that conversation is it's a huge problem that they the riots obviously avoided because it would have fucked everything up. The end of season well, one. The, di the where... difference between the conversation they had in front of the candles and the conversation they had at the end, and I, I think, I hope that this is where the writers are going with this, is, yes. you know, Rhaenyra was very willing to do anything possible to come to this ceasefire, to have Alicent do anything as possible for her to do anything, until she feels like, oh, well, I'm actually destined to do this. The gods are in my favor. Yep. Look at what's happening with these dragon seeds. And then after that, now that she has that, the idea that she, it truly is just, it's going to be her no matter what, that this is going to end in, my, like, this is what I'm supposed to do, then she's very reluctant to do any of these things, and she's holding it over Allison's head, which I, it, I think is supposed to show a, uh, like, where Renair is headed in this arc. Mm. Yes. Rhaenyra's kid ends up being killed by, by Aemon, who's riding the giant dragon, and it's kind of accidental, sort of. The thing that you can say, at least for that, is that Rhaenyra had made her son into a military figure, right? He's a pawn on the chessboard. He's actually being sent to a place to recruit people, and Aemon is there also. So they're actually at war at that point. Rhaenyra's side, under Daemon, actually deploys like a murderer to go behead a baby. I don't know. I'm not sure that, that Rhaenyra has the, the upper hand. I agree with him completely on this, and I wish it fucking it came up in that final conversation, but it doesn't. Ridiculous. We'll get to more of that horrible show in just one second. First, let there be no- okay, calm down. <laughs> Fucking horrible show. Even from his assessment, it just seems to be a boring show. No, all the characters are bad and nothing happens. Mm. But even then, horrible. Waste, wasting Ben's like... time. Listen, time is money. 
I, actually, right. to be fair, that is a, an argument a lot of people make. If you if you bore me, that's like worse than being shit. But for me, I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll take a boring season over a season eight of Game of Thrones, right? Where they just kill everybody, more assassinate them. I mean, you know what I mean? Ugh. Yeah, season oh, eight Daphne? definitely wasn't boring, was it? No, I wouldn't describe it as boring. Tech and the far left have joined forces to purge America of conservative views. Everyone right of center is now getting evicted from the legacy media. So why precisely are we choosing to give big tech companies all of our personal data? The battle lines have already been drawn. Big tech has made it clear where they stand. Yeah, now is the time cool. for you to take a stand. Protect your personal data from big tech with the VPN I trust for my oh, VPN. protection. Your Express dragons. VPN. Their dragons. You see, every device, whether you're on your phone, laptop, or TV, has a unique string of numbers called an IP address. I mean, hey. When you search for things online, watch videos, or even click a link, Mostly recommend VPNs in general. They're pretty good. All your activity and then type yeah, yeah, yeah they're pretty good. Cool. Cool. Express VPN, however. My connection gets I'd, rooted through their secure encrypted servers, so these companies can't see my IP address. I'd read this a lot different. The eye. The eye. Network data is encrypted. The best I mean, most most VPN ads the same. <laughs> this yeah. is, you know. Let the eye of Sauron look at your connection and determine if it's okay <laughs> instead. <laughs> Just download that app on your phone. Blah, 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 blah. Now you are magically protected. Scan the QR code on the screen. It is magic. Visit the link in the description or visit expressvpn.com slash benyt. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S at vpn.com slash benyt. Bennett. Three extra months for free. Expressvpn.com slash benyt right now to learn more. The main problem. The main problems. Okay. The, the biggest problem with the series, problems. of course, is that none of these characters are particularly likable. They've turned Allison yeah. from somebody sympathetic into somebody who's... It's interesting because I heard that criticism for season one. Hmm. Yeah, I, yeah I but now they're really they're... unlikable. Well, Viserys yeah, died, and then it was like, well, now there's definitely nobody. <laughs> it's like, all right. It's because to me, all of season one is Allison. Allison thinking that she is she is the one that is doing her duty. She's one of the only people in the world that's actually doing like the right thing, right? Where Rhaenyra's off fucking everybody, causing a bunch of problems when it comes to secession, all these things. Season two is her realizing that even though I was just trying to do my duty what I ended up setting into motion is kind of disastrous. And I, I paid way more attention to making sure that we had power as opposed to raising my children the right, right yeah. way and caring about them and bringing them up. So uh, to me, season two does a lot with Allison kind of being introspective and realizing all the failures that she's had. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. They were really and setting her up for something else. <laughs> something other than what we thought they were. Something but scheming for no reason because she's scheming on behalf of terrible family members. Aegon is a loser. Aemon wants to have power. Man, you, what is, what? Oh, what is, okay. Like, hates oh, Aegon. he's, Aegon's a loser. This, like, yep. okay. No, no arc at all. Nothing. Just a loser. But you have no idea precisely why. He's just sort of the big baddie. In Game of Thrones, every- You don't know why, Aemon? What? Really? See, this is uh, the thing I worry about with writers. Is a lot of our complaints precisely why? He's just sort of- Got his work. eye gouged out. Well, it's just like- it was too subtle, apparently, because, like, men's got nothing. Amen <laughs> wants to have power, but you have no idea precisely why. He's just sort of the big baddie. Like, like that's amazing to me. I'm pretty sure he's explicit in season one as to exactly what his motivations are. It was one of our kind of complaints. Is like, oh, he just told her it's because they bullied me. He's like, oh, well, we could have been a bit more... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that scene for season two. This is what I mean. It's covered in season one and two. I don't understand where he's going wrong here. You, you, you... You don't yeah, understand. He cares about his this, perception yeah. and his insecurities and stuff like that. It's like the, he believes it's like he's the, the right man for the this. job. He did everything, follows all the symbols, did all the work. Aegon has always been a drunken fool who doesn't care. The second son yeah, who doesn't get like to achieve to what he deserves. His value. Yeah, and then it, like, undermined did... and not taken seriously, earns his way to get the greatest dragon alive. Still not taken that seriously, <laughs> so he's subverted and plotted to push his way all the way up to the throne. Like, how is. It... I would have thought Ben would love that, like, as a storyline, you know? Yeah, him and Damon are, are supposed to be, like, very, you know, reminiscent of each other, right? You even see yes. in one of those things that Damon ends up seeing, oh, look at what Eamon, like, look what Eamon has turned into. Because that they're both second sons. They both think that they'd be better suited to the job than their brothers were who ended up getting the throne. They both feel like the need to prove themselves in this way or that way. The idea that you don't understand what Eamon's motivations are are... Did you watch the show? It doesn't make sense. Because, uh, so in Chad's mentions, like, there was another scene where Allison makes it clear what his motivations are, too. This is like, fuck. Yes. Can't be missing it this many it's, times, it, surely. It's actually, to state the obvious, it's not very subtle at no. all. No. <laughs> it's as subtle as an Maybe iPad. He's looking at his phone. 
It's yeah. on the nose, which means it's bad dialogue. In Game of Thrones, every season, there'd be new characters that were fascinating. And you feel bad when they die. If any character in House of the Dragon died, would you feel bad? I guess yes. you're supposed to feel bad, kind of, when the queen who never was gets killed aboard the dragon. Yeah, kind of was. But yeah. do you really yeah. feel anything? Because yeah. nobody is doing anything that makes sense. So here's- Oh, okay. Whoa, that was a okay, jump. <laughs> we, we went from- You don't because no one Because I- I am, But she did, made sense. I understand the argument that you don't think any of these people are good people, therefore you don't care if they die, but saying none of them make any sense, like, okay, that's not true at all. Here's my big critique with series that I have problems with. Why does everyone act like idiots? So in they season don't. one, two, three, four of Game of Thrones, everybody has a clear motivation and they are making moves that may be wrongheaded, but are at least intelligent. They're not just doing stupid things. Here, for the sake of the convenience of the writers, people just do dumb crap all the time. Name one. Why, for example, would Rhaenyra- Okay, that's fair, but- I... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah. fair, we, we, yeah. were, we were aggressive with this one too. Like, what's frustrating, yes. I guess, is that um, you can point to this I would even point to the twin plan. I thought that was pretty retarded, but at least that one got acknowledged yeah. in universe as retarded. This one got partially acknowledged in universe as retarded, but then the Allison decision at the end, that's that's pretty retarded. And then everything to do with Masaria. I, does that cover everything? It, there are truly like a handful, right? There are a handful of legitimate yeah. things where you can look at for this season and say, yeah, that that's really dumb. That's kind of a miss. I don't know why, why they would do that. But that... It's, to, to me, that doesn't well compartmentalize to those things. Yeah, I, to me, that doesn't overshadow all of these other things that have happened throughout this season that were not dumb, that actually were really, really well done, in my opinion. Well, like Otto's plan to make use of Jaehaerys' death, would we not compliment that as, like, wrong-headed, or rather, you know, well-motivated, but still, like, horrifying, but also clever? It's so fucked up, but it's so conniving and smart yeah. to take advantage of this terrible thing. Yep. Uh, personally, fly over to King's Landing to talk to Allison. She didn't fly. I don't think she, he, fly. she flew. No. She didn't fly. Not, but, yeah. Under the <laughs> assumption that she's not going to die. Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra. Oh, no, never mind. It's just a nun that was riding on her back. Never mind. <laughs> it's just a nun on Cyrax. No worries. It's just a nun. Huh. I said dumb move. Why would Allison do the same thing in reverse, mm -hmm. for example? Yep. I mean, at least yeah, Rhaenyra can make a case so that she's doing it because she's going to betray her own family. But Rhaenyra isn't even doing that. She's just making basically a peace overture. She could do that. Oh, how would anyone do that? Now, my understanding is that the co-showrunner for season one left right before the production of season two. So maybe that is why all of the creative decisions this season totally suck. Bro, he was involved in season eight of Game of Thrones, okay? <laughs> Let's not, yeah. you know, just pretend like <laughs> some golden the, That is not mm, the reason. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it an excuse? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so can no. the show course correct? The show can only course correct if they give clear motivations to the characters again. Now, maybe they'll get some. I don't know. And if they have massive battles, I don't. If they did, would you even battles. notice? So, like, let's let's be clear. The writers, all they can learn from this is they the subtlety has to go out the window. They've got to stop letting people interpret what characters value through action. They've got to start saying it more and more and more, which sucks yeah, out loud. But like, uh, what you know, like, what else is the solution? He doesn't seem to understand anybody's motivation. So at this point, you've got to do it. Like, and then of course, yes, you need more well, yeah. battles. <clears throat> Some battles. And, and, he, maybe, and he doesn't. And he, and he doesn't understand that they are like within season two. There was a lot of very subtle setup for things that are going to come later, which I won't spoil. All that builds that, up you, to the end of season when, two. When they like, happen, if they do it right, you'll go, oh, yeah. The yeah. first two episodes of next season <clears throat> are going to be very telling on um, if they get a payoff for what they set up. Yep. Finally emerge in, in some sort of battle, or maybe they'll just talk it out for another season like this. The the only successes it's in this show, talks. the graphic yeah. depiction of the dragons is very cool. I'll say the, the stupid scenes where the dragons are just burning randos, and then a couple of the randos get selected by the dragons. I feel like there's a better selection process than that. Correct. Ye He's got another one. Yes. Yes. That Yes, yeah. yep. and that's going to, and that is going to come back on yes. Rhaenyra. Fine, uh, that's the thing. That's yeah. one of those things. Don't you? Terrible HR violations, right there. <laughs> I am. Yeah, there's no railings anywhere. By no yeah. season of House of the Dragon, it's gonna take a lot to get me back on board. But it feels like the opposite of season eight of Game of Thrones. Best season ever. <laughs> Wait. What do you mean the opposite? opposite? So that would be good. So if it was so the opposite, yeah. it'd be good. Okay. <laughs> By that point, the writers were like, we got to finish this thing up. So it's going to take five minutes to get from King's Landing to the wall. And they just sped everything up randomly and so the pacing was off. 
here, it's like, what if we do nothing for a full season? Meh. Okay, so apparently there is a new spinoff. It is titled Night of the Seven Kingdoms, which is set 100 years after House of the Dragon and 100 years before Game of Thrones. And honestly, like these kind of filling in the gaps series, I'm having a tough time caring a whole hell of a lot. These are apparently it's actually a very good going book to series. be about... I mean, yeah, they've got an established fandom behind them already, so it's probably going to be a decent start, but uh, then it'll be word of mouth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Dunk and Egg, who are from The Hedge Good Knight. casting. I've read The Hedge Knight. The Hedge Knight is good. Oh, well, there you like, go. Are they going to drag that out over, like, three seasons or something? No, you well, dumb they're... piece of shit! You <laughs> fucking retard! That that one book is going to be one season, and it's then the season. next book is going to be another season, and then the next book is going to be another season. You fuck up. Oh, There's three books. <laughs> Night of the Seven Kingdoms, you can go out and get it. They're all collected. He still does have to do uh, a couple of more, including the She-Wolves of Winterfell. I think that's the next uh -oh. one that'll Ooh, never happen. Oh, She-Wolves. All right. Yeah, the She-Wolves <laughs> of Winterfell. But uh, yeah, this is actually a really, uh, I'll say if like if you haven't read A Song of Ice and Fire, you can actually jump in with this. That like if you didn't want to just go into Game of Thrones, because this is like just it, it's a very it's a smaller story to kind of takes place in more confined locations with uh, a, a civil wars going on in the background, the Blackfire rebellions going on in the background. Uh, and they're they're very good. Like the log line for the series is a century before the events of Game of Thrones, two unlikely heroes wandered Westeros, a young, naive, but courageous knight, Sir Duncan the Tall and his diminutive squire Egg, who is Aegon, by the way. I, I understood that reference. Set in an age when the Targaryen line still holds the Iron Throne, and the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from living memory, great destinies, powerful foes, dangerous exploits, all await those improbable and incomparable friends. Okay, maybe. <laughs> well, all right, you know, it well, nearly got him. It's getting there. Hey, all right. It, it gets the official seal Ooh. of maybe from the, the official seal of maybe. Shapiro. Not bad. I guess. But I'm not sure how many times you can go back to the well on this one. You're not adding to the universe, really. You're just filling in gaps in the timeline. Part of the oh, problem. Not okay. adding to the universe. Well, you're, what? You're, not you're not adding uh, to the universe. You're so, just filling in the gaps. Didn't he say he liked the book? Yes. I don't understand. Then I don't know and why it, you wouldn't. Why wouldn't you want the show of it then? And it does add. Well, I mean, just think it only adds if the whole... it's the bookends. Mm. I don't know, man. That, that was that was odd. I'm here also. Is the Game of Thrones is a wide variety of families who are fighting for the throne. And here, you just have two, and they kind of know each other, and all the characters are stagnant, and nothing is happening, and they made one of them good and one of them bad. saying that. I mean, yeah. no, they're both bad, so... Stagnant. I don't <laughs> yeah, even know why I... that's being said that they're stagnant. That's obviously yeah. not the case. That hasn't even been proven. Overall verdict. Eh. I don't know, man. <laughs> Hopefully season three will we be better. We know you don't know. You'll have to let me know, because uh, I'm not okay. watching the first few episodes unless it improves. No, you're just going to wait good. until they're that's all out and then binge them. Do you... eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah, who's gonna gonna enjoy yeah. that <laughs> recap? <laughs> he'll watch them in one afternoon and he'll speed them up and he won't really pay attention. Yeah. And then he'll make a review that's terrible. House of Dragon season two better than I enjoyed the show House of Dragon season two. No, we're not going to play the rest of the fucking music. Uh, it's too loud. Wah, wah, get us in trouble. Well. Oh. I like the absence of arguments for the There's been a part. theme today of fun. political YouTubers covering mm. media and the horrors of that. <laughs> it's, uh, There's something yeah, that okay. happens. There's something that happens. It's something in the brain. Yeah, we, we shout high top it... at the beginning of this, but you know what? <laughs> at least he knows what he's watching. <laughs> like, he can recognize what it's from and stuff. That's neat. Yes. It, it, it's, it's frustrating cool. because, like, I don't think this is not just, uh, oh, only Ben Shapiro thinks this way about this. I actually think no. there's a lot of people. Yep that are watching this and interpreting it like nothing happened, which is kind of scary um, because it, it, it is one of the one of the few prominent shows out there that I do think is willing to take its time and have some subtlety and have these characters with these conflicting motivations that you get to see evolve over time and go through go through different things to change their experiences. And if you're the showrunners for this or whatever and you're seeing this, you're like, well, I guess we just have to kind of dumb it down. Um, and just put more fight scenes, even if they're meaningless. That yeah, would, that it, would it, probably be what the feedback is for them. It's a it's a great example of that. That video was going around on Twitter yesterday. That's what I'm thinking. It was Trey Parker. And oh Matt yeah, Stone yeah talking classic. about storytelling. It's it's a great example of hey. uh, not getting spoon fed storytelling, which is and then and then and then it's something happens and therefore this happens. Something happens, but this happens, and that's what they explain. That's the difference. That's if the difference. It's connect. consequence. Each things have consequence. 
Yeah, if you can't connect this decision with this result with $150 million, then you're doing something wrong. Well, Fill it up. Yep. Uh, Ryan, I believe you must jump out at this point. I do. Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't stay longer, guys. But uh, congratulations on 306 years. That's crazy. So, uh, 306 years. 306. Yes. Yeah. So many years. 300 dude. years to 307 years. Absolutely. I guess the only, I guess the only question now is, uh, are dragons animals? Oh, the fish. No. Oh, God. They're, <laughs> they're aeronautic creatures. <laughs> yeah, they're like birds. Sky well, they're not animals. creatures. Uh, That's true. They're flying like birds, dinosaurs. Do not, they count? Yeah. All righty. Well, uh, but hey, thanks for having me, guys. Have a good stream. Talk to you later. Thanks. Later. thanks. See you, dude. Later. Yep. We'll see you later. All right. Since uh, we've only got Gary for a little bit longer, we'll try and fit this into this, and then we can take our next break. So this Whoa. is the the next chapter, probably final, of us uh, just checking in a little bit on Red Letter Media. What happened with the oh boy. Star Wars okay. man stuff? Oh, I'll try to push Star this Wars out. Man. Star Wars yes. internet. So this this part ah. is just a reminder of chat, uh, to chat of what happened. Right? This is this is the original video. This is what happened. That database changed his birth year in the canon to reflect uh, the show. The show, and then then people are like, "Well, his birth year uh, was established in the books." not the phantom menace and the books are not technically canon and i was like oh i mean there's people starving around the world oh and god <laughs> <laughs> sight error god damn they were quick to get on that one eh look at that boys someone get in there we have to update it to leslie headland's shit lore that she just created and manipulated ah! but then you scroll down i didn't mm -hmm. just making sure everyone understands this mm -hmm. is the context hey, well, that's what happens not it was weird. The starving people care too, okay? Was... To assume that the starving people don't care about Star Wars? There are starving people in Africa who are watching <laughs> Star Wars theories videos, okay? <laughs> like, is this... I hear it about Kiani did, Wundi. You, did you cut this together? Or no, is this, this, this is the original. From... This is Red Letter Media's. Yeah. Which, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll just let the clip play and then I'll give you the update. Oh, no. the so, shit okay, okay. okay. This is a Biography prior chapter. ...was born prior to 132 BBY. Huh? I don't understand. How was he born before 132 BBY? But here they say 93 oh, people. So, all the cringe is coming back to me. That, that <laughs> happened, right? And Red Light Media got some criticism uh, from several people, including us on EFAP. We said that was that yes, was some we retarded shit. We, we love it when they make mm -hmm. fun of all kinds of stuff. Big fans of the channel. Yep. Me and Rags are big fans of the channel. I think Gary would say he love, is somewhat yeah, yeah. as well. Red Light um, Media. I think Metal is. I'm a fan. I yeah, subscribe. Yeah. I, do I, like the the I love them too. I've been watching yes. for years. They're it's, great. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah top tier entertainment, but that was cringe. And someone might be like, oh, you're upset because they made fun of your friend. Oh, you'd be like, it's just weird, man, to say, like, why do you care about details in a nerd thing when they're starving children in Africa? That's a really odd thing for them to yeah. say. It doesn't make any sense. And it's unusual and then of course there was the angle of just they didn't seem to understand why people were upset they thought it was literally as simple as like changing a birth uh detail in, in a wikipedia page it's like no that's, that's not what happened but you know whatever uh we gave our takes on it we thought it was bizarre and if you remember the video ended i think with them saying if you continue to, to watch something that you think negative of uh, then you'll, you're essentially encouraging it. You're, you're like supporting it. You shouldn't be doing that with things that you're not enjoying. You should be leaving them in the dust, because otherwise, statistically speaking, Disney will feel you want more of it. Which again was like, wait, what? Like, they cover so much shit that they think is awful. And I'm not talking about best yes. or worst even, necessarily, the though that would definitely count. Uh, uh, the main citation we gave was Picard. It was like, well, they covered the fuck out of Picard season one and two, even though, and most people remember if you're Discovery. watching it, the um, the 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 people's face, the the faces they had in their uh in their thumbnails had like lasers and blood flowing out of them, to signify just how much pain they were having. <laughs> it was entertaining as hell, and it was just like I don't understand, like why are they telling people to do this but they're not doing it at all? It's 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 odd, you know. So that that happened. We got clipped to hell and back. People very mad at us for criticizing RLM. That happens every time. Yeah, That's pointing okay. Pointing out their hypocrisy. They yeah, never yeah. reference the parts where we say we're big fans of them and would promote their channel and work. I think they're fantastic, top-notch. Just these these parts were really fucking odd. That's all. Uh, Star Wars Theory did his response. They didn't really get it. Didn't really understand why they were saying 
this, and maybe they they were misunderstood or something. And so eventually, they uh they did a response. They added this into their next video. Wikipedia changed his birth date, and I got everybody mad. And that, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. You're not gonna like it, Jay. Oh. Uh, the 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 man uh, on the internet, Star Wars man. Okay, <laughs> Tales of the Empire is nothing to the Tales of the Jedi that happened last year. Not even comparable. Grievous stole the show. Vader was clickbaited hard. He literally sat in a throne, a little dinky throne, mind you. I don't know what his name is. The man that was very upset about that. Yeah. That I made fun of. He really, oh, sorry, he said very upset about the birthday thing. That's true. But just for reference, Theory really took uh, their criticism, like, chilly as fuck. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised. He didn't, he didn't seem to mind at all. Mm. And okay. I said, uh, Jesus, don't get all bent out of shape of the, out of this. There's starving people in the world to worry about. Um, you mean that funny joke that Rich laughed at? It's a joke. I, uh, I, have to, I have to apologize to Star Wars man. Okay. Because that is his thing. That is Star Wars fans love their details and canon. And... I love my details and canon in Star Trek. Not so much anymore. I've kind of like given up on that. Uh, well, you have to but at some boy, point. Oh boy. Why? <laughs> Do you though? <laughs> I mean, there's giving up and there's like hoping that it gets better, but. If it, he means yeah, because they'll just destroy it eventually. It's like, well, I mean, Star Trek had a pretty fucking good run for a long time, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. The, that that mm -hmm. lore was pretty intact yeah. for a very long time. But the fact that. The fact that the most most recent iteration of it is garbage shouldn't mean that you no longer care about the law, because by that logic, none of us should give a shit about the Lord of the Rings anymore. Yep. Yeah, like uh, or anything. If if what Jay is well, getting yeah, at with that anything. comment is like you have to be able to detach because someone's going to come along and fuck it eventually, I'd be like, well, that's bleak. <laughs> I guess. But maybe, maybe he's right to I mean, some degree. Maybe, maybe yeah, separate the good from the bad. And reward Maybe. the good if it does come out. You know, you want to in encourage good behavior. Uh, hold on to the, the thing things is, that are good. We've had examples, though, of take, you know, Terminator 1, canon, everyone cares about it. T T2, same thing. T3 is like, mm -hmm. T4 is like, whoa, this feels a bit strange. T5, you're like, what the fuck? You're fucking with the whole timeline. And then T6 <laughs> is like, you know what? We're scrapping 3, 4, and 5. And it's like, oh, that's great. And then you watch it, and you're like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what have you done? And no. so I guess what I'm getting at with that is like, well, I guess you sh shouldn't care. And it's like, well, but maybe you should because they're willing to decanonize in certain circumstances. And it's all based on like reception, right? They wouldn't have said three, four, uh, five didn't happen if not for the fact that the fans were not very fucking happy with them being canon, really, you know? Yeah. It, it, shame works. It does. It, it, Look I at mean, the numbers work too and losing money, but shame works. I and we need so. to bring it back. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, I don't want to get too far ahead, but like, it's, a, it's about consistency of argument. If you are uh, worried about starving kids in Africa, why then, yeah, why do videos on bad move, independent movies of people with no budget just trying to do the best they can? Why, why care? If you keep talking about them, they'll still keep making B independent movies that are shitty that you can make your videos on. And consistency so, of argument. Uh, this was already pretty satisfying for me because I was just like, well, there's the apology, and you can tell it's because Mike is like, fuck, I'm no different. I know they want to go the angle <laughs> of it was just a joke. Um, I guess in the sense that yeah. it's, a it's a comment that evokes humor, as a robot might say. It's like, totally, I understand, but you were still making a point, and now you still feel that the point is not very fair. Which is like, yeah, that's all yeah. people were saying. Much anymore. Yep. I've kind of like given up on that. I, well, you have to but at some boy, point. Oh boy, did it annoy me when they didn't know... Why ten forward was called ten forward? <laughs> they thought it was that named so after the street that mm, Guinan oh had her. But like, just so you understand what Mike is saying, to someone who doesn't know Star Trek, this sounds like a detail that doesn't matter. Like why a bar was uh -huh. called a bar for a base. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, but equally, you'll have those kinds of details in Star Wars for people who aren't as giving a shit. And it's like, yeah, we're all kind of the same. This is why it would be like weird to, as a Star Wars or Star Trek detail fan, make fun of a Warhammer fan or Lord of the Rings fan for getting details wrong. It's just like, no, we're, we're all kind of in the same boat with this. It's just how familiar you are with each of the laws. Bar on in San Francisco. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not why it's called 10 forward. It's because it's on deck 10 in the forward section of the ship. Yes. 
pretty self And uh, that annoyed me. So in, 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 in uh, full, full acknowledgement, one could have said, why do you got to worry about that, Mike? They're starving children in Africa. <laughs> and believe me, we did. Mm. <laughs> we, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and so, you know, I, 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 I publicly apologize to Star Wars Man. I think his name is Star Wars Theory Man. So uh, Theory took that really well. He was just like, yeah, no, no problem. Chill. And everything is well in the world. That's all I have to say about that. It's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody has their little hypocrisies. Everyone's got their thing, and some people are super into Star Wars. And I think that's why they're all mad, because not that the show, I don't maybe it threw some of the canon and got things wrong, but I think it's the tone of, it's like if... What they, it's done with the Jedi as a whole. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like for me, the, 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 for them, it's the Jedi acting like, like Keystone Cops. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're stupid. They're, they cover things up. They lie. They're, they're, they're awful. They kill people. <laughs> they, they steal children. It's still true, by the way. The, the acolyte portrays Jedi yeah, as fucking incompetent retard psychos. It's, yeah. it's not good. It just portrays the lesbian witch coven as being worse. <laughs> yeah. Children, from lesbian <laughs> space witches. <laughs> to me, that that's the equivalent of when these Starfleet crew in Strange New Worlds act like idiotic teenagers. Hi. Oh. So, there you go. Yeah. That closes that's that. Terrible. But there's one thing that uh. did happen in between that I think is now in retrospect even funnier you know when i said oh, we got a few okay. of uh, we got clipped and put onto the old uh, the old twitters we also got put onto a yes, subreddit I love being clipped the red Twitter. letter media subreddit and people were oh, like reddit oh, loves us people were like efap disagree with red letter media or blah 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 and then, so i have got a couple of uh, comments here now the best Grr. thing about these comments is keep in mind what red letter media ended up saying so yep first of all it's the post Seems every frame of pause is not a fan of Red Letter Media's advice on not watching movies and shows you don't like. Which again, uh, it was just already. strange. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is the Red Letter Media subreddit, so that's like Red Letter Media, the channel. Is yes. I mean, that's that's what they do. Mm -hmm. The that's, channel that's built what they do completely on breaking down obsessively three movies they didn't like. They exactly, won't be on yeah. that too, but let's just you know the stance here three with, movies uh, they didn't like. Is there a reason we care about these random people's opinions? Like, all right, fair enough. Yeah, you don't have to. The oh, only I thing, thought you were asking no. me that about the Redditors. Oh, no, no, here we go. That's the, con okay. <laughs> the only thing I care about here is them ripping off every frame of painting, which is a great YouTube film dissection channel. You know, every frame of painting, the YouTube channel isn't the originator of the the, the understanding of the phrase "every frame of painting," right? Like the and the we what I know of. We have <laughs> equal claim to screwing with that phrase as they do. Like it does they don't get to own it. <laughs> oh, they invented it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll read it. God but for the record, every frame of painting is an excellent it. channel on YouTube. By the way, good stuff. I recommend it. The video on why Jackie Chan fight scenes are great still pops into my head every time I watch an American action movie even if it's not an action comedy and they're also correct that that video is excellent these whiny grifters essentially Ooh. stealing the name of a good channel is pathetic no we're not I wonder what everything they... they pause and then every frame of painting related they... to movies because we cover movies and then every frame of painting because we uh, every frame of pause because we pause the shit out of YouTube videos as well we pause the fuck out of everything it's all about details why why grifters though they call everyone they, grifters they don't they... agree with Oh, it works. I guess I wonder weird. what they think about us that makes them think, oh, there must be grifters because it because not liking RLM, that's not a grift. That's just uh, not a, that's just it isn't, isn't a grift. So. It's just insinuating the truth, Rags, that we mm. all have our 4K steelbook copy of Ahsoka and <laughs> secretly yes. run you off bet. and watch it over and over again. I love it. Uh, and then you got their yes. name also makes no sense. Every frame a pause? True. Pausing every frame? What does that mean? Why are we pausing every frame? The mind of the Redditor struggles <laughs> to comprehend the basic <laughs> language. We broke them. We broke them with the name of this podcast alone. I think that's impressive. I am out, but you know what? Maybe not. Maybe it's hard to say. What else we got in this wonderful thread? I wonder. All right. They have a show making fun of bad things. That's a comment from us about Red Letter Media, that they have a primary show that's all about making fun of bad things. The response, yeah, best yes, for the worst. 
but they get joy yeah. out of dissecting what makes something bad. Just like certain people on the internet watch bad things, you can make outrage bait video content and get money, which brings them joy. Oh, wait, that's literally us. Yeah, I, I was about to say, well, so you describe them with what could describe us as well. I don't understand. Yeah. Is that, yeah? yeah. We okay. enjoy dissecting bad things, explaining why they're bad, and it's like a job, and it brings us joy. Yeah. Okay. We try to make it entertaining. That's almost part of the job, is to, is no, to try No, and... no, you guys, you're not liking it oh, the wrong right, way. Well. You're not liking it the wrong way. And then, okay, just keep that in mind. Quote, uh, you guys are famous for the memes, which is true. Uh, Red Letter Media are very famous for several memes, several fantastic ones, like consume product and wait for next product or whatever, and uh, the, how does it feel to watch everything you love burn? You know those two? Classics. It says, well, now Mike is just suicidal. Like, no, he knows that. He's, he's talked about it. They're aware. They, they know they've gone viral for all kinds of memes. They're aware. It's fun. He often is an editor for their videos, and he throws in stuff yeah, like that. He is a, a very active participant in helping to create are, the memes. Depending on what circle you're talking about, they've spread the furthest, as do many things, through the form of a meme. But, like, if you want to go further in, yeah, they'll be famous to fans of Red Letter Media for their entertaining outlook on media and stuff. But, you know. I like, like that bottom one. Well, so this is the key. If something brings you joy, watch it. Mike is only suggesting that you shouldn't watch these things that make you angry and bring oh, no other benefit to your life. It's a straightforward, easily understood point, but it seems that's too much for some of the other critics out there. It's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is not a difficult concept. Plus, they follow their own philosophy. They've been saying this since Transformers 3. All right. To be fair... They did bring up Picard here, which RLM seemed pretty depressed by, and yet continued to watch. And then it says, did nobody actually watch the Picard videos? They ended up loving the show in the third season. Oh, <laughs> um, no. Wait a so minute. That, so, uh, what about the one with the season one and the, the season two? <laughs> two seasons of terrible content that they hated. And um, it seemed to make them miserable. We didn't even get to Acolyte Season 2, but had we gotten three seasons and enjoyed the third one, apparently we'd be just as justified. So, all right. Mm, okay. As Somehow. long as it ends with a good season that we like, then it's all okay. I was say, that doesn't make much Picard... fucking sense at all. <laughs> but like, Interesting. Picard Season 1 and 2 are the last Jedi and Obi-Wan of Star Trek. That does yeah, not surprise you're me. you're awful. Mike is saying, Freaking quote, awful. don't watch something if it doesn't bring you joy. But they're hearing, don't watch something if it's bad. And then the two responses here, right. no, I don't think so. They astutely pointed out that Mike watched Picard despite it not bringing him joy. It's a dumb take and there's no reason to defend Mike on this. And the other one says, incorrect, they're being massively out of touch hypocrites. Picard really did melt their brains. Now, I'm not going as far as, I'm just saying the thing they tell us, you know, general people, anybody who's criticizing the Acolyte to do is to stop because otherwise you're statistically adding to it. Um, especially if you're not even enjoying it. Like I said, it's all those boxes are ticked for them with Picard. I just don't understand the difference. Why Why are they doing that if they don't think it's a good idea? I'd be curious to know what mm. they were, like, their point of view is on that. It's interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm. Uh, I, I find their Picard coverage very entertaining, and I would hope that a lot of people, and I Brilliant. think it's fair to assume they did enjoy in chat, you enjoyed everyone's here coverage of the I Acolyte am... in their various forms. Yeah. It's, uh, it's what we hope to do, convert it into entertainment. I was sorry, bear back. Mike was saying the tried and tested don't watch so it doesn't get a season two argument or it doesn't keep going. Vote with your dollars slash views. Or so I thought that's what he was saying. I think some of the guys commenting on the video had, had similar said, said similar things themselves. RLM for life. This is curious. Mm. The, uh, don't watch it so it doesn't uh, get a second season. It's like... Well, people didn't. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. could, could, I, uh, so first of all, you're absolutely fucking correct. But secondly, could I have not argued yes. their coverage of Picard season one led to Picard season two? Oh my God, they shouldn't have done it. Oh, it's like, well, it's, yeah, it's, true, it's red letter media's fault. Okay, I, I can't. How many, also, how many times have we covered stuff? And it's like, by the way, don't fucking watch it because it's really fucking bad. I mean, it's and usually built in to go watch it. If we're shitting all over it, we of course don't recommend it. You know, like. I don't think anybody I mean, in yeah, chat ends up thinking, I gotta watch this awful thing on my own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, I obviously to. there's gonna be people who, who go watch it because they want to be in the loop, and maybe want to comment about it themselves during some coverage, or put a comment below, whatever it is. So, But for the most part, a lot of people watch you, know, you guys, me, us in general, just like, yeah, let's see if this is actually any good. It's like, oh, 
Great to know. Now I can skip that. I can go watch something else instead. Okay, I can't help myself. The best of the worst is literally talking about basically one-offs and random movies they find that are garbage, and they actually make fun out of the outright poor filmmaking and silliness. Both things, I think, apply to our coverage of Acolyte. So, you know, still waiting for yeah. how this is different. Yeah, the, 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 the different, and I'm okay with them. Do best of the worst. Of all. I Absolutely, yeah, it. go for it. It's, uh, it's fun as fuck. Big difference is independent filmmakers doing their schlocky stuff and they're yes they're they're awful and you're making fun of it uh what i mainly criticize giant corporations right 180 million dollar budgets all the fucking resources in the world and they still make something as bad as those independent filmmaker with makers with five bucks i think I suppose, that, that does bring me joy the vast of majority joy. of their coverage is of stuff that's like long gone now, right? Like eighties and a lot of it is uh yeah. Like B movies from then. But they do cover some new stuff every once in a while. And I think one could make the argument you wouldn't it be better to, to hit like multi million dollar corporations. But ultimately I think if they want to even hit, you know, like indie movies and stuff, it's like, all right, I mean, make it fun, try to be constructive, have a good time, whatever. I can't I can't blame them for yeah. that. Yeah. So, I um, love Best of the Worst. They watched watch Picard all. for one season it was on the air. For the one season. One season. Mike even says mm. oh. he does not care for Strange New Worlds and does not want to cover it. I don't think they covered the last couple seasons of Discovery. Don't watch it is quite literally it. the easiest way to tell companies you don't like it. Companies grow from viewership and dollars. People not watching equals loss of both. People watching but complaining about things like children online still gives companies both. RLM as a whole... Like, this is idiot. This is... Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's all... I, can I point coming. out that a lot of people stopped watching and uh, Strange New Worlds is a continuing series. Star Trek Discovery went five seasons. Five fucking <laughs> seasons before getting cancelled. Yeah, nobody fucking uh, even Picard, knew it was happening by the time they got to the end. Nobody was watching it at Picard all. It was only supposed going. to be three. Yeah. Uh, they're making a section 31. They're doing Star Trek Academy, which is supposed to be Harry Potter in space. <laughs> and nobody's watching. So nobody. why are they still making it? Uh, because it's content. Because they have, uh, uh, well, they had a lot of money. And now Paramount who runs this shut down their TV division and is writing down billions of dollars. Uh, RLM, so it was a, di it's a different time as a whole jokes and makes fun of movies. What they do through though is actual criticism that is also in a humorous fashion. Go watch the last Jedi review or ghostbusters. They did not like those movies because of the stories being told nothing to do with the childish garbage online. These man children complain about lesbian space witches without any actual complaints about the quality of the show. I'm shocked these idiots didn't even realize what? RLM makes fun Jeez. of them just as much as they make fun of Disney shills. Grow the fuck up, laugh my ass off. Now, this is going to shrink because it does mention how, Whoa. you know, the Shrinkage. more you cover a thing, the more likely it is to succeed. And, you know, they only hmm. covered... Um, well, what did it say? They only covered season one. It's like, don't you think... This constitutes two, significant two. coverage of something mm. you find miserable. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I easily recommend these. They're entertaining as hell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I didn't yeah, watch Picard, really but I watched really those fun. when they came out. I could see it. I'm just yeah, everything I know about Picard and Discovery <laughs> is through these videos. Dude, yeah. Well, yeah, the only good thing to come out of it was the videos and these videos. Yeah, exactly. The, I have it to thank for that. What's so odd about this? If I was going to watch a video about Star Trek, because uh, I, I don't know Star Trek at all, I would watch Red Letter Media's videos on it because they seem to actually yes. care about it, which is going to contextualize the, the opinions that they're giving. And, you know, it's going to lead to more humorous moments because they're going to get very, very angry if it, if it is actually that bad. They have... Um... There's Star Trek Picard season two episode ten review. You can see the thumbnail. They're wearing like fucking bizarre costumes, as if they've just like lost their mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's funny as shit. But um, what's what's interesting to me is that a lot of these comments will be themed in a way that's like these guys don't even know that RLM are making fun of them. They don't know their backlog. They don't know why they do this, that, and the other thing. And I'm sort of awkwardly sitting here like, man, I've been watching them for so long, I've seen a lot of their videos twice. Like I, uh, and then simultaneously you got them saying like they didn't even cover Picard beyond season one. I'm sitting here, not knowing much at all about Star Trek, and being like, no, they did. They were funny as hell. And it was, <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah. all very confusing as an experience, but here we are, you know. It's, um, and like I said, it's I, fine. I, I, I publicly apologize to Star Wars Man. Right. I think his name is Star Wars Theory Man. I watch a lot of their stuff, uh, and I'm a fan of both. Yeah. They do have was, legit criticisms. 
But this is about EFAB I, I and do, I... Red Letter Media, by the way. They are very... Yeah, I, in... yeah. oh, one sec, it's going to be real quick, I swear. <laughs> they are very <laughs> grained in the culture war aspect, though, and I usually roll my eyes with this stuff. But their reaction, and more so their fans' reaction, to a light ribbing from Mike has made me rethink the whole deal. This is the thinnest oh. skin I'll ever seen, all because RLM made fun of them when they run a podcast making fun of shows, and more importantly, YouTube videos from people they don't like. I was sure they would be able to take a joke, because a lot of these people for years have talked about how RLM is one of the best, but I guess that only lasts until they make fun of them as well. I, I, I thought this comment was fucking weird, because we, um, we advocate that they do make fun of us more. We want it. But, like, you know, try yeah, to hit us for stuff that makes sense, instead of... Yeah. They didn't and, and, have and, any substance of criticisms about the lesbian space, which is, is like, come on, man! Like, well, well, like just, you didn't watch any of our stuff. You you never watched our stuff. It's so odd because they're saying like you couldn't just take a joke from RLM. It's like RLM apologized. You know, you you could say yeah, all because day they, because they realize what the yeah the what, joke doesn't really work. Issue right? was. It's awkward. It's, it's like oh yeah, so we like, do eh. that all the time ourselves. Like of course, yeah. It's like this is the That's thinnest the, skin you've ever seen. Funny bit. Besides, they didn't make fun of us. They didn't mention EFAP. They were just talking about Star Wars theory. Star Wars, man. And yeah. we just, on behalf of him, were like, seems a little bit wonky. Seems a little bit out of pocket, is what the kids say, right? Out of pocket. Well, um, I mean, he agrees, right? Like, yeah, well, Mike, Mike, Mike agreed, yes. I don't know what to do. Like, what is this comment? Uh, so weird. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in EFAP for being so thin skinned on this. Like, it's fine. And it all worked out. It was a funny, it's like know, one of these. The whole thing is really weird. It's like, so first of all, Mike agrees, so that's pretty awkward. The whole, like, well, no, when people watch it or talk about it, that makes them succeed. The Acolyte got cancelled despite getting massive amounts of conversation and coverage and videos and stuff, so I, hmm, that's a bit awkward. Like, it, yeah. it, it's, it's just funny to me. It's, it's just wrong. They're just, like, incorrect about, about Well, and like, then the everything. very thing that they're accusing everybody of not, like, shouldn't do, they've done recently with another show they despise you know what i mean it's all very confusing it's like okay mm. um like it would be funnier if it was sort of like uh, more parody versions of, you know it, just the equivalent of what they do with like the shill stuff which again it's all really funny as well um said this about south park south park took way more hits on disney and shills than they do on the reverse you're like there's plenty of opportunity go for it in fact make more episodes just generally about the concepts it's funny as fuck well, there we have it for part two, I think. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Aha! But Aha. About five more hours, right? E wow, well, the actual about... stream part will be that, but the total yeah. amount of stuff that you'll be getting will be about five hours. Yeah, because I was going to say, the, don't make me think episode. too much now. i got to set up the next bat <laughs> Well, no, yeah. Well, all I'm saying is, it, it's in about five hours. That'll be once we get over the 24-hour mark for our stream time. But I it'll think be more than that in terms of total time because of these uh breaks. Someone mentioned in chat that we're like an hour and a half away from reaching the 3,000 total hours of EFAP content. 3,000. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's pretty. That's man. What are what are the odds, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it feels a lot. Incidental. I like it. Gary, what are you up to today? Uh, <laughs> oh, um, uh, doing uh, reading Watching some Lord of the hates. Rings. Ooh, well, reading uh, reading Lord of the Rings, and yeah, I'm putting off having to rewatch Rings of Power season one. Probably gonna oh. start that tomorrow. But today is just a little bit of <laughs> reading, uh, alphabetizing comic books, really important stuff. Really, and then Forbidden Frontier tonight. I'm gonna talk about what are we Ooh. talking about. Oh. Lou Alzando uh, just wrote a book. Going to talk some UFO stuff and Shroud of Turin. We're going to talk the Shroud of Turin. That was a bit upsetting because uh, whenever I saw Forbidden Frontier, I was like, "Oh, that means we're doing House of the Dragon." And then and I know, yeah, and no, I like, yeah. Oh. Ah, I, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, if only we had those two extra Should episodes, been... huh? Yeah, too bad. I Thanks, did get that feeling too, where I was like, "Oh, there's no more House of Dragon for another like two years or whatever." Like shit. Nope. That's, well, oh well. Well, I think you guys are like, Night of the Seven Kingdoms, at least the casting looks spot on. Like, perfect. None of it's weird or When we got Agatha on the way, uh, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Can't wait. Yay, okay. Agatha, <laughs> Agatha, she's a witch. If she doesn't like you, you'll right? be bewitched. 
wasn't it like Whoa. a couple of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago, away. What? Oh, oh. Rings of power first, like so that that's epic. Yay! Mm -hmm. Agatha has a big black cat. She flies on her broom and and casts her spells. Dude, I love that and theme. If you don't like her, you can push her down wells. Oh, just like in season of the witch. But make sure you take them out and finish the prayer, or else the demon will possess a lady. You know, you know his brain is and melting. And then, and then. Tired, right? With no, Harry. what's his name? No, what's his name? Nicholas Cage. God damn it! And then Athena, Frank. Nicholas Cage, and <laughs> um, the other guy will die. Then Hellboy <laughs> will die by you the demon. Ron Pillman. <laughs> In the church. <laughs> and the church. Yeah, he, got, he <laughs> dies <laughs> twice. He dies again. twice. Yeah, he <laughs> oh, don't spoil it. Good enough for Mr. Perlman. He has to die twice. Death. Dude, what? No, he died right. twice in that. Oh, well, no, in season of the witch, he like we thought twice. he was dead. <laughs> oh, Sekiro! Oh, you sounded like Phil Frank. Yeah. All right, uh, everyone. And... You want Whoa. some more Batwoman content? Well, we're going to be heading out now. But you, lucky viewer, can wait. Can you want you guys spam the link <laughs> in the chat? Can go and watch uh, Batwoman. Sure. Episode 14 of season 2. Exciting. This one has zombies in it. Wow. Oh, God. I actually forgot that there was a zombie episode about it. There was a zombie yeah. episode, yeah. yes. Damn so, um, Go and check that out. Look at that. It's begun. The timer. All right. We need to go, go and refresh a little bit to stay awake for these last hours now. It's important. We're a final stretch, everybody. Thank you so much On for joining stretch. us. We appreciate you. On the stretch. For now, though, we will head out and see you once Batwoman is over. Part three. Part Later. Soon, Pip, right. everybody. Bye-bye. Wait, we will see you guys Bye. later. Bye. Flame. Bye. Be right